What's going on, friends? Anton from Anton Daniels here, cooking up as usual, doing what I do, holding you down, making sure that everything is good. My chair over. Making sure everything is good and all right. First rule of Fight Club is we don't talk about Fight Club. You know what the first rule of Fight Club is. Second rule of Fight Club is we don't talk about Fight Club, but it's been a lot of people talking about Fight Club. So let me just lay down the ground rules because I realize that everybody is going to do what they want to do when they want to do it. First off, I got to salute the bag chasers. Shout out to everybody that's in the bag chasers. I see y'all in the chat. I see my boy Kojak just mentioned me. What up, though? Razik said he just copped diplomacy by Henry Kissinger. Shout out to you. Yeah, we getting to it. Shout out to all of my bag chasers holding me down. Uh, Rita, she got her own looking thing going on right now. You see her? Rita got her own thing. You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? People think I'm weird because my chick is always with me. When I said on the show yesterday that my girl was my best friend, people was looking at me. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. But again, salute to my bag chasers, Patreon members. Link is in the description if you want to join the Patreon. If you want personal coaching, make sure you tap into your boy. Go to my website, AntonDaniels.com. Send me an email from there, and we're going to get you slotted in. We're going to get you right. We're going to get your marriage right. We're going to get your money right. We're going to get everybody right. What's up, uh, uh, QECC? What's going on, love? What's up? Yvette is in the building. Scam likely. Yeah, D. Harris. Oh, I see y'all holding it down. We're gonna have a phenomenal weekend. It's gonna be a great weekend. So here, let me let me let me establish the first rules, right? The only rule that we really have. We pretty much rock with everybody. We pretty much rock with everybody. But we want you to support your argument. We don't want you running in the victim Olympics. We don't want you complaining. We don't want you whining. We don't want you coming back and saying, oh, they didn't rock with my argument. Yo, that's your responsibility to be able to support what it is that you say. I don't want to live in an echo chamber. I don't want to be in this dark space where everybody sound the same. I want to be in this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yvette's birthday is Monday. What's going on, Mona? Yvette's but Can we wish Yvette an early, her early, early birthday before we start getting into the live stream tonight? Listen, anybody can join the panel. Link to join the panel is at the at pinned to the top of the chat, and the link is in the description. Link to the Patreon is in the description. I don't want y'all whining and complaining and acting like you don't know where the links are. Link to Cam up and join the panel. Be able to support your argument. That's the main thing that we advocate for, and we're going to get it popping. Welcome. Welcome, my beautiful, awesome, lovely people. It is going to be a great weekend. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm going to get into my thoughts shortly. But before I do so, let me invite a couple of my friends up. Again, anybody can join the panel. What up, Jamal? What up, Ma? What up, though? What up, though? Let me invite a couple of my friends up. First, let me get my guy up, the guy that kind of runs this whole thing. This is really his show. This ain't got nothing to do with me. What, what up, gang? Up? What's going on here? It's the word, bro. Chilling, chilling, man. You know, honestly, well, before I get into it, before I get into it, how are you doing this weekend, my friend? You look like you just came out of a business meeting. What's going on? Nah, 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 nah. I've just been running around. So, and I don't want to be late today like I'm normally late, you know, playing in the chat. So, you know, I'll probably switch my shirt in a minute. But, you know, what's going on, bro? Chilling, chilling, man. Listen, I, I have some uh, thoughts, discrepancies. Uh, things that I think is um, a little bit off. You know, I always get this crazy pushback, but uh, shout out to De Jazz Wiz. He said, this stream going to be lit. Shout out to you, Anton. You are the hardest working man on YouTube. I honestly believe so. I honestly believe so. Thank you, my friend, for holding me down and supporting us with the 10 ball. I think I'm the hardest working man on YouTube, but I get a lot of pushback, and I'm going I'm to I'm share my thoughts on that. Let me get Dr. Panderson up here. Uh... Jojo, HR is in the building. What's good, um, people? 
I'm look good. good. Trouble good at this year. Trouble fix this in the house. How y'all doing today, man? I'm good. Um, been studying and trying to get a lot of stuff, you know, trying to learn this new language, Python. So, you know, I just been out the whole week. So it's my first time seeing everybody. Shout I'm out to the Python, Python uh, learners. What's up, Cousin Joey? What's up, Anton, man? How you doing, bro? I'm chilling. Listen, I got a question for y'all before we even really get started. I said, yo, my chick comes with me and she rocks with me. Look at her. She always in a good space. My chick, my chick is really with me all the time. I said that my girl is my best friend. People turned their nose up. They said, mm. they said, mm, what does that mean? What are you doing? What's going on, my girl? People looked at me like I was crazy when I said that my chick is pretty much with me all the time, and that's my best friend. That's the person that know the most about me. All of that. What do y'all think? Is that am I am I off? I'm curious. Nah, you you're not off. It's just people probably not used to that right now. Like folks that's not in your lifestyle or living the way you live with you with Rita, they not used to that. They normally used to, I guess, hanging out with their homeboys or something. You are you guys can ask. They they probably feel like because they don't do that, you shouldn't do it either. They're giving up their perspective and projecting it onto you. Cutie C C said y'all 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 friends in her head, Rita. C C. Hey girl, yeah, that's my boo. I don't really understand. Like, I'm in a great space with my chick. Why? Why are dudes running from home? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Hey, Cousin Joey, do you think I'm off on that? I'm curious. No, sir. Uh, I've been watching y'all for quite a while, man. But y'all started the Little Peace Network, and uh, Rita always been one thousand, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, your boy says, she been one thousand. Yeah. <laughs> One thousand. Yeah, no, always had your back, cause oh, seriously, the heart attack, man. I'm, you know what I'm saying? And remember me and you last time we talked. I'm for Flip. Yeah, you, I know. You always got your back, man. I mean, shit. Sorry. I mean, darn. <laughs> Wish I had a real. <laughs> what do you think about that, Doctor Panderson? I know you the the uh, lawyer for the streets. Um, what's the what's the word, my fam? Well, uh, actually, the lead public defender's office is closed. Um, he's been going through a lot lately. He's not getting paid, so you know. But I'm an advocate for marriage, though I ain't got me a spouse myself. So trust me, I get it. Look at it. She whispering. Honey, you want something to drink? Shout out to Rita. Hey, girl, give me something to drink. Oh, make it, make it rain. Jesus. I Shout out it. to Rita. I love that. Girl. It's Friday. You can't get a better combination of butt tits. But here's body, the thing. Femininity, hold me down. All that. I'm Here's good. the thing, though, Anton. Like, should you want to be best friend with your wife? I, don't... I mean, I think that that's the formula for me. Personally. Exactly. That's the that's the you know that's the formula in my opinion. Like, but... if you can't stand being around them, why are you with them? I don't know, man. I'm 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 very perplexed. I'm very 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 perplexed as to. Honey, I didn't even say yes or no. She just won't pour me down. Anyway. You already know my answer? Yeah. What's my answer? Yes. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Also, everybody, welcome back, Aaron's mustache. <laughs> Sash welcome game back. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> it said, welcome. Why you say welcome back, your mustache, bro? Because like a week ago they was talking about where his mustache at, but now he grew it back. So I was welcoming him. Welcoming I'm not him. even used to seeing Aaron with a mustache. I'm gonna be honest. The only thing I could think of is Aaron. Aaron is Aaron. Like he just that's just the way he's always been and the way he looks and all of that. But I don't, I don't know. Aaron is I, Aaron. I haven't really noticed even. I'm so glad the men don't pay no attention to that. I appreciate it. I <laughs> uh, they was talking about it like last week. Come on, where your mustache at? If you would have, if you would have shaved, and I wouldn't even notice or even actually even cared. Like that's why I love. That's why I love Mike Dub. You know what I mean? Like he make my life no stress here. See, the guys ain't tripping. If the, now if the ladies stop, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to but do. They, but they, but they pay attention to that stuff. Men Ooh, don't watch. Do? Men don't watch each other like that, bro. We watch how we move. We don't watch how we look. Yeah, that that's that is facts. 
Hmm. My hair been the same for now. If you years, start, so. if you start acting out of character, then yeah, we'll notice. That's one hundred. Hmm. That is true. Yeah, that is true. Hey, I'm gonna go from like here on the low though. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you said that a month ago, bro. You said that a month ago, and you still ain't done it yet. <laughs> oh, man. I'm waiting for the summer to hit the spring. Once the spring hit, I'm gonna have a full full 360 waves. Well, it's snowing sideways right now, so you got some time. <laughs> Anton, your edge out left before by the same time I ran the, <laughs> ran the wrong way in the victim Olympics. <laughs> I'm glad somebody said it, not me. Yo, watch me get some hair. It's gonna be popping too. I just thought you didn't have a choice anymore. And Rita gonna, gonna make you shave all that crap off as soon as you grow it. No, she not. Rita, Rita loved me with her. Rita loved me always and every. I didn't way say she didn't love you, bro. I'm just saying that I think she appreciates the bald head, bro. That's all I meant. <laughs> Who would you prefer me to have the hair or the bald head, in your opinion? Um, I don't she know. She used to the bald head. It's but, right, I'm used to the bald head. head. I haven't seen you with hair. In a while, so, I mean, I think it would be a good um, change. But See? does that bring, does that and then bring up an interesting question? Like, don't, don't majority of women uh, men prefer their women to have a certain hairstyle? What do you do mean by we that? Do you prefer a women to have a certain hairstyle? hairstyle? Yes, because I love my wife when she wears braids. I do. Oh, really, yes. I'm not a braids fan. Like braids. I'm not a braids fan at all. I actually love braids. Like too. I understand. I understand. <laughs> Me either. Ah, that's it, man. That's it. I love braids, especially no, when they're I'm nice and long. All braids. So like, they look, you yeah. know what? You love them until she's been sleeping on your chest all night with no shirt on. Especially when they get the kinky twist. <laughs> the kinky twist, oh lord, Mike, you talking my language right now? So, Tamika, Tamika well, I'm high right. yellow, bro. Yeah. Oh, that's my card. <laughs> <laughs> I know, believe it or not, we be knowing. We just don't be saying nothing. Dr. Not, Wiggins I'm is also on vacation. I'm not a fan of the braids. I like the twists and I like the um, Tony Braxton and Holly Berry haircut. The braids. Hey, the, oh, you know, you know the sexy. Rita thing. almost got the haircut that Tony hey, Braxton was red and Holly Berry. Hey, bro, you know the sexy thing I ever seen. Yeah, Holly uh, Berry uh, and Boomerang was. Oof. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, the, you know, the sexual thing I was seeing, I was in the Marine Corps and I knew a staff sergeant, a beautiful woman, and she had a high and tight, Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to be honest with y'all. She had a I know y'all be talking about yeah, y'all like these chicks that got butterfly eyelashes and all of that. Y'all be lusting. I don't them. like that. Now, y'all love, uh, no, okay, love no, over no, all no, women. No, no, I, I no. can't go here to behave no. tonight, but you want somebody to cut up. Nobody it's won't turn no, their hands on their no. woman eyelashes, man. It's I don't want you to be blanking and I'm cold because of your eyelashes. Women. Anton, it's not cute. Out here. This is not like cute, Anton. Book, and they got too many kids. Too many nah, kids. See, here's the thing. This is not I cute. shouldn't be trying to kiss you. I'm getting smacked in the face by them. Nah, bro. I, I know you. Okay, so let me ask y'all a question. Wipers. Yeah, let me ask y'all a question. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> wipers. Nah. Oh. God damn. Uh, like sticking at the bottom. Let me ask y'all a question. He said, when I was little, my... Uh, Shaved off as much as once all four of us was traumatized. He never shaved it again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask y'all a question. Be honest. Uh oh. Be honest. Go ahead. How many of y'all have slayed a dragon before? Not me. I don't know nothing about that. No speaking. No. English. I don't even know what that means, bro. Like yeah, English. English. Okay. About. Slay a dragon means that you slept with a girl that you wouldn't normally sleep with. Looks no, I don't know about that. Never. I was a Marine, bro, and I plead the fifth. So Wait, I know hold, that, on. I know hold, what on. hold on. Is this retroactive? Then we could go back and be like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Now. Yeah. Are you, <laughs> word? How, you no, said, are you speaking no, on I'm an asking if you would do it today. I'm asking, are you speaking on efforts to take him off for the team? He said if you ever did it, period. How oh, many of y'all have ever slayed a dragon? One and she I plead the fifth. She just, over, she just had too many pounds on it. So, Dr. Panderson, you have 
I'll say we know what the military dudes do. So Mike, I'm just gonna throw you right on in that. Uh, <laughs> And that I know Mike, Mike, <laughs> you got too many stories of being around guys for too long and you was tired. Mike, Man, stay I was with the fifth. Stay with Pleat the fifth. Hey, Mike I Dub, I was a Marine. I was under the influence. This is say that. Hey, hey Mike Dub, I was a Marine for 15 years. I feel it, bro. I was a Marine too. Then I went on. Yeah, in the military. Yeah, you thing. slayed a dragon. So that's three. Aaron, I know. It ain't a military know. thing, no. I went in the Army of Virgin, came out of Virgin. Cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somebody got a job in a cow's ass because that was bullshit. So, yeah, serious. So, Dr. Patterson, so are you telling us that you went and came out the same day? You never signed up? I uh, what? You went in and came out the same day? I went in at 18. I came out at 20. Still a virgin. Okay. But how old are you now? 41. Have you ever slayed a dragon? I said one. <laughs> that means three. <laughs> I'm gonna go put my boots on in a minute, man. Okay, so wait a minute. Uh nah Buddha. Have you ever slayed a dragon? You know what that means? Cute. Just overweight. You don't know what that means, but no, I never have. You've never slayed a dragon. Not slayed a dragon. Not in that uh, Hey Anton, can I ask an even pertinent question? Have you ever slayed a chunky junkie? I have never slayed a dragon ever. No, I mean, have you ever slayed, you know, somebody that was a little bigger? I call them chunky junkies. You know, I've ever saying? slept with a bigger girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody bigger. Than bigger. You. I'm not talking about bigger as in, but I mean bigger than you, because bigger has to have a, uh, you know, it has to have a rupert. So bigger than you. I mean, so Man, a lot of women bigger than me, so I ain't got that problem. You I'm said, like, yeah. come on, bro. I mean, you are still in the military, so you are really decent shape. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about us old fat people. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all nuts, man. Y'all nuts. <laughs> I'm not as young as I look. I've never, I've never. Are you 51 years did, old? I've never messed with a. Big girl. He got me about like 20 years. I'm not. Yeah, there I'm you never, go, bro. I've never been into big girls. I like really, really thin girls. Yeah, we went. We we we've been over this, Anton. I'm not into big girls like that. Like it don't do me nothing either. for me. Agree. <laughs> I like them. I like them in between, like skinny and and big. Yep. Yeah. So thick. <laughs> So yeah, you like you like you like, you like with a big ass and a little chest. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I've always liked skinny since I was a kid. You like a big bonded, Mike? That way, that's going too far. <laughs> See, Aaron won't even answer these questions, so we cool. <laughs> we cool. Aaron is just gonna look away like he can't hear what we're saying. We cool with that, Aaron. Yes, he ain't said nothing. Look, every, every time a question come on, Aaron do like this. I think Aaron on mute. <laughs> hey, 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 Aaron, Aaron don't even have a mute button on, and he'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> "That's like making them random sounds on your cell phone just so you can hang up on people or make them hang up on you." <laughs> Look, listen, you doing it right now, Aaron? I have never, never tapped in with a girl that was not. Ideal ever, ever. This is real talk, bro. I was, I was not hard up. That's the I thing mean, people don't understand. Like I wasn't. I mean, I've never. I've never moved out of desperation. Even when I was in high school. Even when I was in middle school. I lost my virginity. Well, this is not a secret. I lost my virginity when I was eleven years old, and it was intentional. It was intentional. I can't say that. I was in the Marine Corps when I lost mine. I was 21. Man. 11? <laughs> that's, a, that's a low number. 11 years old. 100%. And it was 100% intentional. Now, I'm not necessarily proud of that. It's not a bragging point because the one thing that I said that I've always said is that if I had to do it all over again, um, I will go back and be a be a virgin before I got married. If I had to do it all over again, 
I would 1000% go back and be a virgin before I got married. So it's not nothing that I'm bragging about. But I mean, it is what it is. Like, if I'm gonna live my life like an open book, I'm gonna just be all the way there. And um, I had a full blown relationship. And it was what it was. I had a full blown relationship, straight up. At age 11. It was a full blown relationship. Yeah, it happens. (laughs) Hey Anton, you know why I waited so late to, to do the do and everything else, man? In why Flint, that? well, in Flint, I uh, I grew up in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? During the crack epidemic, so I had a lot of friends that were 16, 15, 17 years old that had baby mamas. Mm. And you I know, know what's so like funny, thinking, bro. Uh, that was crazy. You know what's so funny? I still have the letters that the girl was writing me. When I was 11, 12 years, 12 years old. How old was she? Uh, 17, uh, 17 18 years old. Uh, and you was a B-52 bomber, huh? Let me see something. I'll be right back. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I still, I still got letters from high school, too. I ain't gonna lie. I don't think they even email. Like, uh, yeah. Tons of letters. Tons of letters. I, I think about it. I ain't got none of that shit. I wasn't even sure. I don't either, man. Yeah. I can't even Me remember. Either, man. Yeah, I'm, a very, I, I'm extremely sentimental. Uh, but I, you never know when I might write a book. So, you know, never know. Hey, Mike yeah. Dub, I don't even I remember the people I was in. I was huh? overseas, man. I don't remember I, none of them. I remember a, a select so. few. I remember a select few. See, I don't even remember. But I don't think place. I really slayed a dragon for a day because there's usually something I found about them that I liked. It was never out of okay. I can't get none, so let me go ahead and hit this real quick. It wouldn't be something I wouldn't get, but well, he's since saying I can't get none, obviously, if you can do the do, there's something that gets you motivated, right? So he's just saying that you you know you like I'm gonna just sneak this one in. I can't tell none of the homies. I know. Like, I feel that's what he's saying. Too. So oh, nah. Wait, wait, sometimes wait, wait, you I'm, just stuck one for the game too, though, bro. It is what it is. I mean, I've slayed a dragon. Wait, I got a question. <laughs> Jesus, I got a question though. And a whale. Were people saying that they oh. have not slay a dragon, or you just have you wouldn't? He's asking, "Have you?" I have. I'm saying, no, I'm asking. I'm asking the people. Anybody who said they did slay a dragon, would you not slay a dragon? I would not. No, I'm good. I'm too old, too tired. Nah. All right. Not what if she? Well, you gotta, you know what, when you get older, see, 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 here's, here's the thing my sword won't get up to fight the dragon. Like, no, nah, mine won't either. <laughs> but you don't gotta see it. I'm gonna pay for that one tomorrow. Butterface, like, like proportionate, just like how you said, Mike Dub, like the, the body's where it fits, but not the face. Which would you do it then? She's still a dragon, technically, but she got the body. Well, when you get the lights off, everybody looks the same, right? No, exactly. Man made doggy style no. for a reason. <laughs> no, they don't look the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you try you to get them to leave with the lights. Start, bro. <laughs> you try to get them to leave with the lights off and they still no. They don't look the same. They yeah, I can't talk to you. Off, man. So you got a point and now I feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go pour me a glass of wine. I'll be back in a minute, man. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> we crazy. Everybody in the military is not knocking them down now. I was in it. First of all, man, everybody in the military is uh, uh, like actually hard up. <laughs> it's actually what? I stopped. They hard up because you don't want to sleep with the women in the military. Uh, you in the army, I never talked to a military chick. Dog, you don't stick shit to work with. That's how you ass go to jail. Well, I was combat arms. One of the females where we were. And all I was 0311, baby. Uniform, well, was what it was. But all the other ones in uniform, I'd be scared to find out they married or deal with them and then something happen and go wrong and end up getting in trouble. But, bro, when you, overse- when you overseas, you don't know because they lie. Shoot, they lie on base, too. Yes, sir. Well, absolutely correct on that one. No, because they lie. No, you're right. I, I agree with you. You are absolutely correct. 
Nah, I don't know. I was in culture shock. I saw like how some of the people moved when I went to the army. Like it was a regular thing. Some dude go to the field for 30 days. It's another chick driving his car to the club with another dude in it. That was just the norm. Wow. Yeah, I think the most I, I listen, I've had enough of the military guys. Y'all drive me crazy. Too many <laughs> stories, too much craziness. That's it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. I, hear about it's I, think, it's, I think the most nasty thing I've ever seen is like people trying to get on the field and you haven't shot for like a week. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need you know what I'm saying? And then y'all, and you still, you like, yeah, I got tons of stories like that. That's just we ain't had no females in the field. I was combat arms, so yeah, I was too. I was an 0311, so there were no. I didn't have I didn't team. have females in the field, so I joined the army. Yeah, Marine Corps doesn't do that. Yeah, no. So it it kind of is a a good thing, I guess, in a way, because you ain't got to deal with that. That's true. Plus, our training is a little on the heavy side. That is true. And I went in at 89, so, you know, they kind of lighten up a little bit. I went in 2011. It's no different. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks for letting me know, Mike Dub. I really did not want to hear that. <laughs> I thought they would at least lighten up a little bit. but Nah, they still ain't lighten up now. I uh, joined the Marine Corps because my mother said she liked the uniform. Just in case you wanted to know my motivation. I joined the Marine Corps because my dad said I couldn't do it. But there you go. <laughs> Two stupid people. Mm. Thank God that I survived. I can't take military stuff. I can't. <laughs> I don't have anything to add to the military conversation. Thank, thank the well, heavens for move that. On, man. I'm burnt out. Out about it. Both of them burnt out. In the military, and I, I'm like, nah. Both my parents in the military met in the military, and I was just like, I'm good. But now I'm good. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hopefully, y'all having a good night. What's up, bro? Great, man. How you doing? Y'all having a good night. Hey, Ms. Ray, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bro. How are you? Hey, thank thank man. you man. How you doing? Q, you hey, a thank hater. you, man. You got to change the <laughs> name. Thinking what? Thinking what? You got to change the thinking mind. Uh, well, You're from you, H-Con. Man. We're going to die. <laughs> no, thank hey, you, don't listen to him, thinking, man. Through. Your podcast is good the way it is, brother. I appreciate it, man. He's got one of the dopest podcasts out. I'll be, I'll be mad when I'm like, dang, I'll be sleeping. Man, I'll be wanting to argue with him. <laughs> I'll You want to argue? Why you want to argue, man? No, no, I don't mean uh, my bad. Debate. You're just I a very you. smart person, bro. That's all I meant by that. I apologize for saying argue. I wanted, you know, sometimes I'll be listening to you and I'd be like, you know what, man, you got that almost right, man. But here's the, the, the you know how it is. Us old guys, we we think we know everything. Hey, man, we're going to start dropping a link. Yo, that poster in the man. back, thinking, man. Yo, yeah. I love it. I appreciate it. It's a canvas. Yeah, I'm not going to get no sleep. So You're I'm going to try to catch him. So oh, man. So early. You ain't going to get no sleep, man. None, none. Bro. What you said? Yeah. I hear you. Ain't nobody saying hey to Island no. Girl. What's up, Island Girl Q? Hi, good evening. Sorry, I'm trying to. You've been working all day, girlfriend. Yeah. I know you. you know I don't work on all Fridays. day. No, nah, baby, I know where you've been because I've been uh, following you all day. You've been working all, all day. That's you been following me. Hold on, and, uh, and you've been oh, dealing with life. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, I had to say what I had to say. Hey, I'll be back. Bye. Man, look, Anton Moore. Look, he look. He more sentimental uh, than me. He keeps this adding. Like, 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 this one right here from 1987. When I was one years old. Anton, <laughs> and, Anton from the hood. Every dude I know, it's the shoebox. Everybody. <laughs> 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 look, I switched my shoebox to clear cases, but you know, so my stuff is in clear clear boxes. I bet money point. Anton got a shoebox. Look how long these letters are, bro. Jesus. Look at the date on that mug. Wow, it's handwriting. Is the handwriting in cursive? You know, back then we used to write. In cursive. No, it's not in cursive. It's oh, you got some nice handwriting. We got good hands. Hand. 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 You must be right. This is stuff that, that I used to get back in the nineties, bro. Like from girl. oh, so you can write it. She wrote it. Yo, yeah, wait, 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 wait. So, so you saved letters from girls back from the nineties, bro? Yeah, I was in like middle school. Yeah. 
Y'all had paper back then? No, I'm I was in middle school. I got, I got, I got mm-hmm. mine too. Don't do it. Kind of oh, so <laughs> I was going to kind of say we wrote in Sanskrit or something. Wow. <laughs> Anton, you had a starter speak. jacket. But, but wait, but Anton, was you simping back then? I Sanskrit. No, bro. Bro, if I, I read you I, 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 I was definitely a simp. I went back and read it. If I read you this, it would blow you away, bro. Anton. I was the same thing that I am now. The exact same. Uh, look at this. You know I really miss you a lot. I told some of my friends about you, and they said that they wish they could have met you before I did. This is a 17, 18-year-old girl. Wait, she was 18, and she had six weeks? He was old. 11. She was a pedophile. Yeah, that's uh, – yes, we can't say that. Hey, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. Anton, I she apologize. was a petty. No, you can say whatever you want to say. I would never tell her name or nothing like that. No, right. I think they flagged that word, though. We yeah, I think so. She's probably right. I think we, she's right. That's yeah. why I'm apologizing. Well, I'll, I'll show you exactly what it said. Look, we were um, talking about this, though. That's right, Bia. We like them handwritten letters. I still got all oh, mine. It's a bunch mm-hmm. of them, too. I'm not about to shit. It says, uh, I've never said that to anybody because maybe I wasn't that much uh, loving, or I just didn't feel that way, but I definitely know I'm in love with you because I can really feel it when I'm talking to you on the phone or looking at you, but I really feel it when I'm with you, uh, either next to you, laying on you, or kissing you. This sounds weird. Again, I've never been as much in love with anybody before, so I'd have to say that you're the first in my life to be in love with or my first love. Hmm. Right at the top. No cap. That girl, that girl was 18. No cap. Yeah. I ain't gonna even mm-hmm. see how many times the love was written back then. Ah oh, man, they don't even know what it was. They was listening they to the nineties music. That's they love. I'm telling you, bro. I've been I've been doing like, this for a long time. Like that Al B Shore. Mm-hmm. Jay White said you got a pen pal in prison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they call it what they want. They know they know what's really happening. <laughs> Bro, did you uh on your answer machine you ain't had the music in the background? Hey, this Anton, you miss me. <laughs> yeah. I'll you later. Yeah. Yeah. You know you we did it. Admit it. Hey, bro, you know you, everybody. You know, we, we pre-recorded that. What was that the R&B voice group? Mm-hmm. <laughs> was it Boys to Men? Rita was writing uh, letters to me right here too. Look, that's Rita. Oh, uh oh. Okay, bust it open. Okay. Let's see what it says. Uh oh. Oh, snaps. Uh-oh, what is that? <laughs> 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 oh, no, don't do that. Anton, it's you? Wait, hold on, hold on. Do it again? I what you riding see. in? A B- 86 Buick Regal. Hell Damn, yeah, dude. baby. Oh, snaps. <laughs> That's my Johnson. <laughs> I was going to say, are you kidding? Where no, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, no, it it's a tile over it. That's my Johnson right there. Why you yeah. had no clothes on in the car? Because we had just got them busting it down. Oh, Jesus. Okay. And Greedy was like, let me take a picture of you with just the towel. Man, hold on. That's that Kodak uh, disposable camera, too, back then. Uh, yeah. That's the, yeah, that one that shoots out of the picture. You got to let it dry for like 10 seconds. You got to do like this. <laughs> yep. Disposable camera. Hey, bro, I'm telling you, my life. I had an 85 Ford Thunderbird, bro. Black and red. <laughs> I love them old cars. I said the same thing to me, Kim. It don't look like yeah, it's a top, it's the cover over it. So Man, you about to he try, he trying to shows, get me bro. flat. He trying to get me flat. It's, it's, it's a cover over it. I wasn't you looking at that. I was looking right at the there, car. Right? I wasn't looking at the car electronics. Yeah, it's an '86 Buick Regal. No, I don't even know what this. I thought that was an Air that's that type. You remember them windows? We didn't have electronic windows. You got to dial it up, dial it down. No, nah, they had electronic windows. Nah, even think Bill Regal had a uh, power window. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't that a, uh, what, a 305 or a 455 gold block? Like you know, you could swap out the motors back then. Yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. That blue interior hard. See, look, this is Rita back in 03, writing hard to time dog, talking about um, I just want you to know that I love you and I'm down for you no matter what. No, we want to hear Rita's letters from you, Dad. We want to know the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, we want to know the same thing. Stop, we stop playing. We know. We know. All right, like you say, I I stop, stop. We want to hear from Rita. <laughs> Dang, this is crazy. 
Yo, Anton, you was driving in high school? Yeah. The gas was 99 cents. That's when you had to, uh, you put the gas in the back of the car. You had to move the license plate. <laughs> uh, I don't remember that. Oh, man. Shit. Yeah. No, nah, that's 70. <laughs> uh, and listen, this is 02. So this is two years after I graduated high school. See, when I say I know I got the receipts of how we really was moving, look at this. Hold on, hold on. Let's say it right here. We will be married soon. I can't wait. Truthfully, if it was up to me, we will be married in 2003 instead of 04. Mm. Mm. I, I was there straight up. 03. Say it right there. 2003, baby. Bro, when I say I knew exactly what I wanted, when I wanted it, I knew it. Those papers are looking kind of fresh for something that's old. Oh, uh, come we on. preserve our stuff. And it, it actually got the date on. Bro, don't nobody do that. Y'all should laminate that. That's a good um thing to keep. In a yeah, scrap Rita, I care for you so much that I can't even say to what extent I go through for you. I pray for you and prayers for us that we will be all that we can for each other and for our happiness. I want to see you happy and well off. You should know by now that you mean everything to me. Um, lately, we've been spending a lot of time together. I have no choice but to wonder what the next step is. Is there another level before marriage? Do you think we're going to? Yeah, that's um, that sim talk. Yeah, talk that sim talk. Nah, real yeah. talk. Like I was, I was real. I was like, I, when I say that I was very intentional when I was younger, even at twenty years old, 19, 20 years old, I was very intentional. I knew exactly what I was going to do before I was do it. And it just it just was what it was. Hey Anton, it's step talk until you've been married for 18 years. <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? Because I was married for 27 years. You know what I'm saying? So people can say what they want to. Of course you should. Hey, it's nothing offensive about sipping. It's okay to sip if you want to sip. <laughs> now you gotta clean it up, Tuzo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, I admit it. I was a simp, especially in high school. I when I, I cringe at some of the things I said in the letters, the emails. Nah, bro, uh, but like I really was dedicated to this. It says, I care for you. Um, I am all for you. I'm all yours and yours to deal with forever. Aww. Call me crazy, but you are never leaving me. If I can't have you, no one went, no one can. I promise you that. I promise oh, he's talking you, that okay, that, now that's a stalker. No, check it out. <laughs> nah, Rita, Rita said that. Rita said that on another stream, too. She said that. I promise you, um, this is what a real man really looks like that's really down for you that would never do you wrong. Sorry, babe, but you stuck with me, so any plans that you had, be sure to include me in them. Um, this, is, this, is, this is, I talk the same way today. That's and do you right. realize that this is Anton Daniels talking, Mr. Big Time? The man time, Mr. Arrogant. I was talking the same way I was back then, bro. Mr. Arrogant. Ain't nothing wrong with being arrogant if you can back it up. And so, you know, I mean, why should I change now? Just because we're on the fucking internet? Fuck these dudes. <laughs> That's Detroit. <laughs> I ain't never changing. I've been the same way my whole life. I ain't about to switch up now. I feel the same way you do, Anton, on the real. I've always been Godzilla, and everybody's been Tokyo in my life, so I feel what you're saying. Yes, King. Mike, what's up, man? What are you doing? Yeah, Mike man. Work. crazy, bro. Mike at work? You don't yeah. see him shooting the booty? Because if he wasn't, he would be drinking. Hey, man. hey, you don't know my life story, Q. We know your life story. All of us on this panel know you just be having a bottle every weekend. We know. Well, you so, one you thing. So wrong, you he didn't tell me that we be seeing him chugging the bottle on the live stream. Yes or no? I played the piss. <laughs> she was like a hawk. You give her any information. He didn't have to give it to me. Right. He was cammed up. 
See, that's what you get for dealing with island girls, man. They be they be stacking chips in the background, remembering everything that you're doing. It's like gambling. Yeah, really, even the ladies love you. Everything. It's like gambling. Really beautiful. Come over here when you get tired of hand. <laughs> I've been with some island girls. Never had no problems. You saw what? What would you say, fake Dr. Penderson? I, I dated some girls. <laughs> I, I dated some island girls. I never had no problems. Q was taking heat today um, on Logic Show. Oh, she uh, sure was, man. Oh, let's, Logic, Logic got, a, got show. a show before me. I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> Logic got a show. Man. Actually, Logic show actually went down pretty damn cool, man. Yeah, after two hours. I got. I got it, it was three hours and some change, man. He did no. a good job. I wasn't no. told. The show was a good one. Well, how, how many letters did y'all get? I got literally tons There's of pictures letters. pictures in there. Let's look at the pictures. These are pictures from all of the different things. Yeah, dog, man. Day. Did you wait? Did, hey, did, hey, did, uh, did you have uh email back then, Tom? Was y'all emailing too or no? Uh, I don't know. Hey, Anton. Hey, hey, I just want to. I just want to get. I just want to get you flowers, man. Right now, man. You and Lapeef, man. Y'all doing a damn good job, man. Y'all thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Y'all doing a yes, damn sir. good job. Man. I love watching y'all, bro. And Island Girl Q. I'm not gonna lie to you, you got some jokes. Would any of y'all be scared to take a polygraph? Maybe saying women are funny though. Bro, no, women are funny. I got six sisters. I promise you, they're funny. It depends what it's for. I say women just take a polygraph. I take a polygraph. No problem. We couldn't hear you, Aaron. Say it again. My bro, coach. No, somebody asked, "Will we be? Are we scared to take a polygraph, or would we be we, we willing to take a polygraph?" No, I see the that's polygraph. The, that's the thing I didn't get, so I I, I don't understand that. So it depends on what talk, it's for. They probably talking about in your relationship. Would you, if your girl was like, would you, you take make a everything program? relationship based? Q, you ain't why sick. else would he be asking? Why do, he could be like lying if you are internet no. rich, and if you if you really get like people be like everybody. Listen, man, it, it could mean anything. Anything. Man, that could, I can see that going bad so many ways. I don't. I can it. tell you how to cheat a polygraph. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to say. I mean, that no, literally, I can tell you how to cheat a polygraph. I, you can, I know how to too. Tell us. Tell us. Please do. All you have to do is when you walk into there, have something uncomfortable in your hand, and every time you got to lie, oh no, excuse me, every time you got to tell the truth, make yourself feel uncomfortable. Actually, the best way to do it is put it in your shoe. Attack or actually, or what do they call those things? Uh, stop Q, you play too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth, man. Uh, you know, the ones that they, they be showing on TV where you kids be have be playing with them. I don't I forgot what they call them. You put you one of those, that damn you can't put it back up. huh? Let's get up out there. Oh my god, hey, Q, how do you manage to be in an intense battle? Like on a Thursday night show, and still man the chat and tr and keep up with every troll in there. I can multitask very well, and the funny thing is, I'm at my brother's house, and I gotta wake up at like five to babysit the babies. I can multitask. <clears throat> like I'll be in the chat and I'm just listening. I can type and talk at the same time. But it'd be the high speed <laughs> trolls on Thursdays, and you'd be keeping up with them. I'd be keeping up and then messaging back. Like I don't never call in on Thursday. It's a big panel though, like. Q is a Takashi Six Nine level troll. Yep, facts. At least oh, I admit it. No, she's Naruto full. Uh, she's Naruto full sage mode. Uh, <laughs> nah, Kayla <laughs> muted me. Kayla, Kayla muted me while I was trolling on Monday. That wasn't even right. <laughs> Damn, that's. Did you cut her off? Huh? Did you cut her off? No, I was just trying to sing some tunes, I'm, and she I'm muted me in the middle of my song. Yo, Did I didn't hear him. Yo, go off? You know the weirdest thing about no, going through all of these so pictures that I ain't seen in a long time. Hold on, Tom. Did we have somebody trying to play the guitar? The other, the other stream. We had somebody yeah. try to come on and play the guitar. That was, that was Saturday. Saturday. That was the Saturday. weirdest thing yeah. about going through um some of these it was pictures, pretty good too, is that I see I see so many of my dead homies, bro. Damn. Mm. It's crazy, man. Mm. Hey, Anton. I just buried a brother about a year ago today. You want to talk about somebody that had all kinds of problems with that situation, so I feel you. Like, I see so many dudes that I grew up with, or, and this is one of the reasons why I never thought that I was going to make it to be a certain age, because 
a lot of guys that I grew up with, they just died early. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, now, you know what I'm saying? You hear people talk about you on the Internet that's really cornballs in real life and junk. It's like, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, the stuff that I didn't seen and been through, like, this is points on the board. It's just tripped out to see how many dudes that I used to rock with just no longer here. And I just haven't – I haven't been through this junk in, like, more than 10 years. Like, it's just crazy seeing this junk. Hey, Anton, do you know internally sometimes you be thinking, man, y'all don't want no parts of this. I got no, three combat honestly, I grew up in the 80s in Flint, Michigan. You I'm going to tell you, honestly. Hey, you from Flint. I, so, I mean, no, I'm just saying, Anton from Detroit, think about this. Don't you think in your head, you don't say it, because, you know, we adults. But don't you think in your head, y'all don't want no parts of this. Seriously, you don't. You don't honestly, think that sometimes? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Um, I don't because the goal was always to grow up and like get married for me and like grow up old and you know what I'm saying, have a kid and love life. I never wanted to be like in the hood or nothing like that. I didn't want to be hard. Like I wanted to be a nerd. And so, you know, the goal was to get away from all that toxicity. And so it's like now that you out of it, you know, it's like you won. Like no matter hey, Anton, I can tell you something to your love. I have a comic book collection. <laughs> hey, Kojak, you know what's so funny? Give me that picture of Maris. I was just talking about that. that's right there. See, Kojak know who I am in real life. Like this, is my homie Maris right here that's right next to me. Dude got killed in the streets, bro. The dude that's right next to me. Look over. Right there. Yep. Dude is dude was so talented. This guy right here, dead in the mug, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy, man, seeing all of these dudes that's dead. Shout out to you, uh, Kojak. You know you know what life was like, bro. Yeah. It's tripping, yeah. man. Shout out to my brother, Derek Johnson. I, I lost him a year ago today, actually. Mm -hmm. so, Look at that dudes in this picture. We was riding deep, bro. We was really <laughs> – we was going to get it. We shouldn't have been taking pictures. <laughs> We was in Bell Isle. Should have been in class. No, nah, we was in the car. We was about to go. No, I said you should have been in class. Though. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I used to go to Bell Isle. Nah, we wasn't on no. Well, yeah, we was on Bell Isle too. <laughs> but back then, Bell Isle wasn't as good as it is now. They still got that giant slide out there. Nah, nah not that I'm aware of. That's been closed. Yeah. This is tripped out, bro. Okay. Look at me. Look. Yeah. That's what you get for being in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you so wrong. <laughs> it looks like I had on your shirt, but that's clearly my shirt. No, Whatever. That's, that's my shirt. Anyway, so what did y'all think about the show last night? That shit was wild. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was at work. I wasn't able to watch it. I just watched the rest of it early today. I yeah, did. It was wild. Spicy. You said you watched the rest of it? Yeah, I was missing like an hour and I watched the rest of it. Like I missed all the chaos. I See, what are you doing? Yeah, so we right? definitely got up out of there. Man. Yeah, I had to shut that junk down. That junk was going left ASAP. If you watched the show last night, Mike, you would understand. Yeah, that sucker went, that, that sucker took three right. That was all the way back. This is bad. This is your arch nemesis, Rita. Six is shooting from the logo, though. I'll tell you that much. I'm going to have to check it out. Yo, to keep it above. Anton, can I ask you a question right quick, man? I mean, because normally you run your show like tight, you know what I'm saying, like a submarine. What happened? I mean, you you normally shut the time before it get that bad. So I'm just asking, why didn't you shut it down? If why you don't mind. shut it down? Yeah, I mean, because it was your show. So I'm just asking. You're talking about um, from a content the piece, the piece night? Yeah. I'm doing it from a content creator type of point of view because I'm thinking about starting my own show. I've been buying equipment and everything else. So I'm just wondering, what would you do now, hindsight 2020? I wouldn't do nothing different. I would let it play out. I think some of the best situations come out of chaos. I was uh, talking to somebody actually this morning who I'm supposed to have beef with and we best of friends. You know what I'm saying? We cool. Life is good. 
And I don't think we ever would have got to that point had we not went through a lot of uh, a lot of the Terminal. rambling sometimes. So, I, I mean, I think that everything eventually works out. I I don't I just don't I just think you need to we need to play it out and see what happened. So it worked out the way it's supposed to. But don't you feel like you learn people from the most in, them, in those type of moments? Um, I think people learn more about themselves in that moment. And most situations, I already know who people are. Like, I know exactly how, how, you know, like I said, I feel like I can tell who a person is, especially women, almost immediately after they, you know, after I meet them. I don't think it's hard to figure out who a woman is after you meet her. I don't understand why it's so difficult. So do you need to meet a person on, and do you need to meet them in person or... If you just sit down on the show and talk to him for a while. No, then, I think that yeah. you got to meet him in person. If you meet okay. him in person, mm-hmm. it's much different than what you meet him online. Okay. One thousand. Like a persona. Do you, do y'all think, do you and Rita think I would have been that way in person when y'all met me? Do you, do we think what? That we would have known who you are in person? No. What y'all assumed from me. I guess I'll find out in April. Um, I didn't really assume anything. Um, I always thought that you was like really like cool on the show. But again, I feel like in person it's ten times better. So you like a lot like yeah, everything cooler nice, right? and you're more nice and you know what I'm saying, like really great to be around, if that makes sense. Oh, thank you. Yo, I think I think Q is trolling in person too. No, nah, I do troll in person. I'm goofy as nope. king. I was how she is right here. How she, she, yeah, she's the same. She's the exact same as she is in person. I'm gonna troll you too. I'm gonna be making sure you ain't drinking the whole bar, Mike. I'm, I'm gonna be trolling King. Uh, uh, King yeah, was you, a security uh, guard that night. You, Q, you, you just like my wife, I swear. <laughs> good thing. <laughs> Yo, you know King was funny part up. is. He was going up some like pictures. someone was coming for us mm-hmm. that whole night. Uh, some of these dudes turned out to be gay that I'm looking at in these pictures. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what <laughs> that so what's the picture? Let's see if we can tell. Hey, your mic not muted, Anton. <laughs> 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 Just in case, bro. <laughs> Some of these dudes turned out to be on the other side, Let which is see. cool. They out there standing on Woodward yeah, right see. now. Now nah, you know, nah, because I would listen. You should have known when they had open toes shoes up. My platform will have people being hunted down. I'm not showing y'all these pictures. They probably do they look the same now as they do in those pictures? Oh yep. And if I showed them, some people would know immediately. (laughs) Wow. Do you have any the friends that you knew back then? It like how many of them do you guys still rock with? Like you cool with? Most of them. Oh, wow. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a, I'll give you an example. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Lauren. Lauren, I used to jump up on my platform and stuff and all of that. Actually, I just talked to her today too. But um, I don't know who she is. Lauren oh, Melissa. I don't know if y'all know who she is. Yes, yeah, sir. Was she ever yeah. on uh, Lapeef? She was on a few shows. Yep. Isn't she the familiar. basketball player? Nah, she wasn't a basketball player. Oh, okay. But she um um. Her brother, the only way I know her is through her brother. Me and her brother have been friends for about 25, 26 years. Twins, right? Huh? No, not that brother. She got another brother. My jacket. I remember. And um, me and her brother just been cool for 25, 26 years. And she was always just a little sister. And then, you know, he was like, yo, time, you know, take her under your wing or whatever. And then that's how that's how I kind of manifested it. So yeah, I'll be friends with people forever. You know what I'm saying? I'll be cool with people for a long time. We be doing a we be doing a lot of stuff. Matter of fact, that guy, the guy that I'm talking about, her brother, is the guy that introduced me to the guy that owned the Porsche dealership unexpectedly that I wound up buying my Porsche from. So, you know, it all works out. That's why I nurture relationships forever, man. I believe in building relationships. I don't believe in um, you know, I don't believe in just just you know, rant random people in your life. If I rock with you, I rock with you for the lifetime. So, yeah, yeah, you bet. You know, definitely who it is. a Michigan behavior, bro. That's yep. definitely a Michigan behavior. 
I, so I rock with that. people. I roll with people, bro. I don't switch if up. If I'm good, I'm good. If I ain't good, I ain't going to never be good with you. Yep, I don't switch up. I don't do none of that. Uh, I nah, rock none people. of that. None of that. If you dive off, I'm diving off with you. But if I ain't fucking with you, I ain't fucking. So I, I have a question for you. It kind of um, feeds into what was happening last night. How many people do y'all think should participate um, in y'all relationships? Like, do y'all have people that y'all talk to? Like, yo, that's my homie, you know, when I'm having problems or whatever. Hell no. My dog. No, I, uh, no one should know your business. It should be between you and your partner. That's it. Yeah. Like, I just can't do it. Because I watch uh, how my parents' relationship went down when they went outside their marriage and started telling other people their business. What did and it go like, bad? Bad again? What did it go bad? It went very bad because it was other people's opinions coming into marriage they didn't know the hundred percent of the truth about. Mm. That's what my parents too. All you heard was that po- that person's later. point of view, and it went to family members, and then, like I said, he was in the church, so it went to the pastor. You was in the talk to the church, house man. and everything. You, everything. Church. I hear you say about your church is bad. The church, uh oh. But he yeah, does have man. a but he does have a point though. He does yeah, have a point. They have a marriage. They would have these old pastors that don't know what they're talking about and they'll sit down in the office with them uh the, the pastor will come to the house and have the whole family in the front with this man with these pictures <laughs> so you look like an rb singer i though. was just about to say that he just came <laughs> out of, uh, man. do y'all realize that he probably this, was part, this was like with the goatee and everything do y'all realize he, that? Yeah, he, he was a part like, of high five? He looked like Aaron, bro. Sit back up. You yeah, look he looked like, like Aaron. Aaron. No lie. Hold he on. looked like Aaron. Like Aaron. <laughs> like, put on side by side. I, I think <laughs> 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 you can touch me. Check it out. Do y'all realize that? Check it out. Do y'all realize that I was in middle school taking this picture? Aaron, hey, so, Aaron, that means hey, if you, you get a beard, that means you look like anti. That's what I'm saying. So when I say that I was a grown man when I was younger, I was a yeah. grown, grown man. Yeah, you look like you was older. I ain't going to even lie to you, Aaron. You do look just like that old bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. My bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Turn the cam off. I was a grown, grown man. Call Maury. <laughs> now, back to, the, back to what you asked, though, Todd. I don't. The word "participate" is not the word I would I would use. It's it's more like my circle is different. My circle is more like an accountability circle. Uh-huh. So so if I go off the rails, they the ones that's gonna reel me back. You want to get blocked? Yeah, but when you when how do they know you going off the rails though? Shit, we typically gonna go have a drink. And you tell them that you off the rails. How do you, how do you they, say they that? know? They know. They know me. Just like I know them. So if you if they hit me up out the blue, like yo man, let's go have a drink. Something went down, and I'm gonna hold oh, them bro. accountable the way they're gonna hold me accountable. I believe that that's the way a real friendship go. Now, if we are talking about a pastor, nah, bro, I'm good. Well, no, no, no. But that's in a general sense, though, right? I'm talking about like. How much of your information do you share about your relationship with your homies? But, but see, that's the kicker, though, yeah, because like yeah. when things go when things go wrong, you never tell what they you only tell what they did you they what they did to you. You never tell them what you do to them. That's right, not yeah. true. A real friend already know what you did. Right. Thank you. That's not oh, like, not necessarily. necessarily. No, a real friend that I know you for years, man. I got a I have a friend that I've known since I was five, bro. And he literally told me everything that I did wrong to the, you know, for me, I was married for 27 years and I got divorced three years ago. And he pretty much nailed it. Now, I wouldn't admit to it, but he was right. <laughs> he was right. Like, uh, yeah, we're not just talking about regular acquaintance kind of kind of guys. We're talking about, like, the, the dude that you... you Yo, the, yo, dude, yo, homeboy, like yeah, man, I, my boy, that you but trust with your life. Side, but it's only one side of the story, though. That's not. Well, no, I knew, I knew old boy for forty six years, so he knew me for 
46 years. Yeah. When we That's used to get numbers, I used to get chicks' whole addresses. <laughs> <laughs> so you could pull up in the Buick. <laughs> They didn't have GPS back then, so they had to whip out. She gave me her pager, her home, her cell, and her address. Not the pager. Beep, beep. She did. Hey, hey, Anton, you still know how to read a map? Yep. That's VCR. I'm imagine that. What about you, Mike Doug? Yeah. All right, all right. Why are you talking about VCRs like that? That is the VCR error. The map VCRs are great. Yeah, map press. You better rewind that tape back to the beginning for your parents get home. Nah. Remember, <laughs> remember back in the day when you had like a whole CD case in your car? Yeah. Actually, I still got that whole CD case. I do too, that but black, I still got that my black CD John with the, the plastic in the Exactly what happened. Yeah. You, you said it yeah, with the hell yeah, cross CD. Yeah. You sit down flip blue, like what am I in the mood for today? Wait, yeah, with the hell crow. Yeah, the single stack of the wide one with like the four. Hey, yeah. bro, I can literally go upstairs right now and go get that CD case. <laughs> there used to change, there used to change <laughs> CDs at the stoplights. Yeah. <laughs> the audio quality better with CDs anyway. I ain't going to lie to you. In 93, yeah. when they came out with that six disc CD changer, oh, man, fuck, I was man, mad. Man, it was really <laughs> bad when you scratched it up too bad where it was skipped. Tom, what you have in the trunk? Ain't nothing ruin the mood more than a skip in a song that you listen to, whether it be a CD player or something. Yeah, I pair of 12s in a trunk. I, I had okay. Ken Wood 14 in my trunk. I had a Miles 626 LX. Nice. 14s. Yeah, Man, I had a fucking Toyota Corolla. So. <laughs> I had a Ford Festiva. That's even worse. <laughs> hey, my, first, my first car was a Plymouth Horizon. Dudes in the army used to pick up the back of like two of them will lift the back of my car up, turn it sideways. That's fucked up. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, at least you didn't get taped inside of a sleeping bag and hung upside down inside your dorm. Mm -mm. Nah. nah. Yeah, that happened, worse, by nah, the it's way. Even, no. It's even worse getting taped to the cot. Yeah. Hazing. Yeah, yeah hazing is fun. evil, but it's still fun. No, just first time you go to the field where we was, they drag you through the mud. Y'all talking first about military talk again? And last time. No. I'm backing off, Island Girl. My bad. <laughs> Q, do you remember do you remember the topics in order, Q? Because they be Hell all no. don't let, don't let these uh military people get up. The first topic is basic training. <laughs> No, not, I don't remember last night. It was so much going on last night. I ain't gonna lie to you, Island Girl. I think you held your uh I think you held your uh held your own. You and uh what's her name? Kayla. You and Kayla, I think y'all held it down. I'm you not mean gonna lie. Kay. You mean Kay. Or Kay. So. No, 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 I meant Kayla. Oh. I'm talking oh. about when uh Anton was running uh, was running that and uh I can't remember uh old girl's name is. I, I kind of watch y'all periodically. And uh, it came up when you said that, uh, you know, sometimes women get catty or a little jealous whenever they're in the same platform and stuff. That, well, was, that, was, Q and that, that was, was Q and six. That was today. That was Q and six. Oh, that was me, six, and Rita this morning. this morning. Oh, yeah. That, okay, my bad. I'm, you know, yeah. drunk and shit. <laughs> yeah, that was me, six, and Rita. <laughs> No, yeah, I, but I mean that's what I was talking about. It it, it seemed like y'all kind of y'all kept it together, and I, you know, really to tell you the truth, because I've seen you, uh, Courtney, Kay, and Kayla, and when y'all get on a tangent, Lord have mercy. Oh, oh no, no, they go through it, bro, and they smart enough to go through it for a long time. <laughs> oh no, no. I, th I think Courtney's kind of backed off from from how she was uh, several months ago. Uh, six was last night was more like Courtney would have been about six months, uh, three months ago. She, yes, sir, it, it, it hey, just, I gotta go back and watch this. Yeah, I wasn't watching six months ago. Man, they got catty. Oh, they got bro, <laughs> bro, and I got six sisters, and I'm telling you. I felt like I was at home when I was watching that, man. I was laughing, smoking my pipe, having a bowl. The only thing I was missing was popcorn. 
Yeah, funny. No, I get my jalapeno. I get my jalapeno Cheetos. Now, what I would have preferred <laughs> was for them to to do that same thing, but take turns going back and forth instead of talking at the same time. Yeah, because it got to a point to where we couldn't understand the word. I think we all. They said no sway. To everybody, everybody, pretty much for the most part, captain and said they ain't gonna tell nobody nothing. At all, um, and then oh, one person was like, "I might tell somebody." So, yeah, no, I didn't I'm, say that. I'm kind of on the fence about it. Like, like really sensitive details, no, but some things maybe, and it has to be somebody like I really, really trust. So it's right. kind of like it got to be just tell everything, or in yeah, yeah, like what yeah. Mike was saying, I would have to say my side as well. I think that is something that some people don't do. Right, they only mention what they did wrong. And they don't mention what they did in the the argument, so the person has um, what's the word? Both sides how of the bad, story, so there can't be how um, bad do the arguments and fights get? It how depends, it man. Because here's the thing, or here's another thing: what you contributed to the situation. Mm-hmm. I'm not much of an arguer. You know so what? I, I kind of like the fact that I don't see y'all every day, and I can get on here. And you can call me to task. I mean, because I can't take you checking me personal. Maybe you've seen something in me that lets me know that I probably need the zig instead of zag. Move a different kind of way, man. And, mm-hmm. and it's kind of refreshing. I, I know that sounds weird, but it's kind of refreshing to me that I can get on here with cats that, you know, like-minded, but we don't know each other. And you'd be like, you know what? You know what, Joey P, man? You're moving wrong, bro. And it makes me feel a little better. Because they I'm don't sorry, have that, but maybe you know, I'm just getting old. But they here's another the highest thing. investment into you. But yeah, here's another thing, you. though. Here's another thing, though, brother. Um, it's a, especially a problem when you're telling other people about a problem that you're having hmm. that the partner don't even know about yet. Yeah, yeah. You mm-hmm. have a point. Give me an example. What's the problem? Like, let's say. All right, let's just go with a simple one. He's not pay- he or she's not paying attention to me or this, that, and the third, right? No, go with something a little more real. That is real. No, 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 no. Hey, Mike, 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 I got you. Hey, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you, Anton, because I just went through this. I got you. You ready? Okay. Yep. I didn't realize that I had post traumatic stress disorder until I went through my divorce, and my sister, my older sister, said, and these are the words, and I apologize for putting it the way she put it, but she for Flint. So, Anton, you got to bear with me. I know. She said, motherfucker, there's something wrong with you, and you need to go see a psychiatrist. Mm. So, mm. she booked me an appointment with a VA psychiatrist. I went to the psychiatrist, and a whole entire time, man, this was three years ago, I did not know, I did not believe, not know, I did not believe that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. You know what she said after 30 minutes? You do? Yeah, no, she said, yeah, you fucked up. That mm. was her words, and she's a clinical psychiatrist. And the whole entire really? time. So that's when he said, when, and I'm bringing it up, Anton, because it's true and you can look it up and everything else. Like, no, I mean, I believe you. You ain't going to just. Yeah, make but it you know what I'm saying? But that's when you don't realize it because, really, to tell you the truth, you be, when you're with yourself inside yourself, you're, you're so plugged into you, man, dog. You have to understand, man, I spent 15 years in the military. Six of those was in the Middle East. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I have a substantial amount of combat tours, and I thought it was regular. Plus, I grew up in Flint, too, man. So, you know, I spent a majority of my time in a violent situation, so I thought I was good. I thought I was cool. Think, so about I, how, think about how messed up you have to be in the head to think that you're cool when you spend most of your time angry and violent. And I'm surprised my ex-wife lasted 27 <clears throat> years. So wait, wait, wait. So I got a question. So I got a question. I'm still, I'm still going. So I got a really good question about moving in together, right? But like, mm-hmm. you said 27 years. Yes, sir. Who was the straw that broke the camel's back? Why y'all get divorced after 27 years? Uh, she said I wasn't listening to her, and she just uh, achieved her PhD, and she said I wasn't listening to her, and uh, I was like, I am trying to listen to you, and then. We did a year and a half of marriage counseling, and 
too little, too late, Anton. I, I don't know what the straw was, you but it was straw broke up over communication. Yes, sir. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She said. But, she, but she said Anton, Anton, hold, on, hold on. She said she, we needed to take a break. And me being the man that I am, I said, well, if you put me out the house, I'm not coming back. And she put me out. Oh, no. See, see that's one thing that I don't play with. Mm -mm. See, here's the thing. At, at our worst, like at our most, like, you know, are we really having it out right now? Yes, sir. Y'all had bad times? I'm not, not sleeping in my bed. Uh, yeah. yeah, no. yeah. She, she asked me to leave and I left, man. And Rita right. be like, well, I guess we just going to sleep here together. I'm not leaving. Next thing you know, it's. <laughs> well, I mean, Rita, and I'm she, dead. she asked me to leave and I left. And I had enough respect for her after 27 years that I told her if I leave, I'm not coming back. She did ask me to come back, but see y'all so had good, no, 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 no. That's too much pride. Still cordial right now. It was a lot of pride. In oh, there. we're very cordial. Yeah. So 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 do you think that y'all could get back together? No. Nah. Seems like there's a lot of pride and ego. Nah. No, <laughs> I got too much pride, man. Anton, no, come on, bro. You from Detroit? Nah, man. No. Nah. Why? Why so much pride? I'm just curious. The reason why is because I told her, look, when I say something, I mean it, and I mean it from my soul. I said, if you put me out and we don't try to work on this while we're still together, then I'm done. Yeah, you know but, so wait, 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 27 years just for that's, pride? That's a long time. Yeah, it is, bro, but you know what, man? You know what? You're going to always, you're going to always die on the hill that you want. No. 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 Mm. No, well, I, I might be wrong, that. bro. No. And then again, you know what, man? We still cool. So it's only been three years. <laughs> mm -mm. I may change my mind, possibly. Do you Don't feel know. like communication changed when you retired from the military when you came back? Yeah, we spent too much time together. I was I was a much better person when I was in combat. No, see, listen, here's the thing. You know what I, listen. The pandemic showed y'all who y'all all really was, too. When everything, when y'all had to sit together for a long time and y'all realized y'all didn't know each other. Y'all didn't have no distractions anymore. Now, you don't know what I do for a living, Anton. So, no, I'm not uh, talking about you, Kevin. Oh, oh, I'm not, okay. I'm not okay. talking about you by yourself. I'm just talking okay. about people in general. Because you said that it was, it was three years ago. So that was before the pandemic. So this don't even apply to you specifically, right? Okay. But just in general sense... When me and Rita, because, you know, I was out in the bottle a lot, a lot. Like, you know, I'm always really social. And me and Rita has already always been close and spent a lot of time together. But when we start, you know, when we basically got locked down or whatever, like, we've always been together. Like, it was never a problem. Like, we didn't start arguing. It didn't turn, it, turn out to be an issue or anything like that. And people don't even really know the person that they that they sleeping next to a lot of time. It's just a formality. You wake up, you go to work, you come to bed, you might have sex, whatever, whatever, so on and so forth. <laughs> it's just a thing. It's not something that y'all actually intentional about. You're not in the moment. You don't even really listen. If somebody say I love you, you just hurry up and say I love you back really quickly. It's not a real relationship. It's a formality. It's just a normalcy. And then that's why when y'all get thrown out of y'all out of y'all comfort zone and you got to do something different, like when everybody had to be locked down together. Wait a minute, what the heck is this? And who is this person? And I got to actually talk to your monkey butt? Nah. And y'all y'all get through out of y'all comfort zone and it turn it turn into something else. So yeah, yeah lot, I think I think expose a lot of people don't actually like the person they're with because they had all these distractions that they could turn to, but now they had to sit down with each other for a long period of time. And then you realize, like, you know what? I really can't stand your ass. But I don't understand how y'all let pride take y'all that fur down, though. You know what? When you start sacrificing a lot of your time doing stuff for the community or whatever, you, I don't know, man. You know, it takes a, a, a certain type of person to do some of the things that it... You know what, bro? Let me tell you something. I, I, was, I was military for a long time. I'm a civil servant. I clean water for a living at a time. I, I never had those breaks that you're talking about. I'm always doing stuff. What do you mean with the breaks? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, the, the, I don't mean breaks like 
somebody giving me something. I mean, like breaks and time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you know, just I can do whatever I want to. I've always been extremely vigilant about how I do my time. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, bro. I literally wake up, I work out, I run, I go to work. I, then I get on this, the, the new thing, uh, to do the platforms with y'all and, and try to uh, get my channel together and everything else. I go to bed, wake up and rinse and repeat, but I've always been a civil servant, so I'm very regimented. Right. So I'm not, when I say, when I say time, I'm not talking about like freedom because I never wanted freedom. I like being regimented. I love having the things that I have to go on. And if you ask Mike Dub, and think about it, man. You wouldn't have went back into the military, Mike Dub, if you didn't like the regiment. It keeps you grounded and sane. Structure. A little bit. The structure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The structure. So that's what I meant by that, Anton. I'm not trying to deflect from the point. but No, 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 no. Listen, your experience is your experience. Yes, I, would, I would never discount your thoughts or your experience because we all we all come from a different space and we all develop the way that we think based off of what we've experienced in our life. So I would never try to discount that at all, not even a little bit. Yeah, but that that's what it was. And me being so structured, that's what happened to the 27 years. If you really put it together in time, you don't think about it. You already know what happened. You don't think you could have adjusted at all, though? Nah, bro. I think it was no. too late. I no, was, bro. Even if he could have, I think it was too late at that point. Yeah, and, and you also have to understand it's the type of you have to have to do what I did in the United States Marine Corps. You don't ask you you don't ask questions. No, I, do. I listen, you get that though. But listen, we gotta we gotta be open to evolving and change. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm trying to do right now, that time. That's what I'm trying to do right now. That's but why I'm on the question, cousin. Are you doing it because of the circumstances that you find yourself in now? Or are no, you I'm doing it because of the mistakes that I made in the past, and I'm trying to be better because now. Because of your circumstances, right? Like, right. are you being forced to do it because you don't like no. it? You want to be better? Or are you doing it because you actually just, you know what I'm saying, want to change? No, I'm doing it because I actually want to change. But, but, but here's the thing, Anton. Sometimes people got to hit rock bottom and go through shit for them to realize they need to change. Some, yeah, people, are, some, some people are stubborn like that. Yeah, but yeah. you you got to pick and choose the times that you're going to hit that point. Like, that's got to be something that's not related to the people that you with. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, listen, bro. Again, I'm in June. It'll be 18 years. And at that time, I'll bend and turn 40 because I'll turn 40 in April. And with all of the things that we got going on and stuff like that in life, it's no way that I'm going to let something small and silly prevent me from having my chick land next to me. That just sounds crazy to me. And I'm starting to realize I can't I on this don't platform. Don't care about herself half the time. I'll be thinking to myself, no, are you safe? Are you good? You know what I'm saying? It's century mode on the car to make sure ain't nobody around your car or whatever. Like, I don't even like her Rita don't even like being in the crib by herself when I'm out of town. She like, yo, talk to me on the phone or whatever, so on and so forth. It's just like a, it's a real connection. So the possibility of her living by herself is just crazy to me. That's insane. I don't think I, I, I can't do it, bro. I can't let her be by herself because she need me. You know what I'm saying? Like the best version of her is me being with herself. I can't let her, you know what I'm saying, be in that type of environment by herself. I just can't do it, man. It's just that I can't imagine it. I agree with you, Anton. Sometimes you should have zigged and instead I zagged, man. Right? But you know what? The thing is, is that life is a grown man's game. So you have to learn as you move, man. It's just not checking. I get you. And, I, you know, I own my mistakes. And that's the reason why I'm moving a different way. That's the reason why I'm on y'all network instead of on somebody else's network where they exceptionally negative. I can name them, but 
They don't need no, shout no, out. We ain't gonna do that. We, we don't want to throw no shade. No, no, I'm just saying they don't need the shout out. But I'm just saying if I was moving differently, it would be a different conversation. That's all I meant by that, man. I, I guess the thing that I'm wondering, and I'm not again, this is not pointed towards you, cousin. Mm -hmm. um, just y'all in general, when y'all think about y'all relationships, everybody on here. And let's say you have a breakup or you go through a difficult time in life or something like that, or, you know, you and your chick go through something. Is it not devastating for y'all if y'all chick walk out the door or something like that? Like, is that? Yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of things that even through the bad times that I wish I would have done differently. Or reacted, to, like what? or reacted to the situation differently. Like what, bro? I shouldn't have left. If you want to know the truth, I should have just ignored what you said, and, and I shouldn't have left. If you want to know the truth, Anton, that's what I should have did. It's not too late. Yep. Well, of course not. Late. I can fix it, and I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. But you, you know what? It's kind of like ice skating uphill. You know how women can get when they get mad at you. You got to make it up to her. I'm yeah. trying. I yeah. said I'm ice skating uphill there, Island Gal. I'm ice skating uphill. Sometimes you, you just got to simp, sir. Yeah, you bro. It. What's wrong with grabbing a, a, a I mean, jukebox? Get the old school. Play like the jukebox and bringing the flowers. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, bro. From my perspective, the way I see it, sometimes they be right. I mean, just, I, I agree. Be true, like real. Sometimes women is right. Like, and you don't have to necessarily let the thing that I look at Rita as, I'll put it like this, because I am very much a man's man in every way, especially in our relationship. I look at her as a tool in addition to being my wife, right? She's somebody that is my first line of defense. Because if I'm off, I look to her to say, yo, Anton. You could have played that a little bit differently or Anton, you got to, you know what I'm saying? He didn't need that. You know, I know that some people need that tough talking, but that guy might have been. She's my first line of defense for my own well-being. And so I use her that way. I look at her that way. And so I'm not so prideful that I can't take insight and advice from the people that actually have value to add into the conversation that wants the best for me. So it's not just being a man and saying, doing what I say. Is me and me being the man and taking wise counsel so that I can make a more informed decision. And that ain't simping. That's just making sure that you're getting the best results possible by utilizing the people that you put around you in your life to let them do their job. I don't see how that's simping. No, that's counseling. I don't see how that's simping either. No, it's not. It's counseling. And you get to choose whether you want to listen to it or not. And that's the reason why I listen to y'all conversations, man. There's a lot of brothers on here especially like sway uh anton aaron O. have been watching y'all for about a year man like literally and I, I just started plugging in and, and and calling in and everything else man but man y'all y'all bring up some very valid points without me getting triggered or wanting to produce an argument because you talk about what it takes to be a man not a black man not a strong man not a white man just do Sometimes you got to take a deep breath and ask yourself, what would be the best benefit for you and what kind of outcome are you looking for? And that's what I hear when I walk, when I listen to these parents. Mm -hmm. I think we all here for different reasons, but we all learning and growing, you know? I think yeah. that simping is, um, simping, in my opinion, it lost all its time to just to get the validation of women. Yep. Or doing something just, to, you know what I'm saying? Doing anything for out of character. Well, no, it's just it's telling it's saying anything, you but, know what I'm saying, to try to get a woman to 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 agree with you or thinking that she rocking with you just because you saying yes or no, or you just yeah. giving in for the sake of giving in. Like but, and, I think that it's times that you do need to have backbone, right? Because you don't want to be a little little punk. But I don't think simping is everything in the way that we often describe it. And try to make it out to be on these platforms. I don't think that's what it is. Simping, simping is someone idolizing mediocre pussy. <laughs> but I think it's also lost context these that's, days. That's, that's, what it is. that's the abbreviation of someone idolizing mediocre poontang. But I also think it's lost context. Like 
I'm I sorry, think it's man. context because That's there's a lot of people who they'll call you a simp because they don't agree with what you're doing or how True. you approach a certain situation with women. True. I believe I believe simping is when you do something for a woman and you wake up and say, the fuck is wrong with you? That's what I think you simping. No, when you, no, have to, no. when you have to judge yourself. No, no, no this is simping. I'm going to break it down for y'all real quick. Simping is just this simple. There's a woman named Stacy. You're interested whoa, in Stacy. Stacy has no interest in you. She don't return your calls. You're blowing it off. You're always hitting her up. Hey, how you doing? This, 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 and that. She mm-hmm. ain't responding. You do the utmost. You mm-hmm. do everything in the book yeah. to try to get her attention. Yeah. And she finally say, I'll give you a shot. Yeah, you a simp. Yep. Yeah. That make you a simp. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I need this refrigerator moved. You're going to come that and sounds move the That sounds like that. I, I think every definition yep. we came up with is true. <laughs> I think everything we all said is what simping really is. The being the problem. food guy, it's just that true. being the, the food guy the and the phone is simping. Yeah. I say. Oh, by the way, hey Anton, I will just want to shout this out, bro. I'm green pill, bro. All day, red yeah, man. Hell yeah. with that red, blue, purple. I don't care. Black, I'm orange, bad. yellow all colors. Green pill I'm all green day. Pill. I'm swallowing that money pill. Yes, sir. I'm great. Gentlemen, I just want to make sure that Anton understands that he started a new movement. I'm green pill. If it don't make it, uh, I think I think life's better over here. Yes, if it ain't about no money, I don't want to talk about that junk. That exactly. So I, green I, pill, yeah. you started it. I'm gonna be that. People, people be arguing and fighting over something that don't even make no money. Like at least if you're gonna fight over something. Tell me you're fighting over a deal or real estate or you're competing for something or you're trying to get a new contract or something. Don't tell me you're just angry at a dude just for the sake of being angry because you're emotional. That's silly to me. That's crazy to me. Well, it's a lot of people that just can't handle a lot of the content. And they hear something and it goes in their sub- subconscious mind and they just go crazy with it. I can yeah. never understand that. Feeling it's it's a lot of people that are- time getting outside of their emotions, man. Get outside your skin. Do some reading. Read some Frederick Douglass. Man, find out why uh, Frederick Roosevelt started the Social Security Act and the reason why Nixon mm-hmm. took advantage of it. That's that's the thing that people need. To, you need to understand why people are motivated by knowledge. But I also want to know why is it some people are just so stuck on people have to agree with me. Ooh, oh, that monolithic they're, attitude? They're, to, uh, they're, they're self-centered. Are. They're self-centered. Sway, what were you about to say? What are you thinking, bro? A lot of people like empathy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I th- I was thinking about a couple things, like the whole simping. We, you know, basically just putting someone on a pedestal over you, and you're like thinking of them as a higher person to you. And I guess with this whole pill thing, it's like the red pill isn't necessarily like hating women. I think it's just understanding reality and taking that shit in, and then adjusting mm-hmm. and moving accordingly. And then I guess to Mike Dove's point about um. Why that's does everybody? What it's to be. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Like I said, a lot of these content creators just hold on to it because it's for money, you know, entertainment, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And it's the Jerry Springer of the YouTube space, you know, it could be seen as a joke, but you got these spaces who kind of run with it and understand, yep. you know, we're, we're more on reality and you just accept the reality of things between men and women, you know. So, mm-hmm. but to Mike Dell's point about, I guess, why do people feel entitled that their opinion is right or you know everyone needs to hear their opinion or you can't respect anybody else's opinion you know what i mean it's the ego a lot of us got egos that we haven't dropped you know a lot of us can't admit that we're wrong or we don't know it all and you know it can get wrapped up in our emotions and i think uh we can see that a lot in our black communities because you know we got we a lot of us got egos that we haven't been able to drop you know what i mean and this is just this is our platform like i said mike Dove, we you're welcome here you know you love our black women just as much as us, so we're not going to shame against you. But you know, it's mainly black men on I these shows. We got, a, we got a lot of egos on these shows. We, you know, Where my Koofy meme at? We've been dropping our egos slowly, hey, but surely, Sway, but I think that's Sway. our biggest problem. Sway, I want to care less. Hmm? I said no. I want to care less. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I said, I'm, well, I'm talking about like why we see a lot of these egos in this space. Yeah. Because, like, we're talk- mainly, you know, it's a lot of black men and women, and we all got these big ass egos, and we, you know, slowly but surely we've been dropping them, and uh, you know, no. self-proven. Not just egos, but that's what I was thinking. As well. 
True. Hey, Security. Sway, my ego ain't never put a dime in my pocket, not even a penny. No, it's uh, the true enemy. It's the true enemy. Sometimes that make you broke. It is the true enemy. Yep. True enemy of progress, man. Yo, Tamika, if you so bored, bring your ass up here, chica. <laughs> get, get some feminine energy up. You just saying born, born. Get your ass up here then. Yeah, we got another square. No, look, man, I, I'm glad we're on the, we got on that su- subject of simp. To me, these labels are counterproductive to any type of movement, right? So you call a guy that, that does what he can to get the attention of a female a simp. You call a guy who uh, uh, who's nice to, who's just a nice all-around guy, a beta. Then you got these other guys that, that, that are alphas. To me, a dude is a dude. He's going to do, he's going to move the way he moves. Does it really matter? No, not really. Some chicks Especially if you don't mess with your bag. Wait, did y'all watch right, the show? Did right. y'all watch the show last night? I did. Can, can I you update us? I, I, I was working. Can you yeah, update us? No, you I watched it too, man. I think it does matter. I, I think do. everything yeah. matters in context. I 100% yeah. think it matters. I, I really don't. I, I really don't think it matters. Like, how does it truly affect you as a person? How someone right. Let me answer your question. I'm going oh, I'm yeah. I'm to I'm I'm bring it back to something that's a little bit more controversial, right? Let's talk about gay rights, mm. right? Oh, Lord. I'm going to say what I say. It is what it is. Let's talk <laughs> about it, right? Yeah, and that. I'm not even talking about gay rights specifically. Not that. But like, I say it's a, a lot of times things are a slippery slope. You got things happening right now. I see it over and happen in California where they're talking about, um, you know, people can't help who they are when they're born. Right? Mm-hmm. I know where you're going with this. Right? Oh, Lord. I know exactly where you're going with this. Y'all want to y'all go here? No, I want to hear it. I want to I know, go ahead. I know where you're going with, when they going with this. So now the now the now the narrative or now what they're trying to say is coming right if back. You can't help who who would it, you know, what you're attracted to when you're born. If you truly can't help it because you feel the way you feel, then why shouldn't we legalize bestiality? Or pedophilia. About it. And I'm not saying it's right. But what I'm telling you is that it's the same argument that can be made on both sides. There's it's the same argument can be made on a lot of things. things. They're mm-hmm. saying that pedos can't help that they're attracted to younger people. Yep. If you and use it on one side, how can you can't justify using it on the other side is my point. Mm-hmm. And they keep moving the goalposts. Now, now what's happening is they're saying people should be able to identify as what they want to identify as. And I just did a show a couple of weeks ago where a dude was in the bathroom with a chick and he, and it didn't go well. The point that I'm making is that everything affects everything and it's a butterfly effect, whether you agree with it or not. It all affects you. When my daughter got to go to school because she has to p- participate in public, right? What's normalized when I was coming up, right or wrong, is different from what's normalized when she's coming up. Because regardless of how you feel, she gonna spend at least eight hours a day away from you in an environment where they've norm where they've set the standards on what's normal and what's not normal. Similarly, when we're talking about these women, a lot of times they get empowered because it's a lot of guys that validate their behavior, and then you got to deal with it on the flip side. You got to deal with it. And so all I'm saying is that everything is a butterfly effect. Everything affects everything. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we ignore it and say, well, it's not my problem until it's my problem is the same reason you see all of this stuff happening in society, whether it's who people choose to who who they love, who validates what age is the age of consent, all the way down to um, all the way down to people didn't feel like you know, all oh, drugs is cool until your neighbor is smoking trees all day and you got to smell that in your backyard. Right. Right? Or or 
the the um, opioid crisis, nobody okay. cared until it hit their front step. Now it's now it's a concern, and we need to do something about it. We yeah, until, it hit the, until it hit places like where I live, like Columbus and stuff in the suburban areas, where they got all of these promising white boys and white girls that are too busy getting high instead of concentrating on their God-given rights to be educated and blah, 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 blah. But my point is, is that I don't think everything should just be overall ignored because it may not be our problem. I think, I think that we normalize becomes the culture, and then that's why I had to make a statement and say black culture is trash, and then add, add the context to it and say, well, it's the things that we champion the most that is trash. It is. Well, that's I don't know. That's just my opinion. I think. Now, hold on. I mean, look at music. Hey, Anton, I got one for you. Look at music. It's trash until it isn't anymore. Uh, I have a degree in. I, my first degree was in music, and the only reason why is because I got a couple of family members that that that, that participate in music, bass, guitar, and stuff like that. So I thought that would be something great. I understand that it is a bullshit ass degree, so it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, and I, you know, what I'm saying I did a dissertation for my first degree in on jazz in 1917. Jazz is a term that was made up by. Uh, and I don't take this the wrong way, anybody. Uh, made up by white people meant shit music. That's what it meant. And now you look at it now. It you know back in the nineteen seventies, jazz is considered its own genre of music. So terms change. You know what I mean? I mean we reinvent the English language every ten years. You can look that up. It, terms are reinvented and reused every ten years, except for the N word. But I I digress. I don't even want to get into that because it's too much to unpack. But the thing is, is a lot of people don't understand is that holding conversations like we're holding uh, is the rubric of how we make sure that we're moving in the same path. Whether we think about it differently or not, it really doesn't carry I any weight. that everything affects everything. Like, no, I agree with you. I, 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 you, you, you can have a conversation with you that. Well, what do I? Um, somebody is is actually yeah, somebody, echo. not me, man. If I say, well, what do I care about whether or not people are taking out student loans that they can't afford to take out, right? And then I just did a report that says one in four black women or one in four women at at large, mm -hmm. and that enroll in college have over fifty thousand dollars in student debt. One out of every four women, right? Just did a statistic, like a report of that, right? And then. You say, well, what do I care? Well, now they're trying to advocate for and people are voting on who they looking at from a political perspective based off of a talking point of them saying that we're going to cancel student loans when we get in office. And that's oh. going to affect what it is that who gets in office. Right. All the other policies don't matter. That's the biggest talking point. So now I got to deal with somebody that people voted for based off of something that they're affected by. And on top of that, they're going to raise taxes which largely affect you because they got to find a way to pay for a lot of these things that people are advocating for. So my point is, is that indirectly or directly, you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what affects you until it's at your doorstep. And then by that time, it's too late. You reactive instead of being proactive. And I think that people lack the foresight to be able to see how things are going to play out in their lives. So they don't choose to get involved until it's already a talking point and they affect it largely and they advocating for something that they could have saw for in the very beginning which is make ourselves more knowledgeable, help help each other to make more informed decisions and participate in each other's lives so that we can have more fuller lives and we're not actually on our heels. Instead, we we actually trying to make better decisions. But, you know, again, that's just my perspective. And I don't consider myself the most educated, the smartest dude in the and the brightest crayon. I know no USC student, bro. No, I just don't consider myself the brightest crayon in the box. But I do try to look at things or I'm just tr I've trained myself to be able to see things um, playing out. When I make my investments, I make my investments based off of what's going to happen in the next 15 to 20 years. I'm not paying attention to today. I don't worry about what's today. I just know that every single decision that you make is going to play a role in your life, your kid's life. And you're going to be affected one way or another, whether you like it or not. Hey, so, um, hey, Anton, um, my, my, yeah, hey, Anton, my grandfather said something to me when I was 16 years old that actually I still carry to this day. 
He said, you feel somebody's hand in your pocket more than you feel a punch in your face. So, yeah, so, you do. On, so on the whole, though, and Anton, I agree with what you were saying. However, with the nine guys here on this panel, there were three definitions of, of what a simp is. So we can't even agree on a definition of, of truly what a what a simp is. How can we label someone as a simp or as a beta or as a, or as an alpha? There's a guy I think at work that I think is a beta, but he's an alpha to three other guys. So so how can we properly label these these individuals? Well, who's setting the who's setting the problem standard? is why are we labeling hey, really? people? Can't they all be can't they all be true at the same time? You don't think that we label people? You don't think we should label people, Doctor Patterson? To a degree, meaning to what I mean, degree? Let's take Russell Wilson for example. Mm -hmm. If he's happy and he's cool and he's raising his family, why he got to be a simp? Why he can't just be Russell right. Wilson? I'm if sorry, man. He's, he's in a gladiator. Wait, he can... hold on. I gotta push back on that because if you have a Pookie and a Ray Ray, what's why wouldn't you label that so you can identify a problem? But if they're really not a Pookie and a Ray Ray, then what's your point in labeling them? If they find out they got no criminal record, they don't beat their wife, and they're just making a little bit of money, and you called them a Pookie and Ray Ray, then why'd you label Russell them? Russell Wilson is not a Pookie and a Ray Ray, man. Yeah, of course Russell Wilson is not a Pookie and Ray Ray. What I'm saying Ray. is if they, if, they, um, if they contribute those actions of the Pookie and Ray Ray, don't take care of the kids or whatnot, you will want to label that so you can identify a problem. You identify the problem, you label the problem. You don't do it beforehand and then prove that you're wrong. You identify what it is, then you have the label for what it for what it is, so you know what what's popping. Okay. That now makes he's sense. Okay. Now what? No, I mean every okay. okay. Watch out for this. Okay, so Dr. Penn, if you don't label something, then I'm well, more I mean, talking about the over labeling. Like where it's my where it's I can agree. Who, who determines what over label and what's over? Uh, okay, you would label them. You would label somebody as somebody that needs help and 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 is impacted by drugs. I call them a dope fiend. <laughs> you yeah, know you what I mean? Valid. Okay, when you're labeling somebody based on facts versus you're labeling something based on opinion, that's what I'm talking but about. But all of it is opinion until you turn it into, into a fact. Yeah, but what do they label them now? They label them as sick. They have a disease. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, all of it is an opinion. Everything that we do is made up. A dude I mean, smoking crack and you can see the rocks burning. But no, 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 no. What I'm saying He's is everything crack. that we do. He's probably hooked on it. Everything that we do is a learned behavior. The very language that you use is a learned behavior, right? Some, some, some things change based off of what we normalize. It's all an opinion until we make it what it is. So how can you over label something? Yeah, of course, there's, a, you know, people go to the extreme and saying whatever, they just throw anything anywhere. But who's the gatekeeper? Who's the ones that determine what is right and what is wrong? You know, what's the definition of this and what isn't? Is it general sentiment? Is it a, you know, a overall view? What is it? Who's the gatekeeper for what is and what shouldn't be? The over echo chamber. And how much about, how, the how echo about chamber. The echo chamber. The echo chamber. Like early today, they said, somebody asked me something. When was the last time you've had sex? We don't think you're getting any, my friend. I was like, all right, you're right. I'm a virgin. That's what you want. Never had sex in my life. No, now you're capping. But I don't get none. I'm not. So what label are you throwing? And based on what? You know, I mean, I'm over here in Tampa. You don't know what I'm doing. Well, well the, context, the context matters. This dude ain't right. getting any cheeks. He never had any. This but guy's got it. Like, you know, I mean, okay, okay. So it should let's use some examples. Should we have a difference between a strong man and a weak man? Can you back it up with something? I mean, yeah, what is the definition? And how do you know each? No, no, no. Let's. This is. I want. This is why I'm going. Through point. This. I'm going through this exercise for a reason. Okay, cool. Okay. So now, my my definition in the context that I'm using it as, as um. A man, not strength, not physical, actual strength, right? Mm -hmm. But a person that can endure and is there for their family versus a dude that may leave and don't stand for anything and will run at the first sight of trouble. Can you back it up? Yeah. 
you go All right. Back, well, how about that? I got one. I got a fan. But what I'm saying hey, is, is it fair for me to label that based off of what I can? It's not fair, Anton, because I know people that are mentally strong and physically weak. And I know people, because I was second force recon, that are physically strong and, and mentally incapable of holding the conversation with you right now. But you're you making my point, though, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. is the, no, and I want, I'm glad that you added that. Yeah. You're making my point that maybe a yeah. deeper conversation needs to be had as far as how we label things, but labels are necessary. I'm just saying, you can ask Mike Dove, man, because he was a Marine. I know motherfuckers, I, I swear to God, y'all don't want no problems with. I, I think it's 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 but how we with, how we associate. Go ahead, go ahead Greg. You know, I think it's how we associate these people together. Like when you, when it comes down to it, like who do I want standing next to me? If, if, if and and we're about to tackle this this next goal or this next thing, I mean, if there's a difficulty that happens, are you gonna buckle? Like, am I gonna be left holding this holding this uh this this goal that we're going after by myself? Well, I mean, well, wait, Kat, great. It's, it's so if he buckles, how would you label him? What would you call him? <laughs> weak. <laughs> weak. You're like, I don't want look. Oh, wait. Look, it's like oh, the Spartans. Wait. It's like the Spartans. Like my and man that, to my really right good. and my man to my left. And His shield protects me. And my shield protects the man to my right. It's like it's important that we it, it, when you're tackling something great or you're heading to a particular direction, that the people standing next to you are strong. But in that example that you use, is that label necessary? Absolutely. That's, different. That's not opinion. You're basing it off of facts. No, it's we not. He was over there fighting and he you was over look, there man. ducking on Listen, the There's there some people that say that um, you know, some people are too prideful and that they stay too long in a situation that they're not supposed to be in just because they don't want to be labeled a certain type of way. They don't want to be called weak. I'll give you a perfect example. Or well, they don't want to get help. Yeah, that's my point. So I'll give you an example. I, and I say this all the time when I was coming up, um, you know, because I came up in the hood, bad was good and good was bad, right? If you was a tough guy and, you know, you might have got in trouble in school or whatever like that, you was cool. And the kids that was smart got teased, right? There was cornballs or whatever, so on and so forth. When I switched environments and I went to a different school, it was the reverse. You know, if you did good in school or whatever, you was cool. And the people that got in trouble, they was looked at as, as bad, right? But either way, we use adjectives and we use labels in order to identify whatever is normalized in our environment at that time. So labels are always going to exist. They're always going to be necessary. But just because we don't like them don't mean that they're any less valid for what it is that we're using it for. Well, Anton, you don't care what anybody thinks about you, do you? No, I don't. You? Be I mean, either. Never did, never will. Right. So therefore, when no. you're talking this or labeling, I just don't care. So yeah, no one labels the will apply. Huh? Right. I, I, I don't know. I, apply. I care. It's meaningful, it's meaningful to them. And the labels that I that I use in my environment is meaningful to me. I'm a G. I'm I'm sexy. I'm gorgeous. I am an alpha. All of this other type of stuff. Right. In my environment, that's meaningful to them. They would say that he's arrogant or whatever, so on and so forth. But hey, in hey, the hey. environment of a bunch of dusty dusties. That's meaningful for them. Let them hey, have it. Hey, it's not Anton. To you. You know Sway? <laughs> hey, Sway, Anton, can I say something real quick? I, and, and, and I mean this with the utmost respect, Anton Sway. Let me tell you something. I've been watching both of y'all. And here's the thing, man. A lot of us got this in common. I respect, you know, I respect your opinion. Uh-huh. I respect what you're saying about certain topics, but you can't tell me what kind of motherfucker I am. You can't say that to me. You don't know me. Just like I can't say that to Sway, like I can't say that to Anton, I can't say that to Rube, Nabata, Gray, anybody. Yeah. I can't tell you, but I literally can't say this. I love y'all. Yeah. Your attitude don't mean, your opinion don't mean shit to me. Hey, Cousin Joe, what if somebody call you an old head? Okay. And? What are they? What are they? I just no. mean, you, it can mean a lot of things. I get what you're saying, but 
yeah. I think the biggest issue is that we've gotten to this area where words don't really mean anything. You know, no, they the don't. reality is they do mean shit. Words have meaning. They right. mean something when you in a court of law, but the they don't mean shit on we YouTube. Use, we're trying to create words like slangs, and then they have mixed meanings, like Anton said, depending on where you're from, you know what I mean, right. or what environment you're right. in. That's like, I think we're kind of arguing slang terms. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Definitions, right. Like words right. already have definitions behind them. Wait, man, look, look, I know how intelligent you are. And I'm going to say this. Hold on, let me let me say this real quick before you respond. You can call me whatever you want to. I don't know where you live. You don't know where I live. We ain't plugged in like that. It would hurt if we were family, but I'm still going to live and I'm still going to stack my chips. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be green all day, green kill all day. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. As intelligent as all of y'all are, you have to admit to this. We wouldn't be holding this conversation if we weren't strong enough to understand that our egos are on the same playing field. So, when everything's said and done, I don't care what you think about me. I care what I think about you. That's it, bro. Oh, I wouldn't be here. I don't give a fuck what y'all think about me. I care about what I think about y'all. And once I lose respect for y'all, promise you, you'll never see me again. Listen, don't care what people think, why is ego There's this thing the called the Jahari window, right? There's what you think about yourself, and there's what other people see in you that you don't see. There's several windows that come with other people. And then Okay, it doesn't matter what most people think about you, but people of influence, it matters what they think of you because all they need to do is open a door. You got a point. All on they that, need Greg. to do is open a right. door, get you get you in the room, and just by just be in the room, opportunity happens. So it absolutely matters what certain people think about you. Absolutely. Yeah, but and you don't know that until you get to know those people, Gray. But you're right. I agree with you. You are absolutely correct. Absolutely matters. And you are absolutely correct. My only question is to that is, so you said it only matters to the people who have influence, but if you get to the point where so many people, I guess, care about what you think, doesn't that make you the person with influence? Or what you you know how you feel or how you view things well, like mean, it, that's, that's what, you, what Greg you know what I mean? just said. Yeah, that, that's what that's why they. But call you, them but you're saying it doesn't really right? matter that's by why. how many people. It kind of matters who. But it, in well, the, it, I believe it. I believe it, and it. what is uh, that's I, I guess what sense, Greg just said. I guess in a sense, it's, it still kind of matters how many people because I mean that your influence grows more by the amount of people. Well, let, let me that, let me put it this way. You know Let's say you got Elon Musk's ear. Isn't that going to matter? You say what? You got Elon Musk ear. You you're in yeah, a meeting. No you're matter. having a conversation with Elon Musk. It matters. Of course. Yeah, that's only one it, individual. I think multiple yeah. things can be right at once. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I just think right. that you having a lot of ears on you can gain you influence because now you have a lot but, of people listening. Yeah, of course, to you. It, it it can so. gain you influence. So you can it be Elon Musk can. yourself. You know well, what I mean? If you have enough influence. <laughs> well, question yeah, is, do you, know, you that, care about what he thinks? Do you care I'm not about trying to get does. into the philosophical, but I just, I don't know. No, I'm one of those who think multiple things can be like right. This. No, yeah, let's get philosophical. We're <laughs> here. Let's talk, man. I guess the, yeah. I guess we had a question earlier about, you know, what constitute a fact. And even that's kind of philosophical in itself, because it really just means that if you do a certain thing, are you going to get this specific outcome? Like, Let's use this example. I, I watched a podcast on this. Let's use what temperature does water boil? Let's use Celsius since it's pretty easy. 100. Celsius, it would be at 100 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Depends, right? depends, depends on where you at. Exactly. You but at. that's but people might cons- constitute that it boils at 100 degrees, and that's a fact. But it also varies on your, you know, the um, air density. Depending if you're in higher mountains, it's going to boil at a lower temperature. So it's like when we're saying what's a fact, it really just means that if you do certain things, you'll get the exact same outcome o- like over and over and over again. And where they get the 100 degrees Celsius is, is if you are at the sea level. So like I'm saying, when we're talking about constitute a fact, it does matter. The context matters. The variable matters. And we can't really get wrapped up 
and thinking that you know we're right all the time because we have one set of information because there are other variables that can easily change that quote unquote fact and I'm, you know that's kind of like the philosophical part of like when we're talking yeah, about but holding the conversation you fact, still have to to and Ray Ray, but even really even the varies. influences once you get to a certain level you're seen as valuable to those people with resources but but sway you have to understand you also you have to hold the conversation me than me you have to hold a conversation from a general view. You have to hold a conversation from where everybody oh, is going to put way on top of me. Be careful. Hmm. I'm not that smart. I and, just, Anton's capping. Open to being wrong. <laughs> open to new ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah. I gotta, so That's that. I just, when we're talking about these Pookie and Ray Rays, like, I think we do kind of have a general consensus of what it is in our brains. But a lot of us have gone through different realities when dealing with them that, you know, we might constitute it a little bit different. Some people just think it's a hood, dude. Like, I don't necessarily think that. I think it's a ignorant, like an ignorant black man that doesn't have any, you know, moves. His actions have no concern for other people's well-being. He'll just do whatever he wants. Either smoke, have babies, don't, you know, bust nuts and go, whatever the case may be. He just doesn't care. He doesn't care about anybody else's well-being. And the out outcomes he get just doesn't really matter to him because he doesn't really give a fuck that's what i think in my brain now other people might have a different definition but i grew up with pookies and ray rays i literally know yeah, I pookie do. and i know a ray ray <laughs> we both do. you know what you know what you know, Clay, you know what <laughs> when that term, hey, Clay, you know what you know what i found out when i, I that's moved hey Sway, Sway, you know when i found out when i'm when i moved my life and and got uncomfortable overseas and everything else I don't care about Pookies and Ray Rays because they, they easy to find. And what they're going to do is they just going to remove the women that I shouldn't be fucking with out of my motherfucking sphere of influence. I, I agree. Like Pookies and Ray Rays do you a favor. Hey, hey mm -hmm. bro, I don't mm -hmm. like cowards. God bless like, Pookie and Ray Rays. Wait, wait, did you hear what I said? I don't like cowards. I don't like people that will say something and don't stand by their word. I hate a coward ass motherfucker. I don't care what color they are. I don't like them. That could be your definition <laughs> of a Pookie or Ray Ray. Like a coward. Like, Wait, I got a question for you. And that's, and that's a label that you use to identify. Wait, I got a question for you. No, I agree with you, Go bro. Ahead. I'm just telling you how. I'm telling you how. Show now. <laughs> Wait, how did you feel about uh, becoming internet famous over the last couple of weeks? Mm, I mean. <laughs> Come on, bro. Everybody know who you are. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. Why <laughs> <laughs> did you feel about having a thousand reaction videos to you? I was kind of, I mean, I, I don't know. I think, I guess in the moment, I knew that I was probably going to get like some, you know, dick riders for Kevin and then maybe hopefully people can see where I'm coming from. But I never thought that I'm, it would I'm blow up famous. to the extent. That it did, you know what I mean? Hey, I guess hey, and I'm being pretty as shit right now. You know that, nah, right? No, he's not. Because no, like curious. a church, there's a lot of I'm trust know, me. I'm curious because there's a lot I, of people who are trying I know to get what me. It feels like to have people talking about you, good, bad, like you know, I've had plenty of videos that went viral or people that did a bunch of reaction videos. You know, I know how it feels, but I want to know how it feels for you because, you know, for me, it's I don't, you know, it's normal. And so it's, I'm always curious as to how it, you know, how you impact it, considering that it's just so recent and it's so fresh anyway. Yeah, it wasn't really normal for me. Honestly, I wasn't like it was kind of uncomfortable. I was like, I wasn't I'm not trying to be famous. I kind of just want to come up to get my point of view from a younger perspective and get off. I'm not trying to have y'all getting me into these beef and I'm not trying to become famous. I'm not really necessarily trying to start my own channel and then, you know, start clickbaiting people off of that one conversation. Like that's not really what I was even up there for. I was really just standing 10 toes down as, you know, as myself, as a man, like I said, I have my own father, my own grandfather. I get advice from them. I think if any of us have men of influence on our, you know, in our actual everyday lives, you're not going to take that type of treatment just because he's an you know an elder or whatever case like you have your own influences in your life and i kind of just i don't know hey, i just like i say if, if anybody any man with a backbone i feel like would have did the same thing i did i think maybe they would probably been more emotional or not i think i was kind of 
you know, pretty balanced. And I guess that's why I get a lot of like support from the chat. I wasn't really coming at Kevin. I didn't come at him ad hominem attacks. I kind of did. I played the situation to make like it's kind of defending yourself. I wasn't attacking him. And like I said, but I wasn't expecting so many people to run with it and then trying to get me to come up on their platforms and, you know, get views off of me. I'm like, I'm not on that time. I'm I'm cool with the Lapeef Network and I'm cool with coming up here and talking, but it was definitely weird. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it was a weird experience. Like you said, you used hey, to it. Wait, I'm can not I ask you a question, shit. man? I was nervous. I don't like even putting my Instagram out there. People start messaging me or trying to find my girlfriend or my family members and she, I'm not, no, I'm not cool. Hey, with hey, my hey yo, welcome to my life, bro. Hey, yeah, Sway, man. can I ask you a question? Yeah. Sway, Sway, so can I ask weird. you a question? Hey, Sway, can I ask you a question right quick, man? Uh, your grandfather yeah. still alive, man? Yeah, my dad had me young, so my dad is like 43, so I my said, grandfather's your, only it's, 69. Man, bro, and cherish that, bro. Cherish that, man. I was in Afghanistan when my grandfather died. You want to talk about a nigga that had a whole well, lot of both, issues? Both of my grandparents on my black side are dead. It's only on my, my white man. side that are still alive. I got a question. No, I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is just cherish it, bro. You know, and when you said that you got some really good knowledge from your grandparents, I got really great knowledge from my grandparents. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean like... Let me ask y'all a question. Yeah. Y'all really think that y'all are prepared to be famous? Let's not even say famous. No. Do y'all no, think that y'all prepared? I don't want to be famous. I'm not even going to say famous because I'm not famous, right? I just have visibility. Do y'all think that y'all prepared for the level of visibility that even I may have? No. I no, don't want to. And uh, I just want to come down and see you so I can take your ass out to uh, Ruth Chris right quick. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be famous. I want to eat a steak with you, bro. <laughs> I don't think people really understand I guess, what, the, what, the, what it's like. And again, I'm not even, even talking about it just from my perspective. But I only see the glam. You know, people coming at your daughter. Yeah, that's why. Nah, I'm cool, bro. You don't understand. That shit ain't going to be good at all. But see, hold on, Cousin Joey. What you don't understand is that you can't fight all of Everybody. them. Everybody. I know. You're right. You, what, what you going to do? You going to go and knuggle up with them? Hell yeah. no, man. I'm just going to ignore the fuck out there. <laughs> I don't, the point is, is that I don't think people really understand what come with the game. You know what I'm saying? It's It's different, bro. It's... It's a, it's a, and I, and that's why I was one of the reasons I was asking Sway because he got to kind of see a little bit of it firsthand of what happens, you know what I'm saying? When, when you get that level of visibility and everybody is pulling at you and uh, people want to, you know, they want to use your name in order to get their stuff up and all of this other type of stuff. Oh, I've been seeing the people with over 400,000 views and they catching all kinds of haymakers, bro. Yeah. I think I would be fine, Go famous, if if my value, like, if it's on, you know, positive values. I'm not one of those people who's like, I you don't want to be famous. You can't, like a, you like can't, a, you can't I, pick and choose it, though. I know you can't please everybody, but. It's never going to be all positive. I'm ever. just not one of those, like, Derek Jacksons, where you're like, you're, you're, you know, you're placating for money or you're, you're pushing a narrative or like, you know, people being famous on the news who are just pushing like the, the police killings for black people. Like, I'm not trying to be famous for talking about that. Even even if people was rocking with you, they was trying to find out your negativity. Family. They wanted to know, you know what I'm saying? They People is weird on the internet, bro. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. trying to drive a state through the start, bro. They want to know who your girl is. They want to know where you live at. People are yeah. weird, bro. I would be public. No, and hey, Anton, just so you know, that's what I was talking about. And they don't want no parts of that. You ain't coming to my house. So weird, bro, that they literally made made fake accounts like they my wife, like they read. <laughs> For real? Yes. Jesus, Some people are sick. People are weird, weird. That's insane. Yeah, that's that, that, that right there. Yeah, so, so that's on some next level. Soccer type it's shit, bro. normal now, bro. And to like nowadays, that's not nothing new. It's normal. It's the norm. It's what you live in. Hey, Anton, I I like right quick, point... man, do you watch uh, Kwame Brown stuff? I'm just asking. I ain't trying to shout him out or nothing. I'm just asking. No, you ever... Kwame, Brown, uh, 
Not really. Like, I mean, I okay. like I'm aware of what's happening, but. Okay, well, I mean, like, I, literally, I, on, on the same point that I'm really aware of that happens on YouTube, uh -huh. is stuff is sent to me or we start having certain conversations. Okay, about well, on the, on the same point that you're talking about, one, one time I was watching one of his uh, situations, you know, man, because I'm just trying to get plugged in a little bit and see, you know, how this YouTube, these YouTube streets flow. And somebody said that they was gonna come to Brunswick, Georgia, and then urinate on his mother's grave. I'm like, oh no! Know. I mean, that happens all the time. I had, dude, oh, I had a dude that said, okay. yeah. I'm just wondering, man. I had a dude that said, yeah, Anton, I found your father's grave, and I'm gonna take a piss on it. Really? Yeah, but see, I was laughing because I was like, well, I know you're lying because my father was cremated. I mean, but it's, <laughs> it's the intention. It's the, it's the weirdness. It's like, why would you? You can't control people. There no. is no rule for you that anymore. You know what I'm saying? I, I was just bringing it up because you asked the Bible if anybody's ready for this shit. No, nah, I mean, but I'm, um, but it's cool though. That's Mike. It's cool though because uh, Mike, you know, Mike, 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 somebody can go from constructive criticism or just a fan to a stand, and everything they do and they dream about is you. Yeah, they're boiling rabbits. Like, just be careful what y'all getting yourself into and what you ask for. Because once you take that genie out the bottle, you can't put it back in, is all I'm saying. Nope. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. I could have sat for Kevin and not said nothing. I could have just been quiet and be like, yes, master, you're right. And just never stood my ground. <laughs> he came in there on some hot, I'm just, like, you know what I mean? That's a lot of way. You would have never been like, like yes, yes, Kevin, yes, Kevin. <laughs> and I would have either been called a simp. Or like most people said in the initial reaction that I was like a dickhead because I was making faces. But like at the end of the day, I was like, y'all can rewatch the video and y'all can see what really happened. That all happened in a split second. Everybody's on their own emotions. And like I said, rewatch it. And I wasn't going to, you know, switch up on how I felt about it. I gave my perspective and I told it. And people, more people understood where I was coming from. They reflected on themselves. And as I see in the chat, more and more people are like, Sway, you stood your dim ground. You were in the right. It was a misunderstanding or whatever the case may be. And it was more clarification. I guess in the initial moment, a lot of people were jumping on it as like a Kevin detractor, either, you know, a root. Nah, or I guess a, your eyebrow said everything, bro. I yeah, saw that. Everything because yeah, I, was I, was I already knew what was going to happen. As soon as you did that eyebrow thing, I was like, oh. I mean, okay. like I said, I, 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 was, I, was, I wasn't it's trying to be famous. It's about to go down. It just happened. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Like I said, Somebody I, said it right. I was minding my own business. Man came in there hot, and I was... No, nah, so, I think but I wasn't trying it. to be famous. I'm cool I think you handled so. it well, and you probably handled it better than most of us would have. Because real talk, would be like no disrespect. You know, I don't think it was about. I don't think it was about you. Like yeah, I, 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 I don't think you well, that you were making had anything to do with you specifically, and that's why when I talk about it, I was just. I was talking about everybody else overreacting to everything that was happening about it. Y'all just really just had y'all had y'all had something that y'all. I mean, it was y'all really reacting to each other, whether it was a misunderstanding or not, live and online. It's nothing different than what happens in people's living rooms all the time. That's really what it is. You know what I'm saying? What again? Whether you agree with it or not, the problem was everybody overreacting to everything. In which it was not as it wasn't that deep to the mm -hmm. point that everybody else was trying to make it to be. People made it more of a bigger deal than it than it really was. That's the reality of it. Well, because he was the first that's person that a, a, actually ever really gave a decent argument to Kevin Samuels because he's really like streamlined. This is his talking points. This is where he stays at, and as long as he's staying those talking points, there's really no room for you to be able to wiggle. And uh, Sway was the first person that ever was was ever able to wiggle. I hate to say it. I mean, but, you know, Anton, he wiggled, and everybody felt that shit. It I was what it was. I really, really thought that the young chaos brother did is the play. norm. So people are going to feed off of chaos, emotion, and art and uh, beef. That's the norm mm -hmm. that they're looking for to feed. That's currency. Yep. So... The natural, I mean, like almost as expected. Like when I saw it, I'm like, oh, dang, what, what the hell going on here? 
but I already knew. Well, some things I'm not going to say on, on, on camera or some thoughts I got about it. But at the end of the day, as long as Sway is comfortable with his response, right? everybody still respects Sway. Hey, I rock mm -hmm. with him. Right. But, it was exceptionally um, intelligent, Sway. Like, that's all I got. The chaos and whatever to come afterwards is expected because that's who people are. That's what they do. And that's just what it is. Like I said, most people, it's I think change, people know me enough on what I said before. And you know, I guess even the people who were listening to my initial statement understood where I was coming from. And then I guess, you know, like I said, I left it up to people to make their own judgments. I wasn't there to try to change people's mind or try to come at Kevin or whatever. Like I can be quote unquote his detractor without being disrespectful. And I don't think I was disrespectful. And but a lot, like I said, a lot of people, I no, guess that weren't. was the biggest the biggest thing was that I was probably the most respectful detractor that actually had like felt some type of way. Like I felt, like I said, I actually did feel some type of way about how we came in in the whole situation and I wasn't rocking with it, but I wasn't about to be coming like calling him all types of names or trying to like nitpick at his argument. Cause a lot of the shit he said, I didn't disagree with. I just didn't understand why he, he felt went the like that's went. like the shit he was saying was what I was like arguing against. I wasn't arguing against half of the shit he was saying. The only thing no. I brought up about him was some Jordan shit, and that was it. And it, I knew after that he came in some type of way because I mentioned his name about Jordans, and I knew after he heard that boop, he hit a switch and then he just went on his monologues and kept going. And then I literally asked him, I was like, Kevin, what point do you think I'm making? And he said, You don't agree we should wear suits. I'm like, nigga, nah, I know you didn't hear what I said because I didn't say none of that. I literally said you should wear suits, own suits for the occasion. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna let people listen back because this nigga is on some other ish. Sorry, hey, excuse sway. my language, but hey, sway, sway. I didn't even agree with you, and I still think you have that masterfully. I didn't even not agree with you. I agree with and you. And I think you have that master. I think I, he I, should have a space to be able to disagree. He could have been, he could have literally said, Look, I don't want to wear a suit for the rest of my life. And that's his opinion, and that's his prerogative. He's grown. And it's not like a felony if you say, Man, I hate suits. I want to wear a jogging suit to my next meeting. If he said that, <laughs> he can do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but that's, that's that's wrong. even yeah. if you disagree, I, there's I, a way. I, Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, Anton, what you got to say? No, no, no. I was saying, but that just, that doesn't make sense because the conversation that they were having was the image of the black man. But so, even if he said that, hey, we don't need to wear suits. To, what if that's what he really thought? Should you be crucified? Comes and that's when you disagree and be like, hey, we got a dude who doesn't believe in suits. And that's just what it is. No, I think that's where the discord is. And that's when we start having these conversations. Like, I mean, hey, wait, understand. Anton, can I ask a question? Everybody is not just going to agree to disagree. Sometimes, no. disagree. and all I'm saying is, my biggest thing is, I don't think, I think that people overreact to civil discourse because there's a way which you can, you know what I'm saying? We can disagree, we can have it out. It's not always going to be kumbaya or respect sure. for the first time around. I just think that people overreact a lot of times. Um, and it don't even be the people that be a part of the conversation. I think that people overreact often, more often than not. That's not even a part of the conversation. True. So don't. <laughs> hey, Anton, Sway, Sway I, I need to get y'all to plug in because y'all both what? White collar workers, right? I mean, y'all are like, it's like at the top of the business type thing, right? I'm just asking, so I'll make sure the question. I'm blue collar, G, but I'm always <laughs> like I said. I'm young. I'm 23, so I'll get there one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. But that means that it makes it even more pertinent. Look, I don't wear a suit to my job, man. I clean water for a living, but I'm six figures, so I'm not used to wearing that kind of stuff, Anton. So and, and sweat. So if I walk up to y'all, you know what I'm saying. I just got off of work. You don't know what I do. And I hold a conversation with y'all. What would be your reaction? I'm just saying, man, because Anton, you see me in my work clothes, by the way, because I've been on your live before. And I don't know if Sway was there or not, but I'm just asking, you know, what is the outlook for white collar workers and people that are high earners? How do they look at uh, blue collar workers that are, you know, kind of sort of in the same realm they're in? You know, I they, think white they collar workers respect 
white collar workers respect blue collar workers from sure the simple do. fact that they couldn't be white collar workers without y'all without we us need, you know what i mean yeah and i, I mean, think a lot of them who oh, know ahead, that like i said they know they can't be white collar workers without the blue collar workers there is no business if the blue collar blue collar workers didn't build that business up you ain't got nothing you have no infrastructure no plumbing no electricity no nothing you just okay. in a darkness. That's it. So, like I said, I don't think there's any disrespect between blue collar and white collar. So that's not really the argument. But it's I do not... want to. I do want to. Well, I wasn't making an argument. I was asking a question, Swag. Yeah, not a respect. Yeah, asking a question. Respect. Like I said, yeah. we both make money. You just make it a different way. Blue collar workers make tons of money. That's. What, I don't understand why. It's, I think it's more disrespectful. I guess coming from the women. The women don't really respect blue collar workers. It ain't really a oh. like a you know a, any type of. Um, grievances between blue collar worker men and white collar worker men like we we both need each other to, for to, for the society to run but i do want to get gray nabuda s rob and mike does point of view because they've been quiet and i know they have something to say exactly about man hey, let me so speak one thing speak and I'm, hey let me speak one thing that i'm jumping off okay. i don't say about blue collar workers i'm white collar make six figure income i was looking about i'm looking to buy a house like immediately out here in tampa there's a house I'm looking for. It's a two-structure property, mother-in-law suite in the back, and a four-bed, four-bed, two-bath in the front. <laughs> if I were to win the bid on this house, the first thing I'm doing is scrambling, hunting for the best blue collar I can find for the AC plumbing to help renovate. I'm bleed. I'll be bleeding <laughs> at the mercy of blue collar, and I want the best. I'm at their mercy. They deserve a lot of respect. I think y'all respect. Who you call when you're caught when you have car problems? I think y'all missed the color. The best <laughs> one. But anyway, y'all have a good night. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Patterson, man. You make me feel better about being a blue collar worker, bro. I think y'all missed the whole point. I don't think it has anything to do with whether or not you're blue collar or whether or not you respect it. I think that the bigger point is the image that you project. Is it something to be automatically by default respected just because you're a person right because even if you blue collar i don't think that absolves you from being able to carry your way carry it if you're a blue collar guy does that mean you should sag your pants for example no right? get just just for example right and i'm not disputing anybody's point but the point that i'm making is is most people want to level up in life that's just the way that it is. Most people want to level up. I don't care if you're blue collar, I don't care if you're white collar or whatever like that. And if you want to level up, the first thing that people see is your physical appearance. And so whatever that physical appearance is, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. In corporate America, I it would, it would behoove me even a little bit to think that me not dressing up every day for the job that I wanted did not play a larger role in the, in the image that was per, that in the perspective that was, you know what I'm saying? How I was viewed from the people that were that my colleagues, the people that I played a role with, the people that I eventually worked with, it played a role. It really did. I mean, listen, if you just want to go to work and get a paycheck every day, that's cool. That's not you're not doing anything illegal. I don't have anything bad to say about you. But when you want to level up. And you want to get to the next level you have to change the way you do things and not expect people to just take you at your word or take you as you are no you're gonna to have to do things a little bit differently so i don't disagree um with anything that anybody says what i think what i think people should do is stop other people that wasn't even a part of the conversation that was viewing they need to get out of their emotions and start paying attention to see what they can glean from the conversation take the meat spit out the bones Take what you can out of it, make the adjustment and get to your bag and become more successful. Yes, it did play a role in my life and I see it all the time. If I see somebody act in a specific type of way or dress in a specific way, I will. that plays a role in whether or not I'm going to help, help them get promoted. It just is what it is. I mean, we can say what we want or whatever. And again, I don't necessarily disagree with Sway. Um, I don't disagree with Kev. I think that Sway and Kev in a lot of different points they probably aligned and didn't disagree. It was probably just the the way in which it did or how they how they hurt each other or whatever. I don't care. I don't really know. All I know is when I hear something and I hear somebody speak, whether it's Sway, whether it's Kev, whether it's an OG or whatever, if they give me something that I can use long term that helps me make more money and help me level up, I'm taking it. 
I don't care about my feelings. I got to figure out how it is that I can level up and become the best version of myself. And I think that most people are just overly like way too emotional, you know, when they have these con- when they listen into these conversations and they don't know how to take the meat. But uh, nah, nah, Buddha. I know you've been quiet for a bit. Let's see what you got to say. I agree, Anton. All day, you are absolutely correct. This is uh regarding to the suit thing, right? I mean, yeah, the whole interaction, the suit thing, you know, how do you feel Uh about, you know? I didn't catch majority of it. I got, like, the tail end of the interaction between you and Kev. Um, So I will have to go back to watch it to give, like, proper context and everything and, like, a real opinion. Um, If I would just have to say from what I saw, I I didn't like how the interaction ended because – it should come to like a civil discourse between you two. And, and even with the points that I heard from you, I also agree with what you were saying, like time and place for it. Um, people should still wear suits and all that. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't, I would need to hear more of the conversation that you, you two had for me to really like form an, a, a well formed out uh, opinion. Hmm. Well, my, my, I mean, um, my opinion on it is I'm i I'm starting to think on things on a global um, platform and and I'm starting to take into consideration what the appearance on a global platform looks like. I mean, it's like um, in my image, you know, and and what I look like in like with, when it comes to the suits, the suits were actually designed to to make men look powerful Mm -hmm. you know and 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 when i started my company i was like oh i'm gonna just wear flip-flops and and shorts and shirts coming into work and but now you know understanding my impact that i'm going to have it's it's very it's a very different paradigm shift it's almost like now i'm looking forward to wearing suits because i want to portray a certain image for other people to necessarily strive for Screens professionalism. Yep. You know what I mean? I, I wanna I wanna become that that image because because a lot of times when it comes to science, like most most black people, we know we're not looking, we're not checking for science. We're not, you know, and um and I, I wanna I wanna push the the you know technology more in the in the black community and I wanna I wanna be that image that that um that we can look to. Oh, he did it. You know, he he's sitting at the technology table, you know, uh, because we need to be able to see those things in order to realize that we can, we're even able to do it. Because, like, when I started what I was doing, um, I didn't even think my career that I'm doing now was even a possibility for, for someone like me. You know, that's because I didn't see nobody doing it. Uh, great. I'm yeah. I'm I'm kind of lost on the point. What do you do, bro? Just asking. So I I'm plugged well, in yeah, on the I, conversation. I'm I'm starting a tech company, but you know that's 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 what I'm doing. But as far as 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 like my my view, he's on... really downplaying himself. He's this dude. I know, Anton. That's why I'm asking, Gray. I'm, I'm just really, asking. Like, he really he he has. He's very very smart, and he's created some technology. <laughs> That's uh pretty groundbreaking, okay. and he has a start- okay. Gray, you could have just said that I'm doing some groundbreaking technology, man, and that's well, what I'm, I'm talking. He's trying I'm to remain humble. I'm not, try, I'm not here to try to like <laughs> he's pull being conversation. Humble. I'm not he's trying to. Humble. Move. We're here as all equal as. Gray, you don't have to big up yourself. No, 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 no. I'm, no, no, I'm getting. He's he's just you know he's just here to have a conversation. But I'm saying that the dude is pretty incredible because I know who he is in real life. So. I'm just giving him a spot. Right. If, if I wasn't that's, interested, that's, that's, that's I wouldn't hard, be it's hard. So that's not you being at me. I was having that conversation with somebody. We were having a conversation. You complimented me like that. And I was like, it's hard to take that conversation. It's hard to take that converse, that, that compliment right now. It's hard. I think there's a time and a place, like I said, where when a suit, like to, to mm-hmm. ask a plumber to wear a suit 
when he got to go to a job sighting is kind of ridiculous. We all know that. Well, yeah, but if you're a corporate guy and you're trying to get corporate and, you you know, this marketing persona, then, of course, you got to wear a suit. It's like it's a time and a place for everything. I'm sure the but plumber see, still owns problem, a suit, though, so when he needs to go meet his boss at the corporate office or he needs to go to a dinner or whatever. Like, he's not going to go to work, problem, though. Boy. That's the problem. Is that hey, not are, everybody needs a suit. No, 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 no. The problem <laughs> is that the problem is not the the what sway described the problem is that the guy that is in corporate america is failing to wear the suit so that's so, become a cultural norm today and that they don't they will buy all of those i got a whole foot locker in here i got one over there i got foot lockers over there i got <laughs> like real talk i got the whole shebang in here but they'll they'll buy a bunch of these and don't have Three, two suits. They ain't got two pair of slacks and three shirts. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna get out of bed and they're gonna wear they they're gonna put on a um a musty, wrinkled up shirt that they picked up off the floor. And they'll put more effort <laughs> into going to hey, the, yeah. going to the bar and or or they're going to or work and shirt. Home every day. And that hey, that's hey Anton, can I ask you a question? That's the I, I, I just need to ask this question, man. Because every time you say something, I, I got a question popping in my head. I apologize. Hey, uh, so let me ask you this. When should a man have to own a suit? You said when? When, when should he? I mean, no, I mean, you said that, if, you know, there is a time and a place for a suit. So I'm asking you, when should a man have to own a suit? When should he own it or when should he wear one? As to, I think no, should when should he own it? To get old enough to get a job. No, I, I, I always yeah. ask own, bro. I, I own my word. When should he, he own the suit? suit? As, men, as, as soon as you get old enough to get a job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Way, okay. Before that, way before that. For example, my nephew. Well, I say that because you don't have the you don't have control over whether you own a suit or not prior to you becoming an adult, right? You know that's your parents' responsibility. Very true. And so Ty, I, can I ask you another I question? You that, but here's I'm a lot of things too. A lot of these places are not requiring you to wear suits like that. But it doesn't matter. Hey, hold on, listen, listen, listen. Hey, standard, Anton, hold on a second. I, I'm, 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 on, I'm asking, I'm asking the question. For hold on. Your standard okay. should not be based off of what's required at the job. Your standard should be based off of what you want out of the position that you're seeking. Don't okay. lower your standards. That is very true. I mean, and that's in everything because that's a mentality. I, I don't right? agree with you, man. Listen, listen. I don't agree with you. You'll lower your standards to the woman that lets you have sex with her. You'll lower your Bro, standards. That ain't what I'm talking about. Joey, I'm not talking to you specifically. Take yourself out yes, of the conversation uh, for I, seconds. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to put myself into it. I was trying to get somewhere with the conversation right quick so we can change the dynamics of a suit wearing situation. But go ahead. My bad, man. You want to change the dynamics of a suit wearing situation? Because the thing is, is what I'm trying to tell you is, is that when you start wearing a suit, it depends on the type of areas you're trying to move into. It doesn't matter about your job, even though your job does motivate it, depending on what you do. But there's certain people that you move with where you have to wear a certain type of gear. Like, for instance, I'm going to ask you this. Anton, how many tuxedos do you own, own that you that are fitted? How many tuxedos do I own? Yeah, a tux. Yeah, how many? I own one. Yeah, how many? One. Yeah, I own two. I own two. Okay, so how's that relevant? I, I, that's what I'm. That is relevant because at a certain point in your life, in your lifestyle, you work here, but you move there. Like for instance, what if I come to Detroit and I wanted to spend some time with you, and you saying we're gonna do a gala type situation at the MGM Grand? Don't I need to own a tuck? Yes. Okay, that's what I was going, bro. That's all. I wasn't I trying to. I wasn't trying to challenge you. I'm just saying that's how you need to move. No, I apologize though. Go ahead. So let, so let me let me but let me give you some insight. What I'm telling what I'm telling you mm-hmm. is that if you're in an environment where you're not required to level uh, level up, you need to change and work towards being in a different environment. Is what I'm saying. We need to elevate. And yeah. raise our standards and raise the bar 
and just and I don't always just exist in the environment that I'm in. If I, if I feel like getting fly, I don't care who up in there. I'm just going to be the flyest dude up in there because that's just who I am. I don't move and I don't lower the bar based off of the lowest common denominator in the place that I am. Just listen, when I was going into work every day in corporate America and they had jeans day every Friday, I didn't wear jeans. I didn't wear jeans when I went to went to corporate America. I don't care if they had jeans day. I was going to be fly. I was going to have a slacks. I was going to be dressed sweet. My my boots was going to be polished. My, my dress shoes was going to be polished. Everything like that. I went and got my junk buffed out on a regular basis. The whole nine yards. I dressed for what it was that for what I had my expectation expectations were for the positions that I was looking to get into. I didn't dress down to what the requirements were. I dressed up for the position that I wanted. And I manifested that. I got it. I got in the rooms with the certain people and I made the impressions because I regularly showed them. I regularly showed people that had the keys that unlocked the doors for me to get in there. And then I can change the narrative however I wanted to then. I'm the one that 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 had to impress other people. And I didn't dress down to the lowest common denominator just because it was available. I rocked with what with what I felt like was a standard that I wanted to set for myself as far as what my expectations was. That's what so, I'm an, not always so about Anton, adapting. So Anton, I mean, it's about changing the narrative. So, so Anton, can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. So, so earlier, I think it was on today's show or it must've been yesterday's show. I'm not sure you had uh six on and basically six gave this dialogue on how that, what makes a man's what makes a man attractive is not per se his his image but that what makes him attractive is his character his integrity how he moves those are the those are the foundations and i think that what's happening is is that by putting you can put a suit on a pig but at the end put some cologne on him but at the end of the day he's still a pig and yeah, I think well, the thing about it is, pig. well, he can be, but he's still a pig. And yeah, I think but, the thing about it is, is that, hold on, time out. I think, Anton, the thing about it is, is that what I've always consistently heard you say is that it is how you move. It is your character. It is your integrity. It is your word. It is your honor. It is how you do business. You you had that whole, when, when that whole, when that pedophile dude was on and, and you challenged that whole pedophile dude, you went in on character. And so the thing about it is, I think that we need to get away from, well, not necessarily get away from the suit, but we need to focus on men's character and their integrity and their values. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to get you. That's So a suit may get you in the door, but your values, your character, your integrity, your honor, your word, your discipline is going to keep you in the door. See, Anthony, this is what this Listen, is where you're Anthony. wrong, Anthony. This is where you're wrong. Well, he's not where... wrong. It's just multiple things can be right at once, and I feel like we shouldn't well, be arguing. Okay. I didn't mean point, you're wrong. You know I was like, mean? I want to challenge that. Is that how did you get into the door in the first place? How I got in the door in the first place is mm -hmm. that I how I got in the door in the first place is 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 my discipline. No, I'm saying is like, but 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 the thing about it is that here's the thing though. I didn't come in the door looking like a pig. I came in the door and I met I met the requirements, but what kept me in the door? So so the question is, I'm gonna push back on you. Do you want to get in the door or do you want to stay in the door? Why? Which one do it. you want? Well, I well no, door, well, I want to stay in the door. I want to stay in the door. All right, so hello, hello. So y'all guys said a whole bunch of stuff. See, and a lot of people got a lot of pushback when it talks about this suit thing. And one thing that <laughs> the one thing that it is is I remember when my nephew my nephew moved up from Georgia to Seattle. The first thing I did is I went to I went to the local men's warehouse. I bought him a suit. I got him nice shoes. I got him nice. I, I put him in a mirror and I said, look at that man that you are today. And he was a kid. I wanted to put an image in him because you got to understand the image that they're seeing is these people selling drugs, doing all this mm -hmm. kind of crazy stuff. And so we need to change the whole image of the black man in general. But do you want to get in the door? But do you want to get in the door or do you want to stay in the door? You got to do both. See, that's the but which one is more important, bro? It's not a matter of more important. The next door is more important. You can't get in the door to prove yourself if you're not, you know what I mean? Like, they're both important. 
to say well, to get in the door or stay in the door. It's like, how the fuck are you going to get in the door <laughs> and improve yourself? It's like, they're both important. So I'm not trying to argue here. You're both right. Like, character matters and your, your image matters. Like, point but blank, if you don't have it should be but it has a great balance of both. There, but, but, but the, but the fact of the matter, I but, think, but, but, I think but, image matter more. But, 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 but the fact of the matter is that you know what? You know what image drives? Image drives your e image is driven by your ego. No, it's not. No, yes, it's it not. is. No, I disagree. No, it's not. Because no, the thing about hold on, let me make the case. Let me make the case. Because but, the fact of the matter is that when you get accolades and somebody tells you, oh, well, you look good, or you smell good, oh, you're this, you're this, you're that. But the fact of the matter is that that is your ego. So the fact is, so what I'm simply saying is that it is how you I move. It is by brother, your oh, no, it's by ego, See, The problem with that theory is, is just when you, when I you think dress, you're understating the ego. The thing okay. is, I mean, the thing is, though, image is, is important just because people take you, they tend to take you more serious when they see you, you know, dressed up nicely. But, but, that, but that's not mm -hmm. but that's not a true statement. That's not a true statement. No, no, there's, that a is con, there's a reason why con no, artists wear suits. No, no, but here's the there's thing. There's a reason. It matters. They all matter. So I don't know why me, we're arguing if your image matters more or if your person, your character matters more. They both but, fucking matter. Yeah, it just matters what the this. results you want. Let's talk about that. What results and do you want? And they matter at the same time. That's if we can talk about which yeah. one matters more. No, that's definitely talk about the what results well. you want. So, when it comes to so, results, I think image matters, uh, image matters slightly more than character. Because but it like, matters on what type of results. Like I said, if you're image a matters more worker, than character. If you're image, a color worker, hold on. Image gets you in there, and keeps you there. Well, well I it say, depends bro, on you got it, to have it, character. It, it depends it, on the it, circle that you're moving you into, because there's I'm some circles saying. that don't well, care well, about well, character. Why there are me, some listen. circles that do not care about character. Because hold on, but character matters though. Character does matter. As a man, character matters. Man, y'all are so wrong. I'm just, I'm just, look, man, I'm just saying. You think, you think the people are stockbrokers give a fuck about their character or their character because they make money? Exactly. It depends. This right here is why do we have to choose? Why are we a group of men on this panel talking about? Do you got to have character or you got to have your image? Like we got to get to a point that you need both. In yeah. it starts with the I, agree. And the I agree. I agree with I Absolutely. agree with you, man. You need you, you should have both. Yeah. Of course, you nobody's have both, with that. But you cannot say because that because they both matter. That matter. That character matters. In some circles, see, only but, the appearance but that you are with, one of them but matters. See, this is this is the bad part about having these type conversation. Is if somebody say, "Hey, we need uh, black men need to own suits, so they need to be in the suit." The first thing we want to do is say, oh, but your character is more important than the suit. That got nothing to do with the conversation that we're talking about. We're talking about image. We're not saying that character is not important. We're not trying yeah. to say that. Yeah. Like, like we, we go to these such extremes, and on these extremes, we're like, oh, character matters. All we need to start Thank you, EV man. Character. Thank you, bro. And, and I'm like, come on, bro. Yes, you're supposed to have character, but we need to kind of change. I do agree with the, the narrative okay. that I need to change how my nephew see himself. It's my responsibility as a man in his life to buy him a suit, get him those nice shoes way before he see that, and then not only get it for him, show him how to tie the tie. Show him how to do all these things and put him up in the mirror and let him see him best self. Because what happened is we need to be able to him to see something better in him. He need to see him with a fresh haircut and those different things. And what we do is we try to say, teach the character. He can walk around looking like a bum because this character is going to get him place in life. No, well, that is not the truth. Yeah, because if, yeah. if character so, is so, so, so guys, time. watch this here. So guys, watch this here. The thing about it is that we all have arrived to a point where we can, we can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. And so the fact of the matter is that while you're focusing on your image, the fact of the matter is that you still need to be inside the door. And the fact of the matter is that when you look at the wealthiest one percent, the wealthiest one percent, mm -hmm. what they are inside the door because of their character. Mark Zuckerberg don't wear no suit. So why yes, are we going to go stop, ahead stop. and, and we win? Yes, so Mark Zuckerberg we wears so brother, 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 oh, he he something. something. That was off the strength of what he was doing. He didn't have to go through another okay. company 
to you know where he, he needed to do, man, come on no see and this is the narrative that people try to push out oh these rich people don't wear suits they in board meetings and sandals and and, and tank top nope, nope, so nobody they, said that know, no they're not no, no they're no, not they're no, not in they're not in board let me finish they're, let me but, finish but, but, but yeah, not, let, 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 let them finish real quick let them finish one at a time brother so yeah, I'm telling you, all these wealthy people wear suits. Just because you might catch a picture of them at a beach, that doesn't mean that they don't wear suits. And so what we need to do is say a suit is important. Our black men need to be in these suits, and we need to push that that more. Now, don't get me wrong. If a person don't want more in life and they don't want to strive to that next level, cool. Mm -hmm. You can keep doing what you're doing. But I can tell you right now, I, I'm, I'm having a conversation with a man in a suit and carrying himself a certain way, it's a different type of conversation than somebody in basketball shorts. And let me add to that. And, let me and, add and to that. And let me add to that too, man. I mean, like, is it, if image wasn't really important, then I mean, look, man, just dress up like a homeless person and see how people treat you. Okay, but the fact of the matter is, is here what you're doing is that you're making a disingenuous oh, argument question. by no, basically not. saying that no, somebody's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, time out, time out, time out. But the thing about it is, what you're saying is, time out. What you're saying is. And nobody's saying that go into a business meeting with a tank top, dirty, sh dirty shorts on and, and mix max socks and, and sandals. Nobody's saying that. But Anton just got through saying that if your shoes is buff, you you got on a nice pair. You got a nice pair of pants on and a nice polo shirt on a nice shirt that that and you sit down, you still can basically get yourself in the door and stay in the door. So so no, no, I really want to ask him this question. Let me ask you a question. A guy that shows up in a courtroom in a thousand dollar suit, for example, compared to a guy who shows up with a hoodie. A hoodie take uh, hoodie. no, take the hoodie out. Take the hoodie out. How so let's say call shot. Let, let, listen. Let's say call shot. Do you a think, flannel? Let's say whatever you want to say outside of a suit. Do you think that? Do you think that jury's no, gonna judge him? Is that jury gonna judge what he got on? Yeah. If he has of on course. a shirt, if he has on a shirt, a polo shirt, and a nice pair of slacks and some shoes, he's still gonna get the same judgment. You His crazy. ass going to jail. You crazy. Yeah, you, 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 come on, okay, come, okay. On. Okay. come on, okay, okay. Well, look, look, you know what? There's different levels. You're right, you're right. No, you're right. But, but the fact right, right, let, me you. let me say this, though. Let me say this, though. Let me say this, though. Hold on, let Mike speak. Yeah, go ahead. Work on the suit. Hold on, let Mike speak. Go ahead. Let Mike speak. Go ahead, Mike. What Anton was trying to say is that you should always look your best because look at my situation. I'm never going to wear a suit. I'm going to wear the same thing that everybody else is wearing. But I can still make sure that my my stuff is ironed, my boots exactly. are clean, yeah. my shirt is starch. You got dress blues, right? Yeah, I got dress yeah. blues. Okay, you you're suit? never going to wear a suit, Mike Dub. Never. You wear a suit. Oh, man. Let Mike talk. But, okay, but let, let him hey, finish. I'm to let him finish. But here's the, thing, here's the thing. Here's the thing, and y'all don't. That's the something y'all understand. I just can't decide. Oh, I'm gonna wear my dress blue today. It has to be authorized first. Yeah, as long they as have some, they have something the called minimum. uniform of the day. I'm not gonna. But then, Mike, but, but, then, but then, Mike, aren't you still required? Even if you're in not in dress blues, aren't you still required to walk a certain way, to carry yourself a certain way? To still uh -huh. to still exude the same level of respect as if you are in the dress blues. If you're yes. you're supposed to have a certain degree of professionalism, but at the same yes. time, you're still allowed to be yourself. Yes, yes, that's what I'm what saying. The, hold on, w hold on. What are we arguing? There are about? rules. Like, and like I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, cousin. Problems. Hold on, cousin. What are we arguing here? Because, like I said, it all varies on your profession. What you like? Why are we arguing? That character doesn't matter, or that a image doesn't matter. They both fucking matter, and regardless of it's to get you in the door, keep you in the door, whatever the case may be, all y'all motherfuckers is right. But I don't like the fact that we're arguing that they way higher than the other because <laughs> you're not actually putting context to the scenario. No, like I said, if I was a hold on, hold on, let me finish. Like I said, if I was a stockbroker, I doubt that the motherfuckers care about my character. They just give about if I make them money. 
That's it. I wear a suit, look like them, and I make them money. If I'm or a you plumber, can come in with sandals on. They don't I'm care as long as you're making a, them money. That's not true. Listen, that's man. Oh my god, <laughs> bro. <laughs> if and, and then also, I don't like the fact that we're equating extremes because we use Mark Zuckerberg, bro. If you're a billionaire, millionaire, you can wear the fuck you want. No, if you got influence, no matter you can do what whatever you want. You that's we're not, not none of us are those people. No, we are average no, it's everyday Joes who go work for somebody else, and hopefully we can build up something where we can have our own business and then we can start, you know, moving how dressing however we want. But until then, you better dress to impress if you actually want to get anywhere hey, in life. If you want to stay an employee, why they have a if you want hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. If you want to stay an employee the rest of your life, then dress however the fuck you want. Dress to the bare minimum. That's fine. But guess what? In Mike's dub situations, he is in an environment where, regardless, he has to keep his suit pressed, clean, his, his uniform polished. It cannot be dirty. It, it, everything has to be set in stone, regardless. He's not going to wear a suit, but guess what? That outfit still has to be clean, tiptoed down, or his superiors are going to come at him. He's not going to move up. He's going to stay right where he is, looking like a jawhead that they call him. And he's not going to get anywhere in that profession. Exactly. It is what it is. They both fucking matter, bro. I don't like that we're arguing. I don't like that we're arguing. One is higher than the other. No, but Sway, 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 it's a part of the story that they're not telling. As soon as I finish this, see, in the military, me coming from the military, what you what's required for you to get promoted is for you to get into your dress blues and you to fix yourself up to go. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. I was gonna get to that. And go into a board with your best forward to get promoted. So what we're saying is anyone who wanna move up, that's, you gotta bring your wrong, best foot bro. forward. That's all we saying. That's wrong, bro. Who said that's I was wrong? wrong? Uh, we gonna move on. Uh, it's me, uh, Joe. Uh, cousin Joey, you wrong. Unless you're going through a meritorious promotion. And you don't have to get dressed up or anything. You take a freaking test, Joe, you got your time, and then they Joey, so you, 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 tell me you don't have to go to a board different to branches, promoted. different branches. Arm, Marine Corps is different from the Army. Yeah, we're gonna move on. I mean, we're gonna move on. My, Did anybody actually watch? Hey, hey look, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I did. Well, hold on, hold on. Can I go Aaron, back? Aaron is the moderator. We can't cut him off, bro. He's gonna moderate this show how he's gonna moderate it. Let Aaron yeah, go Aaron. ahead. I apologize, yeah. Aaron. When you get get an opportunity, I just want to be able to say something. Go ahead. My what, bad. What's yeah, going uh, What's going on, Aaron? How you doing? Listen, bro. I'm, I'm good, man. I was just letting y'all run with it because you know everybody wants to get their thoughts out. But I was hoping that people actually watched the show <laughs> last night. I did, and then we would talk about the topic <laughs> about the show <laughs> for last <laughs> night. You know, they always now, do this to me. You, they always do this to me. To <laughs> Is, Give us a question. You know, look, a Aaron, Aaron, come in firing shots. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, they you always know, do like, this to me. Line up the questions. Know. Okay, Aaron, take over. I can pull them up. Uh, I remember the first question, and Anton did not answer it because he, he it doesn't it doesn't fit his black and white world out. But the first question was, <laughs> how? Yeah, that's the truth. How? Uh, <laughs> How how likely is long term relationships to end in marriage? How likely is long term relationships to end in marriage? Are you talking about statistic wise or realistically? I'm asking you can you can answer depending on how you receive that question. Can I ask one question? What's the bare minimum for long term? Like excellent question. They try to tie that in. So um, my God, five years. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I think I think five. Trill said five years. Uh, Let's go ten. Anton just, said 10 years married because he did so, but he he just by bull past the question. <laughs> I think Q tried to go back like no Anton, that's Dang, not Aaron. Question. Why are you why are you taking shots at Anton? He's not even here to defend himself. Man, listen, yeah. hey, listen, man. <laughs> and listen, ain't nobody taking shots. Hey, Aaron, anymore. can I defend why I say five? <laughs> Y'all waste a lot of time. I said, let's just make a let's just cut it even hey, can seven I years. Why I say five years and leave it at that, bro. Can we move yeah. on to the actual question? Seven years, yeah. leave it at that, bro. Seven. Seven. If we can't no, we listen, can't come to conclusion on five cool. or ten. Just say no, seven. Look, leave it cool. at that. Bro. Listen, listen, it can be yeah, whatever. Go. With Hold on. We're answering the question based upon your perception. If you because remember, if y'all was watching the show, it got crazy because logic said, Well, you know, in Atlanta, maybe you get 
two months, and I think Kayla might have said that two months is a long term relationship because the way they got hookup culture. So it was it was, it, was, it was a lot of thoughts out there, you know. And so I'm just saying, if you was watching, that's what you would have heard. So yeah, I didn't get that part. Question. Yo, long yeah, so, Trill said five. I, I kind of agree with that. I think I think somebody said three years though. Actually, I think three years is reasonable. I, 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 would, I would have to say yeah, five because that's where like you go on to all the five. at that point. Can we move to the question though? Okay, we yeah, agree. Yeah. All right, so I think that the chances of somebody actually getting married in a long term relationship is slim to none. If if, if they do it, <laughs> if they doing everything that married folks are doing. And they living together, they having kids, and they don't even see at that point. Most of those people don't even see the benefit of being married at all. So I think that they just stay in that situation is till they decide to move on. Or I know people who've been dating. Um, I know somebody real close to me. They dated all the way up until he died. And the, the crazy part about the crazy part about it is he. They, I think people truthfully and honestly don't see the value. And marriage ain't gonna get married. And if the woman know, put pressure on that, hold man, on. everyone yeah. get a chance to speak. Gotcha. One by one. That's yeah. Rob. That's Rob. He ain't say nothing to break. I'm gonna get him. That's Rob. How do you feel about this? Is he here? That's Rob. Rube. Rube. That's Rube. Sorry, brother. No, nah, we're good, man. First of all, if you if you if you're with a girl or if you're in a relationship for more than two years and you're not married, you're wasting your time. Let's go ahead and get straight to it. What are you really doing? Because you're not moving in with me and I'm not moving in with you until we're married. It's, it's, it's just not going to happen. So, And I'm not into wasting time. If it's at five years, if you're in a relationship for five years, you should be married. It's really that simple. So my answer is the same, kind of the same as E. If you're in anything longer than that, Slim to none. You're not gonna. You're, what's the likelihood of you getting married when you're with someone for five years and you're not married yet? What What were you waiting on? Great. Is there an age qualifier? Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there an age qualifier? Uh, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, Gray, 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 go ahead, brother. Gray, what do you think, brother? Um. I, I would gotta agree with E on this one. I mean, there's there's if if you're in a relationship, in fact I have a um an uncle that I you know, she's always been there. I thought that was my auntie. Technically you find out that they're not even married. You know? And they was together until one of them died. You, you know what I mean? They just never pulled the trigger. And so it, in a reality, it's like <clears throat> if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. All right, Anthony, what you got to say, brother? So I, I think that if you're going to get married, I think that it needs to be uh, – the two individuals need to be purposeful, they need to be intentional, and they need to make sure that they have a plan. And if they don't have a plan, if they don't have an end game, if, if, that, if there's not a financial stability there, if there's not a clear-cut understanding – of the, of the man is the head and the role in terms of kids, I think that people don't need to get married. I think that until you get that foundation and that base and you get get a woman that's on your program, don't even get married to her. Because if she's not on your program, then don't even marry her. And if you don't have a program, don't marry nobody. Right. What if you, what if, okay, what if you want children? Ah, uh, let's get everybody opinion first. Wait, we gotta be consistent. All right, all right, that's fine. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Aaron. I'm gonna go to cousin, uh, Buddha, and then Mike, and then I'm gonna ask that question. Aaron, go ahead. Buddha. Uh, uh, I would say, although I do know a decent amount of people that actually got married after being together for five plus years. Cap. I'm not. Ca I'm not capping. Rilla just yeah, did it, brother. Yeah. Rilla just. No, but listen, did it. listen. We we've had people literally on the Lapeef pup panel that have actually done that but that's that that's no, I'm but the, the, but I, I think that has something to do with about who let's not derail let's listen to aaron say what he got to say no, let's no, not derail. write aaron, your you questions know, down hey, 
Hold, write hold your questions. Down. Yeah, write. Get a notepad or your phone. Write your yeah. shit down. Aaron, yeah. go ahead. And you, know, and you know the best part about it is they're actually Asian. But anyway, moving on. From what? That, yeah, I know that goes against everybody beliefs that Asian people are just they're the most married and it, it, yeah they yeah I, I know a lot of Asian people right so but that that that's that's no. the only point. yeah 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 come to San Francisco uh but the point the point is I don't think it's I don't think it's too likely uh after all that <laughs> it's not about after all that it's that it's legitimately the answer to the question because he said. <laughs> I know I know this one person. Somebody else said, "Well, I know this one person." So I said what I know, but it's okay. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily think it's likely in the black community specifically. I think outside the black community, it is likely, but not in the black community because they more so know they don't know marriage. It's not very common within the last such and such bunch of years. That's what they just like they said. It's just. People just been together, so that's that's more normalized. But I think outside the black community, five years together, six, seven years together, didn't get married. I see that a lot. It's not. It's not. The, it's listen. It's not this YouTube talking points where they like you. I knew in six months. I knew in a year, and all this people. The thing that people like to say because they like to sell a particular like type of view to people. Let me write down my question. It, it, YouTube is very fake in a lot of ways. It's not. It's not very realistic. <laughs> but that's okay because that's what YouTube is for. It's to magnify things. And, and but like I said, I, I don't think it's super likely in the black community, but I think in other cultures and other races. It's All right, cousin, you got the floor, brother. Um, I'm trying to be diplomatic about this, man. But nah, go ahead, be funky, like okay. uh, like old boy said. <laughs> okay, I'll be funky. I, I I don't think I don't think I def I don't think that Western women are worth the the God push doubt. that everybody is talking about, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I, no, I, I you know what? Swain, I want to hear this, cousin. Be real diplomatic, bro. It ain't me laughing, bro. You right, can't keep it funky, bro. I'm, I'm muted. I'm mute my mic. Well, you, okay, okay, okay. Look, 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 look. I got a second. I got a second with him because look. No, no, we gotta look, get I look, everybody. I, Just, I, no, I, we all don't come. Listen, don't I want to hear cousin. The reason I'm trying my hardest. Listen, the reason I don't want to derail because everybody won't let. We gotta first see what everybody stand first. So we can be able to have a, a intense conversation. So yes. So um cousin, was you finished? Cousin, go ahead, Western no, women? I'm not no. finished, man. But go I was just cousin. waiting for everybody to get it out there. Go ahead, cousin Joey. <laughs> Look, man, you know what? How about this? How, Joey, me... start over because I didn't hear you. Start over. He said okay, these Western I'll... women ain't shit. No, I did not. I said they're not <laughs> worth the debate that we have right now. I mean they ain't in shit. other words, you're right. I said they ain't shit. But <laughs> you know what, man? I'm not gonna turn me into a bad guy. That's my thing. Here's my thing, man. Serious as I'm talking. When I got my divorce, I went out on a date with a woman. You know, and I paid for everything, everything else. And then she called me up. And she said, "You know what? I thought we we was cool, but I don't think we was that kind of cool." And I said, "All right, it's cool." And then I started realizing every time I just backed the fuck off and didn't care. They they kept calling me. They kept calling me. And then I started to realize, like, deep inside my soul, <coughs> fuck these bitches. <laughs> and that's all I got for you, Spike. I, I, I do. I boot it. No, no. Hey, hey, Aaron, hold that's on, your on. fault. I, hold, wait, wait, wait. That's wait, your wait, fault, wait, Aaron. Wait, you brought on. this question hold in here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold fuck on. These I just bitches. want to clarify, Joey. Joey, hold on. So basically hey, what fault. you're saying is it doesn't Welcome. matter – it doesn't matter how long you're with these Western women; they just ain't worth it. No, 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 no. No matter said, how long. No, you're that ain't what no, I'm no, saying. No, no. He said, no, no, he, he said, no, fuck no, these bitches. No, no, no. Let's be consistent, Buddha. <laughs> State how you feel about the question. I promise you, we are gonna get into it. I, just, just let everybody get it out. We got two, three more people. I mean, I, you asked me a question, and all right. I can say Buddha is and Mike. Go to, okay? We ain't gonna forget about That's you today. I, so Buddha, I, I so so Buddha, go ahead. 
All right, so the question <laughs> is how unlikely they are to get married <laughs> after a long-term relationship, right? Yeah. Um, I would okay. say... It, I would say it's highly unlikely, um, especially when it comes to the fact that, not the fact, but like more so, like people <laughs> don't really understand the dynamics when it comes to being in a marriage and what marriage is really about, and they're blinded by certain things. And especially if you're going on for like five years, some people probably don't have too much in stock when it comes to being like officially married. They just go with like, oh, we're just together, we're just going with the flow. So if it's going on five six seven ten years that it's highly unlikely it's still possible but highly unlikely i might might so what do you think can long what do you think about long-term relations uh, i have to agree with what he just said like it could happen but it's highly unlikely but it also begs the question too like why aren't you married and what are your reasons behind it so sway Good, that's good, Mike. Sway, because we want to get into this conversation. I want to get everybody's stuff out. All right, so Sway, what you think? You think they've been married for 14 years? You think he's gonna put a ring on it now? No, they've been like together it, uh, for 14 years. Just, I mean, uh, yeah. So, if we're going off the bare minimum of five, and then every year, I think if so, five years, I think that's probably the highest chance. And every year it keeps going by, it'll lower and lower and lower. Like my mom and my stepdad have been together for like 21 years and they have not married. So I think the longer it goes on, the less likely they are to get married, honestly. So every year you miss is like, what's the point? And that's in their brain. It's like, we're going to be together regardless. We don't need to go get the court involved. Or, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, maybe people just want to foot in, foot out. I think a lot of men might feel that way. Like they want consistent poontang and they don't necessarily want to commit to a woman. But uh, I don't know. Like I said, the longer just, they goes on, the less likely they are. So the only the only the only so, reason somebody who's been in a long term relationship get married is typically pressure from the outside. Like if somebody's outside pressuring them, keep talking about marriage, they get married. They're not just they're not. You just don't wake up one day. And you say, oh, shit. Today's the day. I've been with her for 14 years, and now today I want to make you into an honest woman and marry you. That is BS. Why would you do that? Like, the mentally, most people don't even e, think that way. E, 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 real quick. No, no, I'm gonna let, I want you to continue, but I want to be real quick. You, you think marriage should primarily be for religious people, right? In financial. There's a whole I, other I reason. Primarily, but okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I do think um, marriages have uh, spiritual beliefs, and I also think it's financially, yes. Hmm. So, it's All right. possible. Well, since we've gotten everybody's... Go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say... Hey, we, you know, yeah, we got to go back to these women ain't shit. I ain't forget. <laughs> hey, we going to go back to that. Now. Now. But I'm listen, so, so my question, th what I'm saying is this right here, is Aaron... I guess I can ask you this question because you're in a long time relationship. Why would you just wake up one day and decide that you want to be married all of a sudden if it wasn't outside influence? Business. Uh, I got a follow up yeah. question after that. Answer. Let him answer. Because I had a yeah, question I, too, if y'all don't remember. Let Aaron answer. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, bro. Yo, the way you asked the question totally went away from my head. Can you ask again? I apologize. So, Aaron, why after being with somebody for 14 years, a man would just wake up and say that he want to be married if it's not yes. outside influence? Yeah, I would say it, it would Business. probably be it would probably be one of two things, right? A, a lot. Of, so I would say one of two things. Like it's either you have a religious moment where you come to Jesus and you found the Lord, like you walk to the light and you change your ways, right? Or you just had a like a, a, a scary or whatever like moment in your life to where you had an epiphany like damn like everything that's important to me like I want to I want to like because some people hit things late like there's no like everything's arbitrary I don't think people hit everything at the same path to everybody else so I, I just think that you hit a light or something it hits with you it, it can change your mindset. I right, so Aaron, I'm gonna let Sway get his question. You telling me that these men that's in these long term relationships is gonna have an epiphany 
and some just go hit him in the head and say, "Now you need to marry this girl." Okay, you, so hold on, hold on. You didn't see, you didn't see the, um, you didn't see on Anton channel. He showed this pastor that was finally uh, got down. Nah, he, he was pressure. He was bro. But the point was, <laughs> how many years though? But but he the, was pressured though. See if pressure is. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. You you could call that pressure, but I, you think they wasn't saying nothing fifteen years before? Let's. Uh, it sounds good to say that, but come on, let's be real. But let me tell you about pressure. See, see, people don't understand is if you put just the right amount of pressure over time, it eventually breaks everything. And so, so, so what I'm saying is that you putting that pressure consi- continuously. Y'all need to get married. This is the right way to do it. And you re, you re, almost rewriting how they think. Then eventually, they be like, man, you know what? Dang. That person who told me that is right. Let me go ahead and get married. It might take some people thirty years, but it's it, it's not uh, it's not a thought that comes out of nowhere, out of your subconscious that you just hear in the back of a room in your mind and just say, "Oh, damn, today's the day." I just had this epiphany that I need to get married. Our mind just don't work like That's that. In my exactly opinion. what happened to Rilla, man. He got around Anton and all them and changed his area. That outside pressure. That's exactly what happened. So I guess I want to ask my question. I, I disagree with that. I, I, look, um, Rilla is his own man, y'all, but y'all believe what yeah. y'all want, man. I think Rilla is his own man when it comes <laughs> to marrying this girl, but I guess y'all, you guys brought on, up a religious way. aspect on, to marriage. Sway. and hold on, huh? hold on, real quick. Go ahead. People will get on this panel and say, I don't care what nobody else say about me. I don't care what nobody think about me. And in the same breath, pressure, pressure will make me do all kinds of things. Like, like this, this is YouTube. Welcome to YouTube, everybody. Go ahead, Sway. I guess, I guess, like I said, my question earlier was: I mean, people brought up a religious aspect and a business aspect to marriage, but I've always, I guess, at this point, at least in the West, I'm only getting married if I'm going to have children. That's it. That's the only reason I'm going to get married to a woman. Um, there's a business aspect to it if you want to grow and uh, you know build and that aspect too, but. I'm not going to get married unless I want to have kids. And I had that conversation with my girl. I was like, we have a plan years down the road. I might marry you maybe a year or two before we have kids, but I'm definitely not marrying you if we not having kids. And so she said, no, nah, kids are on the table. I want two to three. I said, fine, we're going to have kids when we're 27. So I'm probably going to marry you either the earliest is 25. I told her, that's the earliest you're going to get me. I'm not going to marry you in six months or a year or two, two whatever. I'm not going to get pressure. I'm telling you, I need to get my shit together. I need to get my finances. I need to get my life together. I need to move. I need to see if you are still the same person you were two years ago. And I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those guys who needs eight, 10, 15 years. But when I'm on the come up and I'm building at my lowest, I'm going to see if you want to rock with me when we get to my highest. So that's kind of how I'm coming point. from. When I'm ready to have that, kids that and I'm ready point. to settle down. That's not a good point. 25, yeah, 27. Good point. I've had this conversation with her, point. and she's down for it. She's not trying to have kids until we're 27 either. We're around the same age. Not. I'm a young cat. And notice doesn't apply to every man. A lot of older – they say wait until you're 35 or 30 to you know find a woman to get married. I, I've been fortunate enough to find a woman that is willing to get on my program young and is willing to grow and build. I told her I'm a builder boo. If you want to go get a 40-year-old man that got everything together, go get that nigga. I'm not stopping you. I'm a builder boo. We gonna work through this shit together. So I've already set in stone a plan, but like I said, if I'm gonna get married, it's probably gonna be for children. All right. So, so first of all, um, the one thing you said is this right here. And this is making my point. The last live we was on, I was talking about why women should set, set a standard going to a relationship, saying, "Hey, are we getting married?" And if they say they're not getting married, they need to move forward. So my question is. I, I hear this all the time is that I got to make it first. I got to be established before I get married. Why? If she's going to be there regard, throughout this whole time, why not marry her now and y'all y'all striving there together? I don't never understand, like, why don't we way. do it together? Because me and my wife, me, me and my wife, for example, I was on the come up. And I said, man, truthfully and honestly, I can get to my destination faster if I was married than if I was single. So I'm trying to understand this mindset of people say, I got to do it all by myself. Then I'm going to add you to my legacy later. Like, what No, she's not. I'm not doing it by myself. I think it's more so like the commitment and investment. Like I said, um, my job right now is about to have me be out of the area that we're in for four to five days out of the week. 
So, I mean, I think military guys can understand where it comes from. When you're deployed, there's a big, long-term – dis. like, I would tell those guys not to get married. But they feel entitled to because they're women, you know, for them to travel on bases or move around with them, they have to marry them. So it, I, it just depends on your circumstance. And I'm not – like I said, I'm not trying to pressure my girl to be with me. You have the option. I'm giving you all the options and you can make your choice for yourself. But like I said, I envision marrying you. It's just not going to be now. You know what I mean? And some guys, I feel like, I guess, you know, at least in our communities, we don't really have fathers. And sometimes, you know, when it comes to planning and paying for a wedding, sometimes they want to be ready for that. Sometimes they, you know, they want to be able to pay for their wedding and have a good wedding day and not just be you some little mediocre broken, shit. Go to but I, I'm not, I'm, like I said, it always varies. I don't but think you should saying. be in a five-year relationship and you shouldn't get married, though. That's stupid. I think well, if you're I, together I, at least five years, there's no reason not to get married. Well, I think the wedding's not important. I think you should go to the courthouse and get married. Like, like, like some of these I things, that, yeah, true. Some of these things that we make so important about marriage, oh, well, we got to pay for this. No, both of y'all broke. Y'all need to go down to the courthouse, pay $45 for your license, pay a judge to marry you. And e, you move. E. Let me answer your question real quick. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I want to answer your question while you said the problem that it happens is because people getting bad information. Young women don't want to get married young. They say I'm too young. I don't know myself. An older person told them not to get married until they get older. And then you got men telling other men, if you broke, you don't deserve a woman. If you broke, don't even be with a woman. You, you see how those conflicts. You don't even want to be with you because you broke. So, so when that. Yeah, exact. So they're hearing all this conflicting information, but men yeah. are still men. So they're still going to want the type of engagement with a woman, whether they have money or don't have money. But then they also know in the back of their mind, damn, I ain't got, I really ain't got no money. I really, so I can't <laughs> afford a woman. I can't afford mm -hmm. to take care of those shit. But they're still going to act like men. And then the women, like you said, they should say, hey, where do you see this going? But they don't want to get married young either. You only hear a very few of them saying that they do. But they're not doing the things that you said that they should do if they truly wanted to get married. They're like, oh, I, I just waited, I just waited for the guy. And uh, you're like, no, get, they don't want to get, get married, bro. They don't. Like, Aaron, I can tell you this right here. If y'all, if y'all brothers start proposing, these women gonna be married. Like, it's it's not this narrative that, that but you're no, missing. See, the, here's the thing. Is, they, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. E, how many girls have said they turned down proposals? E, I disagree. Mm -hmm. Tons of them. They so got, got two or three under their belt. Women bro, got two How many women, women have gotten engaged? They, 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 they don't want to get married young. E. I'm they collect the engagement queens. And Aaron, Aaron, how many women got engaged but never got married? Three, four, five engagements. Especially if you move the way that I'm talking about moving, you get with somebody y'all date. Um, if she say no, if you say hey. I want to get married, and she say no. Move on, like no, it's crazy. E, like, right. I, like, are you understanding that the information that people are getting is bad? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? But it, it always been bad information out there. It's never been a time where it was only good information out there. That's part. That's part of bad news. Toxic news always circulate faster than good news. That this is nothing no, new. We we do not always have these platforms to disseminate information at the rate in which they do and the influence in which they have. So when you're talking about, hey, E, I'm going to call you. I got to get to my landline. Wait till you get home. That doesn't exist anymore. Everything is literally four seconds. Information is shooting out. So it's not the same environment. So I'm telling you now, <laughs> young women are getting bad information. How many times have they went on KS Show and go, I wish I would have. When I was, man, I'm 45 now. I wish I would have found you a long time ago. Like, bro, they're not getting the information. I, I, I just don't think it's a whole bunch of women out here. I, th I, I think it's not a whole bunch of women out here just saying, I want to be for the streets. I just want to sleep with no, them. They, they want to get married. The streets, bro. <laughs> they do want to be married, but they don't want to get married till like they're in their 30s. Mm -hmm. They want to have their 20s and have fun. You got you to gotta look at the statistics as well. Like, well, not too many women. says that most, more women want to get married. Did not. That's what the statistics say. One, two. We're not, we're not arguing Buddha, that. We're, Buddha, we're arguing Buddha, the time frame of when they, they want to. They what do you have to say? What, what do you have to do. say? What do you have to say to the to the to the idea of waiting till you want to yeah. have children to get married? That's my um, question. I think, I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a good. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good purpose. Um, I, th I think. I think. It's being, I think it's I think it's deliberate. I think it's intentional, and you got a plan. I, th I, th I actually think you should get married first and set the foundation so when your kids get here, 
um, they they can have a foundation that's already together. Like you shouldn't. Like I think she pregnant. She's six months pregnant, and y'all trying to walk down the aisle is crazy. In my opinion, no, the foundation should be, be, be built. You should. You should the foundation has been you built. You can't move right into now. a house. You can't move into a foundation cracked up house. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why would you do the same thing for a marriage? What? what? You just. What are y'all just I you know y'all think two broke people. Listen. You said two broke people should get together. Just go down to the money, mm-hmm. and then you also said there should be a certain amount of money y'all should have before y'all have kids. Yeah. Do you not understand? So what? So conflicting information. Wait, that's not con- no, that's no, not no. conflicting information. That's one not, is talking yeah, about one person at a time, time brother. One person at a time. Not one person. Gray, what you I got listen. to say, G? Hold on, what Gray? What you got to say, G? Look, I mean, the thing is, if you know who you want to be with, um, sometimes you just gotta you gotta walk in faith. Yes, sir. I think that's where he's coming from. Yep. You know, uh, because there's no certainties in life, right? You know, you you may you may walk out of here and get hit by a bus, bro. Life is risky, and I can guarantee you to this: you will never survive life. So go nah, ahead. Nah, that's that's the guarantee for everybody. We all gonna end up dead. But you know, yeah, that's you know what, what I'm mean? saying. You, why not have the best life possible? Is what I'm saying is that there's there's no guarantee, and you you know that's your woman. <laughs> I mean, you can yeah, have it. You guys, I told her no, I'm 23. Yeah, and I know you got we got. Wait, how long have y'all been dating? Me, six yeah. months. Oh yeah. So you're like 20, I said, you I, y'all been dating I'm for 23. six months and you gonna marry about no. 25, two years. Oh yeah, you you're in the right time frame. I, I, I yeah. like I said, saying. I'm not tripping. I'm not like I said, 20, 25 is probably the earliest, and then by 27 is probably the earliest I want to have children. And so by 27, you know what I mean? You're le- you're going to get married. And I told her like, if we if you on my program and everything's going good and I can feel that energy for you, you here for the long run, I will marry you at 25. <laughs> So how that, long do you feel? How that's, long do you that's feel? That's a lot of ifs, Sway. No, yeah, so, it is a lot of ifs, and I told her, but I'm giving her the options if she can be with it or but, not. But, it is what it is. is. Is she the one that that you want there, Sway? Right now, she is. Oh, wow. Sway, don't say Ooh, nothing. That, else. that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, right. not going to do um, y'all tripping. Hey, I got Aaron. my shit in check. Y'all so, worry about hey, your own. Hey, women. I, I, I've I, had I these conversations y'all. with my girl. Y'all worry about what y'all do with y'all women and y'all wives. question. How long do you think you need to know somebody before you know she's your wife? Because you said that she's wife and material. How long did that take? Because you only been with her six months. It took me six months. I'll take a minute so, of a year. So you telling me <laughs> it took you six months to make a decision if she's your wife, but you're gonna make her wait another two years. Yep. Mm-hmm. I agree. Women, if you listen to these what men is, on this platform, hold on. I'm not ready. She wifey that, material, but fair. I'm not ready, G. That's it. That, I mean, that, like, I, I'm not fair. ready for it. I got I other priorities to do. And if she want to feel some type of way about me, leave, like I'm literally just starting. Like, like this. I'm going to be out of town four to five days out of the week. And if she can't handle that for these next four or five years as I'm developing my blue collar career, you know what I mean? It, I just want to, I'm, I'm just not ready. I got other priorities going on before I can even think so about it. So take your married. time, bro, because no, basically what ba- basically basically she what they're can. doing is just, I'm not hey, hey, <laughs> hey Sway. Basically what E is doing is doing what he is what he claimed earlier is that give you outside pressure to hurry up oh, and get married. Bro, oh, bro, take your time. I- that's yeah, yeah, because one, one, one thing I are, are, are you I'm not married? leading her straight up. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. One thing, well, Anthony, one thing I realized. Anthony, are you married? Been married. Uh, it, and did you take your you take your time? I married. So after so so basically, basically what I'll tell y'all is that so I'm 52. So I got married. Pretty much, I left my my parents' house. Move, move to live with my aunt and uncle to go to college, and then I got married. So probably, I, I was twenty one. Basically, long you your wife? hold on, hold on. Basic, I dated her for six months, and I will tell you that that was the biggest mistake that I ever made in my life. <laughs> <laughs> hold, on, hold on, so you've been married for like twenty? Hold on, 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 hold on. You're not listening. You, you, you see, see, you don't listen, bro. <laughs> listen to what I said to you. I said that I am 52 years old and I got married when I was 21 years old. 
which goes to the point that Aaron made that at that time when I got married, bro, I didn't know nothing about credit. I didn't know nothing about saving money. I didn't have my financials together. I didn't know anything. I had left my parents' house to live with my aunt to go to school and then immediately got married. So I didn't know anything. I don't so think anyone knows anything point, at that age. So, so but, but, here, but, but, but hold on, you're missing the point though. 20 over, over 30 years ago, if there, there, there was no internet at that time. So the thing about it is that you're missing the point and you don't listen and then basically kind of formulate and put it together. At that time, I didn't know nothing. So when I say to Sway, take your time, bro, build, learn yourself, get a plan, develop. So that way you can be in it for the long haul and not just, oh, well, by faith and just, well, well hurry up and get married. Bro, that shit don't work. It, but why it did don't it work. work. It didn't work because I wasn't groomed to be married. My parents didn't teach my, my parents didn't do it back then. And so you guys are missing the point. I'm talking about 1988. So did your marriage work or it didn't work? I'm confused. Because you said it, married, it didn't right? work. No, it didn't work. My my, my marriage in, ended in divorce. After, it didn't work. So after 30 years it ended because yes. you didn't you didn't have it figured out at 21. <laughs> No, I'm not bro, trying to be funny. I'm yeah. trying to bro, get no, understanding. Bro, 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 you're not trying to get understanding because the fact I, I of really the matter is, bro, no, you're not. And what you're doing is you're being ignorant and you're not listening to what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, I said that there was no, I didn't have a foundation built. So what I'm basically saying to Sway is build a foundation before you get into it. So therefore, when the storms of life come, when difficulties come, when the challenges come, when you hit those rock bottom moments, y'all can stand. And that's what happened, bro. We hit a rock, bomb, a rock bottom moment. We didn't have the right foundation to stand on. It got to a point where we both was, she wanted one thing, I wanted something else. And we were fighting for her to go this way and I'm going this way. It, it, it just, it got to a point where it's like, you know what? Let's just be great, amazing parents. You gotta have a foundation. You gotta be groomed for this. You can't just go get married just because you've got to be groomed. You got to see good examples. You got to see good role models. You got to be taught how to be married. You got to be taught how to be a husband. That's what I'm saying. You got to be taught. Listen, so my so, girl's not perfect either. She has room to grow. And honestly, like she's comfortable with this grace period because she also understands that she's not perfect and she needs room to grow as well. So like I said, we're kind of growing together. In my eyes, she's wifey material because she's actually cooperative listening actually willing to put in the work to grow she she can cook she doesn't always cook and that's one of the things she needs to grow into because like i said who's going to cook for our kids and she's like you're right so like little things like that that she's going to have to develop over time of these next two years and i told her if i don't feel like you is in that mentality of being my wife in these next two years and understanding your role fully i'm not going to marry you I'm so straight up with this woman and she understands that. And like I said, two years can change a woman. So like I said, we're going to see. And Bro, two years can change her, anybody. If we're on the same page by the same 25 and we are there, the next, I will marry you at 25, but you have to actually put in the work and be on the same page with me for the long haul, not just these six months. I'm like I said, I'm not one of these five, eight, 10 year people. I think, you know, respectively three years, if you go any longer than that, why haven't you married her? Is, you know so, what I mean? So, Sway. But that's just me. Exactly what I, how did, hold on, Sway. How did you come up with an arbitrary number like two or three as opposed to five or six? That's just me. But yeah, but see. It's just but my, you made, my, my personal. I heard it, but you made a distinction. I'm not like this five, six, seven, duh. I, two or three makes sense. It makes sense to you. Why are you making that distinction of five or six? Is what I'm trying to identify because to me, I, think, I mean, if, if honestly, if a man is if a man is waiting five to six years, and I feel like that's a maturity aspect. Like how, like how, like how much, like it's like how are you actually leading your relationship? Why are you why? Or it's just they don't want to get married. Like I don't know. Like in America, it's not really in your best interest as a man to get married. You know what I mean? There's a lot of consequences for it. So like I said, it's a it's too. It's too complicated when we're talking about these long-term ones, but I think 
if a man is waiting forever to marry a woman and is giving her false promises, that's kind of fucked up. It just I don't is a think lack of want to marry in the first place. Honestly. I'm marrying based off of children. I'm right, not well, on the religious aspect. I'm in the aspect of if anything is a business and is to help our children grow in the best environment. All right. So I so and the reason that I said that I believe that marriage have a lot to do with religion, because when we talk about foundation, I believe in me and my wife foundation is God. We can make it through anything. So that's why I believe that. Now, I know a lot of people strongly disagree with that. They say you know, they say people always always. Like, it's this crazy thing that we figure, we say that we got to have everything figured out and we got to have everything perfect before we move. And I, I think that's just, faith doesn't work that way. But E, here's the thing. I don't think it has to be perfect. You just got to be on the same program. That's it. He, Honestly, he's that's just what saying, I believe. So you e, got to be on the same he, program and have the same ready, goals he isn't in mind. ready. So E, yeah. who, taught you how to be, who, ta- who taught you about marriage? So a, a couple of different people taught me about marriage. So my 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 grand my grandmother and grandfather was married until they died, and the one thing that I learned about that marriage was I felt like my family stayed together because they stayed together. It's so it's so much in many values, wealth, and things that we learned because of them two was married. Uh oh. So, so. Go ahead. So don't you think that um that foundation is what taught you how to be married? No, I think it's a lot. It's a lot of foundations that kind of taught me how to be married. The one thing is, before I got married, the one thing we did is we took marriage counseling. We started counseling with people that have been married for thirty plus years, successfully married. Because just because you're married doesn't mean that you're successfully married. And what we did is we started finding out, you know, the mysteries. I tell people it's mysteries that goes on in marriage, and people don't understand them. And what you got to do is get around people who got more wisdom than you. And you got to commit. Like me and my wife, we say it all the time, is that we're going to be together forever. So we got to figure it out. We got to get on. We got to get this thing right because it's no out for us. So if, if we can't leave each other, we got to figure out how to make this the best. But that's where we're currently at. So, so e, one, thing that, one thing that I do like about you, even though I, I don't like it that you don't listen, what I do like about you is, is that you have a process you have a process, and every and every time I listen to you, I see that you go through specific steps. You go through steps, and you build, and you grow. You just don't jump into it. And I think a lot of times that that's what brothers need. That that's what Sway is basically saying. He said, "I'm trying to go through a process because if you listen to him, he said that his mother and his stepfather are not married. They've been together a long time." So his his maybe his view of marriage is different than yours. And the reason why he's waiting is because of something that he saw. So I think the thing about it is that the way you went about it, see the way you went about it, I didn't go about it that way. I didn't I didn't know to seek because I was too young and in my environment, I didn't seek that, seek that. My dad was married before he met my mom. As a matter of fact, my mom and dad wasn't married when I was born. So therefore, we all come from these different environments that shape our realities. But you, you come from a good environment, and that environment has shaped your reality. And I respect that about you. And, and I think the biggest thing is I'm intentional. Every like, um, if you ask anybody who have a real conversation with me, uh, what I'm doing is I am very intentional. The one thing that I have noticed is that people in this space, they say wait four to five years and they don't give you a plan for four to five years. So what you're doing is wasting time for four to five years and then you get down the road four to five years later or two to three years later, the biggest problem that we run into is you the same person, you in the same situation you was four years ago, you didn't do no development. So when me and my wife start talking about marriage, I can tell you right now, I proposed to my wife, we was married in 30 days. It, It didn't take me two years to do the work. Once I made up the decision that I was going to marry my wife, I said, hey, these next 30 days, we're focusing. We was, we was, yes, we was paying. We didn't get marriage counseling for free. We was paying for marriage counseling. We was having the tough conversation. We was talking about, you know, being together forever. I, I think some people, if you ask the woman that you're talking to, are you planning on being together forever? She's going to have 10 reasons why she's going to leave you before she get married. 
And so these are the things we start hashing out and start doing these things. And then we talked about kids. We talked about we talked about everything that a marriage and it, it, it uh, that talks about. We talked about submission. We talked about me being the head of the ha household. We talked about me taking care of the finances. This stuff doesn't take three years for you to know okay. a woman is going to give Aaron. you this power or not give you this Aaron. power. That's all I'm saying. E, but here's the thing: you are a very rare case. A I'm very very rare case because reality is is that people go into this mindset of marriage is that it's going to be a-ok -okay, perfect nothing's going to go wrong this fantasy world about marriage and so they never talk about the times of hey what happens if i lost my job today what will happen next hey what happens if we foreclose on the house where we're going to live they never mm -hmm. have these tough talks they only want to talk about the good stuff if she got you right. while you was broke, she, if you go back, bro, she should be tripping. Like I really believe that women that leave that that leave men, they get them while they got money. Then when they get broke, she never seen that. But if y'all built it from the scratch together, and she started off broke, and y'all made some money, and then y'all went back to broke, she's. I was like, baby, we right where we at. We can do this again. Let's 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 put on our big boy boots and let's make this thing happen. The one thing I love about Anton's story is that he said when he lost it all. Rita was there through it all because they started when they, I wouldn't say broke, but they started from the bottom and they made it to the top. They got hit down and they, they climbed it again. And I so I just think, I, I'm just, I'm just saying this right here is that I think is is dangerous for us to say, go out there and accomplish the world first and add that woman to you while you on the top of the mountain. And then you expect her to stay with you when you hit the, your bottom and the lowest. I, I just don't think that's realistic, in my opinion. Because did, did here's, the, on, I agree the, honest, I, here's on, the honest on, truth. On. All right, go ahead. Sorry, oh, I can ahead, agree Mike. with E to that sentiment. Like I said, I think it's a yeah, maturity yeah. aspect. Like I said, it's how mature are you guys in the relationship? Are you talking the tough, you know, asking the tough questions? Are you guys actually asking the questions that might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable? Exactly. I literally asked my girl straight up. Because I think um, Cam said it the other day because she said that she was JB's property. I said, baby, do you feel like you're my property? And like these are like imagine you asking your, your girl that like, do you like, are you my property? And it, she gave me a little bit of pushback. She was like, nah, not right now. I was like, OK, when we're married, are you 100 percent in my property? She was like, yeah, if, I, if you marry me, I'm 100 percent your property. She see, in a couple, like, right, a couple right, of relationships, I can see that going south. But that, that's red flags. Okay? I get it. See, see, the, the biggest problem I, I, so when, I, when I start talking to married people and we start talking about stuff, he, they told me the person she is today, that's going to be amplified 10 years from now. So don't think she just going to change just because of the simple fact that this happened. Now, I'm not saying that she can't change certain types of um, behaviors, but the foundation of her is not going to change. So she feels that she's an independent person. Uh, a piece of paper. No, that's not even. In this. But let me finish, Mike. I'm just saying a piece of paper. A, a piece Listen. of paper ain't gonna make her just say, "Oh, <laughs> now it's time for me to be submissive. Now it's time for me to do all these things." I don't think that's how marriage works. And but I'll let you go ahead. Well, Mike. that's not that's not necessarily what I was equating to. I'm more so. I'm trying to get her to understand that there are hierarchies. You know what I mean? Because when you're a young chick and you grow up in this, you know, Western mindset, you kind of have to pull them out of it and that's like i'm letting her know my views like i said that's why i'm building and taking she's not perfect but she's cooperative and she listens and i think that goes a long way when it comes to a lot of these young chicks that i'm dealing with they don't even want to listen to you they already have their mind set in stone i'm not i'm your equal i'm a partner I'm blah 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 like i'm like okay so this time what percentage are you in my property like i try to break it down she's like I say like, at this point in my brain, I say you at least sixty five percent of your prop my property if I got to take care of you, and like what you know die for you, do whatever, protect you. But I can also understand the sentiment where she's not, she wants me to fully commit before she can truly say yes. I am one hundred percent your property. I am one hundred percent your program. I am one hundred percent in you. You have proven to me that you're willing to be one hundred percent with me too. You know her too. So like, so like I said, I said it, it's, it's not, not as simple. simple. But my wife is not my property. I, I want to be completely uh, transparent. 
I'm not sitting here saying that she's my property. A property is okay. Let's not, but let's not derail. You know what I mean? No, I'm just no, saying no, that I was mean... a. These are tough conversations that men aren't going to have, especially when they're trying to talk about going into marriage. Like, how in bed is she on your program? Or yeah, she's but I still think you thinking that I have my own program. Property. You have your own program. Are we working together? It's like. I don't believe that shit. I believe you got to get on my program and then we can move forward. And how invested are you into my program? And I'm going to make her say that shit out loud. And I'm going to also see how she moves. Like I said, these are, it's not as black and white, but I'm not afraid to have these tough conversations these, and give her these tough questions. So, so Sway, Wait, hold on, hold on. So let me jump in here real quick. E. I'm, I'm about to drop off. Sway, bro, your two and a half year plan, perfect. I actually like that. Just remember, don't let that two and a half turn into five, turn into seven and a half. Of course. Once That's you figure out movie. that either she's with you or she's not, she's not with you, go ahead and let it go. Move on. Don't don't waste too much time, young brother. That's, well, my thing is, thing I, I got time. She ain't got time. That's my biggest thing. I'm mm -hmm. young. I got time for days. And I told her, if I ain't got kids by you and I ain't married to you, I have no commitment to you. You can leave. I can leave whenever the fuck we want. And well, we don't I'll want see. kids until we're 27. I'll so, so, in the morning. So, y'all have a good so night. But, but route, way, so, I think you just hit up square. I just think you just hit on a big point. There's a while, there's a lot of these people that uh, stay in these long term relationships, don't get married. I can leave and you can leave at any point. Yep. They don't have to have any tie downs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, E, can you expound like on why? So, wait, wait. So, are we saying that, are we saying that we need tie downs in order to stay with somebody? I think y'all got commitment issues. But so, ahead, so he, the only reason why you stay with somebody? It's like two people asking a question. Who asked that question, Aaron? Yeah, yeah. I said it's tied down. So, the only reason why you stand with I stand with somebody? No, I think I think you're making a very minute point because it's multiple. No, I'm asking a question. Why. No, I didn't make a point. I asked a question. No, th that's what I'm saying. No, it's multiple reasons why you should be with a person. We're not we're we're not single minded people that we only be with a person for one person. For one reason, so no, no. To so that I mean that just seems like the only difference between what you're saying in terms of being married and not being married. Well, we understand that you you just don't understand marriage. That's what you said. So it's no reason yeah. for you to try to explain something to you if you say you don't understand it and really not willing That's, to understand. It's not oxymoron if you said if I said I don't understand something, you don't want to explain something that you don't understand. But you, so how we, do you understand it? We already made a we already made an understanding that you said that you don't desire it and you really don't see the value. I, in it. I didn't desire. I said I understand. There's a difference. Well, well, you have made a point that that's not something you really want. Uh, so it's a reason for me to go back and forth that that's not what you want. I said, so, I said so, I don't so, 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 making assumptions too. So, so hold on, E. Can you talk about? Because I want to hear your thoughts on when he said that when you said that your wife is not your property. Can, can you talk about that? So my wife is not my property. See, the, I think the one thing is that we, when people get married, we try to erase their identity, and mm. I think. I think we, she, so we are one, I have an identity and she have an identity too. And it's important that she don't lose her identity because her identity benefits me with things that I can't see. She can see it. And that's why two are better than uh, two are better than one, because she, when we talk about being something that I'm lacking, she's strong in. I don't think she's my property. When, when you think about property, it's something I own that I can leverage, sell for other goods and services. My house, I own it. I can leverage that for other goods and services. I don't look at her. I look at her as my wife. I think I think we put women down if we say that she's a property versus wife. Those two things are just totally two different levels, in my opinion. She is my wife and she have my last name and we are one together, but we're not property. Um, it's she's so much more than just a property in my opinion. Nice. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Hey, I got one question I want to ask you, E. Yes, sir. Like I, I agree with you when you were saying like by like um growing growing with your partner and and building and and then you have that foundation to fall back on just in case something happened. But um so like I feel like that will only kind of work like in the earlier stages, cause like like how how would that work like just say like someone there is in their thirties and they just meet someone like how long do you think that they should be dating before they consider marriage because like 
Like you're kind of setting your ways and and then like you're kind of in a position to where this kind of like going to be it for us, like maybe a career or something like that. So like how long, like a person of age, other than like being younger, how long should they wait to get married? So I, I, I talked about this on a, a show, especially women, but women and men on their first date should come and talk about marriage. They should be talking about what they expecting. It is okay. If a dude said, hey, I'm just trying to smash. I'm not looking for a long-term relationship. I'm trying to get myself together. That's okay. That's not a bad thing because he's being honest and he's letting them know where he's at. But I truthfully believe, kind of like what Sway said earlier, it takes six months to a year rather you to know if that's going to be your wife or not. It doesn't take you. Now, now the key to those six months in the year is you must be intentional in that time. You must be intentionally dating. You must be intentionally learning who that person is, meeting her family. Like the one thing I tell you to do is um, – Take her, take her mother on a date. Spend some time one on one with her mother to see how she was raised. Spend some time with her father. Like have these different conversations with them because you realize what she came from. Because that that almost tell you what her foundation is. Uh, so I tell you, if you intentional for six to twelve months, you should be able to move forward and get married. But you know, in six months, if she if she for you or not. Like you, it's not like the thing is, is that what I hear, guys, that I talk to all the time. And six months, he said, yeah, man, I don't think she's good for me. But what he do is they try to change him. If she's not good for the mission and the plan that you got, cut her off and go find somebody else. Like, we need to learn how to 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 to, to sort through people. We don't have to get the first thing that we get. I was really good at sorting through people. In six months, I was like, you know what? She's toxic. She want to fight. She want to put her hands on me. This is not going to be good for 10 years. Thank you for your service. Now move on to the next person. We do it in business all the time. If a person is not a good a good fit for your business, you get rid of them and find somebody else. And marriage should be the same thing, in my opinion. But you want to know why a lot of times that doesn't happen? And a lot of times these people say in these long-term relationships, it's because they're afraid of starting over. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Well, that that if that's what I'm saying, I, that's crazy. I mean, if you scared to start over, that that's on you. Like, cause we can't move or, out of fear. And or pain. they may, or they may not like, find someone else again. No, that's a lie. No, no, especially especially young people. Like, if you you if you especially intentional, I don't think that. Like Sway, for example, I I'm pretty sure I bet my money if Sway was to leave his girl, he he can find another girl. Like you, you can find other people. Like it's not like you only get one. Like that is a bad point on YouTube that you got to take what you got because you only get one. No, your time is your enemy. You need to move through people as fast as you possibly can to find the person that's on your page. Hey yo, how you doing, Anita? Let's get your point of view. You just came up to here. How you doing? She here, Anita? No, Action Jackson. You got a point of view, brother? Yeah. Um. Well, the point of view on the on the marriage thing. Um. I think it just depends. I think it just depends on the situation. Like, like, like how you were saying, like, like the growth in. The growth in um the growth in the individual because like sometimes people are just not ready and they take on then a lot of people that do try to jump into a marriage that really early they jump into something that they're not really ready for like I mean I'm married it ain't taking me that long but it still took it took I couldn't I don't think I would have been able to do it at a younger age it took me into my thirties to really consider let me settle down and and talking about having a family and being a, being um being a married man like i couldn't see myself doing that in my early ages on just like basically just i say where i grew up background individuals that i was around um especially my brother looking up to him and how he moved like I think it just depends on the, the individual a lot of times. But I, I know for sure that I wasn't ready to. I was like about in my 30s. And the, the, the one advice that I got from some married people is I think the one reason that marriages fail is because they're not taught to forgive each other. 
They, they don't they don't forgive. They holding on to stuff three, four years ago that he did or she did. I think it really comes down to even if you're young, you old, if you get together and you can forgive somebody and move past that, I I, I think y'all guys can make it work. But the it, problem is people can't let go of shit, period. Well, I think they need to work on that because <laughs> And, and I think that's why me having a, uh, a spiritual belief is so important because it it taught me how to forgive. I, th- I think that's that's something that people need to learn how to forgive, how to let something go, uh, how to be an adult and be mature about a situation to let things go. And I agree with that. Yeah, because uh, because here's the thing, and I've experienced this myself, is that a lot of times in, in marriages, people hold resentment. And it builds up and builds up. And sometimes it could be over the most pettiest, most stupidest thing imaginable. And sometimes it could be over some serious stuff. But if you let that stuff just build up, build up, build up, it changes your energy. You're pissed off for no reason. You're always irritable at this person because something they did to you a long time ago. And it's now that you feel so wrong all the time, now you become numb. E, e let me ask you. How, how many years do you think someone should be married before they start giving marriage advice? And I ask that question because you're a married man. And the reason I, think, I ask it because – go ahead. Go I, ahead. I'm sorry. I think it's depending on their wisdom. I, I know people who've been married for two years got a whole bunch of wisdom that people who's married 30, 40 years don't. I think the fruits of their tree really matter. Some people trees take a little bit longer to grow, but they got fruits on their tree. I listen to them. I know a good example for that, Aaron. I know a guy who only been in business for seven uh, seven months, but his business is going crazy. He can give me advice on my business, um, not because he's more smarter than me or he's more wiser than me. He just know what's working now. So I don't think it's really a time frame. I think you got to measure the wisdom of the person. And the only reason I ask that because I'm trying to get a, a like – a perspective on if someone says I've been married for 20 years in my mind when you give an answer like that I'm like who cares if you married for six months that should be good enough like like a lot of times people put value in time and I understand time is our biggest asset but I'm saying a lot of times put people with value in time but you say successfully married all right we know who that's coined by but nobody actually explains what that truly means and then subjectively do you think most people that get married are going to be successfully married or do you think they should just get married regardless if they're going to be or not? I, I think I think it's it's a it's a blueprint. So the so the reason time is not important because we kind of talked about this a little bit early. Somebody can be dating a woman for two and a half years and they're not intentional, so they're in the same spot they was in two and a half years ago. Then you have another man who been dating for six months and he been intentional and he's twice as far than that person who been dating for two and a half years. So the one thing that I'm trying to help you guys understand is that, you know, I don't listen to what people are saying. I, I, if, if you listen, if you, if you really listen to what married people are saying, you can see the fruits If listen and look. If you listen and look, you can see the fruits of what they have in their relationship. You can see it. But you know, if somebody's arguing, you know, if they're not on the same page, like, like, the, the proof is in the pudding. Like I know people, I've been had conversation with people and I know that they marriages, their marriages is, is pretty rough. And it's just because they're not intentional. Intentional is so important. Not only that, it's for validation. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that, E. Like I'll I'll listen to my father in law and mother in law before I listen to, to some of my relatives that's married. Because I can see the dynamic of that relationship. Mm. But here's also, but here's also a thing too, Aaron. When you talk about with uh, six months versus twenty years, those first six months could have been rough. And those first six months, the ones that married for six months could have went through stuff that the twenty years never experienced. And so, it, the the reason that I say this, right? Because I, I I like to anticipate, right? And what I know it is. If he wasn't married, right, and he was having a conversation about marriage, people was like, E, you sound all good, but you're not married yet, so don't, yeah. And then he say, 
Well, I know we had this conversation six months ago, but now I'm married now. So let, let's re, re, they're gonna say you only been married for six months. And if he's married for two years, well, you only been married for two years. Somebody actually already said that. And then it's like what you'll find with people is <laughs> They have all these additive. People listen to who they want to listen to. They have so you all understand these, what I'm saying? And yeah, they, they have all these reasons to dismiss your case. If they if they want to listen, they will listen. If they don't, they don't. Like it, it all it always amazes me about how people think, right? So for instance, people say that you need to how do you say it? Um you you need to be uh you, you have to find like what's the word I'm looking for? You're you're trying to find a related something that's relatable, right? When when you're people want to relate to you, right? There's just a whole relating thing that people want. Like they want some type of relate. Oh, so like oh, if you want to lose weight, right? For example, they would prefer to listen to somebody that has lost weight as opposed to someone that never had to lose weight. It's right? a recap from um last night's show. But 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 what I'm saying is this right here is that the knowledge that I have today is not my knowledge. See, everybody look at me and say, oh, this must be something that he got. So it's a book, I, I especially if you want to get married. It's a book that called it's called Love and Respect. And it talks about women need love and men need respect. And it goes into details of talking about how men and women interact with each other, especially when you talk about from a marriage point of view. And me and my wife, we read this book before we got married. As a matter of fact, it's chapters in the book that's only for men to read and only for women to read, right? So when you're intentional, you're adding knowledge to what you're doing. Now, throughout these last three years that I've been married, I've been I've been putting those things in play, what I'm currently doing, and then I'm exercising those muscles. Some things work for my marriage that might not work for somebody else's marriage. And what happened is... When you get better is when you on the court playing basketball. You can be like, so that's what I'm saying is as you in the game actually doing it, that's when you develop that muscle. So that's kind of what I believe, in my opinion. Okay. Look, you wanted to say some of that, Buddha, because I want to train. I just bought that book. Um, yeah, because I was, um, was going to say when it comes to like uh, also coining back to your question regarding to the, uh, the advice of, of people who should give advice about marriage when it comes to time. In most cases, the not time rewards experience. So, if just for me, like say for me, I will more likely be have my ears open for somebody who had twenty years versus six months because they have time and experience in that marriage. In most cases, they're not. So, more likely, they will have the experience to be able to give advice on certain um, certain situations than somebody that's only been married for six months. Now, yes, in some cases, some people that's been married for six months can have more knowledge or wisdom than somebody for 20 years. But is that the most cases? No, I, I, I would kind of disagree on that. And then going to what E last point that he said, you get better when you're on the court. No, actually you get better when you get off the court because you just had the experience of the game of what happened to learn from it. So kind of mm -hmm. like the same thing when it comes to the time, it's more so the after effect that makes you better. So, you know, okay, I know to do this different next time. So that's what I'll say regarding so, that. So you, you believe a basketball player get better off the court than actually playing? Yes. Yes. If you will look at somebody like Kobe Bryant, he would, he would more than likely would have coined to the same thing. Yes. You get your skills while you're on the court, but you don't really get better until you're done with the game because you can look back at what happened during the game and learn from it. That's what film is for. You grow more and more and more after the fact. I get, I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. 100% what Kobe did. But, but I think that what E is saying is that you still need – Kobe had a blueprint, and I think that that's yeah. what E is saying. You've got to have that blueprint first. Yes, true. You have to have Before you – you got to have the – and that's what he's saying. You got to have a yeah. blueprint first. Yeah, true. You have to have I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care all the moves you do on the court. It doesn't mean that it's going to work in the game. Like every right, – You got to have the blueprint. Yeah, so, so – True. Yeah. You have to have the blueprint, but – and you don't know if it works until you actually do it. So wouldn't that right, not be experience? Right. That's experience. Uh, like, Michael Jordan so, blueprint. Are we really – so, come on, bro. <laughs> so Michael Jordan was literally the blueprint for Kobe. Chill out. And I would, I would say, say hold on. I would say 
Tim Grover is the blueprint. Complete. Who? Tim Grover was the blueprint. The the dude for the uh, the Celtics, right? Who died? No, he's the he's the oh. he's both of their trainers. Oh, oh, oh but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I know you. I would say that Michael Jordan was the blueprint, but because of what Kobe was able to witness and then experience of what he did, Kobe could be better at certain things. Oh, oh here we go. So, Aaron, but that's a whole different about? conversation. Yeah, so we'll we'll transition. So one of the other topics was: uh, Are women been pressured to what was it to fit a Do you certain standard? look to be chosen to get like surgery? And, uh, no, absolutely. No, no. Absolutely. no, absolutely, no, absolutely. Okay, one at a time, one at a time, man. I believe they're being pressured by other women, but men don't help. Yeah, we, we pressure them too. That's me. No, that's BS. Just take your ugly women do. and marry them. That's not true. It's, it's a certain standard that we pressure on women. I think I think women get pressure, but indirect pressure from men. Meaning, like they see mm-hmm. things, they see things on the internet. Like they may see like a woman who gets all these likes. They let me see like a Bernice Burgos get all these likes for a picture and say, "I got to get this body like her." But they don't. I don't think they're getting direct pressure from a man saying, "Yo, you need to get uh, you need to get a uh, b- butt injections." And then one thing I realized, that. and then one thing getting, I realized too, no man is saying that. And one thing I realized too, that women are very, very harsh on each other when it comes to beauty standards. Yep, I agree with you. If men would set the standard, then women would do all all this. But butt but injections. I feel at the same time we was set, we've been setting the standard for how long, and they still like no, we don't care. We're gonna do what we want to do. We give them but, that but, attention. They get more attention when they get these booty injections and these breasts. Right. They get more attention. So we're yes, set. Yes, we're yes, you're right. What you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. What they get attention, but the main goal what they want marriage is not get the word they're getting. The only thing they're getting is attention. No, and they're mix, they're mixing they're mixing the intention uh the in- the attention that they're getting they're getting sexual attention but not relationship attention exactly so, right, that's right, that's what it is. Two, right and then they right, make the mistake right. they don't know the okay, difference men i'm telling y'all this. these girls with these butt injections and these fake titties if they, they put a stand if they put a standard that they get, want to get married they can get married like it's not dudes are not just like oh you got butt injections I'm not gonna marry you I get the YouTube talking point that if if she got something fake we ain't gonna talk to her if it's not her real hair BS BS y'all know half of the women y'all dating got weave in their head right now so stop making this this theory that we won't marry them or we won't be with them if they not a hundred percent natural it's, is it's that hard. wait hold on is Actually, that, I've never dated I've never dated anybody long my time my wife is a hundred percent natural. Is yeah. that men or is that men I've never dated about saying do. that they will accept that, or is it that men are saying, Oh, this is all I can get, so I will take it? I don't think that I don't think that is is that it's like it's just stuff is just starting to come to a norm. Like it used to be it used to be kind of like hidden, like you know what I'm saying, you try to get some kind of surgery or something like that, and then like women are not just getting enhances for just the um for men sometimes it's just to look they self look a certain way that they want to see you know what i'm saying like for their self-esteem it's not why always for someone else I so call it, it, it can be that i, I, I wish I, that I, well. I wish i had the power if all these women who's getting all this plastic surgery stopped getting attention they would stop doing it like it, it was, it was, I agree with you, that. Like, like, I agree it, with that. They do it because they they feel that this is the things that they want. What we see, Nicki Minaj got the butt, and guess what? She got a husband. Like, like, Cardi, uh, uh, like, what's the what? what's the name? She been had the butt. Who was her? Who's her husband though? That's who's her husband. Husband. He's a pedophile. Uh, now we trying to qualify who's the right man and who's the wrong man. That was going. I mean, there's a difference. That was going. That's, a, a, big, that's that, a big is, difference. Is it, is it these men that want it, or that only that what they can get? This dude is what in jail, and he's was a pedo. So her husband's really not a good example. No, what I'm it's saying that. is that. They, they, I mean, they, if we talk, if we're gonna measure by that standard, any woman could technically get a get a uh, get wife up. There. Yeah, anybody can, but it's not and the then, man, not the way that they want. You using her like she a terrible example. Like no, when she progressed, a- the, the 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 men that she got with after Safari, like her life got worse. Her career started going down. 
y'all y'all missing the point. See, now y'all trying to say is the man qualified? What we're saying is people like uh, what's the uh, Kanye wife name? Um, Kim K. Kim. Kim, Kim Kardashian, she got all this stuff done, and when you, we look at it from the outside looking in, because we don't know the personal stuff, we don't know what's really going on in that house, she got all this stuff and she's married, so when people talk about, I just want something 100% natural, it's cap. These women are getting the desires that they want. She's divorced that's, three times. But see, that's but not, see, that's not what we're saying. Okay. That's not what we're saying, though, but hers, but hers look more natural. Like like Nikki's, mm. it doesn't look it doesn't look right. Like Kim I'm, look more natural. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying different. I'm actually saying that. You know what? I'm saying that if this woman was standing in front of that man, whether she had the plastic surgery or not, she was gonna get that man. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. The man didn't ask um, for it. The man didn't say that. Oh, you need, need the butt job. I disagree. I no, I disagree. I don't think that these women. If you would see some of these women in their natural form. I don't think they would have these men. I disagree. I think the pressure comes from social media because a lot of times yes. they're going by what gets the most clicks and likes and comments. Exactly. It's Which typically is the big booty, attention. big titty, exposing, you know, most of their bodies. And that's probably where the pressure comes from. You know, so I don't think you- it's like a direct like men saying, oh, I want this specific model. I think they're going by whatever gets the most likes by men. So when y'all walk outside, I'm just curious because when I walk outside in Seattle, I don't see a whole bunch of plastic surgery and all this stuff. Is y'all just seeing that that's all well, in y'all environment? Seattle in or Washington State in itself is majority men anyway. So, but like even if like what? but like I think that you got to look at Seattle's the majority though. guys. Majority G, look those, it up. Majority of chicks on, on Instagram who got the who got the butt injections, who got the BBLs and all that stuff, they're not getting married. They're getting ran through by the by those celebrity dudes, by the rappers, by the celebrities. They're getting ran through. They're not even getting dates. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's on the if, if, if y'all think y'all, y'all think these Instagram models couldn't get married if they wanted to, y'all are they get married, but they're not getting married. To, they want to get married to Chris Brown. No, see, That's but you miss, you, you're missing the point. The point that I'm making is these women can get the desires that they want if they choose to. No, they no, can't. No, they can't. No, they can't. Here's the thing. No, they can get married, but they can get married to who they want to. Wait, you just hold on, hold on. E, you just said if these women wanted to get married, they could get married. No, they can. They can. And when not somebody, to want. not to who they want to. They can, they can get married. Also you can find a simp and they'll propose. You, if they no, want to get married, no, no, no. they can try to talk. Who, who, <laughs> who, <laughs> who, <laughs> say, who <laughs> me to say that their marriage wouldn't last long? See, it, no, no, this, no. But wait, that's is, not the point. Because you say no, that if they want to get married, they can get married. I'm saying that they can get married. Everybody, calm down. Calm down. Let E answer. Okay, go So what I'm saying is this right here. If these women that we see on Instagram, they can find this high value men and marry them like when we start talking about these high value men that everybody throwing around somebody's six figure good character i'm telling you they can they can find that like yeah. it's, it's, just, it's just crazy but, but, here, but here's the thing that you're messing no. up does no, a high wait, value wait, wait, man hold on, want my dub, hold on hold on my dub hold on hold on because he is saying these women could get married if they want to he said that yes then why are there so many women? Wait, wait, wait. So to high value the, men. To high value men at that qualifier. So you th- you think these so y'all in y'all opinion, y'all think like these these Instagram models, right? That's on Instagram, they got this fake stuff. Y'all think that they just can't get married, they out of luck. All right, they so first of all, let's first of all let's qualify this E. Who do they want to get married to? It's not that's all that matters. No, no, that that doesn't, doesn't, no that's no, all that, that doesn't, matters. That doesn't matter. Because <laughs> what? guess what? Because guess what? They can go. I mean, that don't matter. you want to be real this with it? Is, you want to be 100% ridiculous. real and be like, they can marry, get married? Yes. They can find somebody in their comment section and say, yo, 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 I want you to marry me. They're going to they're gonna get married. Find somebody you, in their comment you, section. You're missing but they, the point. But they want to get married. Wait, hold up. They want to get married to the celebrity. They want to get married to Diddy. They want to get married to Chris Brown. They want to get married to somebody who's famous and celebrity who's high status. They want to get married to those people. They're not; those people are not marrying them. Those people are going. You're to talking them. about That's a selective right. group of women, bro. All women don't have that small mindset, bro. It's okay. it's it's a bunch of men out here. That's getting it done, and and they can get and those those women can get those men. Like it's nece- it doesn't necessarily have to be. They a don't want them though. 
They don't want him. So I, what was the original so question? Me, I, I think y'all so missing me, y'all missing so the point. Me, so you telling me that you will choose a bad built regular woman over somebody that got a little work done and it looks and it looks natural. We're not talking about regular people. We're talking what about was the original question. The original question. So if you if you look at it, of somebody who's like a Bernice Burgos or someone who's like a Britney Renner, she's not gonna go after a regular dude. She was with a regular dude. Run. She was Brittany Renner was with a regular dude. What regular dude? What? Before Ooh. she got with her baby dad, she was with a regular dude. Bro, she's she from Alabama. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, they were running through her. They were running through her. No, 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 no. Because no, 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 peep game, peep game. She was with a regular dude before she got famous. And I followed Brittany Renner on Twitter before she. But got But she's famous. still attractive, though. What does that matter? What was the she's original? okay. She's all right. She's okay. Yeah, you really she, I, 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 I really I, 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 I think if she, y'all she mentioned the, with me, the, the original topic be was. The original topic what was the original right question? Here. The original topic. I'll make up, bro. Hold on, but one second, Aaron. The original topic was this right here: was these women being influenced to be able to get the, the uh what they want? And what I'm saying is, with the booty, with the chest, men are running around here saying that we want all natural. But if these women was to give y'all guys a chance, most of them would marry. No, exactly. I would still choose natural because that's what I but chose. They, but they would. But first of all, number one, they don't want. They don't want. They wouldn't want anybody. That's uh, you, Mike. People. Can I say something since I'm a woman? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. No. I'm no, gonna tell well, you no, no talking, <laughs> woman. You're in the presence of men. <laughs> <laughs> this is what <laughs> happens when, <laughs> when there's no woman on the panel. I'm gonna tell y'all something, right? I believe that women and men, there's options for anybody to get married out there, right? Mm-hmm. Is it the options that we want? Hell to the no, right? Oh, At times, right? Um, what was the question? I'm going to tell you all this. What I've seen is that men lust over women with the, in, that are Instagram models that have the, the bodies done and everything mm-hmm. like that. Y'all glorify some men, some men glorify these women in songs. L- l- let's just be honest, right? So it's hard, right, sometimes as a woman to sometimes accept ourselves because we see this going on. We see these three or fours or or Instagram models getting wiped up. But then you guys here, it just makes sense because you guys here, you want a natural woman. You want this, you want that. The why is it that some of these men are glorifying these women so much in songs. Yes, it's lust. Yes, y'all just want to fuck them. But y'all not even giving attention to the women that are natural like that. Women like that reassurance. Women like that type of attention. But it does look bad when y'all are glorifying these type of women. But but here's the bullshit. It don't make sense. But here's the thing, though, Q. We were just, I just got said, I like natural women, and I got shut down like that. That's the things that happen. And I, I've never dated, I've never seriously dated a woman who was, had anything done to her, or even weave. Like that's the thing. The the small mind, the ones that do speak out, they get called capped on. And plus, um, plus bad behavior sells more. It's more mm-hmm. appealing. So yep. it 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 looks, it sounds better to say you like the artificial versus what's actually like real. And also, I started off by saying, like, uh, at the top of the question, women, uh, somebody said women are pressured by other women to try to fit into the emotion standards, but men don't help with it when it comes to the uh, the lustful stuff. Men don't uh-huh. help. But women are pressured by women, but men also do not help when it comes to it because they get confused with the we lustful both play attention. Role. We both but, play yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really compare myself to women. It's just I see what how society has completely changed. You're right. In the 90s, it was totally different. You had women that were natural, no weave, no, barely any makeup, and that was accepted. You can tell the difference between music back then and the woman that the women that were in the, the music videos compared to now, compared yep. to the BBLs, compared to the video vixens with the ass and titties and whatever. It's completely changed, right? You want a long hair, thick red bone, whatever. So it's hard sometimes when we when we see this, but y'all here it's it's confusing. 
Because then you hear nobody. This, nobody you wants know, a three or four. Nobody no, no, wants no. a three Y'all or four. Y'all lust over these type of women. Everybody um, wants it's, the, it's eight, yeah. eight, nine, and ten. Y'all, y'all say that, but y'all lust over these type of women sometimes, right? So, so it's just it's just hard because y'all say y'all want natural women, but y'all lusting over women and not giving those type of women that read stuff, that got glasses, that are natural, that don't really wear makeup. But then sometimes y'all make fun of those type of women. So it just doesn't make sense. You know how much times I've been on panel? Well, I've been on panel a lot of times in no makeup. Oh, da 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 da. She looks like this. She looks like that. It's like we can't win. And then also on top of that, don't let her be a size 12 or 14 or 15. And don't let her be a little thick. Then they're going to be like, oh, well, she, no, she's not she's not thick. She's not slim. She's not this. No. It, you know, men are the one that set the standard. If we would change our ways, women would fall in line. If we would start, if we would start giving the threes and fours likes, then you know what? All the girls are doing the BBLs. Which, by the way, what does BBL stand for? Hold on. Everybody, calm down. Calm down. Hold on. So, you saying men should start focusing on three and fours? Hell no. I never no. said that. No. Who said that, Aaron? Who's the three calm and four? Down, calm down. Calm down. I said it. I said it. I said it. Aaron, I said it. Aaron, I said it. I said oh, it. I don't say well, it because I listen. Who, who, Anthony, who's considered a three and four? Natural women what? in your eyes? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me clarify it. Because this whole thing about rating women as far as numbers and crap, I think that's a bunch of crap. This whole, well, you, you know, you're seven or eight or nine. I think that's a bunch of crap. I think that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And a woman, okay. for me, at least, a woman, what? for me, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What's beautiful to you may not be beautiful to me and that's, vice versa. So what I'm true. simply saying is this here, is that we need to take our folk. I'm saying the same thing she's saying. Take our focus off of the lust aspect of it and then now on the woman that's natural, that's naturally beautiful, that's beautiful, that's going to help us build, that's going to get on our program, that doesn't need all that attention. But see, just because they're natural doesn't mean they're three and four. You said three and four. That's a totally different. But, I'm, but, but I, was being, I was being facetious and sarcastic because I don't even believe in this whole rating system. There, there should be no such thing as a rating system, and especially rating women. Like, you don't rate a person. Like, that's wrong. No, but the crazy part is that the wrong were rated. I disagree. People rate everybody. Said, everybody rates it's crazy people. that we've been we've been rated our whole life. We go through school. They say, "Hey, you the A students, you the B students, you on the A B on the road, you on the A on the road. Hey, you got perfect attendance. That means that you ain't doing nothing else. Like we've been rating people our whole life. I don't understand why. You want, can't you want to know why? You want to know why? It's only time it's a problem is when they give you a number you don't like." Exactly. Yep, that's true. Yep. 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 That's exactly. Let me give you an example. If you walk up to a woman and say, you're beautiful, she will accept that. She will not challenge you and say, well, why do you think I'm beautiful? She'll say, thank you. But if you walk mm-hmm. up to a woman and say, you ugly, she would be like, no, the hell I'm not. Well, well, why you challenge that? But then challenge the other stuff. Well, well, I don't think we should be walking around just saying, "Oh, that's a three, that's a four, or you an eight. I'm not saying that. Regardless of the point, the point Mm -hmm. that Mike Dub was making is, if it if it makes you feel good, you will accept it. But if it's the inverse, you will fight it. Yeah, the only only time you have a problem with the numbers is like, oh, I'm okay with being called an eight nine. Seven, eight, nine. But as soon as it gets below the fives, then it's a problem. Well, one thing y'all got to realize is that everybody's three is not going to be the same. Everybody's exactly. not going to have the exactly. same ranking number. Exactly. Like, exactly. my wife, all natural, beautiful. You know, and like, I was not, I've never been attracted to all that face. Here goes another it's, one. It's nice to look at. Don't get me wrong. But like, it ain't nothing I want to take home. It, it ain't, it, it ain't for me. Never have been. How it sound like that? y'all making it sound like y'all making natural ugly. Like that's what to me that's what's confusing about this. Like natural can be beautiful as well, but like we don't we don't don't nobody, don't no man want no ugly chick, bro. I'm not but, walking around but, with no ugly chick. But well, I'm I think not walking around with no whether she's natural, whether she got a BBL, 
Like, I do not want no ugly chick. Like, quit making it seem like natural is, is less than a BBL or, or, or a video vixen woman or whatever. Like, natural could be a 10. Natural could be a 9. Like, uh, y'all make it seem know, like well, y'all saying, I, I, natural, I, I, y'all I, saying I, natural in a negative kind of conversation like it's like so like, let, me ask, let, me, let me ask this question so the to the whole panel are y'all saying that if a woman put on makeup or a woman with enhancement she don't look better no sometimes not nah no, she no, looks no, like no. a clown that's you the whole thing that's the whole wait hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on what was the question like wait, wait, wait. Went out. what type of enhancements are we talking about exactly so restate the question E, 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 restate the question. Restate the question. What I'm telling you is, you take a woman who is natural, and she put on makeup and enhancement, like she put that that stuff on to make a, a face look thinner, everything look different. She looks better. That's what uh, the, the makeup is designed to make you look. That's better. not true. Now, hold on, That's not hold true. On, let me finish. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that she should be all caked onto her face and she should overdo it. But I can tell you, it's a reason we go to fine dining. Um, places while women put those things on while women take pictures in makeup because it typically make them look better. No, uh, we're not. Ar- we're not arguing those ones that look better. We're talking about the ones who overdo it. Yeah, because Ooh, I was yeah. Like, me personally. And, and, and then here's know. the thing. Here's the thing too is like we are so so focused on the extreme. <laughs> And that is that is. Well, no, what I'm saying is, every woman look better. If she look really bad in makeup, she look even worse natural. But what I'm trying to say is, with the whole BBLs and all this stuff, with all the fake body parts, we're trying to say is like, not all men want that. But because nah, look. but because of the way social media is set up, it. it it makes everything extreme to make it seem like that's what everybody wants. Mike, my you wife has all. never worn makeup, not even for our wedding day. And this is this is a picture of her right here. My no makeup, no nothing, yeah. all natural. My, my words are don't look too times. hard, uh, Anthony. Come on now. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. So I, I my wife wears makeup every now and then. So no, I, my, get I gotta be real. My wife don't wear no makeup, none, not a blood clot team. She want nothing. Okay. So, Jenna, can you hear me? So, hey, so Mike, do you feel when your wife wear a little makeup, does she look better? Yeah. Okay. So, but I'm not gonna sit here. But I'm not gonna sit here and go, "Oh, you need to wear makeup all the time." Mike, do you want to? Do you want to take? Do you want her to? Do you want her? Do you want to lay in the bed with that? Like, is that what no, you want to go to bed not, with? Was her makeup on all night long? Because, because who here's wears the, makeup? No, I don't yeah, think women are wearing point, makeup. To the point is, the only reason makeup was was produced is to make a person look better than what they currently look. It wasn't uh, to make them look worse. So uh, for, us to, for us to be on this panel trying to make it seem like women I guess, look worse I, with makeup is just crazy. I, uh, I, I think, think, so, I think, so, I think that... Distracting so that, with the surgeries and all that, with all the chopping and splicing, and the makeup got thrown in the mix. We were talking no, about makeup, the BBLs. Makeup was before the BBLs. Because yeah, not I was oh, whatever. I would say, me personally, so, no, I don't think okay. makeup makes um, a woman looks better. Actually, I think women without makeup look better. But I can ag- agree with your point e, that yeah, makeup does um, like outside of so, me, yeah, makeup does make a woman look better. So, now, look, I, 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 start, so why don't you start? So I tell you my eyeshadows and stuff like that. That's when it starts to get a little crazy. So, so I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you my preference. Who I think is, I'm talking about who's who's like extremely gorgeous to me, and all y'all know her. On the, I don't know, I don't know if they did service on the panel, but that dog on cue, <laughs> she's right there in the middle. Oh, is she? That dog on cue. That dog on cue. Man, really, bro. Yeah, I was. Man, that dog on cue. Cue wears no makeup, and then like her eyes and the way she be making her lips, bro. Wait a minute. That wait. dog on cue. Hold on, because I'll say I'll say that not to sound. <laughs> that dog on cue, and that cue. So I don't even know she even wears lipstick, but that dog on cue. Yes, Lord. No, but yes, I, do, Lord. I do when I go out and stuff, I'll do put on makeup. But y'all, but makeup is and, and look and look and look and look, watch this here and that curly hair. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, he's trying me. He yes, Lord. Me. Hey, Lord, I, I ain't show. gonna lie. I when my wife gets out of the shower, that should be curly. That should be great. 
Mike, Mike, Mike be pulling bruh. his wife's hair. Bruh, I do. That curly hair lie. be doing it for me, bro. I ain't going to lie. I really do. So, so are, are, the guys, are these guys on this platform saying that the only thing y'all want is women with natural hair, no makeup, natural body? Is that uh, what y'all saying? Yes, I can. I can. I yes, like it. Yes, personally. that's correct. Yes. I like it first. I can live with the makeup. I can live with the makeup. I hear cat <clears throat> makeup is so y'all the said, first. Y'all said she got some weaving in her head. Y'all ain't talking to her. No, no, sir. The only thing no, my wife has ever put in her hair is oh my braids. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. Can you hear me? I want to say, hold on. I'm not. I'm not capping. No, 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 no. My wife came away. She's in the military. Weave, Mike. I don't like weave or wig. Or makeup. I don't I think, like it. Now, I think I think it's a preference. Like some guys may like that. I mean, it is a preference. Yeah, ain't nothing yeah, wrong with it, but not me. I don't rock with none of that stuff. Damn, I just got done saying I like my wife and braids. I would tolerate but it, cool, but like Damn, it, no, me. not at all. But Ime was right. Makeup was it, made yeah. to enhance us, right? Are there women out there that do the most when it comes to makeup? You're definitely right. Because sometimes I look at YouTube tutorials and it's like night and day. Some women don't even look like different shade. Their, their nose is different. Yes, that does happen. But are there women out there that know knows how to put on makeup and it's still naturally beautiful? Yes, right? So I don't think we should just deem or some people should just deem, oh, all makeup is bad. No, there are women out there that know how to put on makeup naturally and stuff like that. It's just to enhance us. We feel sometimes women... We feel better with makeup, you know, just like men. Every when y'all get a lineup or a haircut, when you get your braids, when you get your exactly. braids retwisted, yeah, but that don't mean that's what I that's what I want. Not, 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 with, but as far as a preference, not, though, not, a not preference. the man with the dress up in. He no, said, not he, not he, said he wants somebody with hair on their arms, long I've, hair up I've on their never, arms. I've never liked You got to have dreads. E capping. I'm not on. capping. I've no, never I'm not once that. been attracted to makeup. Never once. Always like natural face. Maybe you ain't that's a little bro. About it, brother. <laughs> that's a hold on. Hey, hey, come on, on this panel to tell no lies. lies. I came on here to be Listen, honest. Like I'm not here. I'm not I, here to lie. If you hear anything from me, it's, it's no lie. Hold on, hold on. No, we're not talking been... about you. I, I get it. You got married to somebody natural. That's what you like. I'm not we're not knocking you down in the corner. We, I mean, we, we, we just wanted to put a is shirt this man on. Ain't got no shirt on? I mean, outside of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, he said he like a natural man. Be glad he's not on the toilet, Be glad he's not on the toilet. But, Ronnie, did you date before your wife? Did you date women that wore makeup or wore weave? You muted, sweetheart. You muted. We can't, we, we can't take him seriously. You muted with I your did. shirt off. I did. I did. I did. And, and, and it was the last. Makeup? And, and I, Look, they, over they can't with. hear you until you put a shirt on, bro. <laughs> but, well, so, Ronnie, give me a second. Give me Ronnie, but yeah, I, 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 did they have yeah. makeup on? Come on, Aaron. Really? This shirt man on, had bro. no shirt the whole no. time. She, y'all had Raymond laying on his stomach earlier. And y'all Aaron didn't say look, nothing. Guys don't pay attention to guys like that. To people that are in the his legs That's are true. Not looking at men. Look like Axel Jackson laying on his stomach right now. <laughs> Actually, you laying on your stomach too? Bro, oh, shit, he's laying on his stomach. Up in the air? I never even noticed that. Hey, man, I'm plugged up to my charger, man. Uh. Hey, will this work right here? Would that work? Is that good? Yeah, that looks nah, like a jail headshot. Aaron, <laughs> didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you, Aaron? We don't pay attention to that. We ain't got I no already know. I think I think Tamika was like, tell him to put a shirt on. I was like, oh. I, I, I think I think men just don't I think that really only qualify from a looks point of view is that men don't want you to be ugly. They want you to be attractive. They want somebody else to desire you outside of them. And then most men are, I'm not and, and the men to talk to you. Well, I don't know if you can say that because no man sees any no 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 two men sees a woman the exact same. Because uh, I've dated I've some ugly girls before. I don't know nah, what you're talking about. You talk about, about hey, Ronnie, you think she was ugly? No ugly girl. Hey, Ronnie, you think she was ugly? Marriage, no ugly girl. No, I did. I did. Okay, yeah, man. So what's that? So kill that. So cute but I, I can't, I can't say, I can't say if another man don't think that my wife's ugly though. Is what I'm saying. There probably, like, there probably is some men who do. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like everybody's not gonna be. Think about all these ugly women you see out here that's ugly to you that are married with a good man, handsome man. Good like for them. he ugly too. If somebody think your wife ugly, bro, they want your wife. 
That's nah, not man, listen. <laughs> man, someone is putting, do you like a hairy cookie? A hairy cookie. By the way, just, just to let y'all guys know, my, my wife is natural. Everybody thinks I, I just like... <laughs> you know, of course a woman of natural. She Asian. Okay. I know. So I, I, I'm, I'm not out here just trying to say that... He didn't mean to say I know. That slipped out. He didn't mean to say that. <laughs> yeah, you ain't mean to say that. Well, yeah, I was kind of, I was can we, can like we call three the people talking at the same time. What'd you say? Say it with your chest if you said it. Wait, what? what no, they was cool. asking about the hairy coochie. Would y'all y'all men like natural now, right? So would y'all? Would y'all? Ain't nobody say they like that all that that, that damn. What so. about de- deodorant? So she can't wear deodorant neither because they ain't natural. That's okay, too, see, right, hold on, y'all took too y'all far. Take now y'all just taking literally now. Natural. That's too I far. Got an I now knew he was gonna do that. She can't. Now she can't, take, she can't now do her hair. She can't. She can't put those chemicals in her ear. She she can't have no. Wait, 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 wait. Do you like the? Mm-hmm. Do you like to go scrambling to the forest? Look, Crown Prince said he like hair in his woman. Oh, That's not man. good. There is a thing called natural soap and stuff. Oh, yeah. I knew it. I knew we had one. I knew we had one. Yeah, one. Be one man he got a there. beard. The only one with the beard. What that mean? Man, the only play, only place you can have hair is on your head. I think I agree with you right there, but that's a fact. No, no. I mean, I'm with you, Mike. She can have it on her legs. Yes, yes sir. Okay. There's nothing wrong dating not the much. Wendigo. You want a bear foot? What's what's the beast that beast that be in the woods? Bear. bear? A Wendigo. No, not that one. It starts with a B. Uh, oh, Bigfoot. Bigfoot, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. nah, I said not too much. You can have Is that your hair in your head, Buddha? He's, or did you get add on? You got weaving what? your hair is what she asked. Is that, your, I is that your hair, Buddha? Because I know yeah. some people that got dreads. You're trying to have some cave and oh, shit, huh? Okay. Oh, my. But no. So, like, not too hey, hairy, Buddha. But... So, Buddha, Buddha, it sounds like, it sound like you, want, you, want, you don't want nobody in this country, huh? Wait, how, wait, wait, wait. How do you, you come to that? How do you come to that? Like, what I'm asking, you, do you want a woman for this country? Yes. She you said want, yes. You want, you want her to have hair on her legs, natural hair. I said, wait, I said she can have hair on her legs. Like, she don't have to be bare. I, I'll take either or, but do you, do, you, do, you, do you see a lot of women that you want or no? What do you mean? This just got weird. Like, like, I feel like this is set up. No, yeah. I, I, I'm just curious. Like, do you see a whole bunch of women, like, options? Do you got a lot of options with what you want or no? Still then. Still huh? Here. That was not an answer. That was, <laughs> For real, though, what? I'm, I'm trying to huh? if, if you're saying, do I see a lot of women I want? Yeah, because you, you got she, you, Wait, uh, I can, based off the standards. Based off the standards that you said today, is there mm-hmm. a lot of women? Do you have a lot of those type options around? That makes me want to ask a this. lot. I want to say a Q, lot. I gotta, Q. That makes me want to ask a question, Q. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Do you like a man with hair? Or no, I like it all gone. Oh, oh, like balls. A lot of women do. I mean, that you can be nastier. We don't want that shit in our mouth. Like, imagine doing something with your man, and then you get up, you got a, a furball on your teeth. You know, you know, that's you true. got a point. You got a, you, you got a hey, point. Hey, hey, that's why when I, I said cute, when I said yes, Lord, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> hey, I got a, I, I have a, I have a question for every. I got a question Hold for everybody. Up. Ronnie G, just don't drop your phone, buddy. I ain't mind, bro. <laughs> oh no, I got clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, whoa, oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, pick bro. him off, pick him off the screen. He's trying to wait, wait. This on you. That's why I said he is a yes lord. Listen, I do yes, have a lord. question. I got, I got a question for everybody. So what's the deal with this high value men will cheat if they can't get the box whenever they ask for it? I heard this from Fresh and Fit. I watched the video like 10 times. That's your problem. You watch your Fresh and Fit. That's your problem, right? No, 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 no. They made my mans in them. They made my mans in them. I'm just Crazy. asking y'all, what do y'all think about that? Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. An actual high value man will also have character, so he would not do that. No, yeah. and I agree. I wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm like getting the same thing because I was having a conversation with one of these little ass boys, and they were thinking like a high value man is somebody who has money, cars, clothes, status. 
And I'm like, to me, a high value man is somebody who takes care of their body, their mind, their family, you know, like, and is able to um, no, no, support. No. That's a high value no, man. No, Anybody who not. says that's not a high value man is not a high value hold man. On, Ronnie, no, hold on, hold on, it's, let me uh, ask you something. Because you, you, your, your muscles and your neck oh. poking out. So, um, <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So you said finances have nothing to do with being a high value man? No, that's what it's not the main. It is not the main thing. It's it's the high value thing. But here's I mean, the thing: we got into a day and age that that's all we focus on. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. The high and high value mean high income. The high. Is no, it high doesn't. No, it does true. not. That is not what have that. That is not Come what on, the high man. means. We got finished. Hold on. No, I, I said that's really the good. main thing. Like first is money. Okay. Yeah. No, no sir. No, sir. Let me have it. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let Aaron finish. Aaron, go ahead. What you going to say? Yeah. So the high value man specifically has been recoined by Kevin Samuels. So if we're going to use the terminology that he has coined, we have to say it by, based on his specific standards. But we ain't we you, basing it on his. But that's the but then why you talk about high value because nobody was using that terminology word. before he coined it. If you want to talk about honorable men, good men, fine. But when you want to talk about the reason that the high value term is being utilized, you have to acknowledge how he identified it. If you don't you want remember, to acknowledge you a member of Kevin Samuels, I can tell, ain't you? No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm you is. Yeah, Samuels. you is. No, I'm not. Hey, yeah. I only have membership with Lapeef Network, but that is um, Aaron's best friend, y'all. Nah, son. Yeah. I, don't, I don't believe that's not. Hey, that, not you know what? Not my best friend. You are bringing it back. Destroying our youth and our community's mind when it comes to thinking it because you a high value man and your and your wife or your lady don't decide to roll over for you one night and give it up that you get the right to go out here and cheat and mess no, around? No, no, like, that's no, not no high value no, man. That, that's, that's a not trash man. But, but nobody agree with that. We don't agree with that. We don't agree with that. Trash and fit ain't the only one that think like this. Ooh, I got to realize that this that is the them. youth that's coming up. Let me ask y'all something. Do y'all have any nobody doors? Any y'all got doors like this? So next question. I don't think, I don't, honestly, I don't think that if y'all get in an argument, sex should be denied. Right. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. That's why I believe. That's why. If you haven't been married. No, I haven't. But I've been in long term <laughs> relationships, like five years. I'm my longest. Too. But it's the fact is that's why effective communication. You don't want to go to sleep mad at each other. You can go to sleep and not wake up. I had a friend pass away in his sleep. Right. So I just feel like there's more shit going on in life than to argue about something that's not going to matter in a year or five years. Yeah, I agree. So, I, but let me but say this. Know, I, know. I, I, I need to say some of what she said. She should not be denying him for sex because she's mad, but she can say that she don't want to have sex. Like, True. but she should. So, so she shouldn't be in a situation like I'm mad. So this is the reason why we're not having sex. But she said, "Hey, you know, whatever. I'm tired, or this, that, and third. That's not because she's mad. She got other things that going on in her body where she don't want to have sex." E, how many sick days do she get? E, what other things going on in her body? All right, so maybe yeah, too. No, yo, <laughs> maybe my wife, maybe my wife got this rule. No, for real. Uh, boom, look at her. So me and my wife got this rule. So if if I'm denied sex, she must in initiate. The next sexual thing, like, oh, like you, you, can, time, you see, that's due to good <laughs> communication. Y'all, y'all, y'all communicate very well to set that up, man. Meanwhile, yeah. I got something similar to that set up too, and that's that's y'all talk good game, and y'all y'all gonna last for a while, bro. Just based off that alone. Wait, I got. Yeah, I have a yeah. I have a guy, a buddy of mine, who's going through this right now. He sit there and said. All right, fine. We'll have sex whenever you're ready to have sex. That was three months ago. Oh, she cheated. No, no, but you didn't hear what I just said. All right, so if I'm right now, no, if 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 I'm denied sex that night, she need initiated that morning. Like, I ain't, I ain't talking no oh, three. He <laughs> talking about no three, four, five. Not three, four business days. Right later down the road, ain't gonna be no. He talking about eight hours. He said. He oh, said eight hours later. 
Hey, I want to ask you a question. No, 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 seven months for her to. uh, Me, me personally, me personally, I don't, I don't want nothing until we both ready. But I ain't about to wait no months either. I'm not gonna wait a week. I ain't saying I'm gonna take it. I'm just saying. Let's do what we need to do. I got, hey, I got if, you actually, if you actually do your research, it's actually very common. Wait, but the your three friend, months? Mike, why? Did yeah. she have a baby just now? Did she have a baby? Is that why? No, I'm guessing they're having marital they're having marital problems. Man. Yeah. Well, wait, I, don't, I would have a question for and uh, one of the people. biggest sex killers for women is resentment. Yep. Well, that's why I said you got it for years. And I, I feel like uh I strongly feel that uh you gotta keep having sex, man. When you stop having sex, you're getting closer to leaving. It's that's why I believe in having <laughs> that's like, true. But that's why I say before even having sex, you should commute like you should be attached to your partner emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Because Uh-oh. if let's say if a person has a child, like and they and they go through depression or something happens, you still have those other three factors connecting you connecting to you that's why I, I always say don't have sex till you connect with that person on those foundations because you starting a relationship mm-hmm. based on sex that's horrible because let's say if she gets insecure she has a baby then the sex is whack and then it, the, the man loses his the sex goes down for the man your foundation is based on that sex because that's where you started it at so, that's mostly that's mostly where it starts too is after when childs get when children get involved. Mm-hmm. They say twenty percent of marriages are sexless. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's actually higher because it also depends on your definition of sexless marriage. They say you know, the definition was under ten times a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some there's some people not even getting it at all. This here is very, very and right here. Whenever, whenever I have a, a fight coming up, I have to stop. For, me and my wife, we stop having sex for close to two months, and it is the worst time in our relationship. I gotta be honest with you. So yeah, I'm beyond sex is very important for both partners. So hold on, hold on. You said you said when y'all about to fight. She well, when I'm about to, no, I'm, I'm a professional fighter. So when I'm getting ready for a fight, we stop close to two months before the fight. Because it helps. Oh, yeah, I I got got you, yeah, I, 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 I'm I, glad I, you added that. Yeah, because we, we thought you were saying something totally different. And then, and then, and here's, oh, another, not- here's another reality that people don't want to talk about. Your partner may not be satisfying you, but you don't want to say anything. See? Oh, um, God, that would be sad. But not only mm-hmm. that, a girl posted something. That's, I forgot what she said, but she's definitely right. Like, we have conversations regarding what her favorite color is and da 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 da. I think it's very important, sex language. I think it's very important to talk about sex before you have sex with a person, to ask those questions, to find out what they're compatible in, to see what they're like, to see if you guys would, will match sexually, right? So I feel like it's very important to have that conversation because you don't want to just have sex with a person and then you like, damn, I just did this and she was lagged. Of course people can lie, but that's why you got to sometimes ask certain questions to see what they would say. Well, I I feel like this I should be- I never did that. I, I, I think this should be a grace period because everyone's different. Everyone has a different sexual appetite. Everyone likes different things. So this should definitely be a grace period and let you give them time to learn what you like. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of people who feel uncomfortable telling them what they like because they feel like what they like is weird. That's, well, that's I, 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 I think I think it comes down to communication. I think what should happen is y'all should have sex and then y'all should sit down and talk about the sexual um sex y'all just had because so um if, if you in a situation you like hey i did this and you might think you blow like i even to this day i asked my wife i said what you rate that ass like did i do my thing like it don't lie to me be honest with me and if i'm slacking she need to tell me if i did my thing if she's if she knows something i can do better and she know if i can get it there quicker like communication is so important Especially when it comes down to a marriage and a relationship, I think but, we just gotta get our private yeah. ego out of it. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest things. That's, a question. that's one of the biggest things. E is that a lot of times men have a lot of pride, ego, and sex. So, question: hey. What if your sex drop is like every day? Like you want it every day, and their sex drop is every three months. Real quick, it was nice meeting all y'all. I got a roll train Bye. about to roll up. Y'all have a good one, man. Uh, that's why I wouldn't do it. Because you know what you deal with that. 
that's 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 something I had to work on because that you have to find a compromise. You gotta have something where you can both to come into agreement with. Mm -hmm. That's why you have them them talks beforehand. I'll ask a man, okay, I'm not gonna tell a man my sex drive is high. No, because men are gonna tell you what the, what they think that you want to hear. I'm gonna ask them, okay, hypothetically, if you be in a relationship, you get married, how many times a day or how many times a week would you want to have sex? A day, hey, Q, you little sneaky sneak. You gotta answer like questions. Q I is correct. So I mean, correct. Correct. At least like once a week Q, is good. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. thing. Y'all doing it every when day. Me and my yesterday. wife were every beginning. Day. We had sex at least like one seven times in one day. Damn. It didn't really start to fall down until after after our daughter was born, which is kind of obvious why that would happen. So are you telling me a bunch of y'all on this on this panel had that conversation before y'all yes. had sex? I actually have the conversation. But then you know I, I I like to I like to actually have conversations before I actually meet my meet my boyfriends or anything or anything of that nature. I'm very weird. Like I I I like to weird? protect my energy. I'm say. not gonna go on a date tomorrow with random men. No, I need to get to know you first to see if it's even worth it. Because I'm not gonna waste your time or my time or my money or your money because it's pointless, right? Yeah. So. I do. Yes. I do have those conversations. And, and here's and here's and here's another thing. People sex, drive, right people's sex drive change over time, over mm -hmm. over lifespan. Women usually go <clears throat> up. Men usually go down. Nah, there's actually some women that go down. Like they lose this drive for sex completely. Yeah. I, th I, th I think it's. I think what people don't understand the stages of sex. So it's it's certain stages of sex. Three different stages. It's a um, podcast that I listen to. It's really important to know what stage of your sex life you in. That's why, like, when you first get with somebody that is it's exciting, um, it's like kind of next level. And then once you maybe been doing it for a while, you know, things change. So you just got to understand the three stages, where you at and where your partner's at. Because the biggest problem that I see, you might be still at the excited stage and they might move past that stage, which causes um, different things to happen. Can y'all date? Can y'all marry? I was asked this once. Can y'all marry a person that that's not sexually pleasing to you? No, 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 no. I so, think, but here's the funny thing, Q. There's a <laughs> lot of women who admit it that they're not satisfied either. I okay. So <laughs> I I I'm a giver. Right. So I'm the type of person that I don't I'm a giver. I don't need to get pleased. Right. So I don't mind taking an L sex wise. Right. So that's what I've said. One of my exes had a small dangling. I don't mind that it, as long as he's making it up in other factors. I'm OK with that because sometimes the older we get, we have to be realistic. We're not going to find a 100 percent person oh, yeah. on our list. Right. So I'm OK <laughs> on I don't need a big man dingo and I feel like I'm very open to try stuff to where there's other stuff out there that can be pleasing let's say if a man has a small dick right there's other stuff you can do that he can learn your body because it's not only what men don't realize women don't have to get pleased just on penetration right <laughs> there's other things Ain't that the truth no, that's how um, bored is it? DJ DJ was on here. I forgot his name. There's other things men can do to please a woman, right? Oh yeah, you, eat, you can eat that box like this with a mom. Mm -hmm. yeah, you were talking, you were talking into uh, foreplay. Yeah, yeah, there's foreplay. There's tantric massages. There's other things you can do besides yeah, penetration. You, but you also, men don't know, huh? You can get her excited by talking. Yeah, you can get her excited mm -hmm. by talking. But some men don't know. But do y'all men ask? Do y'all men ask? y'all's ladies what pleases her do you know what her points are do you know what she gets stimulated by do you know do y'all ask those type of questions or do y'all just I'm, okay. I'm I dig I dig you and then um at one point she even know so here's my I, I gotta say something real quick all this conversation Q is talking about if I have to talk to a woman about those type of things I ain't fucking with that woman what? Oh, what? What? 
I'm kick what? him off the pad. This is a kick this is a off. new age. This is a you new age. Control of it, Aaron. This is a new age. All right. <laughs> This is so a you new just want to go there willy nilly, not knowing how how her body is. You just want to go in there not knowing if she comes off a of penetration or the clit. You just want to go in there not knowing if she likes a tongue when you kiss her or what her spot sparks or she doesn't want you to touch her face. You just want to go in there out willy nilly. Like you're gonna do every move that you've done with other girls, thinking it's gonna work. Is that what you're saying? What? Nah, nah. I'm about to say because there's a lot of guys that think. Okay, what, what I'm. Uh, the whole thing I'm talking about life. is the whole thing I'm talking about is if that's her mindset to be pleased sexually, I don't want to mess with her. Mm. See, uh, women uh, really needed to focus on uh, outside stuff like house taken care of, bills, all those things, provision, provision, no, leadership. We- we get hold that. On We're now. Talking hold about on now. These... Hold on now, Q. Hold okay, on. Sorry. Go ahead. Hold, hold on. on now. Hold on. Go ahead. Oh, come on. Come on, E. You don't need to put the accent in there, bro. <laughs> so, but what we're having issues with right now is women focusing on the sexual aspect of things. And that's why men now are dressing sexually, as in, you know, in a way like buffing themselves up, you know, during or they are attracted attracted to all this stuff right there. This is new things. You guys were talking about, um, you know, makeup and natural and all that. Men are not natural now. You see men with uh, doing braiding their hair like women and all that stuff. That's not natural men. And this all started maybe early in the 80s, all the way up now. And all these things is due to women raising men you gotta understand most men that start liking these women that's dressing like this come from single parents home mm. negative not true <laughs> let him let him rock let yeah. him finish Go ahead. most of them yeah. most of them let came it, from a yeah, single let him family let him home cook. Let him cook. He's talking about me. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it ain't true. Let him cook. Let him cook. I say most men. I didn't say all men. Yeah. He didn't say you. He didn't say you. He said most men. Yeah. They, they the one that made this popular. Going after hot girls. Mm. And those hot girls came from single parents' home, too. Uh. They are par- like, you got to understand women dress their boys up like they dress themselves up. Uh, so when they leave their uh, home, they continue their trend. That's why they don't save that much. That's why they don't focus on anything other than their physical self. Yeah. Go they ahead. don't mentally develop. E, really? They don't mentally develop. So they're attracted to their moms because they see their mom dressing up all this time. Their mom be dressing them up all this time. This all started in the eighties, nineties, and all the way till now. It got worse now. We just not seeing the the effect of it. But this just didn't just start it. With so, the development of internet, we got more exposure of it. So hold on, Makeup, e, 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 e. You telling okay. me back in the sixties, men weren't looking good. This is this new thing. <laughs> is that- what are you talking about? No, I, I, say, I never say that. No, I'm saying like so long hair, for example. Long hair you think was like cornrows, for example, it was built in the eighties. They went in the sixties. But what kind of men were doing that though? What kind of men were doing that? You didn't see men that was, you know, of status doing all that crap. No yeah. Or men that that was raising families structures doing that crap. That was what? part of the culture. Hair, that hair. wasn't part of the that was never part of the culture, bro. Have you seen the temptations? So what is a problem? These are musicians. You see, this is what I'm talking about. These are musicians. They have to sell sex to women. That's what they were doing. That's but that's they were selling sex to women because women are attracted to all those type of things. That's why they dress them up back there. You can use music. That's why I say all these things started back then because of music. But you don't have some. 
<laughs> and so you don't have a picture of a regular person. You don't have you don't have pictures of ordinary people like you have back then. Like now, you have pictures of ordinary people. You see, you see what the regular person does. Back then, you don't have a pic. You don't have you don't have necessarily pictures of ordinary people what they did. Okay, like, Can so you, you can't really say that. Do you have Do you have uh, any pictures of your grandpas or grandfathers or great grandfathers? No, I don't. I don't. don't. But you don't. But you would. You, but you can't say you don't know what was going on in the forties for, for the average person. You don't know what's going on in the fifties for the average person. Okay. If what's if you know, my dad has a Jerry curve. Let me put it this way. If looks was more important back then, most of y'all wouldn't have no grandmothers. It was more about characters. Hold on now. It was more about characters. No, it was more about proximity. No. It was never there. It was just because she was not true. She was up the street, bro. It was literally close to each other. They they were looking at the new age, like from the 50s. Up now, if you got grand, you have grandfathers from that around that time. Yeah, that's when they start doing all that crap. So what what year you want us to go to? Because first you said the eighties, now the forties. Because I'm about to pull up some pictures. So my question that I'm asking okay. is, when is so the make sure that gone? picture is not of a celebrities now. I know, but when do you think the afros, the Jerry curls? What you when, when did you think that started? Those maybe in the seventies. So you think in the sixties, men wouldn't take care of themselves? They're just walking out the house any kind of way. That was look. That was odd balls back then, but it wasn't popular. Are you getting what I'm saying? There was odd balls. I follow you. I follow you. What you saying? Let me, let me support you popular. real quick. Let me meet you real quick. This is what it is, man. The culture and how things were dictated is not how it was like it is today, where news and things travel fast. I remember even grew up in the '90s. You know, music trends weren't quick. You know, we had music in the South, music in the East and the West. We didn't even know what we were listening to. You know what I'm saying? So you think back even further back then, you know what I'm saying? Culture was different all around. I'm pretty sure you only saw people wearing certain clothes in major cities. But you go to the suburbs or you go to the South, they weren't rocking nothing like that. And that was in my time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can see from what E is saying, like, when it comes to how men dressed and how they looked, Totally different. In the South, I know for sure they were not dressing like how you see how city boys dress. I've seen those people, how they were dressed up. And, 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 ma and, and matter of fact, <laughs> your parents, if you're in a family home, your parents teaches you to stay away from those men or those women. But y'all, see, the problem with y'all argument is y'all trying to make it seem like fast is something that is new. It been fast. Fast been going on forever. Like we, yeah, it care. has. We're not saying it has. You, hold on, yeah, I, don't care, I don't care. I don't care if you go back to Africa and the tribes. Um, they it was certain things that we did to to make ourselves stand out. Men are always looking for ways to separate themselves from the group or the pack. It, it, it's natural for us to make ourselves look. Even if it's like when, when we start talking about like the Jerry curls and we start talking about like the braids and you can even go back to Samson in the Bible. When we start talking about these guys with hair, I, it's, it's, I strongly believe that it always been men that had something going on to keep their appearance better than others. And you got to also understand that parents teaches their girl to stay away from those men back then. It wasn't many men doing that crap. It was Wait. once... One so, or few of them are locks so, thrown in the braids as well, or is it just braids? Locks too. He said everything. Lock, no, no, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about braids. I'm not talking about dreadlocks and stuff okay, like that. Okay, cool. I'm good. Oh my god. So, so <laughs> he's so, trying to remove himself from there. <laughs> so, like, so, like, so, let me see. say this here. Let me say this here. I think that I, I understand what you're saying, but I think that here is the the bigger the bigger problem with your argument. Okay. That when you think about the social norms, economic norms, and taboos of today, and I'm going to tell you, and then when you think about social media, the way that it was back in the times that you're talking about, it will never be that way again. Never, mm -hmm. ever, 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 never, never. never. And so this thing, so this thing about saying that, well, well, you women should look like their grandmothers, and they should be, they should be, you know, weigh 120 pounds. It will never be that way again. Hell, when you look at when you go to church's fried chicken, the chicken is bigger than your hand, and ain't no ain't no ain't no chicken is supposed to be bigger than your hand. So the thing about it, got you know, guy, is that 
social norms, economic norms, and social media will never let those times be again. People will never move like that again. Never. They will never go back to the 90s. I no, they'll it. never go back then. Oh, don't well, know. no, I, I, I think I think what y'all guys are not understanding is that people have always been influenced. But the problem is yes. you, you was only influenced by the people in your town. If nobody yes. in your town was doing it, yes. you didn't even know that it, it exists. That's See, not you, true. Exactly. That's not true. Hello. E, 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 you're right. E, you're right. That's you're not right. true. What social true. media? Well, let me finish. So what social media did, it let me know what was going on in Georgia when I'm in Seattle. So yes, I can catch exactly. styles and I can catch things that's happening far away from me and pick up new trends. That's why yes. I went, that, the one thing we saw in the hip hop era, we seen a whole bunch of people in Europe, since they can see it now, they start wearing the chains looking like that hip hop yep. culture is yep. because that culture can be seen all places that have always been the standard that whatever they see is the coolest. That's what people strive to. Nowadays, yeah. what we're looking at is when we start talking about, like, I know braids was a big thing when I was in high school, that was the trend. Anything that is the trend and the standard people are going to flock to that. That's just how it. They- hold on now. Hold on now. So so easy. So, so, so e, times we have a war <laughs> or trading, people will. So, back so e, style, did I hear you say that? So, e, did I hear you say that your wife is Asian? Yes. Okay. So, watch this here. The actually, e, the argument that you should have literally made, which would basically shut down everything that he's saying, is that if you go back in the sixties, seventies, sixties, fifties, thirties, whenever you want to go back to, it was not a social norm for interracial marriage. So now. Now we live in an age and a time where interracial marriage is acceptable. It is acceptable. And so now you cannot base today's norms, today's culture on, on olden times when the fact of the matter is that interracial, a black man would have been hung for, for, for basically uh, look, even looking at a white woman. But you know what, though? We have to put that in full context when you say that, too. This is for me being tipped, but when it comes to what we call into racial stuff. It's it usually called, black it and white that yeah. have a problem with. Yes, that's what I was gonna say because technically mixed tribes was always happening. That was more of a European standard not to mix the blood which, world family which, type which is fair, which is fair. But the fact yeah, of yeah. the matter is that which is fair. Your 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 point is absolutely right. But the fact of the matter is us living in a European society, being be the United States, the law was there was no interracial marriage. That's a lie because there was no was black and hope. white marriage. That's the difference. Black and there was white. no black and white marriage. Okay, but you, you know what I'm saying black, when I say interracial. It could be white and racial, black and yeah. Asian. It was the okay. black and white that was the issue. Okay, which is fair. That's fair. So, so, can so ask, now, can so I ask now that we roll there. Go ahead. So, if all these things you guys are saying is true then why are we having issues with uh because you do have issues with women no we don't put it hold on hold on hold on. especially you you want natural that's why you went asian because that's natural <laughs> let's be wow. real bro bro let's let's be real you wanted something no, natural. That's why you went asian. no i'm, I'm just being real hold on now hold on all men want natural my wife deal, man. hold on now we deal with all these extras because we have to mm, i gotta hear this we deal with all these extras because we have to all yeah. men want natural no we don't i don't think so. I, but you know what I don't, I don't, I don't i'll say you this dog you can't so speak you saying, you speak. You saying i got with a black woman because i wanted a bbo say what now no so see, you said you saying I got I got with a black woman because I wanted a BBO? No, see, but y- y'all not listening to his statement. I'm listening he, to what he's saying. It's not oh, right. No, 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 no. Let, let me repeat it slowly. He said all I know men, what he said. Hold on, listen. All <laughs> men want natural. It's no okay. such thing as all men want anything. 
It's it's in there's no absolute statement altogether. So there's so no absolute. And so that's where I'm disagree. I'm not saying that there's men out there that don't want natural. I'm not saying that Mike didn't want a black woman that was natural. That's not the statement I'm doing. The problem with this YouTube narrative is people keep saying all men want this and all the men want that. But and did that's you also not understand true. what I said afterward? We settled. No, no, but no, yes, you missed the point. No, no, indeed, it's real talk. We, it's what happened, right? Accept, you got people who really want no one right now. We came to no, I'm saying, but there's no guys who want, listen, there are men out here who want things that are unnatural. There are, <coughs> trust me, there, there are some unnatural things happening right now, and people prefer that. that that's a legit thing. I mean, I, I'm not trying to go to the other side of the fence, but you got other people on the other mm-hmm. side of the fence with preferences. Not our preferences, but they want that. That's a good thing. That's because they don't have it. They can't get those natural. No, 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 no. They want with that. Trust me. There's people who want what they want. Trust me. Yeah, Uh I would agree. There are people who want what they want. I know some guys who won't talk to girls if they ain't got makeup on. I, I know I know for a, like if a girl she's flat chested and no booty, I know a guy nah. who won't even talk to her. Like right. he, he won't he won't even entertain her. So that's what I'm telling y'all is that we can't say that all men want but this. Do you, in, in some let cases we'll pay for the breast let me uh, also put that okay. you put a natural woman with natural, you know, the proportion that he want in front of him, those women probably don't want him because of the way he dressed. Does that's not the point though? That's not what do the you point. Mean? That I'm what do you mean? That's, that's not, not the, the point, point that he's making. That's you know what? Wait, wait, wait. I didn't hear his foot up. I understand East Point. This is what he's saying. Okay, because I, I, I didn't digest it. What you're saying is this. You're saying what you're saying. Let me cook, let me cook, let me cook, let me cook real quick. So what you're saying is this, right? This guy got a chick, right, that has, we used to have a chick, right? She does have these big ass titties, right? But they're fake. Let me find me a natural chick that has big ass titties, and I will take those. So basically, if you can find the real thing, you'll go after that, obviously. You can, you yes, you probably, but the you problem know. is you, don't don't, you, probably, that much. you probably can't get that one because that one probably don't want you. So, so in terms of something speaking that like you that, can get. I can get your point. To that point, I can say, yes, if the option was there. But realistically, people aren't, you know, people settle. You know what I'm saying? People can get what they can get. That's what, I think that's, 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 what yeah, yeah, I think that's what he said. I think that's what he said. We said it never been a time where, in I think in history, that everybody just got what they want. Like, like we we've been selling <coughs> since two thousand two thousand plus years. We've been settling. Like this is something new. This not Probably new. Longer than that. They it was took me a while, but I got what I want. The beginning of time. We've been settling since the beginning of time. Yeah. So, I don't I don't I don't even think it's necessarily selling. I think I think we've been programmed. Yeah. Social yeah. engineering. I, I, think, I think that's I think what he's talking about. I think, I think okay. the brother's yeah. talking about social engineering. Okay. A lot of his yeah. stuff yeah. is based around social engineering. And please yeah, then I'll agree with it. Then uh, I'll agree with don't it. and don't forget, uh uh, we do have new technology and stuff that set trends and styles and stuff, but you gotta understand in the black community we had soul train too. Even though these urban areas or these metropolitan areas was totally different, Soul Train went pretty much around anywhere that black people was at bondage. I mean, that's the way they made their money. And so a lot of trends were set back in them times, too. But he does make a very important point uh, about our social status when it came to um, uh, women raising children, how a lot of these styles came into a vibe, because you got to understand on Sundays, on Saturdays or Sundays, women would straighten uh, straighten hair for go to church the next morning, and the boys would be sitting around there watching their sisters getting their hair braided or something like that. I think uh, a lot of these things that he's talking about did start into the seventies because the Jerry Curl started in the seventies. Like I remember when I was a DJ back then, and uh, they came down from Chicago with Curl Free Curl. It was a, a major company out of Chicago with the yellow yellow bottle. And his name was George. He was a hairstylist. But what I'm trying to say, I, I think he made some major points. Um, but I do believe that they, you got to have a room for error, too, because they have a city in Atlanta, Georgia, where at one time in the 70s, when it came to black and white marriage, that was uh, the apple of uh, 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 interracial marriage. And that was right there in Georgia. And so it was right by Fort McPherson. And so, anybody know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about East Point. So, uh, that has always been known. Uh, 
And then another thing that he made uh, significant of that point, too, it was we was talking about um, uh, interracial marriage really stood for black and white. I think that was uh, Sarge who made that. Well, go, if you go back far enough and you read the signs, the sign didn't say black and white water fountain. It said white and color. So anybody who had any color couldn't drink from that water fountain neither because they was considered the same thing. There was still caste systems of how they looked at it, but they considered anybody non-white was of color. So Facts. You give it a sign of Irish and you still look for no, non-white. Right, so that's, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, I, I mean, I think he makes some great points. Uh, but Jay, uh, I, Jay, the point that I'm making is I really don't think modern day men want women from 60s and the 70s. Like they don't I, I know. think that's where the social engineer comes in. I, I mean, that's where the other piggyback of that conversation comes in. It's because right. you got to mm -hmm. understand social engineer, how it works. If you ever been in any kind of military structure or any kind of structure or any kind of institution, all that has a play. I mean, when you have women going to work who are working in these establishments now, like newscasters and stuff like that, and then they were told that you can get certain kind of styles and stuff like that. And so think about it. When you see a newscaster on TV and he had almost like little Richard hair, and then you see a woman, her hair was almost just like a, 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 a how would you say, Marilyn Monroe, then these things has a way of social engineering because these are entertainers, and we get a lot of stuff from entertainers. We can't, we, we can't forget that. I've been in this business for 35 years of entertainment, but I've been into entertainment ever since I was nine years old. So a lot of trends and things are set. I mean, you have all these guys walking around with gold changes and all that shit in, in, in the 90s and all that stuff. They didn't understand these people. That was their uniform when they went on stage. These guys didn't walk around looking like that. I mean, when the publicists put out pictures, when they go into restaurants and stuff, they didn't know exactly what they was doing. These was uh, setting a, again, social engineering. And so people, sometimes we get real life twisted up with entertainment. And that's yeah. why when you look at people today, it looked like a bunch of damn people walking around who are entertainers on stage. I mean, Earth, Wayne, and Fire didn't walk around with that bullshit that they had on the stage. And I hate to be called the bullshit. Because but, really that's, was. but that's part of the reason why I was talking that's about the OG. family thing. Well, wait, 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 hold on. You said social engineering. I agree with you. But when when in, when, when in history has there not been social engineering? Oh, uh, uh, when it concerned us, we've been shaped ever since we got off the damn ship. My Everybody family was shaped was. from the time Everyone. we was on the ship. Everyone but in history you got to understand, like, there's, okay. a, wait a minute, there's a difference. There's a major difference in social engineering when it comes from another folk versus when it comes from you. Yeah, because but you start to set the standard. Wait, hold on. Everybody in history, in every every country in the world has been conquered by somebody else at some point in time. And I was they, they might have been social engineered by whatever that culture that took over. I well, you might be correct, but you see, what makes our plight more different is because we was taken from a land to another land. A lot of people, yeah, lose their lose something when people take over them. But That's usually that comes back to women. And women. If it's not a dominant force that stays there, like, let's just take Mexico. Let's just take Mexico. And I, and I might be making your point versus mine. When they, uh, when they got their freedom from uh, the Spaniards, guess what was left? the language, the religion, and way of style. So the Spaniards really don't have to be there anymore no because they're on automatic pilot. No. But in most countries, that don't usually happen. Like, if yes, you want to talk about it, Japan and China at one time were uh, 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 totally dominated by Western society. But they their culture was so deep. Even though Western society had a way of going over there doing social engineering, they was able to give a great pushback. Our problem is we've been disconnected from the biblical cord of Africa that we so long that we really don't know what was really taken from us unless we go and we go to the motherland or we go and we look at what? things. Oh my yes. god. No. You don't even know. Wait, hold on. First of all, number one. There's so many different cultures in Africa. That's not that, that's a mutual. It's a continent, mutual. brother. I know that. You want to break that down? I know right. that. I know that. But I then you have to that. also. But do you also also break down? Okay, let's let's talk, let's, let's let's break down another thing. Let's look at yes, England, sir. for example, right? England. England used to be conquered by Rome. You, then it also used to be conquered by the Moors. Then, you also, then it was also conquered by the Germans. Then it was also conquered by 
the Dutch and the Vikings. They have, there's a mixture of all those cultures in, in England to make English culture where it is today. France. Most certainly, but you, you most of all them countries you did just name was from Europe. No, but the Moors are African. Well, then, again, again, I understand uh, Africa, uh, the Moors, and I want to know what country you're talking about was dominated because the only country I do know was dominated by the Moors England. for 700 something years it's was Spain. 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 Yeah, it, was, it was through Spain going on. Because England was established. The, 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 the problem, problem is Spain that, going towards Italy, yeah, and it stopped there. So the problem, the problem is we don't see the problem with this slavery argument. And no disrespect, is that we don't live in a box, and we, cultures are going to mix regardless. So, so when we make it seem like if we would have stayed in this place, we wouldn't have picked up all these trades. I, I think that's problematic. What you just saying, sir. It's totally different. It's totally different being dominated in your country, being separated from country. If you don't understand that, okay. then this, I guess it's a mute right. conversation. But there's a major difference in what you just OG, said. OG, Jay, OG, I wanted OG, to speak to OG, your OG. point. Though. Hold up, for your Aaron. I want to speak to Jay's point on one aspect because I want to support one aspect. I understood what he's saying. When it comes to um, social engineering, what we should say the difference between how it was back then to what it is right now because this is a very sophisticated system. Okay, this has been globalized. We've never been globalized and influenced all at one time like this ever in history. This is the biggest difference from how it was back then. We had little pockets of different things everywhere. So now we have a global conglomerate saying what things are, what the culture is, how we're going to talk, what's right, and what's wrong. We've never had that until this now. What was, the industrial, now. What was, what was the industrial revolution? What's that? What was the industrial revolution? No, I'm saying like that really is what it is. I'm saying like no, I'm saying, know, what, what was the what, what was it? You said that never happened. So what? what we've never, what, been, what never been globalized. We've never been globalized on a scale like this. Where the industrial connected. revolution. That's never been a thing. The industrial revolution was a was a global change. No, no, but the effectiveness of the influence was not like this. This is this a five year old just one influence out here. Like it's not like that. It's totally different. It's not even, and it's, not, it's so not instant. Like it's so instant. The, the, communica um, the, the communication devices we have today versus w what you're talking about, the other brother was talking about, is now you can get stuff right on the spot, real time. And usually who, usually who has the power is the one who has the greatest influence. And that's yes. what you really don't want to say. If you got fast. the greatest okay. usually who has the power. Super fast. It, it used to be Whoever had the power to get the rights to history. We are, we are watching history being written every second of the damn day about our power structure who is so powerful that they can put any narrative that they want to on it. And you will yeah. you'll suck it up, you'll eat it like your damn series in the morning time. And I agree with you, but I'm saying is though, I don't think that's any different than any other point in history. You see, yes, you no, got not saying it's different. I'm saying more effective. You today. I'm not saying no okay. difference. I'm saying I'm not concurring. I'm saying it's more most effective because we've never had it this sophisticated before. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying from his point, it's like, dude, it's not. It was never this big. This is huge. You know what I'm saying? This is not even like even my household. When I have kids, it's gonna be hard to protect them from the world. They're going to see the world's going to say what's right, what's wrong, and fuck what I believe because it's what they had on a grand stage that we're going to follow by. It's That's just that true, point. Man. That's not true. I, I, I think this is the best time ever in the world. I wouldn't want to live 50, 60, 70 nah, years that. ago. I, 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 tell, I tell people right now, especially as black Americans, black Americans, we got it better now than we ever had in the world. We can literally go out and do whatever we want. Um, so I get it. We can say our culture has changed or have been it been uh, influenced by other people, but I believe that we have it better than any other generation has. Is it better than reason why you don't live fifty years ago because your ass would be old as hell like me now? But uh, other than that, um, <laughs> because you probably be about one hundred twenty five. But uh, a lot of us would, would, would take that sentiment and believe uh, uh, and, and, and say the same thing you just said. There's nothing wrong with that. Because hey, we are, we're living in real time now. So to go back, I mean, I don't think anybody would, you know, even old people would come up over here talking about, I used to walk 20 but, miles to school. Well, that's why you're asking in there. You so you're too tired yeah. by the time you got to your classroom. I don't think anybody would want to go back and live in certain. certain but Jay, uh, the, pro the, problem, the problem, Jay, is you said nobody want to go back, but we keep trying to push our women back. 
We want the winner. No, see, win. that's the difference. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. See, this is where you make your error at, my brother. This is where you make your major error. Uh, uh, I mean, natural state of anything is at its best. Yes. Now, anybody who say they want their best got to understand that science, physics, physics, whatever the hell you want to call it. Natural state is its best. You take two oranges and you take some damn orange juice. You know what I mean? You take some substitute and put it beside a real orange juice, you see a major difference. But just like my brother was saying earlier, we have learned to substitute. It's not that we don't want to go back. We just been social engineered so much. You have an orange tree in your goddamn yard. You want to never go out there and squeeze the damn orange juice, but you'll buy some substitute shit, supposed to be orange juice in the damn store. So, so don't tell me that we don't like natural. But what it is, is the social engineer is flying in your face all day long. So Dave, it used me, to be a t Hey, look, man, you I, you I, I tell you, I think the breast, you you I, I think the breast thing was one of the best thing he used as an example. If you had false breasts versus, uh, versus the same size, real natural breast, hell, man, you can that's not in day, bro. Other than just looking at it, I'm talking about, I'm talking about actually being there with, it's, it's a 90 day thing. One so feel like know. a damn grapefruit with a sock inside a sock, <laughs> and the other one feel like something totally different. So if you ain't never had that experience, then you don't know what I'm talking about. You see, I don't have that experience. All right, a so. grapefruit with a sock in it? No, no, a, a grapefruit inside a sock. That's what them damn <laughs> fuck breasts feel like. So uh, the, the, point, the point that I'm making is that I, I still disagree. I think most people will say unnatural sugar is better than regular sugar. Like if, if we if we was to break down the two, one is better because they design anytime you design something to be better, it's going to taste better. It's going to be better. No hell no. I mean, if you ain't when hold taste, up, bro. Hold you, up, you, you use a bad That's example, one. brother. I'm finna I, I'm finna cut your sugar cane down right now. Okay, because obviously you ain't never had no sugar cane, and you sugar. never have had no natural sugar. That sugar in the raw is way better than artificial sugar. Oh, yeah, artificial sugar is much not good and much better. better. So what I'm trying to say is, it's what's out. available. See, they they give you this thing. Can't because, all that look, shit. Look, let me tell you something. I remember in 1980 at the Jack the Rapper uh, uh, convention, I was one of the teachers. Like a guy come in there, a guy comes in there and throw a damn CD across the floor, and he put it in this thing, and it sounds so beautiful yeah, i'm serious it sounds so good and he was trying to get the radio station to change their format he was trying to get people to change their format over to cd okay it took him almost seven years it's not because the cd was that much better than the what we was already using because when you went to cds it took out certain what we call snow sounds or filler sounds in your ear real djs could hear that but the average consumer could not hear that. And I'll tell you what, they forced the retail stores to not sell uh, records anymore. They only stock them with CDs. So I'm telling you about social engineers. Sometimes they force things on you. They snatched the wax out of the damn record stores and they gave you CD. Not because they, it was better. It was better for them because they made more money on it and they paid the artists made more money on it. So that's why they went to that format. Not well, because it was still, a better I, sound. I, I, I well, think actually they went to that format because, um, because you can fit more on the CD than you can on the album. No, no, sir, 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 sir. Let me tell you something. It has something to do with the math at the end. Okay, I was a DJ at the time. At a radio station and nightclubs, and I know exactly how they went and why they went to it. It made it's the record weird. company a lot more money. This, it gave the stars still have making twenty five cents on a fucking uh, album. It gave them a dollar and twenty five cents on a CD because right. it was more that, easy to make. You understand? Right. It was more easy right. to make because right. if you look at the CDs honest. today, I mean the last CD you start looking at. The format, the the the, the 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 minutes that the records was, they went down, 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 went down from three twenty five to something like two twenty nine. So Jay, you lost a whole Jay, fucking minute. I, I, yeah, you got I, more stars, but, but time wise, it was the same. So you think the beats was better then than they are now? You know why? You know why I think the beats was better? Because the beats are now are so robotic. It's missing a certain. It's digital. A certain this is what I'm finna say. Okay, you yeah, are right. Like when you come down, they they right on point. But music is not made on right on point. There's some in between. You ever see the difference between a cheerleader dance versus a natural person dance? 
A chili goes one, two, three, four. But a natural person dance, you see move in between. There's no you soul. You from one to six to four versus one to four, uh, uh, 12. You see what I'm saying? So you do lose something. But if that's the only thing you ever heard in your life, brother, then yeah, you would think it's better. But people who has a real music and know the real music of theory, they understand there's there's notes in between. Your music, your music is so perfect on beat that you got to understand it don't even sound real. It's like listening to a damn robot when you understand how the ear works. It's like hey, singing all that shit. You listen to trap beats and all that. Man, I can make that shit in five minutes. It's like it's oh, like singers. Dog. It's like R and B singers today versus R and B singers back in the day. You can feel can that whole missing. Let me, let me can you tell you this? I, I, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Whole missing. I get, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. But I'm just saying this right. Here. It is so crazy that men are trying to argue so bad to go back. Let's no, go back because every everything was so good. It's nobody no saying that. E. Nobody no, said no, that. E. No, no, nobody no, saying no, that. E. Let me finish. I let y'all rap for like a. Oh, go ahead time. and do the Michael Jackson. Go ahead and do the Moon. Go ahead. Go and so ahead. and so everybody say it. everything in the past was better. It, it is. It's, it wasn't better. That's why we changed. Guess what? I'm sorry. Cars better. Listen, I, I'm sorry to let you know. <laughs> Horseback and wagon was not better than the car. We, no, we cars were built up. better. They were way built better back then. Cars are still in the world from the 90s. Why? Because they're better. What? New cars is trash. Yes. They're about 120 and they can't fix them. And guess what? Get a new Tesla? You ain't fixing that bitch neither. All right? Like I said, I, I follow car shit. I follow dude. Oh, brother. A it got no. You got to understand. Are you, are, you saying, are you saying water tastes better in plastic than it does uh, glass? Hell no, it don't. That's what he <laughs> said. I know he does. Have a good night. Y'all guys have a good night. Let me say something real quick. Yeah, I actually agree with most of the stuff you said today. Finally. Yeah, like it's crazy that we say it's a reason things get better. Like, and then we try to say, "Oh, everything's getting worse just because somebody's making money, no. and that's the only reason things are getting better." Come on, man! No, I man. That's why people that, throw TVs in the garbage can, their flat screens in the garbage can. Every time they go there, they just go buy another one for so 150 dollars. 100, so, versus having so, tubes and all that. Also, you got to so, understand, so TV, TV, just because TV, something changed, don't make it better. You got to understand, just because something changed, don't make it better. A tube is not better. A lot of things have plastic parts today. Like you get a vacuum clean. The motherfucker, it used to just okay. be the belt wear out. Now the plastic part wear. Same thing about your car. Yep, when you let your seats up now and go back and forth, it's got plastic gearing in it. It strips out. Back in the day, it just had mail or gearing in it. And it didn't strip out. So just because something is new, E. Don't make it Hold better. On. So Jay, I just, it just I make it I think I'm gonna say that if it does. Hold on. Jay, so you trying to tell me the two TV is better than the flat TV today? That's what I'm trying to say. Pressure rate. What I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, we had a tube TV. You damn near can throw it on uh, outside on the damn front porch, and you still can go back in the house and plug it up. These mm -hmm. new TVs, if you bump them too hard, the screen is gone. You got to replace the shit. They look because better. The stuff they put inside of it, the microchips and all that stuff, it's so fragile. That's what I'm saying. It might have a better picture than everything, but, it, you know, I want to see everybody holding their damn face. I want to see everybody <laughs> purple. Some things I want to be a little blurry. I, I think they're going too far with this case shit. Because you're seeing too much. A lot of movie stars are signing contracts and saying they don't want to be past 4K because you're seeing too much detail in their face. You can start to see the imperfection, even in their makeup now. Oh, I have never heard somebody bad. just sit here and complain about everything that's new. I ain't nobody complaining about no, I'm just telling you about the real of it. I, I enjoy women. I'm right here on the internet. Wait a minute. Hey, I'm right here on the internet well, talking about right now. Get the mic. I can't be talking about technology in a bad way. What I'm trying to, to say to you, what I'm trying to say to you is just because we change things. Don't make it better. It's just that the people who are in control, who are designing these type of things, they have more influence in moving forward. They can't look. 
they can't sell you the same shit and let it last forever. They got to keep selling you shit. So they keep making shit more cheaper than it lasts a certain period of time where you have to buy. They've been doing this shit since VCR. The first VCR had all the technology. They have all that shit on it. But they would put a slow motion on this one, the new model. They could have put it on the last model. So they keep your ass buying stuff. So I deal with that. So, so we should get rid of the stove and start cooking hey, hey, back over I left. I know. You see, look, you got that green string. Your ass be disappearing like a ghost. Cash with a ghost. Now, see. Hey, e, 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 hold on one right. second. Back e, up, hold on. Light back, right? Okay. Hey, yeah, hey, I know hey, about this technology. Hey. That's what I worked in. It, brother, let me tell you something. I know how hey, this shit hey, works. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to go back. Hey, Jay. So I think that E. So I think that what Jay is saying is is that. He's, I, I think that what he's saying is that, of course, living in the twenty with the twenty first century is way better. It is way because, re, like nowadays, like there are cure for diseases that there wasn't back then. And so, E, you're right. It is a much better day. It is a much better time. I personally think that the millennials in a hundred years will be the greatest generation that there was. The reason why? Because they ha they were able to monetize and make money on their cell phones. So e, you're right, this is a much better time. I think that but what Jay is trying to say is that there are bits and pieces and components of society on a social level that now are, so we are engineered, like it, 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 it we're engineered as if that's our option. But if you take away certain things, we would have different choices. But see, That's see, what he's saying. But the people who make the choices is the people that got the money and the power. So we. So the, the point that I was trying to help you make it is, what this sounds like to me is, I, I hear women do this all the time. Women say, I got a good man. He, 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 uh, he work, he pay all the bills, he listen to what I said, but you know what? He got that, he got that, he got that nail on his big toe, boy. That nail on his big toe is so aggravating. He got this pimple on his back. We can go through any time and dissect what was wrong. Right, about any, right. Any and you time. don't hear me. But hold on, uh, let me finish. Either. But for, but for the, for the majority, it's 95 to 100, 95 close to 99%, the world is 10 times better. Yes, they use a plastic piece. But they realized that they didn't need that piece to last as long because you're going to upgrade. And if we're going to sit here and try to say a car that can drive itself is less than a car back in the 90s, y'all have lost y'all mind. Like, no, y all, y all have, I, I know you didn't go there. I know you, you try to filter the conversation when you say it. Uh, this is how I hear women. No, no, wait, Jay, 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 Jay. Hold up, Jay. I got I to this. Jay, I got to this. Now, this is my point. I was going to ask AE this question anyway. I was saying, simple as this. Are times better because it's easier? Is that why times are better? Times are better because it is better. No, no. Why is it better? It is better because, first of all, if yeah. we got, as black men, if we got to have a whole conversation why 2022 is better than the 30s and the 40s, we really missed the boat. Like we, we don't. We don't it, but why? You're, you're completely deflecting. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm saying it for a reason. <laughs> I'm saying it for a reason, and you're being completely disingenuous. We know times are easier. That's why it's so it's much better. better. It's better no, that's why it is better. Worry about Our whole better. philosophy is try to make life easy. Retire young. Get rich. Do whatever you do. Make it easy on you. Don't cook your food. Get your liver. Don't drive your car. Your car will drive you. Life is easy. That's why life is better. That's why it's I can tell you why the car is better. I can tell you why it's better. Why pick up your phone. Your whole fucking world is in your phone. That's how life is. It's that fucking simple. It's on your phone now. Lose your phone, lost your life. For some people, not me. It ain't that you serious. Think it should be harder. No, no. First off, what I believe is this. What I believe is this. No, no, not, I'm just like, wait, hold up, E. Let me tell you what I believe. Personally, I believe you should work, work, and earn your value in life. Things should not to be given to you so easily. There are things you're going to miss when you're vulnerable and weak. When things like playing a video game on on the easiest difficulty, you get no experience out of that shit. And that's humans. Humans lack experience and a whole lot of things because everything's being done for them. And it's like, well, you know what that makes you? That makes someone that makes you an easy person to manipulate, to move, to control, because you personally don't care. 
the, 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 hold on, hold on, but, but okay, M.O., hold on, no, M.O., you, I, want, I want to tell M.O. this. Do you know why we are the smartest generation that ever walked the earth, the younger people? We're not people? skillful. We're not that skilled. We're you know, not that skilled, though. Listen, We're not that skilled. But let me finish. The reason we are the smartest humans that ever walked the earth ever is because we realize cool. if we automate most of the things that, that we can do, we can use our brains for other things that can be able to make us smarter in the future. Like what? So, <laughs> y'all leaving out y'all leaving out one key because thing and that's evolution that's the problem we are not using our brain anymore because we, we are making everything dependent on technology no, exactly no 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 wait, wait, wait. Working, how many numbers can you remember working, how many working. people how many family member numbers can you remember right now can you remember five of your family member numbers right now. But the problem is you don't need to know you that. You carry around a device and say smartphone, that means your ass has to be dumb. So, wait, so you say, that, that's number one. Wait, really, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all think you, people in the 60s are smarter than the people... I'm saying I used to remember 15 pe different people numbers back in the day. Can you say that now with your brain? Because you talking about makes your brain smart. How does that matter I'm asking right now, can you hold on, hold on, hold on. How does that matter? Right how, how did that help you get to no, the No, no, remember, e, 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 you said this. I'll give you a point. You said we smarter. I said we're less skillful, period. People are less skillful. Overweight, diseases now, because they're they But they're smart. But they're smart, though. They got no skills. They're unhealthy. ML, 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 ML. Certain, over time, certain skills are needed. Like, for example, back in 700 years ago, you need to learn how to uh, hunt a, a, a lion to eat. You don't gotta do that no more. No, no, you should. No, no. Wait, 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 Aaron. This is the point, though. You should have both. You should have both skills and smartness. You're missing my point. People are going pure brain mode and don't have any. The thing is, it makes you vulnerable. When you don't know how to do things, you have to rely on the system to do for you. You're left vulnerable and weak because you have to depend on the grocery store, depend on whoever it is or whatever it is to do for you. That's all you know. That's the worst part. That's all you know. You know nothing for skill. See, Emma, you don't. What you don't understand is if, if men had to go to a point where they had to hunt, they'll figure that out quick. See, that's the people that lose that. They won't no, figure it out quick. That's the people that lose that. That's, that's, that's the people that lose that. When that listen, damn flood came through, listen, you can't oh, say hold on, hold flying on, flags on. because they didn't have the skills to know exactly how to get this, themselves out of that. Thank you. This is crazy that we say the smartest generation in the world couldn't find a way to adapt to a new world. This is they crazy. Because the they don't have the skills to do it. They don't have people also, skills. People don't also, have people wait, hold skills. on. Let me let me ask a question real quick. That hurricane let me, was let me, a bad example. Let me let me, uh, let me ask example. a question real quick. Let me ask a question real quick. Which one is better? Homegrown vegetables versus store bought? Homegrown. All day. But which which no, one's but... easier? Homegrown. First of all, I know what I put in the ground. I know what I put in the ground. I know what I took out the ground. I know what I put in the ground. Mo, 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 Mo. Here's the here's but the follow up question. I, I talk... Which one's easier, the store bought or but homegrown? That's the whole matter. point. That yeah, was my exactly. whole point. That was my philosophy. Exactly. That's exactly. Exactly. It's like okay. easy. Just because it's easy doesn't make it better. That's why it's I said you don't like it. Wait, wait, wait. The crazy part about this, listen. Oh, that doesn't oh, apply oh, to everything, though. That doesn't apply to everything. Because if you go back to the video, it doesn't have to apply to everything, but it applies to a lot of things. It probably applies to most things. But guess what? Because it's easier to it's easier to make it's easier to make plastic piece for cars, but is it better than a metal piece? Fuck um, no, not even close. Yes, yes, it is. It's just better. It's better in a lot of ways. In a if lot of ways, what you're trying to, what you trying to, what you trying to have, a, what you trying to do, bumper cars is better. The car performs better. The car performs better. But yo, 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 there are a lot of reasons for why they're making cars yeah, the way they should. They should, they should make saying. cars where you hit people. It's not, it's not, and some of them are not. I'll see y'all later. I appreciate y'all guys. Better. I really do, man. I'll see y'all later. All right, E. All right, peace. I get this, man. When it comes to gas efficiency, these cars are amazing. But when it comes to maintenance and do it yourself, they're trash. Meaning, I have to go to another man to fix my shit, which I should not have to do. I should be able to work on my own shit. 
Why is it that even to this day, 90s cars are still the shit? 90s cars are going up in value because they're on the fucking road to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like these new plastic shit that's coming out, it's going to drop. At least right now, my mom, my wife's BMW. That shit already dropped in value. She has a 2020. It's already $15,000 down with only 3,000 miles on the bitch. You feel what I'm saying? They ain't worth shit over time because they do for the most part. You're not going to fix yourself. It's going to get recycled and redone again. That's how it is. to be absolutely correct about this, too. Even that's the not the point, though. Even it's the not the car 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 car. But that's the only though. reason you're still using one tw what we call uh, 2575. You still uh, burning 75% of your fuel through the catalytic because they haven't came up with the design yet, even though we have fuel injection versus the carburetor. They haven't yeah. came up with the yet to burn over anymore. 25. So the hybrid you got to understand, it. that's where the emissions come in at and all that stuff. I am a master. This is how I raised my family. I am a master mechanic, certified. So when, it, when you start talking about cars, bro, when you start talking about, I worked in the body shop for GM and the mechanic shop for GM. So I have 25 years. That's how I raised my family. So when you start talking about production, when you start, yes, yeah, it's better for the car company because they're putting all this cheap shit in your car. But if you keep your car on automatic seat when you first set in your car and that keep going, it'll only last you two years. And before you have to you have to replace that rubble oh, that it used up. to be metal. Jay, take this. Just an automatic car versus a manual. Just a transmission on, we know which one's worse. Not because of how it feels, but how long it's going to last when it comes to maintenance, all that stuff. A manual so is even more enjoyable to me personally. I like driving manual. But so it's I'm automatic because it's easy to drive. But the cost is this. It's going to cost you more because it is. It's more expensive. And when something goes wrong, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So I, in 15 years, what is that going to matter if all the cars are electric in 15 years? Well, technically 15 years, we still have hybrids. But yes, most cars will be electric. Yes, because well, that doesn't matter at all. Are doing fifty percent no, of their cars now are electric, yeah. so that's been in the real woodworks for a while. But right. when yeah. it comes down, so, what's the, when so it, that doesn't matter. When it comes so down to, we are, we're gonna be riding history. around in hot rods because that's what the hot rods were back in the day. They were electric. No, yeah. you know? What's so, the lifespan so of an electric when the kids car? kids played with them, they yeah. were hot rods. That was electric cars. You know, so we we go in that era and we're not gonna be able to stop. Look, man, we're not gonna be able to stop technology. We already know that. What's the lifespan of an electric car? Huh? What's the no, lifespan no. of an electric car? I, that's it's gonna improve over time. Ten years. It's ten years. Um, the right now, but the other ten years. Over time is gonna improve. So what? No, but it's, it's, not, it's not about just so much improvement. I think it's gonna happen. I've been watching this for a while. I'm really into cars. I believe driving eventually is gonna be uh, a privilege for those who are wealthy. Everyone's right. gonna be public transportation because the way it's looking right now, I'm serious, man. Everyone's gonna be taking public transportation. Only the rich and wealthy are gonna be like driving around their own POVs. That's how I see it. And I, it kind of sucks because I love cars, but... Why are you saying that? Because, you said no, standard, because of numbers. California numbers and what you need to replace right and then how affordability. It's like... it's like, And also, look at the, the block home. It's like this. The roads are a bitch to already maintain. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there are so, there's so many costs and effects that would lower so many things if you got rid of vehicles because they do a lot of damage to a lot of things. We have a lot... We have too many cars. There are more cars than people. You feel what I'm saying? Like... Once they're able to convince people, and they will because, again, the way it wants to with the Green Deal, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it is what it is. We'll end up going public services. That's why they're trying to make railroad systems and everything like that now. They're trying to make improvements to how we get people here faster and transport this way, that way. If, if you have a car, you're going to be someone of wealth. I'm telling you right now. In the future, you won't you even have buy, a car, be able to buy insurance. They won't even because, look. You know, insurance will be time, so high as, for you. Wait, time, because the what they do? They do the numbers What's on. The they, they'll do the numbers on electric cars. They'll do the numbers on the self-driving cars, and they'll say they're ninety-five percent uh, more proficient at, than you driving. They won't make error. So now you have to pay like two hundred thousand yes. dollars to get insurance to drive a car around. So they have it's, a way yes. to force fast out of that car. Very yes. easy. California yes. setting the standard right now. We got a yes, whole exactly. fleet coming out in the next two years. We got a fleet coming out now in the next two years. Have a lane for self-driving cars. We have always set the standards out here when it comes down to cars and emission and everything else. That's where you got your emission from. California. Yep. Spread it all over the United States. Can't stand your fuckers. Love you or hate you at the same time. It's one of those rivers that have county. Sure. I don't like but that. It's an uh, electric car. A Tesla is better than any 90s car. Hands down. It depends what? on what you're trying to get. Well, wait, wait, Aaron. 
It depends on what you value in the car, all right? Because like I said, some people value cars because it gets you point A, point B. It's money, efficient, whatever it is. But some people actually have a connection with their car. A Tesla is soulless. There's nothing to it. It is a computer. All right, you know what? All right, let me tell you it does this. not come. It doesn't make any noise. It's it's just doing its own thing. It doesn't need me to be there. It's just there. Ooh. A car actually needs you to keep up maintenance and do things. That's why I'm a gearhead. I love this shit. And I'm, I'm listening to the noises in my car. It ain't perfect, but it's not fully perfect. I go through ups and downs to my car. Yes, you're right. Your Tesla's not going to give you any heads because you're not going to do it. You'll take it. It's probably going to take itself in eventually. They're probably going for his lower maintenance. going to leave out your permission because Tesla can do that. He'll summon his car, fix the shit, and then come back to your garage and you're good to go. It's convenient. It's easy. You ain't got to do shit because it's right. easy. Right, cool. And I hear you. I, Cause I can repair almost anything in my car by you, myself too. The difference, the thing is though, the reason I say it's better. Wait, the reason why I say it's better is because guess what? What's gas right now? Some oh, places, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not there. I really have no. Some, some places is the gas. Like, some, places, some, some places like what? California. OG, you live in California. So, it's been five dollars out here for the last ten years, so it's gonna be up to about seven, eight dollars a gallon. Very. It's easy. almost eight dollars in, 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 in LA. I think it's almost eight dollars. So, yes, yeah, because it's been five dollars out here for the last ten years. Right, right. So five dollars and eight dollars. Guess what? If I'm if I'm driving a Tesla, I don't gotta worry about that at all. I don't care about. I don't well, care let me about tell that. you. Let me tell you how they how they suck you in. Let me see. See, this is what I'm telling you how they suck your ass in. All right. See, once you know how people give you something, you know, like, it's like almost like a drug dealer. He give you your first little girl go up, you know. Now I'm, I'm using girl, not you know. Got you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They yeah. give you that free at the party. They might give it to you one or two times free, and then you'll find yourself addicted to you. Then now they finna go in on your ass. So to make batteries, my brother, do te new technology to make batteries. You still gonna have to use some kind of fuel to make them damn batteries. So, so as soon as they suck everybody in, that's when you gonna start paying paying the real cost. And still, until they get cars to go up to about five hundred miles on one uh, charge, people are not gonna see them as being a convention because people don't want us like. Damn, I can't travel. Because people like to get in their cars and they like to travel. Uh, up to this point, the only people who can travel the distance like that is the federal, city, state, and government because they got these electrical power lines that move their trains around and move their stuff around. So you won't have that convenience until they make a car that actually can do up to 500 miles. People are not going to be, and it'll be like, they're a suspect of it because you are limited. And another um, thing, too. With that technology that we're going to, like Tesla, they can push a button and just cut your car down, bro. Yep. Yes. They can stop your car. You, they lose, got control your of cars. you <laughs> lose control of your vehicle. They, can do that with a lot. they have a lot of cars. Have, most cars have kill shirts. Yeah, you know, I understand it. But listen, what yes, I'm saying. That's you saying lose, why is it better? Not it's only can you, women, women. Not only can you lose control <laughs> with your car, but listen to this. It used to be a time. When you had your rack and pinion, you can steer your car. And it had certain things used what? It used all pressure and everything to turn your wheels. Now it's electrical done. That means somebody, you could be traveling down the road and somebody wanted to kill you. They can hack your car and make your car turn off the fucking road. You couldn't do that with an old car. You know what, though, Aaron, though, to be fair to you, Aaron, it's pros and cons to both. We're both right in asking what it is that we value. So I'm not devaluing anything you're saying. What you're saying is true. These cars are the shit. I'm not taking it from them. But like I said, for someone who's a car nut, I look into this shit. I really do follow it. It's going to be a thing of privilege when it comes to getting these cars eventually. Because as you're saying, it's limited. And most people do want to go far. But the thing is, when we go far, it probably take public transportation. That's going to be much easier, much accessible. That's what I'm making now. I'm trying to make public transportation more accessible to most people. I'm trying to get people more in tune to the cities as well. I don't believe in mega cities, but that's been a big push for a very long time. I have pros and cons of that too. I'll talk about that later. But when it comes to vehicles in general, the best, we talked about the community. The best one is actually hybrid. Because when it comes to efficiency and able to refuel your car up and still go way guard distance, like wait like thousand miles, you can do that with a hybrid. That's the that's the both like both worlds. You don't want to have something that's absolute. Take both of them. It's the best of both worlds. But see, but see, yo, mo, mo, you got to understand this though. Hybrid, okay, I agree with you. Hybrid, right now, right? Because the infrastructure is not is not complete yet. It's not complete yet. However, you got to understand we're in a transition period from going from. Uh, field cars to electric cars. So we're in a transition. So right now, the best thing you would say, I, I agree with you, is hybrid. But once we make that transition, to, like 10 years from now, the best thing is going to be electric. 
I think they're gonna jump over that, my brother. See, I've seen this done before. I think we're gonna end up with magnetic versus electricity. Magnetic is a lot more efficient than uh, electric cars. So I'm looking over that electric because I know how the cassette tape came in and it only had a short stay before we got into something totally different. You know, if you look, go back and look at cassettes, it stayed for a short period of time. So we're looking at electric cars, and there's other people with technology right now is going way beyond that. And by the time they get uh, everything keyed in with the electric car, we're going to be straight magnetic. Um, the, because, the research for that is not is not, is not um, as far as you think. I, I, I don't the think you listen to Coach, Coach there, Long. Uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta be into that science, brother, to understand it. There's a I'm lot of things. I'm, 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 you're an engineer, so you, you know what I'm talking about when I'm going to say what I'm going to say right now. I'm in, a, I'm you, in the basics of the research. Okay, so <laughs> you understand what I'm saying right about now. I did a video about uh, two years ago. I put it on YouTube. How you can never, ever have to replace your catalytic converter. Okay. Other than America... Most people use the fine metals in, in the catalytic uh, converter. They would put uh, these precious metals in it. The only reason the United States do that or have cars here with that is because we had copper. Copper was our resource for our pennies. So most other countries use copper. So I taught guys how to go and gut out uh, uh, your, your catalytic converter, take and put eight wires of uh, copper, from Home Depot to cost you $4 or something, pure copper, and string it through your whole pipe. And then you you you, you, you roll it up and, and ball it up and on each end, and you put your catalytic converter back on and it'll pass any test because it's a it's a chemical reaction when gasoline go across hot copper. And so I taught guys how to do it. That video got almost 75,000 hits in less than three months. Nobody ever came back and said it didn't work. So what I'm trying to tell you... Mm -hmm. The way they try to do things now is where you can't do shit like that. And I think that's what mom was trying to say from the beginning. They don't want you fixing on your car. They want you to take it back to the manufacturer. They got everything tied in together. These new cars come out now. They what have they call it like kill switch. When you hit, when you go to the light, it cuts your car off. That's some bullshit. Your starter was not made to do that. And the more you do that, the more it tears tear up your starter. You'll be, be replacing that damn starter that costs over seven hundred something dollars in a new car now. Versus, no, that's but the, but the, but the new starters now. The new, the new starters now today are made for that. The, the new cars starters. are made for that. Yes. No, no, the Bennett's in that starter would never be stronger than the turning of the flywheel of that damn car. Obviously, you do, you might know electronics, but you don't know mechanics. No, so no, wait, 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 wait. I'll no. just say, Jay, Jay, Aaron might be on something that I know that the Germans pretty much got that mastered. I'm not gonna lie. Like, Ford, they're trashed. They trash. But with well, Germany, has the auto photo, theirs is pretty good. I can't lie. Okay, listen to what I'm yeah. saying. Every time you engage that power in that starter, it has to go and hit the flywheel, right? Okay. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now we know Bennett's and stuff runs out on starters all the time, right? So are you telling me with the microchips and everything now that has to be cooled versus uh, uh, mechanics, are you telling me now that that starter, engaging that starter, I don't talk to so many of my friends who had these kind of cars for over four years, and they're telling me they replaced them with the initial, You're talking about the initial version of the technology. I'm talking about what's going on. What, like, the but now is different. Now. Germany is ahead. Of the technology uh, yes, Germany got a whole something different, but you got to understand, people like, in Germany drive their cars a lot different. You, uh, us, to go three blocks, we go get in our car and start the motherfucker up and go to the damn <laughs> versus walk your ass down. Germans don't drive their cars like that. So you got to understand how much wear and tear we put on our cars in America. All right? So we can't take other people's driving styles and try to emulate them into our driving style. Because I know in my neighborhood, I can see my neighbor. I'll be walking to the store. And they'll pass me, go to the store, get one or two items, and come back out of the store when they can walk. And that's what this is what new technology do to human beings. You have to ask yourself the question, have it made human beings better, though? And see, the problem yeah. is when we did some with no. no, when we're dealing with 65% of obesity in our country because we're not getting enough exercise and we're getting things to do everything that we need to do for us, machines to do everything. How, how do that impact our health? But you have to understand this though there's a negative and there's a positive to everything. That's what, he, that's what we were talking about. We were talking about, look, you got to understand, I'm not talking about 
everything I'm talking about as being bad. What I'm saying is you got to learn, you know, learn how to integrate it in your life, use it to your advantage, but oh, still have a decent life too, where yes. you can get out and walk to the store. Have so the basic. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the have balance. Like you got to have tech and you yes. have skill. I'm I saying people who lack skill today don't have, they have the smartness, but not the skill. And I said that most people, if they had skills coming up in the tech, they would be so great. But that's the thing. We're so we're off balance. We're kind of extreme on certain ends, I'm saying. We're a little extreme. extreme. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's that? You've always been extreme. We're human. But no, no, it's not, no. We're extreme in the sense of how far we go. I'm not talking about how far we go. I'm talking about in the sense of how do we hold things in balance. Like we don't have any balance in our system. When has it ever been balanced? That's that's for us. We're supposed to have the balance as individuals. We're supposed to keep things in balance in order. If we don't, well, things become chaotic and end up being meaningless. Like I believe humans are going to honestly phase themselves out because they want to. Like people are like, oh, I was never have like no. I think humans are going to be like, I'm worthless. I think this robot's better than I am, and I think you live my life through the computer, put my brain consciousness into the machine, and it'll be better off. That's where we're going right now. You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say that like I'm gonna say uh, twenty thousand years. Whenever the wheels invented, somebody had the same exact argument for the wheel. How? D they probably said the same thing. <laughs> no, 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 we had to walk. No, 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 I want you to eat that. Eat that. Explain that one. So the same argument you're having right now mm -hmm. for technology, modern technology today. The same technology is the same argument somebody probably had twenty thousand years when they said, you know, it's probably better for us to walk instead of having this wheel instead of having a wheelbarrow to uh, your system to, uh, is flawed. The reason why your argument is flawed is because first of all, people still walk. But people that was the whole point. But that's the whole argument. That's my whole argument. I'm saying that's both. Don't abandon it. Don't abandon walking. That's my argument. Don't abandon the simple shit you should know how to do. Learn, keep growing with technology. And somebody probably said the same thing about carrying shit versus putting it in a wheelbarrow. Have uh, come you on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 don't, hey, Marvis, don't fall into this shit. Get out of there. Get out of there. He's trying to get you in that renal. Get out of there. Why not have both? Why not have both? I'm it's not saying you can't have both. Well, I'm just saying. But that's my is argument. Still. My that's argument my is argument. this, though. You can't complain about technology advancements because there's always going to be I'm not complaining about money. technology advancing. I said you should have both. I'm saying people are lacking areas. I'm saying you should, you should be too strange. You should both balance out as an individual. So you're not weak. That's the whole aspect. Even a person who has no brain, you can be weak. You know what I'm saying? You got to have strength and smartness. You have both of that. You should have just one. That makes you think. That's have awesome. you ever been in a grocery you store? No hey, have you ever been in a grocery store when the computer shuts down? Have you ever been in a line of a grocery store when the computer shut down? And you get a, try to get some person some, some money to give you change back. Have you ever did that yet? Like, what do you mean? Like when you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden that that little computer that she's working on that she calls a cash register, it shuts down. All right. Mm -hmm. Now she's in the mix of you giving her twenty five dollars and sixty cents. Uh, I'm gonna say twenty seven dollars, and whatever you buying is calls twenty six dollars and eighty six cents. She sat there and scratched all her goddamn hair out, trying to figure out how much change she's supposed to get him back. Because the last twenty years they've been able to do damn math on calculators, and they don't know. Uh, see one, see, you know. See, one thing about human uh, beings you don't understand that, that you're talking about right about now, it's called muscle memory. Every cell in your body has a memory. And if you stop using it, my brother, it stop producing. But, yo, you know what, though? That same argument you're saying, there's a, I guarantee you 25 years ago, there's also a cash register. There's also a cashier who couldn't do that, that same math 25, 26 years ago. I guarantee you she wasn't hired neither. I guess but, she but that's was. This is what you're saying. She wasn't hired. She was. he wasn't hired. Brother, you, you keep saying that. Point. No, I'm telling you, you she point, wasn't Aaron. hired. That's no, part no, of the requirement said. of that job is you got to be able to count and count people money back. And see, the machines today not only uh, 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 tell you what the price is, it tells you how much to change to give a person back. The machines 25 years ago was not like that. So she had or he had to know the ability to count. And you know what? You know what also might be also, a, you know, it's a trade off for that. So instead of me having to count your um, instead of me having to count the change, and spend those extra five minutes, uh, uh, extra let's say a minute counting your change, right? 
Now I can yeah. instead of having one person at a time, now I can do three people in that same as in, a, in the same period of time that I would do one person. I understand it. I'm gonna sum this point though. I'm gonna this sum this conversation, this conversation up like this. Broke. I'm gonna sum this conversation for all the older elders out there who use the blue pill. It might have made you harder, but it didn't make your relationship better. Oh, I was just gonna simply say, Aaron, I'm with you. But I'm, you I'm not I'm not against what you're saying, bro. Chocolate is all that stuff. That's all great. But we're saying, like, when something fails, have a backup plan. Okay. So you're fine. not left vulnerable. That is all I'm saying, bro. I'm okay. saying if you knew you're okay. Cool. Cool. But if you want to go out the world like I don't need it, I got this. You are not you can't always rely on one thing and think it's gonna get better just because things happen going good, but things can go bad real quick with Ukraine. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure they wish they had some more skills right now. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Right. But no, hey, I, I was never arguing against that. I'm just saying that advancements in technology are needed. And the past yes, no one was just playing the devil, it is. devil it is. advocate. You were just playing the devil advocate. I know exactly what your ass was doing. I don't have these conversations a long time ago. A lot of yeah. shit you were saying, you didn't believe yourself. You were just putting it out there and see if we have an argument to come back. No, I, think I understand I what you're doing, Aaron. I tell you, Aaron, I, tell you I understand like this, what you were doing. I see your I rocket think. ship. I see I tell you like damn this, your little Tesla rocket ship over there. I know what the hell you was doing. I tell you like this though, when, when they change those registers up to where you can do it up to three people, most people start losing how to count. Mm -hmm. And just back to like it, it also reminds me back to one of the bits that you said as uh, for, I forget who asked. I think it was Mo. As far as can you remember any number? Oh, that was Jay. Yeah, it was Jay. And then you said, well, "Why would you need to know that?" What happens if you lose your phone and you're lost and you can borrow somebody else's phone? Like, oh, but I don't know nobody else's number. Did that, done that. Okay. It's good to know these things. That's where I have the thought that in most cases, the more that technology goes up, the more that the human goes down intellectually wise. Yeah, there's some mm -hmm. people that's smart, but most people are just dumb. Yeah, but they, because, they, because they rely the on technology for the most part. That's no, the whole this, argument. Yes, but see, you don't understand, though. This is what I'm saying, though, no, Buddha. There's always going to be dumb people. There's always going to be dumb people. There's yeah, but they're growing. But you have a standard of skill, number. bro. No, standard of skill set. They're, right. they're, growing, they're growing larger in number. That's why they call it a smartphone. Emmanuel, if you think we're born, Emmanuel, if you think we're born, come up on the um, panel. I was gonna say, um, shit. When it comes to us in general, I was gonna say, I believe I would look at society. I'm looking at men and women, and honestly, they become more self-absorbed. They become more selfish and more in tune with themselves. Life is easy enough for them to be selfish, in my opinion. And I think we'll become more and more separate and fall apart because of how easy things are. And even relationships, they're easy. They shouldn't be. That's the, thing, that's the mentality. Oh, it could be easy if I just have it set up this way. And it's like, no, nothing is easy. That's why nothing is easy. Where is that? That's a mindset. That's not. That's a mindset. That's just a mindset thing. That can. Well, Aaron, let me ask you a question. How many guys you know right now? And I'm not talking about right now. Uh, 62 years old, who still run seven miles a week, who still got a good crossover in and out, and still can touch the rim. See, back in my days, uh, back in not just my days, I'm just saying, you think with all the technology we got to get today, the younger men are in that type of health. They say we living longer, but a lot of people, I have 32 people in my house. Yeah, they're living long, longer, but each one of them have over nine different pills they have to take each day like a machine. So here I am, 62, don't have to take no pills at all. Had had a cold in 40 years. Because I, I keep some of the old standards with the new standard. I'm talking to you on the internet now. Most people, old people like me, were scared of the internet. When it, Not the internet, but just computer in general. I know. I was never, I know, I was never, I was never scared of technology. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you, my brother. But okay. the technology is making us more dependable on machines and less healthy. I don't think it's making us better. All right. So I, I can agree with you, maybe for the general person. But I think that when you when, but like e, e, Emmanuel said earlier, when you have advancements in technology, it frees your mind up to to think of things better. 
Selfishly, make, make more selfish. To what? Play games all day make long. More selfish. No, it's it's been, it's play games all day long. To play you to games all day. I'm talking about the new generation. No way home. To play fucking games all day long in your mama's basement or even your basement or whatever. To play, I mean, you know, kill forty thousand people with your damn guns right there on the set with your thumbs and everything. How does that that make you better? Give free you free your time up for that. When yeah, everything else right. in, a, in, in, in the human experience is going down, relationships are going down, marriages is going down, everything is going down, but we got this all this advancement because you know what? We forgot what it's supposed to be to be human. I wasn't even gonna say that, Jay. Honestly, as I said no, before, no. because you have more time, more time for yourself. That's what you make it time for. Make it time for you. Mm -hmm. Tech makes more time for the individual, which you know. makes you gonna do whatever you want to do, whatever it is you want to do, you can do that. It's made simple and easy for you. Divide yeah. and conquer. It's yeah. a simple Listen. tactic. Listen, no, 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 no. Yeah. all right. Let's let's talk about. Let's, uh, here's a social um, talk, thing about technology. I, I cook for myself, so this doesn't necessarily apply to me per se. But guess what? If if I have to spend, sit there and spend three, two, three hours a day cooking, right? Versus I can be at work working. And making more money for my family, so I can provide a better lifestyle, a better life for my family. You don't think that's worth uh, advancement in technology? Is, I can buy, buy that meal for uh, for five, uh, in fifteen minutes. Look at this. I don't know. It depends on what you value. If you value time with your job, surviving, or is value time to cook food for your family, whichever you find is a priority, you do so. Me personally, if I had time, I'm in the military. If I had, I don't care if it's cooking at home. They told me, yo, go to work. Well, I can't really use my example. I'm, I make salary. It don't matter if I go in and time. It ain't about time. I'm not getting paid by the hour. You know what I'm saying? But if you told me, like, yo, you can spend time at work, make more money, or you can stay at home and cook for your family, what would you do? I'm going to spend time with my family. I, I'm not promised tomorrow. I can work for a little money, whatever, and then I can die tomorrow. And then I hope that money was working. They hope my family survive. I'm not there to see them, but. I wish I would have had one moment with them cooking dinner or something. It depends what you value. Yeah, but over, but marvelous. You're in a, you're in a um, privileged position. I'm talking about somebody. What if somebody? What if you Hold were on. like, yo, your paycheck to paycheck? Like, look, your family. You got three kids. Your, your paycheck to paycheck. Like, yo, you like that extra two hours you could be at work. It's gonna put an Aaron. Extra, gonna put an extra well, look at it on the other side of the street. Let me ask that. Let me ask that. Oh, go ahead, go get it in there. Because I was gonna say, throw that example. Um, you can use that time to cook instead of having it done yourself let's say you throw in technology that starts to cook for you or you start ordering food slowly you start to lose the, the ability to, to actually cook food efficiently and then while you're not cooking food and stuff is being done for you and you start to rely on that then it goes on to your kids how are they going to learn how to cook food you're not teaching them so that's a trade-off which is well, I'm gonna tell you another trade off trade -off. You know, because, because, because in technology, you have that you have the option for that trade off. And let me tell you about another trade off. Let me tell you another trade off. You can't, you can't say it's good or bad, it depends on what every individual values. Thank this you. man, Aaron, values his time to provide money for his family. That's just not my priority. Your priority might be your family in the sense of how you want to trade down skills or whatever. That's what you think. But Aaron, you can't judge Aaron and say that that's a good or bad thing. For Aaron, for his situation, that's how he wants to do things. That's how he's going to do things. We all value things differently in a sense. So I'm not going to condemn Aaron. Aaron, thanks for your example. I get it. I take it in for consideration. And if it was the different situation that you've put it, I might be able to get the money for my family because I had to move a certain way. If I'm in a scenario to try to project. I'm, I'm going to throw a rock at it. And what I'm saying is technology gives you Aaron, can I throw a rock at you? To have that, uh, have that ability, have the option, have that trade-off. Aaron, can I throw a rock at you? Something you didn't think about. And I'm dealing with people right now like that at my house. Okay, you said you you will free up time where you can go out there and make that bag, right? Yep. Okay? Now you out there, you eating what we would consider non-food. It's very low standard, low grade food. Yep. In the end of the day, when you get about 65, 65, 55, all that time you think you were saving the money you think you were making, you go pay it off and help, bro. I got wow. people right wow. now. Who, no, no listen to what I'm just saying. However, you have bad health because of exactly what you're talking about. Nope. Eating nope. a lot of you fast food. OG, no, no, no. OG, you know what? Let me finish. Okay, Let me finish. Fine. Eating a lot of bad food. That has low, what I call low grade food. I mean, not real good food at all versus the food you would have 
prepared for yourself or your wife would have prepared for you or whoever at your house. Cool. You got very low grade food and it takes a toll on the human body. You can only put that stuff in your body for so long. And at the end of the day, what you go pay in insurance and what you go pay in for health, because most insurance in the near future is going to be co-pay anyway, regardless of how you look at it. So what I'm telling you, whatever you, you think you're getting away with right now, you go pay for it in your health. Cool. So what I'm going to say, and I counter to that is, you're going to have yes, bad sir. food regardless, whether, whether you cooked it yourself or whether you got it from the restaurant, you got bad food regardless because grade D meat is grade D meat, whether it came from McDonald's or whether it came from the grocery store. If it's grade D, it's grade D, right? However, the fact that I have two extra hours to, uh, to spend, uh, if I have two extra hours, three extra hours to uh, get money at work, now, instead of me going to, uh, to, the, to, to the Piggly Wiggly to get grade D meat, I can go to Whole Foods to get eight grade A meat. Or how about just no meat at all and just have good health? Well, meat because we're technically not supposed to be eating. We're natural. It's natural. Right, wait, I'm just telling you. Propose your wife. Why why y'all looking at everything? It seems like you're looking at everything bad with technology. Like technology giving him more time so he can meal prep. I understand. We understand that, but see what what people don't understand. There's a bill on the other end of that too. It's a trade-off. Sometimes. What's the difference between women? What's the difference between a lot of people getting old, not having a place to live, where their family medical can't take care of them, and they end up in my damn house? You understand? Because they think they was doing all the planning from the beginning. And they get so old when their bills start to be over a hundred thousand dollars at the hospital for bad health, they end up at places like my house, where their families don't want to have anything to do with them because they have no 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 wealth. To, uh, they family, their daughters or their sons can't take care of them, can't afford to take care of them, so they end up on certain uh, low grade government plans and end up in my house if I catch them homeless or something like that. So it's not that we think the technology is bad, my brother. What I'm trying to say is, when you're looking at a picture, look at the whole damn picture. You're looking at a game, look at the whole damn game. Don't pick and choose what you think is better, the better play, when in the end of the game, you still lost the game. So what I'm trying to say is, there is trade-off, there is balance. I think that's what this whole conversation has been about. The only thing y'all can hear about it, when we bring things to the table, then y'all, we make you think, then you think we're talking against technology. We're not. We're all on this panel together right now. So we must have some th- good about technology. Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't say you are saying anything bad. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a trade-off, and I think the trade-off is the trade-off. Yeah. That, that, and that, I think that's, that's where the basic technology. conversation come from. Wait, the, yeah, the fact oh, that yeah, technology well, it gives you allows you to have the trade off in the first place. And mm-hmm. if you don't have the technology, you don't right. have the option for that trade off. And I think we all agree to that. Yeah, I think sure. everybody on this panel agreed to that. I was gonna say, Aaron, you know what we also arguing about? Well, I don't want to say arguing about because I don't want to say arguing. Let's say debating, debating. about. We're learning something here too. What we're debating about, for the most part, is how you want to live your life. If you want to take certain paths in life a little harder, here are the, here are the benefits and pros and cons to that. If you want to take a life that's a little more easier, here's a pros and cons to that. You can have a little bit of both. If you want to feel balanced out, which is something I would do for personally, you could do so. But going to either one on any extreme, to me, is going to end up in some type of destruction, I in my opinion. I 1,000% agree with you on that. And I think the fact that um, that the way we – I think that we looked at things too much in extremes, especially on the Internet, especially on the YouTube streets. Everything is extreme. Yes, it was never, and, and that was my argument I had a couple of weeks ago. We always look at the extreme extremes of ourselves, this, and this is kind of going to bring, I guess, bring it back to the image thing. We got example, too much time. We always we look at the extremes. About that of we got too much time it's, it's, to be thinking on idols. We ain't got nothing thing, else to do but thinking things on extreme shit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's all that time you was. That's all that good good time you was looking for with this technology. We got too much shit to be on idol. It's not fun. So what I'm just saying is, when you idle, you you come up with a bunch of bullshit sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes that bullshit turns into something great. It's not fun I, if it's not in the extremes most times, too. Yeah, you know, I mean, when I, I tell comedy on the stage, content. when I tell comedy on the stage, I mean, the shit that hits me, when it first hits me, it ain't <laughs> funny, but then I go and stream with it. After you know, I got over the pain or whatever, it becomes funny. So we we just a lot of people on the internet have like I'm retired. I run a house, but I'm still retired. That's where my way of giving back. So what I'm saying is, we have a lot of idle time, uh, and, and and that's what technology have given us freedom to. So there's nothing wrong with that. 
what we got to figure out is really how we uh, uh, make this idle time productive. Oh, that's what we another, gotta figure. Out. Another thing I was gonna say to my um my my real biggest gripe, which isn't with you guys and no one here, is how those who are in charge and how they're pushing certain things in a way where it's making people vulnerable, and and they don't get it. They don't see how they're being manipulated in some ways where they think their thoughts are their thoughts and they're not really their own thoughts. It's all about influence programming. Everything, honestly, tell you the truth, this is going to be the, the biggest debate of all time. And this, this comes from the Matrix, okay? This, I know this is going to sound cliche, but this comes from the movie The Matrix. Okay? He, she asked Neo, for the most part, do you believe you have a choice? Do you really believe that you have a choice in life? Or is it all based on cause and effect? Which is why the oracle is the oracle. She understood cause and effect. That's why her predictions are pretty strong on that. She understood cause and effect. So the thing is, we believe what we believe. You know what I'm saying? We know what we believe we are. But the thing is, we really don't know. We're just going off what we feel or react to. We're just reacting to shit all the time. It's not a real thing that, that we can say we're absolutely controlled. It's more of an, I don't want to say an illusion, but it, it kind of in some way sense is. If you believe in cause and effect, if you believe that you have a choice, that's okay. Everyone wants to believe that it's comfortable to be in that place. But when you're in a place of knowing and understanding how the world really works, you won't. You don't know. You're not God. You don't know every cause and effect. You're never gonna fucking know. You have a good guesstimate. Like me, I I, I do guesstimates about certain things. I think history repeat itself about certain things, but I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? That's why Oracle said even she said she doesn't really know. She just knows. The majority would possibly happen, which is going to probably do. It's a possibility. Nothing's absolute. No one knows everything. But that's how we are as humans. It's always been cause and effect. And that's why I'm able to see certain things when it comes to our behaviors and how people are being manipulated. I'm like, first you get put into this emotional standpoint where everyone's all emotional and shit. And you don't have any self control. People don't understand, like, that's the thing that's what comes to men. No, we're always supposed to have some type of self-control or control themselves. It's not about not crying on their family. It's not about being tough and manly. No, it's more like understand the situation you're in. Try to be calm and patient in the situation. Assess it from a logical aspect. Don't get all caught up in your emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let it breathe for a little bit. Yeah, you're going through the pain. You're going to go through it. But just try to bear with it for just a moment so you can make a rational decision, not make a decision based on how you feel in the moment. Because we also know that it's like the most is cloudy judgment. It's like having fog in your glass. You can't see much clearly. You know I'm saying you may get lucky, you may hit it right, but you're not sometimes. And then it's just like, with, with, I don't know why with masculinity being attacked. I mean, masculinity and femininity, honestly, that's cultural aspects. I mean, in Scotland, they wear skirts. And I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't look at a man as less than a man who wears a skirt or a kilt, I should say. I don't know. It don't, it don't affect me much because I know it's a cultural thing. But for the most part, when it comes to some of these things we talk about, it's all cultural norms. Things that we were rolled and stuff we came over time, they're all rolls. And then I don't really want to get into the whole thing because <laughs> it's not really touchy. It's really simple. Like, the reason why people are claiming to be one way or another is because society has different pressures. And we're in a multicultural society, and conformity is not a thing in a free society. No one wants to conform to nothing. It's do what I will. So now people are saying I'm like this and I'm that because they can. But then is we fucked up by saying you are this to find that so. And it's like we're not talking about and that kind of goes into who you are and not what you are. But that's what we're doing. We're defining who the individual is. And we put a title and say that you are a this or you are a that based on how we define it. But that's the thing. That's not that's no continuity with that. It's subjective, which is why people are saying, no, I am this or I am that. But it's because we made it into a who. An individual and not a what. It used to be a what. <laughs> it's simple. You just identify. It. Like, yeah, it's a pencil. This is a hat. I, 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 it's a black hat. Now I can't look at that and say it's a black hat. I'm saying it's a, it's a white cover. Doesn't look like it, but I thought what it is because that's what it's high feels. That's what recognized that. That's the issue. That's the issue. We're talking about feelings versus versus. Oh, yeah. Oh, because I said, like, we, we turned the words man and woman. We put out there right now. Took the man's man and woman and define those things based on who you are, what you stand for, and what you what your role in society is. Not every person those shoes on either side. And if society, you told people do what you want to do, they want to take bits and pieces, whatever they like to do, 
they do what they want to do. They told them that you're going to be recognized as this or that based on these things. That's why they're going to rebel against that and say, well, I am this and I'm going to find your time. I can tell you what this is and I can tell you what that is based on how I feel. Which, again, it's not about the who, in my argument, it's always about the what, because the words have more meaning. So we just think that we make those projections, they have more meaning. They absorb all meaning at that point. The moment we start calling things, how we feel, what we see, like, oh, a man is this because he does this, this, and this. A woman is this because of this, this, and this. And then we have a bunch of inconsistency and confusion, which is why we, what you're seeing today. You know, you know where it comes from? We have a multicultural society. We we're totally di- we have different things across the board. You know Every man has different accountability. You know where it comes from the modern definition, and I just found this out too. The modern definition of what we have our gender roles are. Uh, read the culture of do- domesticity. Domesticity. It's the culture of do- uh, of domesticity. I just found this out today, actually. Okay. And it defines like what what Damn a quote unquote true with woman is. Two syllables in it. It's a it's a document that came out in the 1800s. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead, man. Domesticity. Okay. Yo, I'm gonna it's, dip it's out, bro. Document... You dipping out? Hey, hey, all right. It's peace to you, my brother. Yeah. yeah. All right. And it was okay. essentially. Uh, I see it. Hey, um, then you, you don't know, know uh, Aaron, like, Aaron, you, you know why like, I don't hang with old people? Why? Because they stuck in their ways. And see, for me to even be having this conversation tonight shows you. That even though you might see me as in that that group, but I'm never uh, scared or scared to use technology. You know, I built computers, I built studios, so I'm not scared of technology. It's been one of the things that kept me alive as far as be, as being a broadcaster. So I know a lot of old people in my well, people elderly people who are in my age, and then there are some on the internet today. I just won't deal with because this they're, they're so stuck in my way or the highway. I can't deal with them. And I understand they have the right to feel that way. But they don't, to me, when it's my way and the highway is almost sounding to me like uh, do as I say, not as I do. Because I know that person is not that perfect. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I don't deal with old ass people who think like that. They, they get on what, my though? damn nerve. You know what, Jay? You know what that really is? In my opinion, I think that's people who honestly just kind of stunt their growth. They stunt yes. their potential. They stunt their ability to learn and pour out. I said this when I first came onto this place that you should come here with an empty cup, or at least half empty. Allow room to come in and pour in. Even with Aaron speaking, I'm not trying to disagree with him. I'm trying to take in everything new he's saying, even words he bring up. I write it down so I can let it later. I'm trying to take in as much as I can as you write. I have to humble myself and realize I don't know everything. If you come in with that attitude that I don't know everything, they'll go so much further. They'll allow you to be a little, a little more complaining, listen to what people are saying. Like that's See, I'm a poker oh, go, yeah. I don't know, I'm a poker player. I'm a poker player, right? So when most people think that I'm talking, they think I'm talking about that I'm coming from my age, but I'm not. I come from a See, I think to me, this this is me. Now, some people going to disagree with me. Mm-hmm. I think before poker no limited poker came into play, that chess was the one of the best mind games. You understand? See, but, yeah, yeah, no, I know you do. And, and, and I, <laughs> it's just the way you're expressing it. But see, what makes poker different is than, than chess. Chess moves are all mathematical on that board. All right. And you obviously go see who go win, right? Yeah. Just by the skill level, right? What makes poker different is you're not only playing the game, you're playing the players. Yeah, and I always do the winning hand wins. It's what I can make you think I got versus what I got. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's where the skill comes in. So when I come in these skill uh, conversations all over the internet, I come in as a poker player. I comes in by reading to my opponents. See, in poker, you have three weapons. You have paper, scissors, and rock. It's the same as the game. And you got to know what each one of your weapons stands for. Okay, I ain't gonna tell you that because then you ever see me on the table. Uh, uh, <laughs> I got you. To use I got my you. Shit against me. So what I'm trying to say is, I come into the game of life the same way. Before uh, uh, I learned how to play chess, as a monocle. it was the same thing. Get life skills for uh, life giving skills. You learn it. You know, you buy real estate. You get out of jail free. You see what I'm saying? So I think poker, no limit poker, not all poker, but no limit poker is one of the most skillful games. 
to you can emulate life with. Because I'd be sitting beside a woman or a man, and he's a doctor or he's a lawyer, and I get in a conversation, I ask him, what did you do for a profession? That's going to tell me a lot about his play. Because I know if I'm playing a lawyer, he's he, he's a deceiver. He can lie. He can make me. If I'm playing that with the old lady with the baseball cap on, I know she ain't the, the old lady saying, where's the beef? She got some spunk in her. She's a deceptive thing. I'm going to watch her real closely. And so when I come in these I say that to say this. When I come in these uh, uh, conversations, I come in these conversations to push you to your limit on your point and see can you just really put your limit under a microscope and it won't have no loose ends in it. That's mm -hmm. the way I handle the discussion. And I know a lot of people don't like that because it makes your ass think. <laughs> Personally, I like to think, but yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of people don't. They just want to have a point of view and they want to stay on that square and they don't have no argument to back it up. They don't heard it somewhere or is it something they believe. A lot of these things are based on belief. And belief is one thing. Mm -hmm. Mean you don't have enough evidence to know it to be true. That's what belief is. Mm. You, know, you know what it is though a lot of times a lot of times people don't actually know the history of what they're talking about right they, they don't have enough just like i said you yeah, don't yeah. have enough uh, uh, enough evidence to know it to be true and so a lot of people go on these talking points of other people and never even had these type of experience but don't hurt it so many times they think they they have a foundation that they can make that argument but they can't because all the stuff they are talking about is being regurgitated by someone else who have, may have had that experience, and so they can't take it to the max. So they're yep. just regurgitating someone else's thesis of whatever problem or whatever life they have. And that's when I'm going to tear your ass up. That's why, you know what I mean? I tell a lot of people, you can speak better than me. You might have better diction than me. You might have better education than me. But you'll never be able to outthink me. And that's what a true warrior mindset is at. Oh, question, Jay, since you brought this up a little bit, how do you define these three words? I'm going to give you three words and you give me a definition. Now, using my axis, people get tools on flip flops. But let me know. I just want to see where you're at. Define and don't forget, I didn't go no farther in the second grade now. Go ahead. No, you go, you go ahead. Simple words. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, man. All right. Define what it is to be intelligent. Define what it is to be smart. Define what it is to be genius. Um, Genius, I'm going to take the last one first. Okay. Genius, no genius is a person who is a creator. Okay. Almost, I like that one. Yeah, that's like it. A God. That's it. Okay. Fact. I agree. Right, let's go to the next one. All right. Go to the next one. We'll oh, the next yeah, smart. Word. What is to be smart? A smart person who can gather intelligence and use it to his advantage. Mm, gather, I'll take that. That's one word, but I'll I'll touch on that later. All right, and the last okay. one is intelligence. Intelligence is a person who can gather a lot of information. Not only can he use it to his advantage, mm -hmm. he can take it and make it better. He can make it, he can take it, you can come with him in one way and he can switch it and make it work just as good on the way that you just said it wouldn't work because he has the ability to see beyond what you just in created or invented. Okay. And that could be in words, that could be in inventions, that could be in anything, that could be in uh, education, that could be anything because uh, an intelligent poker player is different from a smart poker, uh, poker player. Yes, a it is. Poker, Big difference. Big difference. Is book worthy. He's book worthy, and that's it. That's a difference between a person. It. That's a person who goes to school and he's book worthy, but he hasn't put it into practice yet. A smart person wouldn't even have to go to college, and they could. An uh, intelligent person wouldn't even have to go to college, and they can look at it. That's there why an intelligent person has to have a certain quality of common sense with things that he's never been. Damn. All right. I'm going to wrap that all up. You said it just right. You, you, I'm glad you cleaned up the smart one, too. You, that was it. And usually a smart person is someone who's a, 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 a an expert. I feel uh, some type of a field expert. Like you say you do mechanics and stuff like that. I would say right. he's smart when it comes to that. 
And you do other things you're probably smart at. You know what I'm saying? You, you are a smart dude with multiple talents, multiple skills. Um, someone who's intelligent uh, and, that, and that rates, you know what I'm saying? That's why the IQ test, those who are on a lower aspect, those who are in the higher aspect. And what determines that is basically look at his speed. The higher number, the faster you are at doing this particular skill. So basically you're easy to overcome, easy to adapt, easy to problem solve. You're able to figure things out without, you know what I'm saying, without it taking too long to process. You're processing things at a faster rate, the higher your IQ is. The lower your IQ is, it may take you some time. And not to say you don't have any intelligence, you do. You can still problem solve, but it's at a slower rate. So that was the thing that a lot of people, when I was coming up in school, like, I never knew what those words meant. I thought that I had to be a smart kid or something like that. And it's like, a lot of people are already smart, but don't even know it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What they're really trying to gauge is how intelligent they are. Now, there are people who just don't catch it quickly. And there are some people who are highly intelligent, but not that smart. Like you were saying before, like, I may not know the books and stuff, but I can probably problem solve this shit real quick because I can adapt. It don't take me long to pick it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a big difference in the skill trait. And then, like you say, genius, creation, perfect. Because it comes down to something being original and thought. You created it. It's brand new. I don't care if it's a new color. It's brand new. No one ever thought of it. You know what I'm saying? That's right. genius. Yeah, but you I, know what? All three of your, uh, all three of your, um, um, you, all three of the things you know what so in you know so what so magnificent about the three things you asked me mm. because when you put them all together you become a god yeah that's true that's very true yeah true if you had all three of them you become that god you want to be I got or it. not the god but no, a god mean. Yeah, I know what you meant. I know what you meant by that. Yes, sir. But, but like I said, there's all types of ways that people become gods. The most common way is ego. Honest to God. That is the most common motherfucking one. But yeah. You're <laughs> so right. I have a question. I have a question for you. OG. Especially. Yes, right. sir. So if and I heard this on another podcast, so so I'm just kind of like asking you this question based off that. So if today was your your last day, right? You lived for as long as you want to live. And it's your last day on, and like you have one day on this planet left, right? And they said today's your last day. You can own everything else you've done in life goes away, except for three things. Three things that you can give to the world, but everything else goes away. Mm. What would the Easy. three things you would? What were the three things you would want the world to know about you? Or what, what were the three things you want to share with the world? Give it to the world. Um. The first thing I would want in the world to know is what you see now, it took time. There's no cheat code. I am who you are. Or I am at one time who you are. That's the first thing. I give them a greater understanding of life itself. And that's mm. expression. The second thing I would want them to know is uh, about me, how I become to have so much peace in my life, and and how I would explain that in simple form is everything you heard from this point on. And what you thought you heard, none of it's true unless you make it true. Jay, you can keep going. I'm curious to know what the next thing you're going to say is, oh, shit, keep going. I want to hear this next thing. And the next thing I ask, I would like for them to understand about me, is there's no such thing as my last day because when I once I exist, only thing would happen to me from here on out. I'm an energy form. I only transform. And I see you on the other side. Mm. You know what that ties into? This is, one, this is my biggest philosophy in life. Everything you said pretty much hit it on dead on. My philosophy, I only need one thing to pass on if I die. I'm still passing on to this day. Love. I pass on that and what that means. The thing is, there has been a lot of misconfusion with that word, and that's why people are not having peace in their life. 
See, people like to express love in so many ways, but you understand it's not so much an expression. It, the thing they do with love is one thing, but the mindset you need to actually act that, to, to have that to serve for yourself. People don't got that. You know what I'm saying? And it, the three things you just, you touched on them. I'm not lying. I was actually surprised. I was like, oh shit, saying what he's saying? He is. First thing you said, understanding. Next thing you said was truth. The last thing that pretty much ties into what you were saying is faith. All three are connected. It takes patience to have all three. That's why I was saying that mindset, you need it. It takes discipline. It's not an easy thing to do. You know what I'm saying? But those are the three things that make up love, in my greatest opinion. In my greatest opinion, love is truth, faith, and understanding. You need those three to hold together with patience and kindness. It's warranted. It's not necessary. But it will get you a lot of people to the table with kindness, of course. But being you know patient, what my sign out? Eric, I'm going to say uh, opinion. Um, uh, you know what my sign off is always? If you ever watch me when I go on panels, there's always peace, love, and I always strive for the truth. That's there my sign go. off. That's I how I live my know. life. And I ain't, I mean, I didn't wake up like this. No, nope. it took no some hard roads to get here. And if anybody yeah. who say they are the day who they was yesterday, they're really lying. That means they haven't had any growth, so they already did. I like yes. growing. There you go. They say learning it. one thing a day. I mean, look, man, I try to learn 20 things a day because life is just moving like that for me. I don't just learn one thing. I get on these panels. I get with y'all young guys. Believe it or not, I come in. I'm very vocal and I'm very opinionated. But y'all be surprised of the stuff I learned from you all. It's mm. helping me in my growth. There you go. Facts. Mm. You know what my, my favorite poem is? If. I don't know if you guys mm. heard that. If. I think I've heard that one. Go ahead and tell me. Like it. Huh? Go ahead and spell it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead out there and I'll tell us what it is. Hey, I'm not, uh, it's a long poem. I can't spit it, but I'm not going ah. to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, I thought you I I were you going to go ahead and, 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 and give us some of it. it. Only certain people can. Only certain people will get it from me. <laughs> the time is right. So, <laughs> but if is my favorite poem, uh, like, and it, it really defines. If you if you can follow if, it really defines what manhood is. You know, right. keeping your head about you when all about you for uh, losing theirs and blaming it on you. You know, and mm -hmm. trusting yourself when I'm in doubting. You know, mm -hmm. you don't. You know, and make room for the doubting too. So it's 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 so many you know different aspects to that poem. And like what a lot of things you were talking about in terms of love and perseverance, I feel like that ties into manhood, and we we we, we forget oh, about that. Definitely. We forget about that. We, we sure. like I think a lot of times we kind of put ourselves into these um these gender the, the roles we have, you mm -hmm. know, as what a man is, what a woman is, and we kind of make it as a robotics, you know, as like yes. you have to be this. It's a rigid thing. It's a robotic thing. And if you're not this. Then you're this. You're in your masculine, or you're in your feminine, or you exactly not, you know, like we're humans. We evolve. We have different types of you know different different things. And like yes, we may display more of one thing than the other, right? But to uh, to actually have humanity is to recognize that we have all of it. Yeah. Exactly. But that's action, what action. Yeah. what's going on, man? You remind me of some of my uh, my 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 uh, some of the guys out here in California, boy. You look like you're ready to get into a low rider, and you just get ready to take <laughs> off, or you got a holler you got right there on the side of you get a hog over there, or you get ready to jump on, bro. You just remind me of guys that I grew up with, man. Uh, what's going on on your side of town, man? Come on, let it let, let it go. Oh, uh, to answer uh, Aaron question, um. Uh, Three things that I would leave behind. One, uh, it would be my work ethic. I would love to leave that behind. The second thing is my trust in, my trust in people because I believe people can always evolve, improve, and get better. And my third thing, similar to what you had, was patience. Mm. So that would, those would be the three things that I'd like to leave behind. That's good. That's good. That's some. That's that's some good stuff, man. Definitely. What do y'all define as greatness? Man, that's. Uh, 
I would say for me, for greatness, it has to be recognized by someone else. I, I can't call myself great. Otherwise, I'll just be kind of like beating my own meat for the most part. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to stroke my own ego here. You know what I'm saying? Greatness is passed on. You know what I'm saying? For me, it has to be something like something that's recognized, that has been inspired, or something that was impactful and changing in some way. Something that you did that people recognize in a way that impacted them. So it, it, to me, greatness has to be acknowledged and passed on. You can recognize yourself as great and give yourself all the accolades, but I mean, it's like I said, I don't strive to be great in that sense. You know, I strive to be a better me every day, but greatness is such, it's such an honor that comes with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, can, I don't want to honor myself in that way. I mean, I'm not saying who does it. It's something wrong or bad. It's just that I personally don't want to get my ego. I think greatness is that, uh, and that's good. I think greatness is what a man produces in his, uh, think of it in his hand, in his head, and he produces it with his hands. That's greatness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Come up with, because you got to understand the first man ever created a car had never seen one. That's mm -hmm. great. The first man, the white brothers, was who were two brothers who ran a used bike and decided versus riding they wanted to fly and they created something that's greatness see i used to tell my wife this i said i don't care how good our love session was but if i think of something i go outside and i produce it it's greater than any climax you ever gave me and it <laughs> took a while for her to understand that <laughs> You might have bruised her ego a little bit with that. But you gotta be you gotta be honest with these women. You gotta tell them they be like, you know, I'm she sitting up there with her little, you know, her little her little, you know, advertising her little self in, into a sexual moment. And I'm still out there trying to put that last screw in the panel that I just replaced. And she's wondering why I'm spending and I'm out there with a flashlight trying to put that panel on so I can get this to the body shop and get it sprayed. Versus taking it to a body shop and letting them do all the work. I wanted to do it myself. And she sat down there and she's been waiting on me because the kids is gone. And I'm still working on that car with the flashlight. And I mm. had to, but see, even though I told her that, when she seen the work that I did and seen it sprayed and everything, she was like, dang, I couldn't even tell we our car was wrecked. And see, that's greatness. Because I get that response even from her that I was capable to do something that she thought that I would have to take and have somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. And now she can enjoy what I thought of in my head and I produced with my hand and the look, little time she had to wait for me mm -hmm. in that bedroom scene that it was all worth it. So I would say for you looking at what it sounds like it says like uh achievements can measure up to greatness most certainly and especially if you the architect of your thoughts when you become the see this is where men i think fall short is because imagination we talk about facts and all that other stuff facts is gathered from information that is already out there it's not the unknown all right. What do we say we have over women? Women think emotionally and we think what? Rationally. No, that other word we use. Logically. Logically. Okay. Logic kills imagination. True. <laughs> because logic is what we have. Imagination is what we can have. And so you can get stuck on logic and you stuck in wherever you at at that moment because that's the only information you have to gather to even have a debate or the discussion on what you're talking about. But imagination takes you to the unknown. Logic is very, 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 it's not, it's not what we think it is. It's just the information that we already have and we put it into it and makes a and make a puzzle. You don't see the puzzle of imagination yet because it hadn't been created. That's much greater. 
and women have imagination and men have imagination, then why are we arguing about logic and emotions? That's only in real time. Mm -hmm. But we have to start thinking about the future. If we want things to change for us, we got to stop living in, in logic so much and start living in imagination. And that's why I get up every morning versus submitting to the way the world is. I submit the way I want the world to be. And then uh, there's a quote from Einstein that says, logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. There you go. And I've been preaching that for the last two years. And that's why I say a lot of these guys on here, they're Ivy League, educated. They're smart. They're intelligent. I ain't going to take nothing away from them. But you can never put none of them. And even my father put it in front of me that I strategize me. Never. Because my imagination takes me into a more of a God sent. If you put me in a position where I had to think my way out of it, I guarantee you I come out with the best strategy how to get out of it. That's that's the way I look at life. I look at life like a puzzle. See, a lot of people never been able to understand me even when I was little. I would always take things apart and put it back together. It's because life is a puzzle for me. I see things way before things happen because all the information from logic to experience to everything else, I put it inside of what I'm trying to create with my imagination. So mm. I don't have to create something that's already out there. Mm. Uh, action, what do you think? What is greatness? Greatness. Man, look at greatness. I would say raising a family, being being productive, building character. That can be greatness because it 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 will. Adding those things in, it was always, it always um, allows room for growth. So I will go with that. Mm. Okay, that sounds good. Great, it's measured on your values. I think greatness is. I think about greatness a little bit different. I, t I say greatness is positively impacting the greater community and the greater for the greater good. So if you like uplifting others, I think we like we always look at our, ourselves as individuals. But when we uplift others, your impact strives f way further than than you than anything you could do by yourself. You know what, Aaron? I'm glad you said that. And I'm not I'm not trying to shoot, dig up the old shit that we had talked about earlier with technology and skills and all that bullshit. But that's the one thing I want people to start doing, to not forget, to not lose value in themselves. You have to still remember that we are humans and we should value each other. We should want to utilize each other in certain ways. Like I should, you know, I'm not trying to say again, I'm not trying to have the argument about tech and those who are skilled and those who are smart. I'm, it's not about that. Again, you should have both, period. But you should have your, I would say, just because you're a human, you should still prioritize valuing people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I should appreciate a home-cooked meal from your mom, my mom. So, you know, I shouldn't have to go get some processed bullshit out the oven because it's easier. And again, I'm not comparing or knocking one or the other. I'm just saying you should not lose these things that make us human in general. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, but you know what I think, but you know, what I think to add on to that though, I think the reason why technology is so important today, it is discovering the biggest insecurity of humanity. And that is the ability to believe in yourself and actually love yourself. Because think about it today, everybody wants to be someone or something or else. They don't want to be themselves. You know what I'm saying? If you're, if they're, 
if, the, if you're if you're a man, you want to be a woman now, or you're a woman, you want to be a man now, or even if you don't want to physically be those things, you want to. Uh, there's people who are saying, "Oh, I want to take a." You have women who want to take a man. Oh, uh, want to be like men. Want to do the same things men do, you know? Or you have like people who are looking at things and saying, "Man, my economic situation is this. I need to be. I need to be. Uh, even if you have a decent job, you make it seventy, eighty thousand. You're like, no, I gotta make. A, I gotta make a million. If I'm not making a million, then I'm a failure, you know? And we're always looking at ourselves as not enough. You know, the women who are looking at themselves, they, they could be perfectly fine. You know, they're in shape, you know, they're running, you know, they look good. You know, I got to get a, I got to uh, get, get some breast implants or I got to get a BBL real quick just so I can get that much better. Right. Everybody, no one's ever satisfied with who they are. Well, and that's think what, about and this. Technology is revealing that. Uh, I, no, I, I think this has been a problem for a while. And I'm speaking to the young ladies tonight who might be listening to this. Every piece of news, shows, print is always telling women there's something wrong with them. Now think about how they do it. They don't come out and be totally uh, critical of criticizing them. They say, you got to have this shade of eyelash, uh, uh, mascara. You got to have it right here this day. You got to wear this type of skirt today. You got to wear this type of stretch pants. They're in style. So in the sidebar conversation, they're always telling women that you got to improve. And that's where a lot of them have problems at because they don't have strong mothers in the house. It's like my mother had 18 children. My grandmother was there side to side helping my mother raise us. I have 11 sisters. And I seen this all my life where they would fight or like they would have a perfectly good uh, outfit. But if my one of my sisters get a new outfit for her birthday, they would look at their outfit, something that's been wrong with it. So when women start to look at print media and everything else constantly throughout the days, that's why they are. Women are not in competition with men as much as they are in competition with women. Yeah. See, they dress, they carry themselves to let every woman know I am the queen bee when I come into this room. If you ever really sit down and watch women, how they look at each other when they first come in. Yep. Men, we are in competition with gathering. Think about what I just said. When I say gathering, that means anything from finances to uh uh, building their empire or having a nice move on a basketball court. Everything we do, we want to be the best at it. You understand? So there's not someone constantly other than this new wave of the new generation that we are having these communication uh, now that we are talking about uh, in competition more like I would say a lot of these conversations and don't get me wrong. But a lot of these conversations is conversations that I used to ha- hear women, how they used to talk, how I'm starting to hear men talk today. And that might be the case that we didn't have a voice as what it, when it came to media, how we felt. But I mm-hmm. always heard these conversations at barbecues. I always had these kind of conversations at barbershops. shops. And so these conversations have already and have always been carried. Like when you go, when your your family have a family gathering, you would see men gather together and they would talk about these same things that we're talking about now. So I don't want the new generation to try to understand that these conversations have never been heard. What I'm, what it is, it went from the closet to now to the world. You see what I'm saying? Now you are starting to eavesdrop into men's minds with a new uh, communication devices, not knowing that these conversations have already been had but on a lower scale but the new yeah. generation might believe that we never had these conversations we just put up with our women we didn't have problems with our women we just let our women do what they wanted to do they have never been around men who had these conversations then because children wasn't allowed not allowed in these conversations so a lot of young men who come into these spaces they are getting a earful of things that they haven't never heard because a lot of them, just to be real, 
don't have fathers in their life. And so they have never heard real men talk. And a lot of them have never been in sports where they heard, have heard real men's talk. So you take a guy who didn't have a father, but he still had a community raising him because he was in sports. So he had coaches. Like my first coaches, believe it or not, that's why I don't have this thing for police officers because my first co coach was from PAL. All the PAL coaches was police officers. So I didn't have a disdain for police officers because these was people who was instructing great things in my life. So I have a difference between what most blacks in our community, in the urban community, have think about police officers because they never had that experience with police officers. All the time they ever seen them is when they was getting arrested or somebody else was getting arrested or something bad. You got to understand it. When a police officer put on his uniform every day, he's out there looking for trouble. And you know, as a man, if you start to believe your wife is doing something she shouldn't be doing and you start searching, you go always find something. Because even if it don't mean what you think it means, you're going to find something wrong because we as human beings, we're not perfect. And everything is not perfect a line. And I think that's how we get, we really don't understand the real importance of mother and father when it comes to a relationship. We don't look at the best interests of our children anymore because it's all about I'm mad at you and you mad at me. You got me on some child support and now you boom. All these problems become with the two people not looking at the best interests of the child. And so hey, Jay, that's where we're at. I want to add to what you're talking about. Because the problem I've seen is I'm, I'm writing in my book and stuff. I've been giving a lot of my book away in here. But um, the one thing I realized is that I uh, believe men and women alike are really immature. And then when I say immature, I mean like they haven't developed properly as they should in, their, in certain disciplines in their life. Things that make them most effective um, as an individual, how they move, how they act, how they carry themselves, the resolve their patience and all these things that made them strong and resilient as man and woman. I looked at the other day, I saw um, was on Judge Mathis or Judge Lauren, I think it was. I saw these two older ladies, like, you no, know, they were grandmas, essentially. They're like probably 50 or something like that, right? And I'm listening to these women speaking how they talk. And I'm just like, like, I couldn't believe things I was hearing because like my grandmother, I could never imagine seeing her in that light. Because you know, my grandmother was very, you know what I'm saying, like, she was very patient, she was very calm, very sweet. You know, she was, she, she was stern, I'm wrong, she raised five kids, but she carried herself in a way that would never bring shame to the family. And these women who was 50 something years old were acting catty and, you know, acting all spiteful and petty, like they was teenagers. And it was just like, why are they acting like this? And but then I remember back to my childhood. I said, "Dang, man! I remember what an adult used to look like because I used to look up to them. Now that I am one, I see nothing but children around me. I'm like, where, where, where did this? Why did this happen? But as you're pointing out, for the most part, a lot of people didn't have examples coming up. And now that they're hearing these kind of conversations on the thing, yeah, they might think that." Oh, this is all coming in. The guys never told. Like, no, it's just that there's, a, there's a, this nice charge gap. There's a nice gap of people who did not were not raised with mature-minded individuals, men and women. There were women out here who had children at young ages and had to do the best they could, but yet they were left abandoned by their fathers who didn't mold them correctly. You know, they weren't taught to be valued and raised with patience and kindness and love in a certain way. They were supposed to. Same thing with the men. The men didn't, a lot of men did not get that. And they had to much to strive for what's going on, you know, and just kind of keep up with the keep keep up with everything that's going on, just surviving. But at the end of the day, and the worst part is this, this is why I really have a, a big push of technology, is that it's gonna blind you from that aspect, that humanity, that side that you need to to take care of yourself effectively. Cause it's almost like even me in the military, like I don't know what else is here in the military, but it's like living with your mom and dad. I'm not lying. Like all my needs is met. I, I ain't got what no healthcare, my rent, all this stuff. I'm still getting paid. I ain't got no worries. I'm comfortable. But it's just like it's easy too. 
And if I completely relied on the system, I'd be screwed. If I didn't have other ways of income, I'd be, I'd be dead out of. I'd be looking like, oh, I can't get out. Oh my god, when do I get out? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's right. just like that. But that's how. Hey, it look, is. Uh, Raw asks a good question. Raw and uh, in cut asks a good question. Uh, what okay. do men generally really think about the women of today? What do uh, what do y'all really think uh, uh, really want them to do? Because mm. you all can be confusing at times. Oh, okay. Well, that, I don't that, is, that, that is that is someone somebody handling that. Please, somebody handle that. All right. Well, all right so first well, me get started. I'm gonna get up out of here, gentlemen. Oh, all, all right, right. Jackson. Yeah, all right, don't be riding. Hey, right. 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 don't be riding that low rider up in the neighborhood, man. Making it backfire, man. You scaring old women. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, take it Peace and right. love, brother. Peace and love. Hmm. So for me, so I want to ask the question one more time. Oh, what? Uh, right. Why back? Can y'all see it? It's a, uh, his name is Raw and Uncut. Yeah, don't nobody at the blueprint of management. Okay, let's see what else you got. Uh, no, it's okay. another one. It's the one that started off. What do you? What do men? Okay, it says what do men in generally really think about women of today? What do y'all really want them to do? Because y'all can be confusing at times. Okay, I. <laughs> See, so you know what? That's actually a good. No, that's actually a good question. But yeah. unfortunately, that is not going to be answered here on this platform. Only reason yeah. I can tell you why it won't be answered because the times we're living in, it's it's right. It's confusion because that's all you're going to hear. It's a multicultural society with different standards, different morals, different everything. So you pretty much got to find your own tribe and just confine yourself with the people who are like minded and do what they do. In my opinion. But when it comes to like what you want to look for, look for something that I mean, the basis. How are you raised? What did you admire? What did you admonish? What was your foundation? Look for more like-minded people like that, in my opinion, who are gonna go with how you flow. And if you want to make adjustments and grow, do so. You know what I'm saying? But do find people who are willing to grow. As we were talking about earlier, don't limit yourself in all that there is. Always empty your cup. Don't be a know-it-all. Don't don't limit yourself. You know what I'm saying? For me, I, I travel the world. I've seen so many things and cultures and people. I can't say that women in America need to be one standard. No, there is no one particular standard that it would could be, because that's be selfish of me to say that. That's just probably just trying to say that all men should be like this, because that's how my preference is. No, you are who you are. You know what I'm saying? Just like, I don't have any type of particular requirement. As I said, it's no real, not really answer tonight. For that, you won't find. Yeah, I need something more specific because I can't tell you how women should be or what we want for women because I can't speak for all men. We are in a multicultural society. It is what it is. So I'm, I'm going to answer that a little bit differently. Um, I think before you, before anybody can actually require something of anybody, somebody else, you have to first discover who you are. Exactly, man. And it, and I think a lot of us have not taken the time out to discover who they actually are and to be confident in that. Now, for me, for example, I was raised totally backwards. Totally backwards. I so happened to fall into academics rather than game. But however, I was raised totally opposite. And like, I was taught to hate myself. And I'm trying to be cam up. Please oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Tom B, she says she's making breakfast. Uh, she wants to cam up. Come on up and cam up. Let's stay here, woman it, input too. It took me 20, it, took, it took me it took me throughout my twenties to find out who I am, to learn to like undo the harm and to like and I didn't find out and become the man I am today until my you know my early thirties. That's when I started saying, becoming confident in myself as a man. Now I would say that once you know who you are, then whoever. You, what you want in a woman should be a reflection of that, of who you are. I mean. And uh, I would say one of the things we got to, uh, and the confusing part, I think we 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 got to get past is these talking points on YouTube that we keep on hearing on the internet. Like, if you actually look back in history, the same conversations we have in today is the same conversations that happened 100 years ago. Yeah. In exact conversations. I look back at an article from 1893. I just saw a news article and it was almost the same exact conversation. That's why when I, I ran across the um the cult of domestic domesticity from the 1890s, 
all these things were, and they were talking about how women should be and, you know, what, what, what femininity was. But you also got to say that was a battle that was happening 100 years before that, because when they were like, people want to tell you that women weren't, uh, weren't working, but women were always working. Women have always worked. If you looked at women, actually, the first real, the first jobs you want to say, per se, uh, out of were women, because they were had to, they had to work, they were to take, they had to uh, work in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in the textile industry. And, if, and, and, it, and men actually took care, took care of the farms because most of the people were still in the farms into the cities. Then once we, everybody started, the uh, immigrants came over and started moving into the cities, that's when you start having men working at the factories as well. So this whole thing, and, and really the only period of time where women weren't allowed to work was in the 1930s. When you, if you look up the Economic Act in 1932, they, they barred buried women from working in the workplace in order to make uh, in order to allow men to work during the Great Depression. And that went away once the World War II started. So if you really understand history, a lot of these things you understand, like this ebbs and flows and none of this stuff has really changed throughout mm -hmm. time. the same conversations over and over again. And I think one of the things about technology, which is good, is now we can actually look back and, and have a, a we can actually look back now and find out what was actually going on back then. Whereas before you didn't have that time. You, you, so you always had this circular conversation so maybe mm -hmm. we can make progress because of that so uh, i think we got uh, uh we got two uh matter of fact the guy who asked this excellent question raw and uncut and we got tiny b uh who's supposed to be making breakfast this morning i hope uh significant others don't get mad uh we got two new people on the panel and i would like to ask raw and uncut exactly why did he ask that question What's up, Roland Cut? How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm what's going on? Too. What's going on? How y'all doing? I'm good, bro. Uh, I asked that question because I watch a lot of these uh, panels, and I hear a lot of the people on the panels, and it's confusing to me. Now, let, let me give you a little backstory about why I say that. Okay, I hear a lot of men say, "I want the woman. To, the woman got to be able to do this, cook, clean, and." take care of the house or uh, she got to give me peace and she got to give me a seed or you know a kid or whatever like that and it's like y'all want these women to be super women but like tonight i heard on the panel i forgot the dude name he was up there and he said a lot of men agree oh we don't want our women to be like they was in the 50s and the 40s and whatever but we always talk about we want traditional women so we got to make it make sense. If you want a traditional, if you want the modern day women to be traditional women, majority of the women back then, I guess they were traditional. They was more at home. So we got to make it make sense. That's why I say like when we get on these panels and these women, that's why they have so much pushback because they confused and they don't know what y'all going with it. You see what I'm saying? When we say when we say women were when we say women were at home, we got to keep in mind that was that's an upper class thing. That's not a that's okay. not a normal thing for most people. Most there was not the average person was not did not did not have their wife at home. Facts. Kids okay. never was working back in the day, man. Back, back in the day, you're, once you were five years old, you were working. Yes, this is facts. <laughs> so uh so one uh, of the I, I want to hear uh wait a minute. I did did want to hear because we are talking about women. I want to hear because she was making breakfast, and that's very important a man's nutrition or hers nutrition early in the morning. So I really want her to pop back up. I hope you didn't burn the bacon or the eggs or something <laughs> like that. But you can't come back up. We want to hear your input. Uh exactly what you think is so confusing for women today to listen to men about what they want. Go ahead, uh Aaron L. No, I was just saying that when women have always worked, and like we had this myth where women weren't working, but like you gotta understand that women have always worked. In fact, the first unions were from women in the 1800s. Okay. So, so Aaron got a question. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that when women have always worked, and like we had this I hear, myth. I hear some playback. Oh, uh, uh, I got a question for you, Aaron. You you married? I'm not married. Okay, cool. Uh, I got another question then. Uh, Hold that question for one second. Hold that question for okay. one second. Okay. Stay on okay. your question. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Tony B. How are you doing? You didn't burn nothing, did you? 
Your mic is mute. No, like I that. didn't. It's just that I was trying to connect my AirPods to this, but it's not picking up. I don't know what's going on. And uh, sometimes you have to it works. Go to the settings audio, and then you go to where it says audio. You click either where it says the mic. You hit either the headpiece. That's yeah, the headset ear, but it's still not. I don't try like it's still not connect. It says go to headset earpiece, but it's going to the phone's earpiece, and I don't want uh, that. Is there a Bluetooth option? It don't say a Bluetooth option. I've done it before, but for, I don't. I feel like I have to go on my laptop or something. Uh, I may have to do that, but that's because it's kind of hard holding the phone. But um, no, I definitely um have understand like I sometimes as a woman the same thing we get confused and i just at this point i just i'm married so i could just say i just go by you know what my husband would want but i met my husband like later 20s so i already was single living on my own i've been living on my own since i was 17 so i i left for college and never really came back i just found my way um so if you want to say i was very very independent yeah um, I was working in college, had an apartment, everything. So, um, what I will say with um, my husband, I've, I've always worked and I do have a child, <laughs> hence why I'm making breakfast and stuff. Um, at this point, you know, he, he doesn't want me to work, but I'm gonna be honest, like, and it's not that I'm trying to go against, I just look at the way America's set up they want everyone working just for economic gain, tax purposes, whatever. Yep. They're not, they don't care about the middle class anymore. So for men to sit here and just demand like, well, you got to stay home. Like most women would love to stay home and not have to work, but nobody really wants to be in a struggle relationship because the number one cause for divorce is financial reasons. And the women that were in my family, all of my aunts were all married. I'm, I come from a Caribbean background. So mm. marriage was a priority for us. My mom was what you would call the epitome of what these red pill men are talking about, just like a, um, a Mira she married the man that she was with forever, 35 plus years. Um, had me well in the marriage planned, all of that. Um, however, if you're coming into the, a new country to start over, guess what? Those women are working as well. Did that take away from, as you would say, the femininity or whatever these you two people are saying? That was the first time I've ever heard of what feminine, femininity was, was on YouTube. I just called working as a family and what i do notice from um, the common american household we are no longer focused on family and that is where the biggest pushback to me and the, the demise of our society is coming from um what i, I, I can mm -hmm. oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead no i'm just uh what i can say is that people that look at immigrant households and say, well, how can they get it together? How can they, they, they stick together because that's all they have when they come here. Um, so it, that's why they say, you know, they use that talking point. Mexican men can come over here and get more respect from their women than the common um, American man at, at times, because it's almost like, who am I going to trust a stranger We've already gone through our struggle together. I'm going to stick by you for everything. I've seen my parents struggle, fail, have success. Same, like it's a, a, That's going through life with a person. And that's why I really believe that to hear the talk on YouTube is like, y'all don't really know what it's like to like not have somewhere to really live or not really to come to be dropped in the middle of nowhere and have no one to know but that man but the person you came here with, but the man that sent for you or came over here to build a foundation and send back for your family, things of that sort. So it's like, I feel like all of this is just an airhead conversation because most of the people saying they didn't really go through anything. 
to say what a woman can really bring or what a man can really bring into the household. They haven't seen it. Mm. I, I think you bring up some good points. Uh, and that's due to the fact uh, I see my grandmother and my, uh, they from old school, my grandmother and uh, my aunts and my mother um, do some of the exact things that you are talking about. And one thing when you start talking about Mexican men's, one thing I do know, I live in California and it's been known that I was uh, married to an Aztec Mexican woman uh, for 11 years. And so one of the things you got to understand about what you said was very important is Mexican women, I can tell you this much, they'll get up and they'll make them tamales and they'll make their kids breakfast and they'll send them kids to school to make sure that man is prepared to go out there and work. And she will get out there and sell tamales after she send the kids to school. But she's back at home when them kids get at home. Uh, important thing, the, the important resource for that type of family, the nuclear family, is to make sure the, the, the children has caretakers that looks like them, has the same culture as them. I mean, a lot of Mex uh, Mexican children don't even learn how to speak the English language until they come into school, like the second and third grade. And so that's a whole culture behind that. And so you are totally correct. It, these conversations can get totally con confusing, but I think it's more confusing in our community because we're still searching for something. We're still searching for our identity. And I think as we go and evolution go, we jump on a bandwagon of different things, but we haven't really, as far as a group of people, and I'm speaking strictly speaking about African Americans who come here from the tradition of how African Americans came here, because we know when other people come here from other places, islands or other countries or continents, that their mindset is totally different. I think we're a group of people, and especially our men and our women, we're still trying to define who we are in this space. And I think that's where the confusion come in. Cause when you go over to the manic sphere, you go hear one thing and you go on to this other side, on the left side, you go hear something else. And so uh, I think raw and uncut to answer your question is depending where you get your information from. And if you're getting your information from different, uh, I would say types of men who are in different spaces in their life, then you understand you got the passport brothers, you got the man and spirit, you got the regular common brother, you got the old school like me. So if you listen to all them different things, I think the best thing to do when you listen to that type of stuff, take out exactly, it's like being at a buffet. Only pick up things and put it in your plate that you can use in your life. And just forget about all the other stuff. Because if you can listen to it long enough, you can understand it. It's not that important. I think the greatest resource we have is family. The greatest resource that we have for the future is our children. And so it's very important who's teaching our children, regardless of who's staying at home. Oh, you know what, Jay? I was going to add to this, man, what you were saying. Well, what you were saying, too. Um, when it comes to, well, I don't want to use the Hispanic people as an example or any other people as an example, but when it comes down to it, in relationships in general, across the board for any ethnicity, it's all about who is more selfish. The thing is, when you talk about what you can do for me, what I can do for you, when you're thinking about me, 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 I, 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 you're looking at someone as a bargaining chip, trying to use people and not trying to figure out how you're going to utilize someone else's life, you're approaching it the wrong way. You're trying to figure out how I can contribute to my family. What am I going to do? You shouldn't be worried for me. What can I do for you? You want to be valued amongst all people, but especially your family. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where the true definition of family value comes from. You know what I'm saying? Like, how detriment are you to your family? The mother, the father, the brother, the sister, they all, all have important values and roles. They all do something for each other. They help build each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going in it, thinking I'm the king, I can kick my feet up and people do as I say, well, you got it all wrong. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa, if you think you're just going to sit back in the house, drink your wine, and you think life's all divine, you got another thing coming. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have to contribute something to feel a value. Otherwise, once your values run out, there go your marriage. Yep. And 
It comes down to, well, what did you contribute? What did you do? What, what, what part did you play in this? Were you being selfish yourself? You have to really look back in the mirror and say, what did I do to come to this decision? Because at the end of the day, life is a decision-making process. And you made decisions that came to the conclusion. You had a part. Don't think you don't have a part in this. You know what I'm saying? Because people love to be the one. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And at that moment, you know what ended up happening? You had to self-destructing because you're not even loving yourself. And this is where you had to lie to yourself to feel better with the situation. That's a serious issue. Good morning, Miss Ellie. And Good morning. I, I I didn't come here to comment on all the relationship stuff. What what I came to ask Mr. J some questions, but <laughs> you need to tell you to ask some questions into a lot of borders that I wanted to say something about. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. <laughs> well, who you want to ask a question to, that ma'am? I was watching you on uh I think it was last Sunday with all the health tips that you were given. Yes, I got ma'am. my aloe vera oil. I ordered me the, what is it, the CMK? No, the CKLS. CKM. Yes, ma'am. And I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. But I'll tell you the one thing that I struggle with, and I wanted to know if you had a tip. I am trying to break my addiction to sugar. Ooh. <laughs> And that's a hard one. And because another thing that y'all crossed into, yeah. I am in the process of retiring to Mexico. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, I hear a lot of people, I, I was actually on here not too long ago defending the passport brothers because, and what I said to everybody, people just get caught up in the buzzwords that those guys are, are using. But I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm going to live in Mexico. It's the energy is different there. I'm going to tell you, when I I was there from December to just got back uh, like two weeks ago, I was just, I, I was at pace, you know, and I was, I was busy because I'm trying to get furniture from my house. I was taking Spanish classes five days a week, uh, four hours a day. But I, when I got here, there was this heaviness. <laughs> that I felt. It was such a heaviness and a weight that I don't feel over there. And I believe that's for anybody over there. And I'm telling you, because I, I, on Saturdays, there's a group of expats over there from America. And I talk to those people and they all say the same thing. After living there a year, they will never come back to live in the United States. Because I'm telling you, that, that, you know, and they said, I don't have to worry about getting shot in the back. I don't have to worry about the, the vaccinators or the non-vaccinators and all of that rhetoric that you constantly take in in your spirit. And it's not there. <laughs> so, right. I, I'm going to help you I with some, the I got sugar. some friends who just um, moved over there, too. I, I got yeah, a, I'm going to help you with the sugar. Uh, that CKLS and the olive oil and then lemon. There's two ways you can take uh, take that if you happen to go over to, um, uh, uh, or you can leave uh, some kind of way. You can leave your email in the back chat. I can I'll give you more back. information on more information on that. But yeah. the sugar is more addicted than any drug on this planet. Yes. It's due it's due to the fact <laughs> is uh, if, uh, the Food and, and Drug Administration still classifies sugar as a drug. It's not even a food. That's number one. Um, number two, that most of everything you got from season to everything you got in your cabinet has some portion of sugar in it. So that's why it's so hard to get away with it because it's that, it's that tease to get you to eat their product. So, uh, you know, and, and so if you think about a soda, if you ever let it go flat and drink it after it went flat, you are understanding how, what, how they play these games with you. They put that frizz on your tongue so you can't taste the content of sugar that you are putting into your body so the ckls is going to help you that cleanser go help you to knock that urge uh anybody who ever smoked uh and quit smoking they can tell within like three or four weeks how food start to taste different uh, you'd be like damn that's too salty uh certain stimulants that we put in our body confuses our taste buds and so when, once you start taking the ckls and you do that process, then you're going to understand. Five, 
four, three, two, three, one. Two, is that what one. you said? Yeah, yeah. That's the way I, <laughs> I do. Was listening. Okay, but can I, I don't also do get that ball. as well, Mister? Mr. O uh, J or Mr. O G, um, because I so that was the main reason why I wanted to come up too as well because <laughs> I heard that I was on my way to work and I was like some of the stuff you were saying like yeah. my husband gets on me because he's like you're too earthy you're one of those earthy chicks but he is like a gym rat and I get on him about how much supplements and pow uh, protein powders and I'm like. You gotta like it's not I don't feel like that's good, but of course he listens to these um you know people on YouTube that are bodybuilders and things and he's like they he swears by it and I you I just point. let it go because I don't want to argue, but you're for the most point, part though. you're on point. See that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem you with good wife. That, good that's wife. the problem with supplements. We get into the GMOs and all this other stuff, we get away from one thing. One poison to another poison. Right. My thing is, the creator have already created everything perfectly. Nobody complains about the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that. Why is it when it comes down to our nutrition, the things that we really need, why do we have to go into a laboratory and make things that, things that we think is better, is which is not better? We're not machines. We are human beings. There are certain elements we get from natural plants that we can never get from that junk they, they make in the laboratory. So I am a believer of that. And if you look at my body structure, you look at my body, you can see I don't have no wrinkles on my body at all. And the only reason I have puffy eyes is because I got 32 damn people here always knocking on my damn door, even in broadcast. And so, uh, but getting back to you, young lady, uh, one of the things uh, you talk about is one of the number one killers in America. And I have always kn known this ever since long because my father just said, pressure bus pipes. <laughs> and when you are in the United States, uh, it, it was it wasn't until I started traveling doing movie in, in the movie industry. I traveled when I was boxing, but I you know when you're doing boxing, you go in the city, you train, you stand focused, you never really get to see the city or the country that you're in. But when I was in the movie industry, we were going to work uh, four days on and three days off. So I was able to you know uh, partake into the custom of the country that I was in. And I'm gonna tell you another place just as good, Costa Rica. When I went to Costa Rica, I used to go to Mexico all the time, Guanajuato as that's where my ex-wife was uh, her family is from so i understand about that pressure because we got to understand in this con, con this country right here everything is about competition everybody everybody's trying to climb the ladder because they think the bag is more important than peace see they when you poor you think being rich is better that's right you, you understand what i'm saying but you don't understand you don't get to, it's uh, it's almost like I explain it. I explain wealth this way. It's almost like having a wife and y'all not getting along and all of a sudden you get a side piece. And for some reason or another, you start believing your side piece is better than your wife, but you don't understand quite what that relationship is based on. That relationship is based on every time y'all get together, y'all doing some kind of activity it's entertaining. Like you might go to the movies or you go out to eat or you go to the hotel or wherever you're going. All that is for good times. You're not sitting up there in her with her in the emergency room like you're doing with your wife when she's sick. You understand what I'm saying? So you can get this imaginative in your, your head that your side piece is better than your wife. And that's what we call uh, tricking your own damn self. So you'll never be able to lie yourself out of the truth. So we got to understand these things that we do as human beings when it comes to living. And I, we have to always make adjustment because you got to understand when you, when you live in the United States, you are a commodity. Your social security uh, number makes you a commodity. That means they can go all over the world and borrow money on your social security number because yeah. you are the workforce. So a lot of people don't want to talk about that. And I thought, so I thought it was uh, isn't your birth certificate number your stock number? Your stock your stock number, but your social security number is so private that you don't have to give it to anybody if you choose not to give it. No government entity make you give it to them. That's printed into that law. 
So that's your commodity. That's what makes you a commodity because you become part of the workforce. I remember when you didn't even get used to get a social security number until you was able to come into the workforce. Yeah. But right. now they give it to babies. They give you a social security number to a baby that shows you how much we are in debt all over the world. But I understand stress kill more people in this country than any other thing other than okay, so dehydration. dehydration. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm going to put that in there. Because you the people who are dehydrated, they are stressed. Yeah. That means that they're they on the run. Stuff. They had a job. They came eat their food on time. They're driving down the street eating their lunch. Always chucking tired. down shoulders yeah. because they don't have number 30 minutes, right? Yeah. It took them 20 minutes to order their food. Now they got to use their time to go back to the job and chunk it down. That's why the indigestion, that's why the constipation, that's why a lot of things are happening to people. We are moving too fast and we forget the most important entity that we have is ourself. Because we so much chasing after the bag. Why you are we so in a hurry, OG? Why are we, huh? as you grew up, right, and for all your wisdom and all that stuff, respectful, you, you, you're you more wiser than I am, right? You, my senior. You've seen enough of the world to know how to move, how the world moves. Why are people moving so impatient? Why are people trying to rush through life right now? Even older people. See, I got to say young people doing that. We got grown adults who are still moving like that, too. Why is that? Because we're striving we're we're striving in life to grasp things that we want versus the things we need. Mm. A I lot of wasted money. Too. A lot of wasted money is on things that we want versus the things we need. We That's waste a lot of time in our life and on our job, and we give too much of our time to make money to go out there and purchase things that we don't need. And it makes us look bad because think about it. If I have to have certain things in my life to make my life feel like it has some quality to it, that means a person has never came to an understanding what a human being is. Know yourself. We right. talked about earlier. People don't love themselves enough to know. The clothes don't make you. You make the clothes. Because yep. yeah. you put them on a mannequin and they just look like they're on a mannequin. I want to add to that as too. Because I'm, yes, ma'am. I am 55 years old and I just retired well retired from corporate America in December and that's why I'm moving to Mexico and I tell you I've been retired for th going on three months now and even when I was there I think I think you become conditioned to it because I kept saying to myself why are you doing all of this ripping and running when you don't have to? And it's a conversation I have myself when I was over there every single day. And I realized it's a process. And if you don't want to live like that, you're going to have to make some changes in life and probably some real drastic ones. Once you get on that treadmill, it's, it's hard to get off. <laughs> you're right. It's a mace. Believe it or not, when I went to Costa Rica, it was one of the things I, I made sure I do. I was doing a movie called Congo. And uh, one of the things, I, it was like, I was with, I, I was one of two of one brother who wasn't from the continent because they wanted all the brothers to make that move to be from the continent. And I was able to throw my voice so much. And I would ask them <laughs> when I did my, um, and when I was doing, when I was going to read for it, and I asked them, I say, well, you can, because they would ask you when you first come to the table, what part of the continent you was from. And the first thing I was saying, I would like to tell you, I want y'all to tell me what part of the continent I am from. And they couldn't tell that I was an English uh, from America or whatever. And it tricked them. So that's how I got the job from being <laughs> from America and supposed to be an African. Because I consider myself, I am an African, but I'm just over here, you know. So I think what make people act the way they act and do the things they do in life. It's what we was talking about earlier, social engineer. And you got to understand this is the Mecca of social engineer. We're the number one power in the world. We're the number one country in the world. But when you start looking at our educational system, where we grade on it, we don't make 25. So what I'm trying to say 
it's about our military. It is about how we structure in this country, how we can go all over the world and plant our seeds all over the world because we're the number one. We get to write the history. And so a lot of us are so lost by not the knowledge of self. And that's one of the things when I was in the nation of Islam, the first thing that you learn is the knowledge of self. Right. And so many of us, just like I say, we're striving uh, to find ourselves. And in the midst of finding ourselves, we're trying to define another species of us women yes. by old blueprints and trying to put them into a new car. And you know, if you try to take <laughs> if you try to take the, the, the new old stuff and put it into a hybrid car, you're gonna have some problems. You really go have some problems because you you trying to bring a carburetor to fuel injection and electricity at the same time. You go have some explosion, and I think that's what it is. And another thing I think it is too, we got a lot of brothers and sisters who was not trained in communication. And I don't mean a vernacular or nothing like that. I'm talking about when you were trained in communication and you want to be a broadcaster, you was trained to be supposed to be neutral. And a lot of people come with their mindset and they don't listen to the guests. They always want to flatten the guests because they already have an agenda where they want that subject to go. So a lot of people who own smartphones and computers was never trained in communication. And so when they get on these internet, you get to hear. It. So now I just start to be a all up brawl in the, in, in, in the damn lunchroom because <laughs> <laughs> because it, food flying from everywhere because most of these people can't get their dogs to eat food at home but they get on the internet and act like they're so damn smart i have a lot of people you know they get on the internet and they think they, they think they wear my ass out and all of a sudden i drop a dime on them and it's get too heavy because i'm telling you there's nothing better than hands-on experience and wisdom and that don't make us totally right but we were able to go back and make an assessment of what somebody's saying and come back and use their own words against them because we are good listeners older generation is better listening than people want to give us we listen to what but see the new generation they want to be funny respond real fast regurgitate other people talking points and so they get stale. It gets stale out the while. That's why this is so refreshing. I hope this brother really try to bring into his channel a help where people like you, Miss Ellie, and 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 Tony B, y'all can come on and y'all can hear about maybe an hour or two hours talking about nothing but human health. How can you make your life better dealing with um if you go be dealing with supplements, deal with the supplement that God gave it. Because for you Christians out there, God say, I gave you your vegetable seeds and fruit for your medicine and your food. You best believe that. You know what I mean? If you don't believe anything else in the Bible, believe that one, because that would save your life. But I got you off point, but I still want to know about this sugar. <laughs> well, no, I told you that. No, no, no. I, I told you the sugar if when you do the cleansing, uh -huh, uh -huh. all right, start going in your cabinet mm -hmm. and start reading all your labels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the things with sugar on them, mm -hmm. start throwing them out. Yeah, I start try to look at the carbohydrates in, in the stuff too. Really what I'm trying to do is eliminate dairy, which I'm a bit good at, uh, rice, uh, flour, you know, because I think are those things that kind of naturally turn into sugar once they get in. Yeah. The well, I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a good thing where you don't have to have to read labels. Okay. And it's gonna sound racist, but no, you gonna 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 say. I you know you gonna understand. understand. You gonna understand what I'm about to say. Anything white, do not shop for it. <laughs> yeah, God yeah, did not make yeah. anything not of color when it comes to food. So anything no that you see that's right, it's got bleach in it, it's been over-processed, it's not of nature. It's a hybrid. And that's how you can tell hybrids. Anything that don't have seeds in it, stay away from it. These are two principles you can live by. You don't have to know anything else. If it's white, don't buy it. If it don't have seeds in it, if it's a fruit, don't buy it. Them damn watermelons that y'all be eating, Seedless, y'all, y'all be sucking them up. 
because y'all like, damn, no seeds. It's like seeds caused y'all a problem. It didn't cause y'all a problem. And them damn watermelons y'all eating, I'm telling they give you that sour taste in the back of your throat after you eat them. You know it do. You know they don't. They, you know the only thing they have did was increase the sugar content in them damn watermelons. They're not real. Go get you a seed. Get all your fruit. But I know all, it's hard to find grapes without seeds. But if you eat grapes with seeds in it versus one without seeds, it's like night and day. We're eating a lot of non-food people. And so I hope when brothers like this brother right here doing what he call a networking, I hope that he he get out a channel that deals with health. Um, herbals. I'm getting feedback from somebody. Tony B, I'm getting feedback from you. Oh, there you go. Uh, if you he have a channel that people like yourself who are concerned about them help their health alternatives have somebody who's tactful enough to get around the things that they don't it really won't give us channel a strike know how to talk to people how to give information where you're not being a doctor but you are giving information as far as you can say this is what worked for me you don't have to say this is what you supposed to use you say this is what worked for me. This is why I haven't had a cold in 40 years, because I got away from the non-foods. I got away from the dairy product, because if you know a cow, a cow knows it's snotty from the time it's born. From and mucus. That's mucus. And number two is no breast supposed to be producing milk for the entire, entire, entire life of that <laughs> animal. No animal or no human. Just think about it. If you had to, to breastfeed something, from the first time you had a child, you would know what's coming out of your breast. At that moment, it's become raw inside. Pus is part of the uh, uh, the cow's milk. Y'all eating it left and right, not knowing why you get that little stuff in the back of your throat. See, your body is so important, people. I want you to listen to this, but you don't listen to nothing else tonight. Your body is so important. It has a emergency uh, uh, um, uh, um a whole emergency set up in your body, like you have a pharmaceutical company set up in your body. You have a uh, emergency. That's the alert to let you know when something is hurt. When something is hurt, like your head, your stomach, it's letting you know that something is not functioning right. Your immune system is your drug and administration of your body. And Fact. the problem is we don't beat up our immune system so badly, they don't even give babies antibiotics anymore because they know they get they, they tore up a lot of people immune system by giving babies uh, uh, uh antibiotics when every time they catch a cold you know what i mean by the time that child get grown it, its body is immune to antibiotics yeah so speaking saying, of that we so we got to be very careful how we treat our bodies because our bodies is just like something i said at the beginning of this broadcast it has what we call muscle memory Every cell in your body has a memory. If you put chap lipstick on your lips, your lips will stop producing moisture. And then you'll end up with more chap lip than you was before you start using the chapstick. That's why black people don't use chapstick like they used to. In the 70s, everybody the has. Susie, Susie chapstick had everybody using chapstick. That was the little white girl on the ski. She had, she just turned them skis around and then put her chapsticks on. Everybody in the United States was using You remember what I'm talking about, Miss Ellie, so you know oh, what yeah, I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. you know, and if they want you to up. buy something, they go always put a little blonde head, a uh, little white girl on it, and everybody go suck it up, you know. And if you look at the press conferences that we have today in this country, it's that woman with the smile, and you we know she's lying, but they put a pretty face with a smile, and we become gullible. And just, just as anything, your body, your food, don't have discussion while you eat. Please do not have discussion while you're eating. Don't have fights while you're eating. Because that is the time your information is going in your body, same time the nutrition is going in your body, and it corrupts your food. Even when I have a fight at a restaurant, if I happen not to be home where I can make my own food, if I have a problem with that restaurant, I don't send nothing back. I get up and I leave because I don't want that energy. So you got to understand, we are energy human beings. I'm right there with you with that one. <laughs> 
You see what I'm yeah, saying? We are. we are energy, and other people's energy can go into our food source, and you wonder why when you get home, your stomach cramping, or you wonder why you don't feel right. That food didn't justify you because that person who served you that, you see what I'm saying? Put that bad energy in there, and y'all had a fight, and you thinking you, you won the fight because she got it right, but you don't understand all that other extra DNA she might have put in that food before she brought it to you. Yeah, so, and I try to tell people that all the time. I was an electrical engineer 30 years. Energy is real, okay? Right, yep. <laughs> and, yep. And, even, and I believe this too. Even like if you're arguing with your spouse or whatever, that bad energy that you send out, mm -hmm. that, that, that stuff is real. And Most it certainly. will affect them, especially if you live in a household with somebody who cannot mm -hmm. stand you. And all this right. bad energy is constantly right. coming out and ready. That's a that's a heart attack waiting there right there. Most certainly. You start losing your keys, you start losing your money, you be like, damn, I don't I, you, your memory start having laps. Yes. I mean you you you, you, you you ever be so mad you get blind? You know what I mean? You get angry. Out. So your 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 home supposed to be the place where you come and have peace. I think uh, 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 Mr. Opinion said this long time ago. If you don't get peace in your life, all your bag, your whip, and all that other stuff you think you got, it ain't going to make you happy. Yeah, and one thing he said earlier today, you know, it's like, and this is why I say I don't get up here and talk about relationships. Because you have all these people with all this negativity about the opposite sex. And it's very self-centered. You know, what are you, you know, that's where the joy comes in life of you doing for others, <laughs> you know, serving right. others. That's what leadership yeah. is about, too. Yeah. Yeah. My parents yeah. will be married for 60 years in, in September. And they both, my father has Alzheimer's and my mother has dementia. And that's another thing I want to talk to you about. Okay, okay. let me handle this right quick and then I'm going to let uh, this old lady and we got Raw and Uncut uh, back. Uh, I'm going to help you with that. Okay, Alzheimer's and short-term memory comes from not a lot, enough oxygen to the brain. Mm -hmm. No if, ands, or buts about it. That's true. I got two people in my house right now who suffer from it. And what I do, and I wonder why the doctors haven't came in to do this. What I do to them, I have a couple oxygen tanks, breathing machines here. Mm -hmm. I let them sit down on a breathing machine for about like an hour really? every day. And I'm telling you, in the first seven days, I seen a totally different in the person who has Alzheimer's disease. All right. So what I'm saying to you, there's other things you can do, little things. Uh, get them. Uh, this girl, she would love, she liked writing puzzles. And I told her the puzzles weren't good for her because she don't have to remember anything. Get them on something like a keyboard, even if it's small, where they have to start remembering, even though they have never played any uh, instrument or have no musical theory, but they'll start remembering what patterns they do to get certain sounds. That helps them a lot. The more you use it, the greater it becomes. That's in anything. You see guys who box, the more they practice, the more greater they become. People who play basketball, the more they practice, the better they become. That's anything in life. If you put practice in, you put the hard work in, the brains retain that. You got to understand what I said about muscle memory. The more you do. And so I can tell you another thing you, know, you can do for people who have all, uh, all times of disease too. It's cell cleansing. Start to find food. Electric food, what we call electric food, that is alive. Stop <laughs> overcooking your food, people. You can go out there and get you some smoke flavored liquid and put on them greens and cook them for 20 minutes, and they'll taste just as good as you've been cooking them for three or four hours. Sometimes we cook greens so so long, it almost liquefied them. You're supposed <laughs> to have some kind of bite in your greens, people. You know what I'm saying? We, so, we, we overcook a lot of food. So, Start to find food that has electro, uh, it has is, is alive. Lemons are alive. Early in the morning, instead of drinking coffee, you squeeze some lemon and put a little honey in it. It does more than coffee would ever do. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Jay. So, when it comes to food, you were talking about earlier too. Soft foods. I apologize for interrupting you. When it comes to soft foods, that's also make your teeth crooked. So if you mm-hmm. keep messing with soft food. That's why even Asia, I say for with the noodles and the, the rice, they all, all the food that's all soft and pre-cooked. That's why the teeth is jacked up. You know what I'm saying? That the tooth, right. the teeth not doing no work. It's all mushy food eating. You know what I'm right. saying? So, and uh, all the people who are going through that kind of uh, uh, having challenges with their brain, start giving them more smoothies. Oh. All right. Mm-hmm. Smoothies are could be substitute for any meal. You can if you find the right kind of stuff that you put in it. And I'm talking about natural stuff. Natural. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you'll find out that it's less hard, harsh on the digestive system. Think about it. a baby can get fat just on breast milk, right? Never eating solid food. So smoothies can nourish the body and it's less harsh on the body, the system. So that means when, if you think about it, the more part of your system you're using, the more tired you might get. And you, you strain true. electricity from the other part of the body. So if you mm-hmm. use foods that she don't have to work as hard to digest, then the brain power stays intact. You understand what I'm saying? So what yes. you want to do when people get older, you want to find, like we was talking about earlier tonight, you want to find mm-hmm. experience to make you have smart ways to do something versus doing it the hard way. And you got to understand you got to treat the body the same way. Start doing things smarter. And the only thing you have to look look at is when you were first born it'll tell you the smarter things to do but that's why babies are supposed to have liquids because it's less harsh on the underdeveloped parts of their body facts 100 percent. i have a question yes ma'am okay. um so i remember what you were saying about the aloe vera but you know i'm just wondering and i'm they sell the aloe vera juice like already um, in like most pharmacy pharmacies or even in the grocery store, like already without the pulp. Do you, mm-hmm. um, I know that family members of mine, my aunts and stuff, they would drink that just mm-hmm. buy the jug and drink it straight. Mm-hmm. Um, is that going to be the same effect? And if I buy the leaves and strain it and make it more of a like sap? Instead of in that, in, in just that, that one. Uh, that can one I get this right quick? I'm gonna put this right okay, quick. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know you got somebody. Look, and this is with any juice. Thirty minutes after you juice anything, and you let it set, it lose seventy five percent of its potency. You understand that? So you got something you don't bought in the store to have shelf life. And, you, and, you, and it has an expiration date on it. So <laughs> you're buying <laughs> almost empty substance of what you're mm-hmm. trying to get. You're when you so- can go out in any building <laughs> or any yard, ain't, I, I don't think nobody will get mad at you, you know, hitting that aloe vera plant. It's been there for years. They just looking at it. You know what <laughs> I mean? And so it's so beautiful on the side of the road, especially in California where I'm at. So what I'm telling you, when you come to juices, even when you start juicing things for yourself, try to drink it in that first 20 minutes. Don't let it set. You see how you do orange juice and it separates itself within about 20 minutes? You have a stuff on top and then a liquid at, at the bottom? Yes, it's so. Y'all got to understand, my first video, when I first came into the YouTube street, it was not about relationships or none of this BS that I involve myself in now. I came into YouTube talking about health. I wanted black people to have better health because it works to my advance. I was trained. I was studied under, I would say not trained, but studied under Dick Gregory, Dr. Goss, and Dr. Sabian. And I put all three of their things together because each one specialized in something that the other one didn't. So I was able to take three great minds and put it together and put my great mind, because I ain't going to never unscore myself, as being less because I consider myself as being God because I produce things, I create things, I invent things. And so that's what gods do. And so my thing was to come into YouTube and expose to people about better health. I never sold one product. And every time my channel got where I can get monetized, I got rid of it. Because one thing I do know about monetized channels, 
They are very strict on what you can say, how you can say it, when you can say it. I am a free man. I'm a free person. I'm going to say exactly what I need to say, and I know how to say it to stay under that radar system. So I usually keep my channels no more than probably 350, and then I go to another channel, and I get people to come over there. But my whole thing was to come in to make black people more healthy because we are on number one list on every element when it comes to health. We are at the bottom of it, you know? We, we have we got women who have fibroid tumors. The only person that matches up with black women with fibroid tumors is Jewish women. Wow. And the reason why that is the case is you use relaxers in your hair. It's the number one source of fibroid tumors. Go look oh. at the studies. Wow. But see, when I talk about women hair, I don't talk about it from should they have the right to beautify themselves or whatever. I talk about it from a health standpoint and so when you start understanding there's two women who have natural curly hair on this planet that's jewish women and black women and they you use more uh relaxes and perms in your hair than any other group on this face of this earth and that's why your fibroid tumors are the number one on the two groups oh, and so okay. that's not the only thing but that is one of the first elements that makes fibroid tumors no doctor ain't gonna never tell you that because he go he go get the ten thousand dollars, get them cut out, or they use the crush system. Go ahead. I was gonna add to what you were saying earlier too, Jay, with the blender and the food and that stuff. Anytime you look for anything on the shelf, guys, for any food you look at, look at the ingredients, and the number one ingredient is gonna be the most potent thing in there. So depending on what's on the list first. So let's say most juices that you see on the shelf honestly have a bunch of water, apple juice. And then the main thing that they're trying to sell you, like let's say it's supposed to be carriage or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's probably gonna have be number five or six on the list. It's gonna have banana juice, all stuff in there before you even get to the carrot, which is what you want it. And then you go into what Jay was saying that it's losing its value over time anyway. So it's not as potent as a fresh anything. And it's true because it's the difference between buying storage juice, store orange juice. And legitimately fresh squeezed orange juice. There's a huge difference. Taste and yeah. everything. Yeah, when I was in Mexico, I used to get these what they call agua frescas every day, where it's just water and fresh fruit. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, it's the and there's no sugar added, and it and, and and it just tastes so much better than something here that has a whole bunch of sugar in right. it because it's just you know it's not all that processed stuff. Right, black people stop buying alkaline water. You're cheating yourself. You buy, you take any acid fruit and put it in any water, and it automatically takes the acid of that fruit. When your body hit uh, taste, uh, knowing that it's natural, it turn it into alkaline automatically. Mm -hmm. You're wasting your damn money buying all this stuff that you can make yourself. Like you can make a gallon of this stuff, put a couple of slices of oranges in your 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 gallon. You know these jugs they have that you know these yeah, yeah. That come and bring you out water. Get your cup of them and, and, and kill the service, and you got the jugs free. But anyway, you put your damn fruit <laughs> in there, <laughs> and you the next morning when your kids get up, make them drink a glass of that water to start the day. Always start your day off with a glass of water. Always in your night for you the one who might pee in the bed. Well, I, I can't tell you you could do this, but always end your night with a glass of water, never solid foods. And when you get up in the morning, your digestive system is just like cleaning the street. It's cleaning your whole inside. When you get up in the morning and you drink some warm tea or something, you should be using the bathroom number one and two. You should always do one and two within an hour after you eat anything. If you don't, your digestive system is not functioning correctly. Mm. Ladies, I know you think using the bathroom number two every two and three days is normal because all your friends say it's normal. But no, <laughs> think about it. That's about the unnormal is wearing two left shoes. Anytime you get you fill up your bowl with food and you try to put the same amount on top of that food, it's going to spill over. So something is keeping that food in your body where it can't go through your digestive system. And that's what making a lot of you sick. And young ladies, when it comes down to menstruation, 
when you know that you if you're on your cycle and it's not alternative cycle it comes every 21 days every month and you know what day or what week is, is gonna come in stop eating meat that first week and you will have a less clogging and bleed over bleed for your cycle see you're talking to jay speed jay speed know a lot of things when it comes down to health I could probably could have been a gynecologist or, or nutrition and all of it put together because these are the things that I learned from a very early, late age with my grandmother to Dr. Sabi to Dr. Dick Gregory and whatever. These are the things that work for my family. Now, you can do what you want to do, but these are the things that work for my family, my friends, and people who call me and have ailments and they can get rid of their ailments and within any seven days. Yeah, because they're not trying to treat the root cause of issues here in the United States, the medical system. They're just not. <laughs> you see why I didn't use the C word? You can't use cure oh. in the United States medical field. You have to use the T word, treatment. Yeah. Because when you use the cure word, that's when you will call a lot of weight on top of your head. And so that's why I always use, this is what works for my family and me. And I keep myself safe. I keep the channels that I'm working on safe because I'm directing everything to how it respond to my body. I'm not prescribing anything for anybody out there. These are the things that I have used throughout my life and it works for me. And you see, I still got big guns, no wrinkles on my skin. You look at my skin. I got no wrinkles on my skin and I'm 62 years old. Now, damn, in eight more years. Uh, what is it? yeah in eight more years hell i'll be 70 some years old still playing basketball some of you brothers ain't played basketball since they were 19 years old <laughs> they got a six pack but it's a damn uh, pack, uh, 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 a buck wiser sitting on the stomach it ain't no, no, no shit right there and here i am i'm slim and trim goddamn don't get me started i ain't holding <laughs> in my stomach let me get back here i ain't have a hole in my stomach you will see you see i'm holding my stomach is flat I take care of myself. I don't just talk about this. I do this. I can out push up most all these guys come on these damn channels. They can't get they can't get past ten. Damn. But but some I, of these guys can't do some of these guys can't do three pull ups. That's but they're talking about they want a woman. How the hell can you protect a woman? You gonna do the same things you do? Call nine one one. Stop all the BS. Stop the capping. I appreciate your knowledge and experience on what has worked for your family. <laughs> I do. From, the, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. Yeah. How the hell you going to protect your woman? You can't do three push ups. What you going to do? Throw a Twinkie at the goddamn cellar? Oh my God. I love you. Some jelly beans? What the hell you going to do? You going to throw that box of ribs at him and he supposed to stop? He got a gun on you. Stop the BS. If you want your woman to get right, get your ass right. <laughs> Try to act like you Superman or something. You ain't no damn Superman. She can outrun you. Matter of fact, the only time she did not run you when the man put the gun to your face. <laughs> so we got for serious, just on a serious note, I think we got a lot of work to do, people. It's been done before, so maybe the new generation can do it better. And one of the things I do understand, I do think, I don't think older people like myself should be in front of it to parade. I think it's the young people time. It's their time to do it. They use us as advisors and that's it. Stop trying to get in front of the young people and, and, and trying to uh, uh, get in front of their self-determination and you want to be the leader. Set your ass down. Get to the back. Do what you're supposed to do. Be an elder. Be an advisor. Mm -hmm. Do not get in front of these young people and try to dictate to them what the hell they should be doing. Let them answer, ask you for counsel. This is where the yeah. problem has been all the time. Yeah. That we had a disconnect with our mothers. You think, you know, you, you let old people get on these internet, they'll try to tell you how great things was. If things were so great, they, didn't, they wouldn't have got their ass whooped. That's where the <laughs> ass whooping came from. Because you weren't doing everything your mother and father told you to do. You got your ass whooped, so you wasn't perfect. The times weren't so great. I can't believe one time I ever got my ass whooped that I feel like it was great. <laughs> I remember my aunt used to tell me, this going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Now I used to say, damn, well, won't you let me do you? 
and then I would hurt. But see, <laughs> this is the kind of bullshit that you tell us. I'm dying. Up. That's great. <laughs> they were lying to you. They were whooping that ass. They just wanted to whoop some ass. You know what I mean? They became professional ass whoop. Black people have become professional ass whoop when it comes to kids. So we got a lot of work to do, people. And we can do it in laughter. We can do it in fun. We don't have to get mad at each other. I think when we really understand what entertaining and broadcast and information is all about, we won't get so hang up in these conversations because in the end of the day, I don't think no one who comes on these type of platforms don't want us to be better. We just have different ways of getting there. Yeah, and I agree with you say about, you know, the older people constantly trying to tell you. They have to go because it's, it's kind of like we were talking about knowing yourself. If you don't go through certain things in life, you right. don't know how to course correct yourself internally. Right. You don't know right. how to resolve it. So you can't be trying to force something down somebody else who has to learn their own lessons in order for them to be comfortable with their decisions in life. You're right. <laughs> if you keep people, can, you, you, if you can, anybody got children, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> ain't no time for milk and cookies. Anybody got children, you got to understand when that child first falls down and you keep trying to run over there and pick that child up, he never learned the balance of life and never learned how to walk on his own. That fall is to teach that child the balance of life. I'll be letting my I'll be letting myself fall dead on his face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh geez, yeah. can you? I had some kids so bad. I wish I had to let them fail on the end of the damn table and bump their head or something. No, I'm not kidding. I know don't, don't, don't do that. You know that's all about jokes now. But <laughs> if some of my kids, I'm telling you, when they when they got all the way grown, I'm like, damn. I saved you from that table that time. I'm just, I should have let you got rattled a little bit. But but look, <laughs> you got to be able to let your children go through purifications of life to experience things in life. That's what, and all this bullshit they're talking about bullying and all that. Look, we call that teasing. Everybody got teased when I was coming up. <laughs> That's how you build you built your balls as a man. You was able to do the dozens, and you was able to do this. Now everybody want to fight. Every time they say something, somebody want to cancel them out, they want to fight. Yo, I remember my son, my son was uh, playing in the park, and he got tied up in a rope, the little climbing ropes. He's only two years old. He got tied up in the climbing ropes. He looked at me to try to pull him up. I'm like, nope, you got to figure it out. He let him take him, it took him 10 minutes to figure it out, but he figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, us older folks remember getting – going down slides that were 112 degrees in the sun and <laughs> losing part of our skin on the back of our legs and lawn yeah, darts and water weasels. Oh yeah, our parents sent us out at four years old. We're like, see you when the lights come on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We were lucky to survive. Right. We had lead paint and everything. You know what though? Back in my day though too, like it was normal for kids to walk to school. Like like grade one through three, I actually oh, yeah. walked to school. You know what I'm saying? I took the, bu I took the bus. Yeah, I, yeah, that too. But today, oh, I'm talking about the public, the public transportation the city bus. bus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, city bus. Yeah, yeah. yeah I walked to school like me. Moses with no shoes on. <laughs> now I'm just bullshit. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what? But in these times, though, I find it that it's harder for parents to even put their children out there like that. But I think the one of the leading causes of that, personally, is because when I was younger, I knew my neighbors. I knew my neighborhood. My parents knew. My grandma knew. Everyone knows who they are in the neighborhood. Today's day and age, I barely know who my neighbor right next door is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know people in this area like that. And I think it's because we don't, like, right now, how it is, I told earlier, it's kind of like a body conscious type thing. We have become less in tune with each other as a people. Yeah. We, we, we kind of, I don't want to say we dehumanize each other, but we don't value ourselves in that manner no more. We don't utilize each other like that no more. You know what I'm saying? Everything, even when it comes to raising our kids, it's, here you go, here's a phone, have a good time. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything has become so simplistic that it's, it's causing degrading other areas because we're not doing both. We're, we're, we're abandoning, we're picking up one thing, but we're abandoning another thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's I'm starting to see that it's really been a huge problem with us as we move forward. Socially so crippled. Yeah, We're socially yeah. crippled. Yeah, that's what it is. When, when I was growing up, and I know things have changed, but I think it, it's it's made a difference in my life. 
we didn't eat dinner until my father got home from work. And when my father got home from work, we all sat down at the table and ate dinner. And then that's how your parents used to know what was going on, you know, with you. You know, because that's where you kind of discussed it at. But, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. And I, I realize times have changed, but. Yeah, because you wait for your, yeah. your, 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 if you wait for your, 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 uh, your father to come home now, he's doing so much overtime, y'all might be yeah. eating one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so you can't do that shit no more. So. But I, I tell you what, though, them is the only times where I ever really saw my mother get upset with my father. If my late. father came home like a half hour late, oh, it was going to be something. Because everybody's sitting there waiting on her, and she's sitting there dealing with us. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. Al, remember taking the phone around the corner to talk to people? <laughs> you had to get that cord all the way around the corner to talk to the no, wait, you want you know, Downstairs on the basement steps. My dad would walk by and hang up. He just hang up. I'm like, hello? <laughs> you couldn't see him walk by. Just walk by. Hang up the phone. Yeah. 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 yeah, to make sure no one, like the person that called you, like, yo, like, called this time. Or be like, yo, like, uh -huh. hang, the phone, hang the phone. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the worst part about all that first. is when when you had a phone and uh, you had a party line and the neighbors were using the phone and everybody sitting in your house mad as hell. See, that's <laughs> real old right there. I'm serious. This is back I in the bet. 60s. You have a party line and the neighbors be talking. You know how some of them old women used to get? They get on the phone and they be talking about and they be talking about soap operas. You think they're talking about real life. And you got to make a phone call, <laughs> and you can't make a phone call because they're talking about days of our life and all the world turn bullshit. And so Luke and Laura and all that other shit. I'm like, yeah, damn, you know my family was like, damn, you know y'all gonna ever let us make a phone call? You know, so I mean, this is why I enjoy new technology today because you don't have to. Uh, but it does bring another problem. I just thought about what we didn't talk about, the, uh, Mr. Pena, about like. See, back in the day when a couple was together, everybody know who called. Everybody know who left a message. You're right. The day we have <laughs> women having, y'all having discussion about, should he know your passcode? or Should he know your email? Everybody know who mail came to the house back in the day. <laughs> so, everybody. These are things that I'm just saying is really just really making relationship bad, bad as well, because everybody think when you come, you're supposed to become as one. So why we got all these secrets in a relationship? This is why it's not working because we're bringing two different elements into relationship now. Right about no, he don't know my passcode. You, what are you checking my email for? What are you doing this for? What are you doing this for? You know, come on. Look, I ain't trying to tell nobody to be a P police or a D police. But what <laughs> I am saying is, it used to be a time when we commonly we come and share our experience in life. And who knows you, know me. So we had no privacy when it came to that because we was as one. How are these relationships going to ever sustain with all this privacy? Did we got to get past all that? Yeah. Because, well, you don't trust me. That's why you want to. No. When you become one and you marry, all that, all them conversations are supposed to be totally over. But all this privacy is what making these relationships so crazy. Because you don't know where you stand at. You know yeah, what I mean? And, 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 and like we were saying earlier, you know, people don't spend time with their families anymore. I remember, and I didn't realize, I didn't realize this until I was in my 30s. When I, my father, it's three of us, and my father didn't have any sons. But if my father, if he was like out working on the car, he used to make one of us come out and hold the light for him. And we used to hate it. Oh, he's going to make us hold the light. But it wasn't about holding the light. He was talking to us to find out what was going on with us. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't realize that till I got into my 30s. That that was what all of that was about. It was never about the light. Right. <laughs> he could have just hooked it on something. I don't believe my father ever told me. My father was born in 1909, come from a different time. And I just thought about this about, two, I guess, 10 years ago. I don't think I ever remember my father ever telling me he loved me. You know what I mean? But I never missed that in that conversation because my yeah. father, if you've seen me and my father, 
you would we like night and day. He didn't talk at all. So, but everything that he showed me showed me that the words that other people say they really need, but I got the things that he he instilled in me, like learning how to grow my own food. Learning, I remember the first time I learned how to cut grass. He, uh, I watched him for years cutting grass, and he just told me, tomorrow, Saturday, son, you cutting the grass. And I, I used to see how my father used to always walk the yard and pick up things just before he could cut the grass. I've been watching him do this for years. So I did everything great. I was scared as hell, you know, with this lawnmower, but I did everything I, I did everything right by just watching him for years. And I think that is what we missing on both sides because i think women and men bring a balance to any child uh, right. i think a girl fall in love with her father first and i ain't talking about this sick love incest no, 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 no. I, I, i'm talking about she's so she's in a dream world with a father because she sees so much strength so much instruction and so much everything so when she do go out there get a man she's looking for them type of qualities but when you don't have that kind of example in your household, it's kind of hard to know who you're choosing. We used to choose people out of our community, people we know or somebody know them. Now we're picking perfectly strangers that we never even went and seen how they interact with their own people. And we all of a sudden, we want to put a ring on it. We don't know how they treat their mother, their, their father, their sister, or yeah. anything. And for we know, we got a Frankenstein or a healthy skeleton in the house. Somebody want to kill you, kick your ass. And I'm talking about women and men because there's some women out there, some ass kickers too. So what I'm trying to say, um, we live in strange times where communication makes everything closer, but it did it don't really give you that 100 on who you're dealing with. If you, if, I'm telling anybody who's young, who's getting into a relationship, spend your first couple of days with that dates with that person. And then make it a point to spend your maybe your fourth date with that person in their family. Then you start to really pick up on some things. You understand? Hey, because you only fake things so long. I want to speak on something you brought up, right? You said your father didn't tell you, like you don't remember him saying he loved you, right? Right. But I bet you he told your mom that he she, that he loved her very much, right? Uh, most certainly. All right, so I'm that's how sure. I, I, I was gonna say that's how I realized how things were. If for me, like not to say I'll never say I love my children, but I know that my wife, just like I do for her, because my wife, I always gonna reassure my wife that I love her every day. I tell her, I kiss her every day, I love you, I love you, I love you. And she does the same thing to the kids. She's gonna keep telling the kids, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But then we look at it from how the children react to her saying I love you versus how it comes back. Like, I want you to look at it in reverse. Right. You know, if I tell my wife, I love her, I love her, she's like, of course, I know you love me. But it feels so much better when the child says it to the mother. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you put things yeah. in reverse, it's different. And the same thing, once you, like, if you were telling a kid that you love them, and they know that you love them, it's going to hit right. harder because you're not telling it and reinforcing all the time. You're doing your other thing, doing other ways. They know that you love them, but because you don't express it in that manner, once they get that one, it's like, damn, all the times mom told me, I don't know why this is hitting me different. That's with everyone naturally. It, it goes up and down, it goes back right. and forth. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it right. is. Right. And I, I just is mostly speaking on the, the brothers who feel like their father wasn't around and they never heard. I hear sometimes, father, I never heard my father tell me, love, he wasn't around. Let me tell you something. Um, There's a spirit and it's it, the physical life is very important. But I, I am I am a believer that God don't create trash. And even though that you might not have your father or your mother around you, there's other elements on this in this universe. And a lot of stuff is printed in your DNA. So we, we just we, we just at the beginning understand what DNA is. There's a lot of things that are imprinted in your DNA that you never have to read a book. And you wonder why you know it. Because you have that what we call that God imagination. 
And you must be bigger than what people want you to ever know. There's a secret in the Bible. I think it's uh, uh, Psalms 82.6 or 86.2. They say, ye are all gods, children of the Most High. If your creator tell you that, and that's what you believe, that you are a God, then we got to stop making excuses why we can't reach our full potential. Because I'm able to go on the internet any day and look at a lady who got a, her legs and uh, got her arms cut off. She has no arms and she drives a car. She fixes a breakfast. She does everything. Because that's the way the body is made. When something is cut off, it increases something else. Like people who are blind can hear better than people who are not blind. You understand? So that's the magnificent of this 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 body that you have. So and when something you think is not been given to you, it is given to you. Your ancestors speak to you during your DNA. That's the only way you can look like some of your great uncles. How you think that happened? If it was not imprinted in your DNA. So DNA just don't come with how you look. It comes with how you think too. There's imprints been put it into it. It's memory. I was trying to tell somebody on one of these panels on one of these shows that they discover it. Water has memory. If water has memory, you know damn well blood do. So what I'm saying is, without my father telling me he loves me, everything he did showed me he loves me. He never spanked none of his children. The women was always the disciplinary in his house. My father never touched any of his 18 children. <laughs> he said it was cheaper than a uh, uh, wood. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, it was cold back in North Carolina sometimes. So, you know, we got a lot of babies that was uh, was a uh, 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 hat store. I say hat store in the summer months. Because them winter months, you got to understand, <laughs> you know, they trying to get it in. You know what I'm saying? Because it's cold. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but anyway, we got a Look, we got a lot as human beings, just race, everything, just human being, humanity. I got all sorts of people in my house, from Asian to black to Spanish. Uh, uh, I got all races in my house and I treat them all the same because all of them are dealing with mental challenges or problems in life. And I can't treat a human being differently just because of the complexion of the skin. I understand we got some trouble times and I understand we got some problems with racism in America, bias in America. I understand that. But we got to be at one, it has to be a time when we can look past that and build on ourselves where we become the architect of who we know we are. See, we always been defined by other people, especially the black Americans in this country. Our whole definition has been defined by other people. And this is one of the things I wanted to say. And I said this on one of the shows. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X was killed in a suit. So let's don't make this big talk about the way we dress. We're making too big an issue on that. They've been killing us because of our skin color, not because we wear in a suit or not. They have a certain, that them type of people have a certain mindset, regardless if you had the best suit. My, uh, Obama wore a suit every day and they called him an ape. And he was the leader of a free nation. The president, the highest job you can get in the nation. And they still call him an ape in a suit. So we got to stop making excuses for people with bad behavior. I know that brother who went in that bank, and I just want to say this because I've been hearing all this BS all week long. The brother who went in his bank did nothing different than a lot of actors did. Michael Jackson did it. A lot of famous people do this. We wear disguises when we go to the bank because we don't want people robbing us. We don't people want people interfering with us. And what he had on, any college kid could have walked in that bank the same. I understand we live in a time that a black man, but see, we can't reward people by changing who we are with our clothes with their bad behavior. They have to change their mind. 
We can't keep making assessments and adjustments for people who don't like you in the first place. Forget about them. The bank said itself it made a major dis mistake. So why are we challenging these brothers or sisters who may not be dressed in a formal wear? Why are we blaming the victim now? So what I'm trying to say is the bank came out and apologized and said it said never happened. The man had a withdrawal slip with his name on it, his account on it, and said, could you please do not count the bills and make it discreet when you hand it to me because people are watching me. So when you're going to start having these conversations, brothers, and sisters, have a fair conversation. Don't always come from one angle. Understand the actors and entertainers who are high uh, uh, profit earners or earners. We have to move in different kind, types of ways. And we got to make that adjustment when we start talking about different stories because the media will put it out one way and you will see it one way. And if you've already been social engineered, you're going to have to always try to attack it at the same angle. I don't need to wear a damn suit to be treated like a human being. Do you understand that? If a person can't look at my heart and look at me, then that person has the problem, not me. Why is black people going to always have to make adjustments for other people's bad behavior or the way people think of us? We cannot please them type of people. We're wasting time trying to please people who don't like you. You can make all the adjustments in the world. Look at that film. Martin Luther King was shot in a damn suit. Malcolm was shot in a suit. Marcus Garvey was imported in one of the best uniforms you can have. Stop making excuses for people bad behavior. Stop making adjustments to make people like you who would never like you. Now, should pe I got 10 suits in my closet. I can cam up right now and two tuxedos. But I don't believe I have to put them on to make somebody like me. I think there's a Have balance. That discussion. I, I believe there's a balance. Yes, sir. And that's what I just said. Yeah. No, no. I'm saying I agree with you. I'm saying I believe there's a balance. Like, it's first impression. But uh, most of all, I do believe, yeah, the, the people that's ruling over us, they just, they're just going to treat us a certain way regardless. Like, more so because of who we are, because of our blood, because yes, of, sir. you know, who we are. Yeah. So we're a threat. So I definitely, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, too much assimilation mindsets instead of uh, actually just looking at reality for what it is. Like you said, the victim blaming, it's, it's very, very coonish. I, I appreciate that from a young um, uh, Where are you from, uh, my brother, uh, Rick? Oh, I'm from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm in Atlanta oh, right okay. now. That's but, where my uh, father's from. I come from a, a family of uh, jocks. My father was not no taller than 411. So yeah, you, you 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 come from, but my mother was uh, uh, six one. So uh, see that today. See how many men would be inferior, feel like they're inferior to have a tall woman standing on where they look up. But my mother would never try my father in no kind of way. She had respect for him. It has nothing to do with the size of a man. It's what he produced on this planet. How he rolled. That's what makes the size of a man. I seen a lot of six two, six three, six threes was nothing. And it wasn't because there was nothing because they were born that way. It was nothing because they looked for nothing. They wanted nothing. They wanted the cheat codes out of life. They had no heart. It was all about them, selfish. And so you come from a good space and we all in this country come from good space because we have a rich history. Our history didn't start here in America. Our history goes back all the way back to Lucy and to herself, 1.2 million years old. If you believe in carbon, uh, how they carbon counted her, her life. So I think we have a lot that we can work with and we can see what, it, but it, my generation made mistakes and we made mistakes. But you got to understand the mistakes we made is because we was in a different type of battle. We didn't have the time and the idle time the younger generation has today where you can put everything on the microscope.
microscope and be able to move on it. We were just trying to be respected as men and women back in them days. And we had to hold it together. Today, y'all don't have to worry about that. Y'all have luxury time. Y'all have the luxury of looking at things a little more methodical and figuring them out. We didn't have that time when we was just trying to have food on our table. So, yes, yeah, a different time in a different world. But I'm saying is we got to stop trying to make people who like us who ain't going to never like us. Because I'm going to tell you where the biggest threat of the black man come from is his third leg. And they scared the hell of that because you can fuck them out of existence. We don't need a gun. That is our gun. That's why the first gun was called a pistola. It looks like the private part of the black man. It was called the equalizer. So stop trying to impress people you can never impress. You see what they talked about the president. Go back and look at some of them articles. They even t had articles of his wife. Where they put a face with a gorilla and his face with a gorilla. Come, come on, man. Let, let's don't keep having these old crazy ass talking points and these crazy ass conversations about what your your image yes men should when they go on an interview they should be dressed up they go to the court they should be dressed up they go to certain events they should be dressed up and shouldn't have their pants all over their ass and all that i'm not talking about that you're talking about the lowest of the fruit but i'm saying a man should be able to wear a hoodie just the same way as a person going to an ivy league school, college who wear hoodies all the time and never get treated like that Stop making excuses for bad behavior of people who don't like you. I can't say that enough. We don't adjust ourselves and our life more than any other race on this planet. And they still don't give a damn about you, the ones who hate you. And that's not all of them. There's a lot of white people was was upset what happened in that bank. Even though there was a black woman who called in on him. I guess she, you know, she thinks she was going through protocol. But if somebody give you a withdrawal slip with their name and their account on it and just tell you to be discreet how you count it back to them, you should have took that to your manager or something and he would have known that person was an important person in that bank. But we don't have the luxury of that because we keep trying to make an adjustment to make people look at us. What the hell they want to turn us into, clones? They'll never go be satisfied with us unless we dip ourselves all in bleach and look like them, the ones who think like that. So stop making these adjustments for people who do not like you. I don't expect to go on a board meeting with a bunch of think tank brothers and they come to them with the ball cap all turned in the back. That ain't what I'm talking about. You should be wearing suits. You should be going there dressed to impress, to, to represent how your mind is. But don't tell a young black man that he can't go down the street casual like any other race and, sh and be treated like a second class citizen just because he don't have a damn suit on. Stop that. I'll give you pushback. I don't give a damn if you old. I don't give a damn if you Moses. I don't care if you Jesus Christ. I will give you pushback on that. See, what we do is we adjust for massa more quickly then we adjust for god we won't try to become the best us you know for us for our sake for our culture's sake we'll become the best us for the oppressor's sake you know what that is rick because we are uh, a lot of us like i said earlier we do things externally and we don't go within everyone's quick to do things outwardly as if the world owes them something as if the world rotates around them and make it all about them being self-important, self low. It's like, it's not about you. You're not that fucking important. But that's the thing, though. That ego. People become false gods with that real quick. And a lot of black people have some serious egos. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I peak game a while back, too. And that's why, I, I, me, I have to do my importance to be humble at all times. I have to blow myself. I have to empty myself. Because it's the only way I'm gonna have peace. The moment I start to give it to myself, I'm already self-destructive. That's just for me. You know, well, I, I said I, I, I said the thing it. is I said that the the biggest thing is our own thoughts of ourselves. 
we always, if like especially in media, we always try to lower ourselves to the lowest common denominator. We think of ourselves as the lowest common denominator. When we say something black, we always think, oh, that's the negative thing. Oh, you know, oh, they, you know, it's always the lowest common denominator we break ourselves down to. And like, yes, the media and outside world, they may look at us a certain way, but we look at ourselves a certain way. And that's to be, we got to change first before we, before we can think about what anybody else thinks. That's the first thing. Yeah, uh, how we, how we look at ourselves. It, 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 Okay, and it carries me to the chat room. Let me skate over there for a minute. Of all the things that I had said tonight, and some you can agree or disagree, I ain't say nobody had to agree along with me. But why would a person who have the best interests of black people, of all the things, go back to the beginning of me coming on this panel, and a person would say, I don't know why y'all even listen to this guy. Now, who would say something like that? I have given out a lot of information could help people in their life, their health, and everything else. And the only thing this person could say was, I don't know why y'all were listening to the guy. Who would say something like that? This is what I'm telling you. See, this is the lesson we learn in the nation. We clear the room of agents. You got to understand everybody who comes on these channels, they're not coming in for the best interest of black people moving in a certain direction. You can disagree with me, but you can't say that I haven't said anything significant can help somebody in their life since I've been on this channel. And for you to say something like that, I have to look at you very suspiciously. And that's how we clear the room of agents. You got to understand a lot of people in these black spaces on the internet, this YouTube street. They're plants, and y'all better understand this. They're the one who keeps the conflicts and the fighting going on these channels. And some people would say that's not important, but yes, it is. I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because sometimes we as people, we're very gullible, very easy to be persuaded. And before you know it, you got a snowball going down the hill into turmoil. That's what these people have made to come into these kind of channels to do. Now, I could, could take it if the guy or the girl said, look, I disagree with him on that point. But to totally cancel me out, why would, would, would a person with all the other information I brought, why would they want to totally cancel me out? Unless I, I they have are an angry? answer for you, JSP. It's yes, ma'am, go they, ahead. They have nothing of value to add. <laughs> <laughs> that note, I want to tell you again, I appreciate everything that you passed on to me. I put my email address and everything in the back chat. I have enjoyed this time talking to you guys. And everybody have a great weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, you have an amazing no weekend. And enjoy yourself over there in Mexico. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right, we got a new arrival right here. How you doing, sir, tonight? Are you mute? Your mic is mute. I'm just so I'm hungry. That's all. You're I'm hungry. Gonna... Well, yeah. that we had somebody on here earlier who was fixing breakfast. I man, if I had known you was coming up, I would totally send it to you by Uber Eats or whatever they got now. Yeah, I'm, uh, trying to be... uh, I'm trying to get on Rick Judah's diet. I'm gonna make a smoothie. Okay, well, that sounds good. I hear accent on there. What island or what continent you're from? Nigeria, I'm Nigerian, but you know, you see, I rep Baltimore. I lived in Baltimore. Okay, okay. I got you. I just heard that underneath. You know, I'm an actor. You know, we had to yeah. you know different dialects when we hear because sometimes we might have to have that role. What did you got to say about all the topics and what you heard tonight? And welcome to the channel. Oh, thank you. Um, pretty much, pretty much, I um, I I was just listening for now. You know, I just wanted to. I I like. So my Saturday morning is that this is like my second week joining and I like the conversations that we have. It's very edifying and, you know, I like the fact that, you know, it's not fighting. You can disagree with someone and we all learn from each other. So, you know, I, I definitely agree to your point where you said that this is a new generation now and things that are happening now, you have to, um, you have to fight a different way. Like in the past, you fought the different because that's what that's the environment you lived in back then. But we live in a different environment where you have to take the tools and opportunities that you have 
in this environment to fight in a different way. So I definitely agree with that. And that's why when I um, when we debate and when we have arguments, I, I don't like living in the past. Like you can't tell me like what happened because I wasn't here or, or it's a different environment now. So I like that you highlighted that, that now um, there's more opportunities for people to do better than their ancestors or do better than their than their their the older the elders yeah yeah go ahead go ahead i mean you cut you off oh no 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 that's that's what i that's the that's the part that i heard that i i definitely agree with you know I don't have all right input. that sounds good i'm glad you're welcome and uh, i hope you have some input i don't know who's really running this channel tonight because i just came in and i'm just trying to keep it moving along and uh you know you live mr opinion marvelous um uh, mr opinion he usually be eating burrito dropping burrito juice in his microphone <laughs> so you don't have to listen to him so but tonight he's he's conducting himself as a gentleman in the night so uh a lot of people don't understand. I started off on radio back in 1976, Charlotte, North Carolina, WGIV. Let me just give you a taste of it. Love the sounds of SPWED speed, bringing it to you 95 degrees in the shade, WGIV. What a man say hi today, it's going to be 95 degrees in the shade, and you better get yourself some. So a lot of people don't understand all, all the professional careers I have right. lived. Yeah, some have them. We went out. Rick, yeah, uh, Rick, Rick, thanks, morning. Okay, let me see what we got. Is he still here? Yeah, I think he went off. Somebody went off. Are we still live, Rick. though? Yeah, yeah. We're still live. Okay, okay. But that just gives you a lot of backgrounds. I went from, you know, boxing to radio to to a stuntman actor in California. I just ain't never limit myself to give all my life to one person on one occupation. I, I told you my mind works differently. So I ain't scared of new stuff. I'm not. And yes, I'm very vocal and I'm very opinionated, but a lot of my stuff is based in how things work. I told you, if you really understand me, I look at life as a puzzle and I try to fit, see how everything fit. Am I right about everything? Hell no. We didn't even try to be right about everything. But one thing I can tell you about, I'm right about the shit that helps me in my life and moving now. But when I start talking about an overall system, I can only give you a little bit of input because there's 7 billion people on this planet. I haven't met them all. All of them have a different way of thinking, mindsets, and everything else. But I think when we do, when we do come together and have these conversations, we should have some what I would call, what they call temple plates, platforms, let's say foundation. We should be able to start off somewhere, you know what I mean, and move on it. And But I still, yeah. I really believe I'm going to start, keep pushing this. Old people go have to let young people do their thing. Y'all going to have to pass that torch. I believe that's why I'm not really an active member, but I'm going to always be a member of the Nation of Islam because I get, I believe there become the time when we as elders must get the stronger lines to promote the message. Yeah, but the but the the younger people still need guidance, though. No, that's where the elders come in from counseling. Okay, that's where we become. See, there's a difference between head of the march and being some of the foundation of why that march is taking place. I think we lose out on that. I think a lot of times when younger people decided they want to move it in a certain direction that we can have bumps in the road when old people try to take it over. You understand what I'm saying? I see what you're and saying. Sometimes it, it changes the march. If you understand, the march on Washington supposed to have been by SNCC. It was already planned. It was already planned. Martin Luther King was put in there to keep it at a certain mindset or a certain temperament. If you know anything about horses, you know what I mean when I use the word temperament. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah so so you got to understand, what is his name? Stokey Carmichael from uh, SNCC. Yeah. You know, he he had already planned this this big rally and stuff. It was already planned. The Kennedy called in a couple of Abernathy, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, a couple of uh, the uh, civil rights movers, and made sure it was going to be a peaceful march. That's why it was inserted in that march. 
So yes, I believe there's always should be room for counseling, but then we got to let the young people do their thing, like we was able to do our thing. You know what I mean? Because you know, ain't nobody doing the robot to dance no more. You know what I mean? That's something we did in the seventies. You know what so, I mean? So Jay, why I agree with you? I don't have faith in the young people though. I do. I, I do. I do. You, you know why I do? Go ahead. I, you know why I do? Because I look at young people like I look at my computer. Sometimes the computer gets so clustered with programs, apps. Mm. You just got to script it out and start reformat it and start all over, over again. You understand? Okay. So before you ever, re ever go to buy a new computer, these people do this. Reformat it again and start all over again. You'll find out your computer was just as fast as it was when you first got it. It's just you don't put so much stuff in. So this is why I, I, I have faith in the young people. Mm. Because I believe they've been stripped out like a hard drive. You understand? You know why and, I have faith in the young people? Why? Because they have the they have the creativity. And on top of it, they're gonna have to they're the one, this is their future. They don't We've fear. already lived our they yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Define what you mean. I, I, I don't know if you consider me young. I'm 35, so I don't know if I'm considered. I'm. I don't know what that where that places me, right? Mm. So I, I want to make sure that and I'm only saying because I, I don't want if I, I don't know if I can speak from young people or older, but older person's point of view. But and, and there's a reason why I said I don't have faith in you. I wait for you guys to finish. I'll tell you why I said my why I said that. And, uh, well, I would say this for me. I watched my little brother. He's smart. Uh, just watching him, I have faith because he. I know that there. He's not the only one. He, there's a lot of people. I'm in the military. There's a lot of people who are young and actually moving correctly in life. You know, it's just that it, it was. It's, it's not surprising too. I think you should do is just talk to younger people and actually see what's in their mind. Like once you actually talk to some of them, you're like, oh, okay, there's some hope. Like it, it takes that one person you come and talk to and you're like, oh shit, thank God. Cause I was like, yo, I thought we was pretty much done for. But then you ask yourself to talk to him, it's like, okay, we're not completely lost yet. There's some hope. So that that was for me anyway. Well, but yeah, you just let them fail, let them fall on their face, you know. I no, I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with letting people fall. It's too dangerous. That that idea of letting people fall. People are falling off the cliff. Okay, let me let me the reason why I say that I don't have faith in them. Um, Marvel's opinion, right? You're speaking about the, your brother. And from what I'm understanding is that you you guided him. You were there for him. You, unless you're telling me magically he just became a great person. But no, no. I was saying him as one of other people too. Like I'm in the military, so I'm a, okay. I'm a pretty over other people. I'm 34 years old. And I got mm -hmm. new fresh military members who are 19, 20 years old coming in. And look to me for guidance as well. Not yeah. just for me, but everyone else. But I'm saying like as I talk to him and I engage, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, there are some good ones out there. Thank well, you, God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 real quick, let me clarify that. When I say let somebody fall on their face, it's not. I'm not saying let somebody fall on their face and they just gotta. They're on their own. Yeah. yeah it's, it's it's a control. You have to have a. You have to set people up in a controlled environment so they can become a leader. If they don't, if they don't get a chance to fall on their face. They'll never learn. Okay. It takes it. And once once they get to the leadership role, they don't have any experience. And now they now it's all on them. And now that's when the failure is bad. Because now it's all on them. And they have no guidance, and they haven't had any experience. So you have well, to let people fall on the face first. So, so um, I, I, again, I, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that idea because I'll tell you why. This environment we live in is way too dangerous to let people fall. I believe in learning from the mistakes of the elders, and I believe that, for example, right, I used to, when I lived in Baltimore for a long time, the biggest issue we had was that we didn't have black male teachers in the schools. Like I used to go do speaking engagements. I used to go to different schools. So I became a volunteer at a couple, at a couple of schools. I'll go in Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? And I'll be the, maybe only, maybe two male, not just teachers, men in the whole building. And you see middle school students run the whole school, right? The principal will be going from class to class. And the difference was that they'll have to call me to every class to come and say something, to speak something. Re the reason why that was happening was because there wasn't enough male influence. Now, some people would say, I'm going to invite people I know, hey, come and mentor, come and volunteer. They'll be like, let the kids be kids. And what I'm saying to them is, these 14-year-olds or 13-year-olds, 
once they get a record, it's over for them. Not, I mean, it's not technically over, but it puts them way, it sets them back 20, 30 years. And I will say to my um, colleagues and my friends, you cannot let these kids run themselves. You need male influences in the school. You need male teachers in the school. You need more male mentors. So I personally do They're not, not paying have... enough. But see, that's, that's not the same thing I'm talking about. Same thing. What I'm talking about is, for example, if you need to lead, like, if, let's say you're leading a project, right? Yes. I'm going to put that young, that person I see with potential, I'm going to let them lead that project. And what I'm going to do is, as an elder, as a person who has already done it before, I'm sorry, my son is talking in the back. <laughs> the person, as a person who's the elder, that's what that's I'm going to do is, I'm going to let them lead, and I'm going to get, if they need me for advisement, I'm going to be there for advisement. But however, if they go going to make mistakes, I'm going to let them make their mistakes too. I'm not going to be afraid for them to make their mistakes because guess what? They have to learn from that mistake so they can become better. So when it's their turn to be, uh, be an advisor, they're okay. You know what I'm saying? And they'll have they'll be able to teach somebody else. And, but if you just let them, if you don't let them do that, if you keep on say staying to the back, you don't let them lead, don't let them get that experience. By the time they get to those position there where they're older, they have no experience now. They were always in the back. They were they were hands off. You have to let somebody lead sometimes and let them fall sometimes. But you but you're there to guide them. You're there to pick them. It's a team effort. You know. Mm-hmm. I got a question for OG though, because the reason why I have this question is this is this is my concern, right? The mistakes. This is my opinion. I could be wrong. I feel like the mistakes in this environment are deadlier than the mistakes back in the eighties. Now I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't leave the eighties. I wasn't working. I was. I was born in the eighties. I'm just for my opinion. I feel like the mistakes that these kids are making now. Think about it. Think about social media. People have beef with each other. They might say something crazy next thing they meet each other. Like someone living in Chicago can meet someone meeting, living in freaking Gary, Indiana, or wherever in Indiana, right? There's, there's that probability that they can have beef amongst each other. Before, we have beef in the same city. I'm just giving that as an example. And OG, I'm asking you, do you think that the mistakes, that, because I don't, I didn't, I didn't know there were so many 17 year olds dying on the streets back in the 80s. I'm not saying people weren't dying or 16 year olds or the, what I see now is scary. Even me growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, I didn't know it was like this. So that's why the mistakes of this era is a little different than the mistakes back in the days. And I could be wrong. I uh, I can answer that question. And, yes. and due to I have lived uh, 62 years on this planet. And mm-hmm. I can tell you that every generation goes through this. Okay. Every age goes through that. We have a disconnect. I first wore Afro. My father thought I was crazy. And <laughs> so the music that I was dancing to, they were like, that's not music. Now, we listened to the music they played in our house. But when we got on our own, we got with our friend, we played the music that we heard on the radio. So it's always a disconnect with, with human beings. As See, when you came into now, that's what you know. And anything you you know other than what was in the past, it was either you read about it or somebody told you about it. You never got the energy from it. So you can only get the stories from it. You see what I'm saying? And so you didn't know how much disconnect we had with our parents and my parents we had with their parents. And yes, in anything that's changing, like when you, when a manufacturer come out with a new car, and they tell you how great that car is. They haven't got all the kinks out of it yet. It usually take that car. That's why I never buy a car on the first year it comes out. You like if you really want to buy that car, buy that car on like the fourth. That means they don't get all the kinks out of it. And so what the new generation is now, they are starting to understand that you gotta understand the new generation minds move a lot faster than the older people's minds. Uh, and they year because when we played games, we had one game with a little light going doop, 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 and it was tennis. The games that y'all played it now, y'all got explosion coming at you, you got blood on the screen, you got action, you got to be killing somebody, you got rocket ships coming in, so you have to think faster. And as this new generation get into this media and this communication, these, these different devices as far as technology. They will make adjustments. So it's not all doom. So we had to make adjustments in our time too versus our parents. You got to understand my father was born in 1909. He was on horse and uh, uh, horse and, and wagon. 
He went from horse and wagon to see a man go to the moon. See how many adjustments he had to make in his life. So it's not throwing out everything. The new generation is having a little term or by adjusting just no, no different from a car. It's been produced the first year the model comes out versus the last model that is much better than the first model because they don't get all the kinks out of it. And I think the younger generation is making an adjustments on everything. Matter of fact, let's just be honest. This whole planet is resetting. With this COVID that came, it has made all of us, all of us, old and young, make adjustments. We are resetting. This planet would never be the same as it was before the COVID came out. It'll never be the same. Okay. Now that's facts. Oh, Jay, um, I got two questions for you, all right? One comes yes, from Renee. And she says she wants to know what your YouTube channel is. You want to drop that for uh, me? Let me just put it this way. I, I Look at my name. You can find me. I never announced my UP2 page on another man's channel. Or one okay, channel. That's just fair where enough. I respect. But you look at my name and you'll figure it out. You, you, I use the same name. This is my professional name. And it's the name that I used for acting for 35 years. I'm easy to find. and But I never... Uh, it's just me. Uh, I don't give my uh, my channel. I'm easy, too easy to find. I think right. that's a level of respect, especially as when I know when people are building a channel and they might be going a certain kind of way. I think that's just disrespect for me. And I know that answer, that question was given from the heart. It was not due to anything, but I just want her to understand why I won't give that out. Because I'm easy to find on YouTube. Or Google, I, you could Google me way before you can, you could you could uh, uh, find me on YouTube because I was on, you know, being a professional actor, uh, that was my talent. But you can find me very easy. What's the next question, sir? Next question comes from uh, forgive me, okay. <laughs> next question comes from John O. He basically has a question about the nation of Islam. I think um, I already heard that one. Go ahead, get it out. Get it out. Do they, do they approve <laughs> of the LGBT? So go ahead, get it out. Just read the question. There. Basically, the nation of Islam believe in the alphabet community? The nation of uh, uh, Islam do not believe in anything that go uh, totally exists uh, or go against the belief of what they believe when it comes to Allah. And that's any sin. Drinking, smoking, whatever. We don't See, we look at sin as Allah look at all sins the same. There's no different in sin because of what you're doing. Smoking, drinking, you know, being a whore out in the street or, or whatever. God, you own the same instrument. It's the same. The only, the only sin that you can't be forgiven for is suicide. I thought it was other ones. I thought it was... I thought it was the basically condemning God in a way or something no, like that. No, suicide. The Bible. Suicide. Yeah. Suicide. But you know is what? That only... makes sense, though, Jay. Because you know why? I used to think of sin. I used to think of sin. I, I, I think you got to watch that word. I think you got to watch that word. I think it's going to Oh, yeah. It's uh, 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 clueless. Wait, clueless of living. Nah, self oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot that. that oh, yeah, I mean, see, this guy, yeah, I, I do apologize. Allegedly, somebody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, uh, one thing that makes sense to me, though, why that's probably the biggest one, because ultimately, I always look at sin as death. Anything that leads to death is going to be sinful in nature. It just is what it is. It's like it's destructive behavior, period. That's how you know it's like sin. If it's going to lead, if the consequences lead up to death, then it's probably sinful, 100%. Sin is ignorance. Well, yes, right. that can happen, too. But I, I, I can, I can, as a person, and as a man, I can elaborate on um, the understanding of that. I, I'm fortunate I don't have any uh, children in that community, but I have talked to a lot of people, just like I say, that I run a house and, and, and just my experience in life. There's not, uh, I went to college in South Carolina and I was in military school for 14 years and the college I took some courses at was Denmark Tech in South Carolina 
and it was live in dormitory. Sometimes I'll just put it this way. Sometimes you gotta watch like anything else in life, what you expose yourself to. Because once you start liking something the way it feels, mm. then you can say you can say anything to make yourself believe that it's right by that way it make you feel. Mm. See, I got people in my house who got diabetes. And they feel so good when they eating that chocolate cake with all mm. that old type chocolate on it. Mm. Be eating that ice cream, be eating all that candy, drinking them sodas, man. And they be sugar, feeling right? so good. So that's why you got to be, you got to understand I come from a generation that sex itself has have a, a, a evolution. Mm-hmm. Oral sex was not even communicating in our community in the 60s and 70s. That's something the stars and stuff might have had experience or people who was in military, but just in the common black person, if you told a black man that if he went down on somebody, that that was a fight. <laughs> now it's a fight if you don't do it. Mm. So that just shows you that yeah. you have to be very cautious what you get associate yourself with. You got to you gotta be very cautious how you associate yourself with people when you go out and drink. There's a lot of women who have been flipped by going out with girlfriends who had the intention of sleeping with them, but they didn't know that. And they got them so drunk where they couldn't get home. They stopped at a motel and she ended up uh, being uh, a little high, not high enough to know that she didn't know what was being done. But once it's been done, she used the alcohol to say she's, she's, she used the alcohol to say it wasn't done. So in college, and the reason why I bring up Denmark Tech, I used to know this girl named Nina. She had never been with a man in her life. But me and her were real good friends. And how we became friends because I was the only one who had military license who can drive the vehicle. And y'all seen some of these vehicles back in the day, them green vehicles. Mm. I used to drive. You had to have military license to drive on military school. And so I was in charge of carrying some of the people to Dennis and stuff like that. So I was able to drive. So she was my friend. One day, you know, she was, we, 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 we were getting ready to get on the bus. We were just sitting on the seat and I went to put my hand on my leg. She said, if you don't get your hand off my leg, let's go find some women that party with you better. <laughs> so that's when I know Nina. I always know she, George, she dressed boys, but she still had a feminine quality about her. But she used to tell me something very interesting. She said that over 75% of the girls that was in the girls' dormitory had experiment with being with another girl. I didn't believe that when she first told me. But as I got to know Nina, I know she wasn't the kind of person who would lie. And I started questioning some of these girls. And when they started giggling about it and, you know, they respect. This is my point is. When you take things out of the natural order of things and you start putting other additives in it, in it um, sex has escalated in our community. And we're getting into this, what make you feel? I would love to have a decent conversation with that community and ask some of the men, when they had a wet dream, who did they dream about? And see what they answer that question honestly. <laughs> These are some of the things are natural order of things. Hey, Marvelous got the old school typewriter. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So we can get to because you know, in this community, they they're gonna have every alphabet on the goddamn scale of alphabets. <laughs> I mean, they, they started off with the vowels. Now they don't move into the man, consonants. What, man, what, and I don't have nothing against... Look, let me tell you something. I have a nephew who was killed in New York City. That uh, he he was one who would love to wear dress and he had certain hormones he was taking to get breasts and all that stuff. But he got killed by a man who thought he was a woman. And this happened about 10 years ago. So I do have some experience in my family um, with that community. What I would like to say, I think it's time for, if you want to be part of society, you got to stop being 
the gangster, the Don, where people can't talk about you, people can't joke about you. I mean, you part of this community. Everybody get joked about and talked about. And then you got to start having decent conversation. You just can't counsel people out when they have different beliefs than you. I think we're much smarter than that now. And it used to be the conversation when in that community was, I was born this way. But you got a lot of them will tell you they wasn't born this way. When you sit down and talk to some of them, I had been in a business meeting and I was talking to the guy and he was like, like, well, can you, uh, you think we can ever go out? And I was like, look, man, I don't roll that way. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't roll that way. And I'm a, and then I say, since you asked me that question, let me ask you a question. How did you become the way you are? And you know what the guy, I, I thought he was going to say I was born that way, but he didn't. He said he was totally against the community that wants to make everybody born that way. He say that he comes from a very rich upscale uh, 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 background and his mother hired this pool boy to do the pool and the pool boy started messing with him when he was a young child. Mm. And he started to, that was his sex first experiences. So that's the way he believed that sex poses went that way. Now, you tell me when the average person from that community go ever come out and tell these type of stories versus trying to make us feel that they were all born that way. But you know what, Jay? That statement's always disingenuous, man, because the fact of the matter is this. I cannot say I was born straight. I cannot say I was born a killer. I was born to do things. These are actions we're talking about. We're talking about actions that you're born to do. You oh, can't sorry. say I was born to speak English. I was born to speak with. There are actions, okay? Right. I'm not saying that you necessarily learned these things, but there is a cause and effect for all things. You can't just say by default, because the fact of the matter is, Jay, um, most people don't go within and ask themselves, why do I do this? You know what I'm saying? I actually ask myself the question and say, why do I like women? My first encounter with, I would say, when it comes to sex, was at age five. My cousin put me on to porn, and it was like the HBO channel, the Squiggly channel. You know what I'm saying? But like, you couldn't even see the titties, but you can kind of make out the You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my first introduction for my cousin, Tanea, who put me on to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was already being introduced to it at such a young age, and I already know it. I was already kissing girls age five and six and stuff like that. I saw girl parts at that age, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all because my cousin put me into that. That's because I had to go ask myself, like, well, why do I find women so fascinating? Because before there was that phase where you felt like, oh, girls, cooties, you know, but they're so different, whatever. But then it was like, well, what made me curious sexually about them? You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually asked myself that question. A lot of people don't really ask themselves where it comes from. You know what I'm saying? They just kind of figure, I was always born with this. is natural. Right. Well, I but, say the natural but, order of things because my first experience with any sexual activity was a wet dream and it was about my teacher she had these big old pearly gates you live about uh eight inches from the neck and i was infatuated with them and she made sure that a lot of other students was infatuated with because she showed the top part of them all the time <laughs> and i had <laughs> i had a wet dream about her and then that's when i know that i had a i had a gun and then, but as I'm and, saying, at least you knew though. At least you right, know where right. it comes you understand? from. Some people don't so, want to know where it comes from. Right. And but see, this is what a natural order things are. that was already put in place in your DNA, even if you had never seen no Playboy magazine or no breast or anyway, a male go have a uh, uh going to have a wet dream. We don't talk about this no more. Yes, how right men become into manhood. Right. We don't even talk about this no more. No, we think true. everything that is that we know about sex is about what we've been exposed to. That's a damn lie. I was very sheltered. My grandmother was an evangelist. My, uh, um, uh, we stayed in church eight days a week. I never seen any TV. We listened to a radio that looked like a damn TV. It was so big. And I know nothing about that outside world. And I still had a wet dream. Now, how did that happen? Because that was printed in my DEA, DNA as a male. The natural other thing, as a bird, don't go have no, you never seen a damn institution for a bird. You never seen a damn institution for a wolf or spider. 
How do they learn? So what I'm trying to say, everything has a natural order of things. And so we're getting away from that. We're thinking about how something makes us feel. And that's why I use uh, the example as far as the oral sex things in the black community. You got a lot of women don't even want to get down with guys if they ain't ready to do that. Or you got a lot of guys don't want to get down with women if they ain't able to. Look, if God had to put your dick on your forehead, you would be doing the reverse in that way too. Man, well. I believe. That's my belief. And I have practice. I, we, we're perfect in line with each other. What pose to go where? Now, we can substitute anything. I was talking about orange juice early. And feeling. Yeah, I believe a guy would masturbate with sandpaper if he can get away from the scratches. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just wow. telling you, that's how we are. You know what I mean? I so, think it's somebody out here who like the feeling probably. You right. Know. So we got to be very careful what we associate ourselves with because once something feels good to you, then you got to make a decision from that. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. We got Google nowadays. The kids nowadays, they don't listen. Like, they'll hear, oh, let me tell you the story about this birds and bees. And then they can just Google it and be like, you know, you, all that you said was all BS. And so that's what that's the point we're at now. It's like kids can just Google the things that the adults are saying. And then it's, you know what, you're, you're lying. We know you're lying. We know that this isn't the truth. So it's, I think we have to start with the truth early on with our kids, where it's, you, you know about what a wet dream is. You know about what your, you know, instead of, oh, that's your PP, that's your penis. Not, not no, you know what I mean? Making nicknames right. and things like that. And that takes the allure away where you feel like, oh, you know what? Oh, that's nasty or that's gross. You know what I mean? All that, right. no, it's natural. That's actually something that is natural in Earth. Like everybody pees, everybody poops. If we right. take away that allure of, oh, what are they doing in that bathroom? No, we know what they're doing in the bathroom. Right. We know, you know what I'm saying, that these things happen because they all happen to everybody. And we got to stick is, to truth. And this, but, and this is why I think porn is ruining this sex activity in the bedroom. Because you understand how movies are made. You get cut, action, go. You don't get the smell. I mean, everything looks glorified. You don't know how that room smells. And if anybody ever been in the orgy, know how that room smells. It smells bad. And so you get to have to look at it in 3D or, or 4K, and it looks so lovely. There's no mistakes. It's perfectly done. And you try to duplicate that, or you go home and try to get your woman or your man to duplicate that, and it's impossible. It's entertainment, people. It's performing under the camera when the directors can take that shot, stop it, and start it back. You never know when they started it back because they cut to another scene, come back, and you think it's part of the, the what you're looking at. And this is why I think why did our children are so infatuated with sex is because the exposure of porno. See, back in the day, you had to go in these little ragged-ass buildings and get your little porno video and stuff like that and carry it home and then carry it back, or you go into these peep shows. This stuff is in every child's hand who has a smartphone. And anytime they can push the button and say I'm 18 years old and go on Pornhub or any of these other damn places, OnlyFans or whatever they want to go into, and they can have more experience with their eyeballs than we have had a 9, 10 year old child can have more experience with their eyeballs than we had being 21 years old. So, and that's the part of us killing us. And OG, you're absolutely right. It's not just the visual porn, though. Think about it. There's so much things that we hear now. Talk about the YouTube space, even on radio. The way people are willingly talking about... I was listening to The Breakfast Club, and they were talking about um, things like they're supposed to be talked about amongst adults in the private, openly. Not just the break, different places. And it bothers me that people are willing... Adults are willingly talking about sexual thing so just not just the uh, uh, pornography you can see it's the now i don't know what to call it the ones you can now hear like okay they can't show it on on regular tv they can't show it on youtube but you have people with big platforms explicitly talking about 
sex in ways that are not edifying or way that are not glorifying to it. Then, and you have kids that are eight, nine listening to that. There is no way on earth that is not going to affect them adversely. I don't care what no one says. With children, pornography fries your mind. It fries your, not your mind, your brain. Because of, you have to keep going for next. Okay, okay, I like this position. Okay, I need to see something else. I'm tired of seeing. Like, so, so that way, when you're getting exposed to that, and it feels good, there's no, there's no end at that tunnel. You're going to keep going, keep going till you find yourself in a rabbit hole. And that's why I'm not going take to Take it, it from the stars and take mm. it from the rappers. Mm. The All famous right. stars and the famous rappers are so barked down with women coming after them all kinds of ways and actresses the same way don't see all kinds of threesomes and swapping wives and and all this stuff we got two actors now and i won't mention their name on here but that's the kind of activities they've been into that's part of the indoctrination of hollywood that's why i walked away from it because you can't sell me on something that i already know is not correct and so when you have these rappers who women would do anything to just to be with them, after a while that become boring. Now they need a man with breasts with jumping jacks doing jumping jacks. You know, they you know it, it takes things to the extreme. You yeah. got to understand it's when desensitized. you I don't care if you like steak and potatoes. If you ate it every night, you would get bored with it. I do, I do and so every day. this is the problem. When you have women who are willing or men who are willing to do anything for that type of sexual activities. And once you get bored with something, you got to escalate it to uh, escalate it to something else different because you're bored with it. It's just like the position that we probably used back in the day, submission position. It's, you know, it's not even position that people even talk about. It. Everybody want to back it up, you know, you know, doggy style. They want to do all kinds of stuff. So there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm trying to say is you got to watch what you associate yourself with because you will put yourself in the position of life to not be able to ever attain, uh, attain that from a woman if you're looking at porno. These are professional women who sometimes have to be so high and so drunk mm. to do these acts where their body becomes so numb that these things and these guys, you know, they got these fluffers, you know, they got women who, who are hired to do nothing but fluff these guys off so they come in there with the cape on looking like Superman between the legs, you know. So How, how do you, you know so much about this, Jay? How do you know the intricacies of this? Yes. Because, <laughs> let me tell you, let me, I, know how, I know how movies, regardless if it's X-rated, or it's regular movie. I know how it's made. It's something they're selling you a product. And nobody sells you a product that is not ready to be on the shelf. And so, you know, as a man, I know as a man, that I can't command my thing to do what it want to do at any given time. These people are shooting movies. So they have to have things with the B plan. They call the B plan. Where they have they hire these women to fluff these guys up when they cut the scene. Because once you stop, you know that, you know, it's getting deflated. So they have to have people who fluff them while she's over there cleaning herself up, especially if she don't made a spill or something. He's over there getting fluffed. So when it's time to get back to action, you got to know how movies are made. And this is where, you know, experience and wisdom comes in. The people who are living in this fantasy life because they see something on tape or they see something in Hollywood and they think this is how people live like the Jerry Springer show the same way I have had I was I was I, my agent tried to get me on Jerry Springer many a times to tell a story that wasn't really a story most of that Jerry Springer show was not real people they were actors you got to understand all the fights and all the other stuff and so when you understand how Hollywood worked what product they're trying to sell, then you'll understand why we are so in confused in our communities. Because we get a lot of our stuff off of TV. We watch more TV than any other race on this planet. Hey. Black people actually watch it's more TV than any other race on this planet. That's real. So where's our information coming? From somebody who, with a creative mind who's trying to sell your product. Hey. 
they selling your attention. You know what I'm saying? They're keeping your attention from learning anything real. Of, you know what I'm saying? True evidence. Most certainly. Yeah. Most of the time. Look, y'all sure. guys, I got to I gotta go in the uh, feed. It's three minutes to six. Uh, I got to start cooking for 30-something people. So this is the I way I like spending terrible, time yeah. with you all, passing out knowledge. It's been a groove, been a move. I think it's like the second time I've been on this brother's channel, and he's always uh, – uh, I like to thank him for letting me up on the panel. As you know, I can talk 24-7. I probably get three or four <laughs> hours of sleep every day. So this is easy for me. I've been doing it ever since I was 16 years old. I enjoy all the conversation I had tonight. I enjoy all the people who came up. And the young lady who was looking for my email address, I did put it in the back. I hope you got it. And peace and love. And I always strive for the truth, my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for having me on. Have a good morning. Hey, peace and love, OG. Hope you have a prosperous day. Where's everyone from? Oh, where does everyone live? Cali. Cali. I live America. In, uh, <laughs> I live in North Carolina, uh, Raleigh. Charlotte, bro. Who is in Charlotte? Charlotte. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Hey. Boston. Yeah, it's Cheesecake. <laughs> I missed I missed the original um topic. So I came in like pretty late this morning. I didn't know y'all were on all night. Oh yeah, what you got to say on the topic? Yo, go ahead. What's the topic and how many people are part of your life? Is that what is that what they're saying? What's the original topic? Is that the original topic? How many people are part of your relationship? Now I think the uh hold on, correct me if I'm wrong. What was the original topic? Let me see. It was the original uh, topics were some of the topics from um yesterday's show. Yeah, recap. It was a recap of Thursday. I don't know if you watched the piece. Oh, I did. I watched Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was that was a very interesting. Co- I did watch it. Where um, the late. I just don't like how rude one of the ladies were. But aside from that, I enjoyed um, the where she was saying that your husband needs to know every single thing you're doing, right? That there's no reason hiding things from them. And I somewhat disagree on that part because you know it just depends on your culture and where you're from, right? I, I don't know if I want my wife to see things that my mother says to me. Or there's some things that I, I, I'm not willing to talk about, right? Just because um, I believe in emotional intelligence, right? I don't believe you treat people the same. I don't believe in equality. I don't believe... I believe people, you meet people where they are. Like, you know, the same way I talk to my friends, I talk to my father, it's not the same way I'm going to talk to my wife. But the same way I talk to my brother, it's not the same way I'm going to talk to my girlfriend. That's just my opinion. So I don't necessarily believe that every single thing, you still need that bit of privacy, in my opinion, right? I don't believe that you need to share every single thing with your wife or with your um, with your girlfriend or your spouse. That's just... So- I, think, I think that sometimes you got to like, I think it's healthy to have a little bit of uh, privacy. Mm. Just, just because like, I don't need to know everything she's doing. She don't need to know everything I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I feel like you, you got your life... Up until that point, y'all meet. So you I mean, still want to have your life after. I mean, and it's not even there, like, it's not even like hiding anything per se. It's more so well, some things I have to, some things I just can't like. You just can't know, and that's just like that's for other reasons. Sometimes but, like, you're protecting them. So I'll give you an instance, right? This is real life situation. That maybe I shouldn't. Even, so there is a politician going through some issues right now, right in Baltimore City, and. One of the ways she, the, the lady might escape what she's going through is claiming that she didn't know her husband had some financial issues with the IRS, right? And it's, it's very possible, it's very plausible that I might be going through some issues with the IRS that I'm ashamed to, or I don't want to tell my wife because I don't want to put that burden on her. I want to figure out what I'm figuring on my side to get it done, right? So now, imagine if they are, imagine if they're that type of family where he tells his wife every single thing. And she's going to court and claiming that she doesn't know that she doesn't that she doesn't know. But the FBI might have phone records of that showing that she knows. Do you understand how that sometimes you might you can protect your your spouse by not telling them some things that you might be doing? Because you know how she didn't know, right? Now she's protected. She can claim that she's ignorant about that situation that her husband was dealing with. And the, and truly, she did not know. There's no way to prove that she knew because the husband did not tell her. 
So sometimes you may have to protect your wife that way. Sometimes you may have to protect your girlfriend by not giving them all the information. Yeah, just omit. Don't, don't you know, yeah. not lie, just but just yeah. don't tell them everything. You're right. Yeah. I get it. And it also it goes it goes down with people that that when, when I see they put they put their girlfriends get them jammed up in whatever illegal activity they're doing. I'm like, why would you even do that to someone you care about? You know so what I mean? I, so so I, I, I kind of look at it a little differently. I don't. I think there's a difference between privacy and secrets. Correct. And I don't really believe you need to keep secrets like that, especially from your spouse. Those are very important things that the heck may have determined if she would even choose to have been your spouse. Mm. So I believe in yeah. transparency, but at the same time, I mean, you need to be able to have uh, 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 private moments. My and, TV. And I think that's why where yes, where it got, TV's loud in the background. I think that's where it got muddied uh, on Thursday's show because. It, they got into where they were dipping into the secrets aspect of privacy, and they are not the same. Yeah, see, I get what you're saying. Secrets is is there. That's like when you are purposefully keeping something from someone, right? I I I can't tell honestly. It's it's hard for me to tell the difference, right? Because. I, I, I think that in the in exam, I'm giving you a real life example, right? You can Google who I'm talking about. It's real life exam. And I want to, I want to use that because that's what's happening, right? Will you call that privacy or will you call that a secret? Because he didn't want his wife to know that he was having issues. It's a secret. Because it's a secret. That's a secret. But, yeah. But in that case, I can understand why he did that because now he's protecting his wife because she went to do something. She didn't disclose about something else. Right. But she didn't know about it. I, I, that's I, the problem. Like, uh, but as, as, as positive as a negative, like that's negative to that because if in that situation she should know it already, so that she can act accordingly as well. You're right. You're right. Right, because she still You're suffers right. the You're consequences. Right. I didn't think the about that. If she knows or not. So if she had known about that, she wouldn't put herself in that trouble. Okay, I see you guys are right about that too. Yeah, she still suffers yeah. the consequences, whether but, knowing or not, because they're married. But so what? Yeah, because yeah, I was on. I, I, I don't know whose it was, but I think it was a mirror. And she was talking about how the women would have to be virgins. And the way that they would know is they would take the sheets from the marital bed and they would hang them out for people to see the blood, yeah, which is like for confirmation, right? For confirmation. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's, that's, that's not only an invasion of privacy. It's like real live, real barbaric. Y'all don't think? No, but it's, that's, it's different culture. Culture. That's, that's different culture. different culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to use i say this all the time it's hard to use people get mad when i say it's hard to use american ideology and understand what um ideologies from different cultures it's kind of hard so that's why i don't even like to compare it it's totally different we live in a very liberal environment so you're free to do whatever you want that's you know somebody said barbaric that's yeah you can't do that here just can't just gotta leave our cousin. But uh, Aaron, you're mute. I'm on mute. Oh no, no, I can hear you now. I thought you were saying yeah. something. Say something. No, I was just saying that's not barbaric. It's not. No, no, it's not barbaric. Nope. No, it's just somebody else's culture. Somebody else. They think somebody thinks you're right. Is barbaric. You barbaric, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely cult like. Amer Americans don't get everything right. Their, their ideas and their views are not right? always accurate. Well, I agree with that, Aaron. Well, but I mean, how how much are they participating in that? If you're holding up the sheet, right? This is for everyone's approval to say, "Oh, she was a virgin." This this is your wife. This is your wife you're talking about, and you're holding up the sheet from you having sexual intercourse. You get what I'm saying? Right. It's an embarrassing like, thing, but no, it's, it's embarrassing for our does, culture, it but it won't be embarrassing for their culture. It's a so you say embarrassing, that, shows that means you have other people participating in something they shouldn't be, right? Right, but they, no, but they, they, have, they, they shouldn't. It's not. They shouldn't be. It's there. So, so right there that opposes. So, 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 so you're saying you agree with it? I'm also. I, I agree with it in a sense. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I think I countries should continue to live and operate the way they operate. America does not determine everybody else's views. 
And Americans right. have the hardest time because y'all so damn opinionated. In other countries, y'all wouldn't be saying nothing. You're right. Because this you're freedom gonna... that y'all have to speak, y'all just like, it's, it's just. But insane. it goes both ways, Aaron. Because so I'm saying we, we should take away the freedom to speak. No, it's just keep your opinion to yourself. Yes. It's, it's different. Yes, it would be perfectly fine with him taking away the freedom to just speak for a lot of people. Hell yes. It's just, some things just aren't your business. Everyone deserves the right to have a opinion. People say stupid shit all the time. When I go, I just say the dumbest things. So I, I, can, I see what you're saying. But everyone is on that side. When you say people should not step in, I'll give you an example, right? Growing up, a part of my a tribe, close to my tribe, right? They used to kill twins because that's just the culture because they thought it was evil and it was from it was from the devil, right? So they used to kill they used to kill twins. This is a factual. Go ahead. <laughs> Look at my girl be here. It should be if someone wants to marry, it should be a standard practice to disclose financial information yeah. and take blood tests. Okay. Yeah, that's how it is back home. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I agree. Hey, all right. So people used to do that back then to avoid my, so you don't your child doesn't have sickle cell this because if you depend on the blood types that you have you might like I think S A S and S S A S will yes. give you you're gonna have an S S like a sickle cell right so they used to do that back in the days like hey they'll check the blood type and it'd be a big deal they'll be like ah the family like ah no you can't marry your A S you have to marry yeah. someone with A A. They used to do that back in the days, but Shoot, I don't, don't even do. stop there. Make sure y'all not related to them. You know what I mean? Oh, I said that last week, Aaron. You remember that you do a background check. Like if you want to get married, we do something they call they'll send someone to go to your and ask about your forefathers, ask about your lineage, make sure that there's no blood mixing. One, two, also make sure that you don't come from a castaway or a slave yeah. background. Or right. you know, you make sure you don't have your so nobody in your family committed. Uh, pedophilia, oh sorry, committed the P word or committed the R word or things like that. So yeah, they used to do that back in the days growing up. That's Those are the things that you do before you actually get married. That's like a background check. I don't know if they still do that now. But I, you know, I, want, my, I want my standardized uh, DNA test on all children too. Let's stop. Look, look, ladies, stop leaving that out. Y'all want to add all these uh, specific things that which y'all won't require. No, no, we want those, those tests on those babies required for every child Make sure y'all push that. Make yeah. sure push and that. they should also push uh, paternity. <laughs> Mandatory paternity too then for uh you know both parents. We don't want you taking home the wrong kid. That it happens. That's true. It does. It does. It does. But but Aaron, I want to say I want to go back to what you said about uh, so I, I somewhat like the freedom we have here, right? You know, you can say what you want, you can do whatever you want to do. I somewhat like it. The problem is there is no moral compass. In the sense that, sorry, there's no moral lawgiver. Like, we don't have the same moral lawgiver. Your morality is pretty much subjective, right, in this case, because we don't have the same moral law. We don't follow the same standards. So anybody can do anything and anybody can say anything. And be any, that's the only problem I have. But I like the idea that, you know, you're free to say... Give me an example. Oh, what do you mean? Give me an example when you say we don't have the same moral, like, conduct or whatever. What do you mean by that? Yeah, meaning, okay, meaning here, you, you're you free to worship whatever God you want to worship, have whatever belief you want to you wanna believe in. Like, you're free to re literally, like, say and do anything that you want to do. That's not customary to every. There's some things back home I cannot say, right? There's some things I cannot, because we have, uh, even, even, if, even if in my tribe or in my culture, I mean, I can say, but they might, they would disband me. They would expel, they would ex, was, they exile me from my culture. I can do those things. They might exile me. But here in America, nobody really does. You can really say anything as long as you nah. yeah. like you, you can say what you want, but you also, there's consequences to what you say. There's always consequences to what you say. Mm -hmm. Now, now, there's the difference is that you can't, like, most of the things you can, you can say most things and a government won't interfere. That's the difference. Well, I've seen people. I've seen people insult politicians, say crazy things about the president, and you know they be walking free. I, I don't know. That's not common in every other place in the world. Yeah, that's the difference. That's the difference. You can say something oh, about your. You, got, you have a, You have an opinion of, in, about your government, and and that's okay. Yeah, you given that that option, but he's saying he would take away that option. Y'all would take away people's freedom to speak freely. 
is is what you feel like yeah. is, let's, let's, is the option is the issue. People can say whatever they want in anywhere in the world. It's just different consequences. We have consequences here. It's just see because we <laughs> we can play this. We can play this little you know you know this wor- words if you want to play with the words, but we have freedom of speech, but it is it does have some limitation. It's not completely free. Just like other countries have much more restrictions on freedom of speech, right? So it's not total freedom of speech, but technically it is, but you do have consequences. So it, it, it's subjected to how you want to receive that. Like, you know, in Canada, certain things you might can't say that we could say here that you would- They don't have well freedom of speech in Canada, though. They yes, have freedom I, of expression. That's, that's why I utilize them for the reason. But the point mm-hmm. of it is they still can say whatever the hell they want. It's just a consequence for it. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah, like they walk around. I prefer America as well, though. I do prefer. It's a, it's a huge, yeah. I see. I, see, I get what you're yeah. saying. There is consequences, but what, what's going to happen? You might you're going to lose endorsements. You're going to lose this. But think about it. There's a podcast on YouTube. I won't call their name. I heard them say something that made so much sense. They said that a lot of times people get canceled, right? Especially men, because they live in they live in environments where the sponsorship, the spenders of the money, are heavily women, right? But their podcast, they say they are, the people that spend money are men. So they are free to say any single thing they want to say, right? That, so, but in a lot of places, the things they say will get them arrested. Easily. Okay. So yeah. let me say. Like I, some I, countries, like, you can get arrested for blasphemy. Easily. Okay. Like for, for me, right? I tell people all the time, I like racist people, right? And people are like, what do you mean you like racist people? I like people that are blatantly honest that they don't like you. I don't <laughs> have to figure thing. it out. I don't have to go around it. Yeah. It's literally, I don't like you. You black. Yeah, wear it okay, on your thank shoulder. You. Thank I you very you. much. Appreciate you. Right. You know, let me stay up out your way. You stay up out my way. It's as opposed to somebody assuming. I like that, dear. I'm not going to lie. That's why I live in the South. Yeah. I like, you don't like me. Don't, you have to <laughs> like, cool. I know how to function with those type of people. Easy. Those, those type of people, I easily function with them. But then you, you walk your way, I walk your way. Hey, we might say hi, whatever. You don't like me? Cool. I, 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 yes, I, I understand what you're and, saying. And they have a right not to like you, too. Yes, they don't have to like you. That's yeah. right. Whereas well, if they have to hide it, whereas if they're hiding it, now say you don't know what they're doing. And now you might be doing something around them that you shouldn't be doing or trusting them too much where you shouldn't be trusting them. And now say you put yourself in danger. You don't even know what's going on. You damn sure shouldn't be trusting them. Shit. Especially if it's not your skin, folk. I mean, yeah, well, that's well, just true. That's it. That's it. That's just as bad sometimes. I'm telling you, like, if you okay, if you have a certain experience with certain people, it's it. Who am I to say, okay, if you're around these people, you should do this or you shouldn't do that? I mean, that's no, up to you and I'm your saying, experience, right? You, you, you get, you're, you're missing out what I'm saying. I'm saying is, like what Aaron said. If if, if I know where you stand. I know how to deal with you. So that means I don't well, have nobody to, I knows do where you stand, around. is what I'm saying. Nobody has it on their forehead that they're a racist. Nobody just no, knows when comes around, out calls and me says, a... I'm a racist. You get what I'm saying? It's something <laughs> no. that you have to know from experiencing those people. No, there's some people who will walk up to you blatantly and say, Yo, you were in you were you a nigga. Well, I don't know and if they'll do like, now. You know how to yeah. you know how to treat them accordingly. He's right. Aaron, I don't know if you call it California. Bring y'all up to speed. I don't know what that means. Michelle, you had to break that down to me. <laughs> hey, to bring y'all, to bring y'all up to speed from the sheets. Like now, you just send a text and tell her dad, yeah, it was a ghost. She was straight. Wait, what? And studied in the bloody sheets. Now we just send text messages like, yo, she was good. It was straight. She was a, a virgin. Oh no! Nah, so you that, don't, that, you don't send those texts. I don't know who's sending texts. No, like that. no, no. I'm, I'm, te- I'm telling you the culture. You, you, y'all was talking about Arab culture. I'm somebody that's married to an Arab. Now, what you do instead of hanging your sheets outside your house, you just send her dad a text and say, "Yeah, she was a bicker. She was a virgin." And so, that's. Omar, and I, have a, I have a question. What's the consequence of it if she's not? You can she give her back a text anyway. You can give her back. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> This is Miss oh, yeah. Give her back and give her back to her dad. Yeah, let her let him know. Yeah, she wasn't it. That was that you can give her back to her, you can give her back to your dad and get all your gold back and everything and be like, yo, she lied. I need a refund. Wait, yeah, I need a refund. Dowry? Do y'all pay dowry in America? No, nah, yeah, yeah. Muslims do. Muslims do, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, my friend who was uh, my friend who was uh, from Africa. I think he was Nigerian. I think he had to pay a dowry for it to get married. Easy in Nigeria, Ghanaian. He had to pay a dowry. Yeah, we paid dowry. Yeah. Hey, so do those marriages tend to last longer? Which one? Which what? The ones where you yeah. pay for it. Well, you pay for all of them. Even when you're American, you pay for it. You pay for it. You buy the ring. You buy no, the I mean, house. like an upfront cost. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I get what you mean, but the dowry mm -hmm. and everything like that. It ain't, so, it ain't really. No, it ain't really no different. It's just terminologies for real. Hey, Dave. Like, Dave, can you can you answer uh, his question? Oh yeah, I do want to ask. I have no idea. What no, no. About. He's saying the Osu is talking about is the caste. What I was talking about the, the caste culture, like people that come from um slavery or come yeah, from yeah. Or within, yeah, that's what's called Osu. Osu, they, they call you Osu, meaning you're a castaway. I don't okay. necessarily support it nowadays because honestly, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the power of Christ, so I, I don't really support it, but I understand why people did it back in the day. So now... So, so you're a Christian now? Yeah. I have, you know, so, so, you know, because, you know, in Tupac's son, he said, oh, you must. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Christian now. I've seen the power of God. I've seen, you know, I've seen different things. So that's why I choose. Well, let, 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 me, yeah. let me shift the conversation a little bit. I, 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 oh, uh, Omar, you yeah. good, bro? You, you good on that or you wanted to finish up? No, no, I'm good. I'm good, bro. All right, cool. Yeah, because you know Omar got the game, so I don't I don't like the pad when he's speaking. I gotta listen. Uh, <laughs> let me shift. Let me switch it up real quick, though. Okay. So, do y'all think that uh, men are utilizing their uh, their looks, their body, in order to uh, get access to women these days at a higher rate than normal? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Of course. Yeah. I know. If I, I know if I walk on a beach. I know if I walk on a beach and I got a six pack, I know I'm gonna get. I know I'm gonna get, be able to attract more chicks. Yeah, because so, it's it's more people without it. That's the so thing. This, yeah. This, this, Look, this that y'all ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna like this answer. <laughs> from 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 somebody that used to be in shape who's now fat. I ain't had it. Ain't miss a beat. It ain't changed. I think they just care about if you got the bag or not. To be honest. Yeah, exactly. So, th so that's that's your adding a variable, but go ahead. That's Aaron. another that's another issue too. Yeah. So the, the, that's the, an reason, though. the reason I asked this question, I kind of slightly altered it from the way it was specifically slayed out on the uh the topic, is because this will kind of spark the whole conversation between six and everybody. And this is where everything went crazy. It was already, you know, mm -hmm. you know, nitpicky and back and forth, and they call it caddy, whatever yeah. I would say that. Real caddy. Uh, it was but, building. I thought that it was actually because you know I try I try to listen right so a lot of these times I just sit back and just listen as much as I can mm. and I and I wait for my time as well but that that what Six was saying was so spot on but it was so much arguing and so many yeah, different real contentious that people couldn't really grasp what she was saying plus she was a you know people said she was aggressive she was like. It was all it was all entertaining at the end of the day for me, but I thought it was spot on because this is something that I when I talk to women I tell them that all the time. But this is this is the thing that younger women do that older women couldn't have necessarily the ability to do so much is boy they go crazy over a good looking guy because there are not a lot of good looking guys. Like for instance, pretty women are everywhere; they are not rare. Good looking guys to women are rare. You were right. when you when you when you around females and they're like, oh wow, he good looking. It takes them a long time to say that. It, yeah. a, a hundred guys to go by. So those guys are rare, which means they have an advantage. Right. No question about it. I, I, I I'm looking for my example. I used to be 240 pounds. You used to be a gigolo? Huh? You said you used to be fat. You used to be a gigolo? I used to be nah, fat. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I used to be fat, <laughs> and I can tell you that women have become way more attracted to me when I started working out, started going to the gym, instead of, it just you, you you look better, you feel better, and it's just it's clear. And women walk up to you and talk to you, so I can see that from my example. That yeah, you're right about it. It's hard, and it's just hard to a lot of well, men. Well, Daler, I would I would question: Would that have more to do with your confidence than yeah. your looks? Because they see the way you walk. They see the way you move. So it may not have been the fact that you were 240 pounds and now you're probably 185. It's just the way you feel about you. They sense well, that. I get compliments on my... I've never gotten compliments. I, okay, 
uh, sometimes I walk into a bar and I've seen women come and grab my arms and rub. It never happened to me in the past. That I get compliments on my arms. I get compliments on different things. So it's definitely the, what they're seeing. It's not just the confidence. But they see the confidence. That, well, I'm not going to yeah, that they see more confident. I'm not going to answer. Go ahead. When I was in shape, they used to walk up and rub my muscles in my stomach and say, ooh, you rip. Then when I got fat, they say they rub my stomach and say, ooh, you like a teddy bear. It's just about you. <laughs> and confidence matters more than anything. Man, yeah, confidence man. matters more than anything. So, 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 oh, I mean, I agree with that for the most part, but I will say this because you're because you're a little bit older. Um, but I, I'll say when I when I when I engage with women that are 27 and under, 21, 22, 23, 24, they are very big on looks. I'm talking. Well, I was ripped in there, and so I can't answer that. Then I was yeah, ripped. I was boxing right, every right, day, right, jogging right. every day. Right. I was ripped. Know. Yeah, but but I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on my Arab wife now to come to America. She be getting off the plane at about uh I'm gonna have her talk to you, Aaron. She be getting off. She gonna get off the plane at twelve o'clock, twelve thirty, something like that. Okay, all right. I'm, uh, okay. So tonight I'm, I'm gonna put her on tonight, and uh you know so y'all can ask her some questions and stuff to you know so you can verify the stuff I've been telling. Congrats, brother. Uh, listen, listen, I ain't got. I believe you. <laughs> listen, I know right, somebody right. keeping it real when they not, but no, let, I'm j- I'm just saying so. They are very big on looks, especially younger women. And I don't know if it's because they've been told or they've been – because the younger guys have been raised in a world where women are equal to men until so they find out they're not, and then they get this whole, yeah, I, they ain't equal to me. I ain't got to treat them that way. And this is your red pale culture, and they go crazy when your mind gets open. But I'm telling you, a woman will say, uh-uh, I'm not – just like Sig said, a woman will look at a guy and go, uh-uh, he don't look good. Get away from me. See, they don't care nothing about who he is, nothing. Man, they and beat that your is swag, a very... bro. See, they, they really, bro, they I really do beat your swag, man. Listen, okay, but what does that matter, though? Is it? Listen, just like, hold, a, just on, like, hold, just like... hold on, hold on. I want to have this conversation <laughs> because this is this is important, right? Because this is this is a conversation that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. What the hell does swag matter? I think it doesn't matter, bro. Doesn't. Who said it, it matters, bro? No, 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 because no, me, me and S. Rule, we talking because he said they peep your swag. And I'm not saying he's saying that they should. He's just saying that's what they're identified. I'm saying, yeah. like, like Six is saying, for the most part, what the hell does that matter? What does it have to do with, no, with that, him being? Go ahead. No, that, that's an agreement with, 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 uh, with a Six because I'm talking yeah. about swag is not necessarily what you look like. It's the way yeah. you move. It's your energy. It's your confidence. It's 100% of all of that. And that is taken into account when they when they shoot their shot at you or when they allow you to shoot your shot at them. Like they peep all of that. It's also it's also like it exudes masculinity. Yeah, I feel like when 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 they talk about swag, it's like okay, so the difference between somebody who's got money and somebody who got money and they have swag is the guy with swag is more than likely not paying women to be with him. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's more of a, they want to be around him versus a guy like, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a Bezos or something. Y'all seen that? Uh, it was a video, Bezos and Leonardo DiCaprio, right? This is the, the richest man, right? And an uh, actor and the actor getting his attention from his woman. And the reason is because Leo, he got that swag. You know what I'm saying? He got that. Your woman, your woman see other people too. Like y'all gotta stop. <laughs> Look, your woman see other people too, bro. Right. She can be right. Right. Listen, listen, one listen to this. I got a little I'm quick story. Here. Aaron was saying, go, go, I don't want to talk over someone. Go ahead. Let me give you a little quick story about the, the swag thing. So, right, the Americans will tell you that, yo, the Arabs don't let their daughters talk to nobody. You can't go approach no Arab girl in the street, you know, like we do in America, right? So when I got off the plane, I got off the plane, you know, sports coat, red bottoms, you know, dress how we dress here, right? I went to the university and I started cracking on girls like we do here. This is way out of their culture. All the girls said they didn't know how to say like your swag. So they said, you look, you look so educated. You get what I'm saying? It was still the swag that we took from here. So as most Americans go over there trying to look like an Arab. He got a, he got a gel, gel bab on, you know, he dressed like he just got off a camel. Trying to yeah. fit in. The reason I, I like went over is- there, I went over there dressed how we dress: sports right. coat, red bottoms, the watch on, and they all bit into it. And then I chose the one that I'm married to. But that's yeah, so- Luke's, though. But go, go ahead. Oh, oh, I- the, the, re- the, the reason I, I I push back so much on these conversations because 
Look, I, I don't like talking about the so-called black community. I call it the black population, but you know, people want to fight for a community that doesn't. The colored people, yeah. So I get it. you know, but the point that I make is, last time I made a distinction, it was probably was not on this channel, but the distinction about Asian men being relatively small, not necessarily I, giving the appearance that they can protect you, right? So those and those Asian women are not looking at their man like he's a protector. They're not looking at them like that. Yet they're marrying them, and then in the same breath, they're not looking at Asian men like. He got swag. Like I talk to Asian women all the time. Like, yeah, they 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 love her, but it's not because he got swag. They they actually, honestly, in my opinion, they think black guys are way more attractive than Asian guys, even though they can't be with one. Like they just <laughs> like, yeah, black men are so much better looking. Like, and they, they will say, yeah, Asian men are not attract. Like they're not that attractive, and still want to marry them. Like their minds are just different because. Nah, that's their culture though. Their culture will fine, not like. Fine. like for, I'm just, thing, no, hold on, hold on, like hold on. I'm just, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, but I'm just saying, the 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 group that's the most married, <laughs> the th the stuff that we are saying, you know, like you know, women all women all want taller guys, you know, to feel protected out of y'all. They don't care about none of that. And then also this swag, they don't care about none of that. They the most married. You you see how we 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 operate on and. and uh, Aaron, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why. Go ahead, the bro. Right? So. My, uh, I'm gonna give you two examples. One example, and you can all see this. Have you seen 90 Day, 90 Day Fiance? I've seen probably, probably an episode or something. Right, so you seen that dude with no neck? He that little short white dude with no neck, and he went over to uh, he went over to Taiwan. Philippines. Yeah, Philippines, and he went over to holler at that one girl, and then she yes. was like, uh, I, I don't remember that. Yeah. person. She she even had, even though he had money, she still was like, uh, I'm still not messing with this dude, right? And he she tried to do all the colors, but because of the way he looked. She she said it because of the way he looked, right? Same thing. Now I was also talking to um I I used to, I tried to do sales a couple of years ago, like ten mm -hmm. years ago. I was trying to do sales, right? And I was uh one of my the person who was training me was Asian. He was, and I was like, yo, you know, he was like a lot of a lot of uh Korean chicks like black dudes. And I was like, oh cool, you know. So he was like, yo, but she can never bring you home. She can never bring you home because yeah. the culture would not like would not accept you, right? So this is the thing. That's not because they're not, they're not marrying them. They weren't sitting there saying they're they're attracted to men, certain yeah. type of men, but their families will not accept certain type of men either. I agree. They but, that's not, yeah. but that's the point. You're see, making Aaron's see, point, though. Here's, yeah. here's the thing. They, they care so much about their culture and their last name mm -hmm. that if, they, if it will bring shame, especially if you're talking Korean, Korean if it will bring shame to them, they will, and, and let, like, they will sneak. They might get a little, you know, have a little fun at, behind scenes where nobody else can see. But they will not openly disrespect their family. They will not yeah. openly go against their culture the way that you know other people be like, "I'm gonna do what I want." Yeah, I think a second generation. I think second. I think I mean, second because they know. Well, they know. Okay, so that's the thing. A lot of when you say Asians, they can trace their lineage back to before you know BC. Like you know what I'm saying, and it's like real life. If you can, if you have a, a last name with a lineage. And then you get with somebody who has a European last name, but they a person of color. It's like you you trade in, you know what I'm saying, all of this history, all of this knowledge for ignorance, for for a a, a non-descendable uh child. You your child will have a non-descendable name. You get what I'm saying? It's like pretty much like you are cutting the legs from under them. Um and, and they know that. They know, okay, as far as for education wise, that people of color are calling themselves black people thinking that that's their identity, not realizing yeah, you have a whole heritage, you know what I'm saying, that you are ignoring and you are just not really calling ignoring yourself it. something different as if that makes you that. How can you listen that you don't know, that you don't know what, it, what it is? I don't think, so I'll give you an example, right? So my, I, I, this, my, my dad wants me to marry someone from my tribe. If I bring someone that's not, I don't care. If I bring someone that's Nigerian, that is not from my tribe, my dad will feel disappointed. He'll be, he'll feel ashamed that he didn't raise me properly. So I don't think it necessarily has to do with the other tribe. I just think that some people don't care about cough swag, don't care about all that. Best it is useless. I don't care about but being cool is the stupidest. I don't care about being cool swag. So, wait, 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 wait. No that's the only thing black people own. It's cool. Yeah, but yeah, but but Aaron, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, but you gotta understand the difference though. Those other cultures had that had that set up for centuries, 
in their culture, and that's how they are raised, right? Versus here, there we don't really have a we don't really have a direct culture that we're going to be able to pinpoint and say no, but, this is where we that, get, this is where we got our tradition from. That that's so, moot because hold on because look a lot I heard y'all bring it up and y'all you know I was sitting in the background y'all was talking about Mexicans earlier and you might not have been on AL but they was talking about but the one thing that people don't understand oh actually I think what's her name was on uh damn I, I was here remember. I was on there too I cannot remember her oh L L was talking L. about how when she's in Mexico the you know it, it, it she feels free and that uh, but the, but see the thing about that is the cartel is real like I know a lot of Mexicans right it's real and they're there, there's a reason why most people actually struggle, like because like it, it's not as simple as Americans going out there with the amount of money that they have, living in the safest environment they possibly can, and thriving, right? But if you had to literally be born out there, like the opportunities are not the same, and also just the what, the amount of women working out there is not the same. Like w- women actually live a more traditionalized culture out there. The, yeah. men, the, the men take care of the women out there. So yeah. when they come to America, you know what the women do? They work. They women work. are working in Mexico. Huh? Yeah, but it's women not are working same. in Mexico. You I know that. I'm same. telling you, when they come to America, their culture is not, not necessarily the work. It's for the man to work, per se. No, but they you know what happens with, But you know what happens when they come to America? They work multiple jobs. And then right. what, what they do? They send money back home. They send money back, and, and this is this is cultures mm-hmm. from everywhere. They send money back home all the time. All Aaron, the time. Aaron, two two minutes, bro. I'm ready to uh, get out the car real quick. I might have to get off, but uh, let me just say, Aaron, you don't you know you're gonna be live no matter where you go at, whether you go any country, Asia, or whatever. You still gonna be live as Aaron and can get any woman you want, Aaron. It ain't about you said black people don't have nothing but swag. No, all that stuff you got that you don't realize you got when you get around the other men, you gonna realize how important it is to they women. No, no, I get what you're saying, but I'm saying as far as only you know, how, okay, you know how the one thing we talking back and forth on these channels is black people don't like we don't own we should be owning the rap the hip hop industry we should be owning football and basketball. Black people own cool. I'm sorry. Oh, that's I got you. Get, I got you. I thought I thought we were still talking about the relationship thing. I got you. Yeah, that, that's all. Yeah, I, I was the throwing cool, out there. Yeah, but the, but there's an obsession with cool that I noticed, right? Even I didn't know. So when I came here, I thought I could wear forty dollars shoes, and I I would get clowned Not around wear. black people. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's I gotta go, family. I'm gonna <laughs> log back in when I get a haircut. All right, all right, right peace, peace. Uh, I say that all the time. I didn't know that it was a big deal. That I couldn't wear forty dollar. I I couldn't really understand. I couldn't really understand the concept that people would be clowning me about wearing things, right? And I'm like, but it's nice shoes, and I, you know, and people, and I'll get clown, but I realize cool is a Dad, currency here. Do you? Hold on, Dave. But do you, do you have friends outside of black people? I have my Nigerian friends. That okay, I have okay so look, listen, 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 listen. Yeah, I never listen. I got look. I got teased a lot because I couldn't afford nothing growing up. So <laughs> I got teased a lot, right? But listen, I ne- outside of my black friends, they never comment on. Anything negative about what you're wearing ever. Yeah, they they don't agree. care about none of that. That's superficial. They, care. they yeah. do not care. If every day see you have some nice sneakers, like, oh, those sneakers look nice, and then they move the hell on. They do not care. But black people, oh, they will rag dog drag you. If you got on Adidas, what's yeah, that's from slavery though. You cross branding, like all this type of stuff. Like, seriously, that stuff is real with the black community, bro. It, it's really heavy deep. It, it's no, nowhere else I've ever ever had to deal with it ever. It's insane. Yeah, that's it really passed is. down from slavery. I mean, hold on, sir. no, that's false. That's false because the white people up here will they they joining each other on um sneaker. My uh my white coworkers, he was like, yo, I gotta have yeah, he has all the Jordans. He's a program manager too. He has you Jordans. Know where he got that from. He talking about all this, he, yo, and he was like, yo, I can't be wear. He can't. He says he can't walk around with dusty shoes and all that stuff. He, yo, he's he's. Hey, this is a white okay. guy. Hey, you okay, said you were in hey, Boston, right? Hold on, hey, yeah. hey, hold on, yeah. hold on, hey. How you, how you, how you perceiving that is? Is he being teased though, or is he's acknowledging what he likes? Because what I'm saying is, it's a difference from, bro. I like to, I like to be swagged up. You know, I got the latest kicks. I'm the man, woo woo. And then when he go, when he walking around, other white people are looking at him like those shoes are whack, bro. Yo, I, I, I tell you this. If you, <laughs> it's if not you, happening. Hey, I. Honestly, I think it does, but okay. I cool. know it does. 
I definitely think it does. <laughs> I just I just think that we I just think that we because we're in the culture that we do not look outside. We're not looking outside the other culture seeing what they're actually doing, but they're actually there, doing this too. There is not enough. It's black American thing. It's an American thing. There is not enough black people in San Francisco. So I am surrounded by way more other cultures besides black, bro. Way more. And I'm the same thing you, in Boston though. Boston is a, a, everything. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I know. Okay, it's a melting so, hey, pot, but, but, but that's not to say they it didn't come from slavery. I get what you're saying. Like, okay, look, now white look, people are slavery, doing it, so it doesn't look, mean this, that. This, but this slavery talk, I, I don't care about. I don't care about this Makes slavery crap at all. At all. No, I, I already know. I, if, I already I, know. If, I could, if I could get the MIB a tree without with a roots pen and flash y'all and make y'all never remember it happened, I would do it. Don't all give right. me the power. Y'all hey. never know what happened. I yeah. feel like I get what I get what you're saying. More as far excuses, as for more the, excuses, more getting excuses, and trying to make it seem like it, it doesn't have an effect. Um, but if you don't acknowledge the effect, what happens is we keep having the same issues. Like if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. But but a a l, let me ask you real quick, bro. Who's the famous cool white guy? Because I say oh, black people own cool. Who's the cool white guy? But everybody like, yeah, that white guy, he's the coolest. Who, who's the guy? Who's the swagged up white guy? Who's the guy? Who's the guy that played Captain America? My bad. I'm I'm uh I was on like, what's the dude who was who was playing in American Pie? The, the white oh. dude, what's his name? Stifler dude. All the white chicks was liking him. What is that dude who would be playing um oh, who's, who's yeah. playing, oh, who's no. playing in the uh, the, the werewolf? No, thank you. Stop it. Playing the werewolf? Okay, I, got, I, got, I got somebody to say Jack Harlow. Well, no, who's a, who's a, who's a, who's a, uh, who's a, who's the dude who was playing in the, the werewolf movies? I know who you're talking about. That play, yeah. yeah, I know who you're talking about. Team uh, Jackman. No, not who, not, no, the werewolf movies when they turn it, the Team Wolf, whatever that shit. I don't know what the name of that. Michael movie J. Movie. Fox. Hey, no, Grim, no, you said they're cool. The white people, black people determine what's cool. Nobody else. That's the one thing we get to determine is what's cool. That's what we. I do. agree with cool. that. And they don't even do Nobody a good job of it either. We determine that. Sadly. No, it ain't even consistent, but uh, yo, Aaron L, what? And it's twenty twenty two, and I'm probably older than you. What in hell does slavery do to you? Who said that? I don't think it was no, Aaron. That wasn't, it wasn't Aaron. That wasn't Aaron. It wasn't Aaron. Get off my guy. And I bet. Wait, 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 hold on. Now I ain't said that. Now I have a different aspect of racism, and I think there's two different types of racism. No, wait, two different origins of racism. On, but it wasn't me. Slavery. It wasn't me. I didn't mention slavery. I well, mentioned, if, I'm so, about, if I was talking about uh, racism, I was going to talk about I talk about the industrial revolution, but that's you different. You know that's E. E. Gonna try to throw that slavery in any chance to get. He like the so called black people call himself a color crown. Like he, that's E. Come on, that's what he do. I just want to know what slavery did to you. Like last week, what they do? Didn't give, <laughs> like? didn't give Mayor Jordans. I know the white man is. Uh, <laughs> like I said, the white man is sitting in a tower, thirty minutes outside of Las Vegas somewhere, pushing buttons. What did they do? I think he's on, but um, yeah, I don't can think I? Can, can, well, can I? Well, I would, I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna I'm gonna trace it back to slavery starts cool, right? Even though this is not my argument, but I'm gonna say slavery starts cool, but they also got to look at what happened after slavery. You got to got the FHA loans, how we were discriminated from now. We got to look at the uh, unions, how we uh, locked out of unions, and how we were locked, how we were locked out of. Uh, uh, job discrimination, right? You gotta look at you got. Are y'all? Oh, are you gonna talk about the discrimination of Italians as well? Yeah, but see, this is a difference, right? This is a difference it's when you talk about other, Yeah, yeah, no, but you gotta talk about you gotta talk about other racial groups. You gotta talk about difference, right? Because when every racial every racial group when they came in uh, in immigrant waves, they came in, they were discriminated against. But after two generations, they were already they were able to assimilate, right? So That's fine. at first, at That's first you can say you can say no Irish. Come in, but as, right. but as the two generations, they have no Irish accent, so you don't know who's Irish and who's French, and who's right. uh, who's Italian, right? So they can all assimilate, right? That's correct. The difference is you always gonna know that person's black, that you can't just assimilate as easily as if you're black. And what they That's would use correct. as, and what they would use this as, and I've told you this before, they would they would have a when immigrant waves would come over in the in the 1800s and 1900s, they would have whenever they had their strikes and their unions, they would bring black people up. That's why they had the migrations. They would have black people come up. And they would say, you guys can work in the factory as scabs. Then once the union dispute is over, they'll fire the black people. Yep. Say they have no jobs. Then they will get the white people back to their jobs. And then I'll sit there and be like, yo, how come you don't have no jobs? You're lazy. 
you have no jobs, right? But they can't, we can't get jobs because they, uh, they fired us off, right? And so they would do Correct. that, and they would do those in droves. And then after that, you had the FH, you had the FHA loans, where they were, we were all first were in the hood in the slums. They would take those FHA loans and mm-hmm. they first put the white people in the project mm-hmm. for temporary housing until they built the suburbs. Then they'll bring those white people from the suburbs uh, from the project to the suburbs. That's when they had their homes, right? They would not allow black people to come into those homes uh, uh, for FHA loans. So we couldn't build wealth like that. They were be able to build wealth off of the welfare and the um and the uh, FHA pr- program. By the time so we got access to the program okay. in the seventies and eighties, hold on, hey, we hold locked on, out hey. of that. Hold on, hold on, hey, let's, yeah, let's sure. See. Let me get some of this too, Aaron. But go hold ahead. On. Yeah, I, I want to fire back heavy, but I want to. I want to fire, get, fire back. Uh, look, I'm gonna rock with you. Give me a sec. I want to get Mimsy, Mimsy Lambs in here. If you wanted to add to something, or are you just sitting back um, listening? Um, I came in because of the topic that it was saying, you know, who's involved in your relationship. And mm-hmm. I, this conversation is a left field for me. So I'm going to hang back and enjoy my morning coffee with y'all. I appreciate you guys coming up. I actually just subbed. So I appreciate you guys. Thank Happy Sabbath. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? I'm just going to hang back right here and drink my nice big fat cup of coffee while I listen in. Because Aaron, did, I, you run off, did you run off my guest? Me? If I did, I'm sorry. Not, not, not that, a, not that oh, Aaron, Aaron L. L. Nah, I'm rough, nobody. We're gonna check hey, our yo, Aaron. Ask me a question. Let's, hey, you I gave a quick synopsis. Get some of this too. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to fire in, bro. Come on, <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> because because oh, I've been dusted off a few, a few people on this same topic. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Uh, the reason I let you know history. Is it Mimsy? That's me. How you doing? I'm good. Hey. Good morning. Okay, you can hang out, time. stick around. You know, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to. If you want to add into the conversation, that'd be dope. See, that's but, the same um, problem with animal head. Don't, 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 don't dip off if you don't have to. <laughs> I'm just hanging out. I figured this was a wonderful conversation um, for me to hop in. Not necessarily the slavery one. I look at it a little bit differently than you guys, but I do have no, kids not running you around in my morning. There's, routine, there's more of us you know? that don't always. <laughs> we don't all look at it the exact same. I can tell you that. So just hang around for a minute. Yeah, but look, look let me jump back in here with, with Al. So, like everything you said is all correct. I won't fight none of that stuff, but let, let's 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 try to move forward hypothetically and go to modern times. Now, when you talk about yep. building, you know, generational wealth, most people that know actual generational wealth does not exist. There's very few families that has actually sustained generational wealth. Most wealth is gone into second generation. Most people know that, right? So the few families that has been able to sustain it are very, very tiny, very, very tiny, small percent of people that actually got to retain the, 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 their, their generational wealth. So let's move past that, right, and say this. How many of those non-lazy so-called Black people that you know that are not working right now when there are jobs available everywhere? Everybody knows work. working. The Everybody knows working. Let them work, Aaron. The huh? man won't let him do it. Uh, Everybody I know is working. <laughs> now, nah, people, hey, look. I think so wait, wait, now, so this is different. So this is a different though. Wait, wait, Aaron, no, you got to understand this. So this is a different though, right? Who, uh, if you have a 100 meter race. Jobs, but, wait, 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 hold on. Let me, let, me, let me respond. There's, there's a difference though. If you're running a 100 meter race, mm-hmm. right? Me and you run a 100 meter race, but you get a, a 60 meter head start. Mm-hmm. You, like, yes, I'm going to run. I'm going to finish my 100 meter. But you can't you can't be like yo how come you can't be like yo how come Aaron O beat me he got to have had sixty million meters. No, 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 no. How, wait, 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 wait. Then how come the eighty percent of millionaires are new millionaires? Eighty percent millionaires are new millionaires because you got to understand this though. If somebody gave you if you have a house already, that's that contributes to your millionaire status, correct? True. Right. Okay. So if I got that house, if I got that house at thirteen thousand dollars in nineteen in nineteen fifty. And I said, I gotta buy into the house. I gotta get, I gotta, I gotta save up, and I gotta save up for the down payment to save it for three hundred thousand dollars. That's a totally different ball game. Am I correct? And on top of that, we just, we just witnessed that Bank of America and Wells Fargo just settled a lawsuit two years ago for discriminating against black people and buying. Wait, 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 wait. You're not answering. Out. You're not answering a question. We're not gonna go all over the place. We're gonna keep it one place. No, we're talking about wealth. We're talking about wealth. Eighty percent of millionaires are new millionaires. I yes, and know part of it is because their home, their home value is rising too. Are you missing what I'm saying, bro? Okay. The people that generate the most wealth are the ones that didn't have it. 
Why is that true? If we're so, if you're so focused on head starts, then why is it that the majority of the people that are successful are the ones that get it out of the mud? Where was this? All right, let's start. Let's start with. Let's start it. Okay. Where were their school systems? Where is who? What school, system, what school systems they come from? They come from everywhere. I I went to school in Detroit. Yeah, but just you. So like, so if you if you if you're, you're, people you're, that become how many, millionaires how many, are how people, people like me and not how many people, 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 wait, wait, how many people from your neighborhood in Detroit. Are. How many people in your neighborhood from Detroit are millionaires? It's a few I know personally. But uh, uh, how many? Do you think it's less likely for them if you guys were living in the suburbs and you had better schools? Do you think you'd be more likely to be um a millionaire or less likely to be a millionaire? Listen, you're missing it. You 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 arguing assumptions. I'm arguing facts. I'm talking about facts too. Millionaires are new millionaires, meaning that the ones that become successful overwhelmingly are people that get it out the mud. They're new. They didn't have a head start. It's not anybody that gave it down to them. In most instances, what happens is people that get it, people that already have it, when they pass it down to their kids, they fumble it. It's the reason why Warren Buffett said that he's not giving the majority of his wealth to his kids. Bill Gates, he's not giving any of his wealth to his kids. None of them are. It's a reason for that. Why do you think that 80% of millionaires today more than eighty percent are new millionaires because they came from a different. They came from different environments. And most of those and, and the majority, the majority of wealth creation, creation in this country is by immigrants. Facts. And guess what? Guess what? When those wait, 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 wait. I'm not done. A lot of them come I'm over. Not done. I'm not done. I listened to y'all talk for a long time. The majority of the wealth creation in this country, the people that even pay the most tuition, they are immigrants. They do not have a head start. They no, start. The majority of them come already behind. Behind. Why you want to overtalk me? Why you won't let okay. me make my point? Cool. Make your point. They start from way behind and they pass people up every single day. The reason why people are so mad, this whole group, ADOS, American descendants of slaves, right? And they get so mad at immigrants. They even get mad at other people that may look like them that's an immigrant. Nigerians, Nigerians have a as a matter of fact, let's put it like this. The, the average household income, the people that are at the top, and this is a fact, are not even white people. As yeah. a matter of fact, white people are the majority Indeed. of those that are on welfare. Yep. Overwhelmingly, they are the ones that are on welfare. The, yep. the, the households, by and large, that generate the most revenue and they have the greatest household income, according to our census, is Asian and Indian households which mm -hmm. make up a minority of the U United States population. Those that generate the most gross, the met, uh, th those that generate the most, we most wealth creation on a regular basis since the last 50 to 60 to 70 years have been immigrants. If it's all about getting a head start, then why are people that are born here so far behind, even if they white? They still, they still right. have a head start because a lot of those, a lot of those immigrants come over already, already wealthy. No, stop no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Aaron, can I say something? I don't like what Especially you Nigerians. Especially yeah, Nigerians. Especially Nigerians. I don't know broke Nigerians who came over here. Man, what? I don't know broke Nigerians How do you afford here? the ticket? Can, can, say, hold on. Can I say something, though? Because go, go that's ahead. Hold on, hold on. Wait, Daler, Daler. I had yeah. a dude on my um on my channel. I don't... A lot of y'all knew, right? And it's, it was on the Millionaire Morning Show. Aaron, you was around. His name was yep. Chris. He's an yep. anesthesiologist. He gave an example of what the majority of immigrants go through that, that wind up successful here. And he wound up becoming, and he's a software engineer too. And he pours back into his community. The dude came over literally drinking water with oil in it. He didn't have any parents. He had no support system. He had nothing. He literally worked his way into being an anesthesiologist and he's not even 40. The dude is rich as ever. I still keep in touch with him. He says he, he knows so many people that's wealthy today that went through a similar story as him. It's not a head start that makes you that makes you rich. It's getting rid of a victim mentality and leaning on something in order to try to justify your existence that keeps you poor. But you can have two the things to be true at the same time, right? Me, man, you don't understand. The two things that can be true at the same time, right? Twenty six stop me from being from being successful. Can, Anton, can two things can be true at the same time, right? Go ahead, because you said 22. things about immigrant. I'm one right here, and I want to tell you that what you're saying is totally wrong. If you know how hard it is to get a green card. You will wake up every day thanking God that you were born a citizen. I, when you say, when people say these things, 
it blows my mind as to how ignorant people are about the struggle it is to make it in America. First of all, you don't have a green card, so you can't really work a real job. You have to work on the table. Now, the little money you have, you pay someone to get married to the person to get a green card to be able to work legally. Yeah. That is like 40 steps behind you that you're born a citizen. You have a blue passport. You can work for the federal government. Like, do you know how hard it was for me to get a green card? I used to envy people that could just go and apply for a job. So when you say someone has a head start and you don't have papers to work, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard on YouTube. Hey, yo, say, yo, I know hey, a lot Aaron. of wealthy people who come over here who are, who are, who are immigrants from Nigeria. Aaron, I got some more facts sense. for you. you no, know, the like. math doesn't make sense. There are, no, there are very few wealth. I know that you know them, but there are very few wealthy people in Nigeria. Why, why are they coming to America? Yo, Aaron, check. If you look at black people, their average household income is something else they don't say. Average household income, we're actually at the bottom, lower than Hispanics, probably because their marriage rate. But if you look at what groups of black people average the most income, there's Thank Jamaicans, you. there's uh, from Trinidad, they're yeah. from Nigeria. Nigeria's from a Haiti. Yeah, it's not even a question about it. Their it's average good. income is like $20,000 over with, excuse me, they're in the 60s. But still, the entire black household is in the 40s. Mm -hmm. So they're actually making us look better. And they didn't, they weren't even born here. So you also so got to understand this, though. What, what culture are they coming from? Did? Aaron. What did this man do? Aaron. Who? Bill? Yes. This is this old lady. Yep. Hey, I, I just got to step in on this one. I, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to interrupt the man speaking. You know, I go sit ahead. back in the cut and tell you all speak. I try not to get in the way. No, My ahead. grandmother was the youngest of 14. My grandmother carried a green card until the day she died. My grandmother was the youngest of 14 from Quebec, Canada. And the reason they have so many children is because of the infant mortality. They also were migrant farmers. So this whole victim Olympics needs to just stop. I am so sick and tired of hearing about it because I have got less time in this country than most of, of the people that I hear up here going on about slavery. I'm not, it, it's he, frustrating to me. It's very frustrating to me because I get looked at like, oh, who's this little white lady trying to tell us what we went through? Well, my grandmother, I'm sure, could tell some horrific stories too. So she was displaced. Half her family was born in Quebec and half was born in Canada, or, uh, uh, Connecticut. They spoke French in the house. You didn't leave the house and speak French out in public. You spoke English. There were traditions. Her, some of her siblings were married before she was even born. Well, so the, the victim Olympics just have to stop. That's just let, what let, let, here, here, right. no, let me, let me, let me establish ahead, a cadence ahead. here. Go ahead, bro. What, what language are you talking Hold on, hold on, E. Before the, English. E, stop. The, the cadence that we're going to have here is that this ain't the platform where we silence people. The only time that we ever silence somebody or or we we don't even silence them, we just ask them, yo, yo, we gonna, we're not going to keep going there, is if it's toxic, right? If somebody is coming in with bad intentions, that's when we start having a different conversation. I want everybody. I want to hear thoughts from everybody because that's the way in which I learn. I don't want to live in an echo chamber. I want to be around people that's white, black, Hispanic, Asian, African, whatever it is. Yeah. I want to be around people that they always try to sorry, Tom. They always try overwhelmingly. To say I want to hear what everybody think. I don't want to be in a place where everybody is just agreeing with me. And that's the way in which I learn. That's the way in which I grow. Every on this platform. Everybody got a voice. If, if you want to say something right or wrong, you can say what you want to say and contribute to You ain't got to tiptoe around nothing over here. I don't want, I ain't, I ain't living in that space. That ain't what we do. Yeah, we good. We got you, bro. Yeah, um, good. So AL, I got you. Aaron L. Yeah, I call him AL because y'all, look, it's only, y'all going to stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> moving, forward, <laughs> moving forward amicably. No, no, we ain't got to move forward. We can stay right here. I, I want to <laughs> know, hey, do you, do you think most black people are, are poor? Who are black people? E, don't start with me. He about to start playing semantics. He about to start playing semantics. That's what they do. That's the same thing K do. 
No, don't worry about it. Wait, wait. Is that the question again? I'm sorry. I was trying to, I was talking about something. I, I repeat it. I repeat it. Do you think most black people are poor? Poor? No. Middle class? Yes. Okay. But that so, could, that's, that's similar. So let's yeah. break that, let's break that down, right? Because I absolutely think most black people are poor, right? Uh, now, the, the distinction is poverty and poor, because there's a distinction there, right? Uh, so when you say middle class, right? What I think you mean is they make middle class income, but Correct. they don't have any actual wealth. So to me, if you because I, I judge net worth, if you don't have no money to your net worth, no matter how much middle class income you make, you are poor. You're just not impoverished. So cool. I'm ask you again, based upon the information I just stated, do you think most black people are poor? Yes, and I think most Americans are poor. Exactly. So when we have these conversations, right, about black people are, the black people that are, let's say, in poverty for the most part, we could argue that they're lazy. They should just be poor like the rest of people. Couldn't we argue that? Man, Aaron, you've made this point you made. I've been trying to figure out how to say that. Oh, my no, God. I can it's going to talk about it. I put the words together. Yeah, I do. That's people cool. I can agree with you on that. Narratives listen, about slavery I know both. Listen, I'm gonna say this right now. I know both sides of the argument. I, I I agree with both sides of the argument because I think two things can be true at the same time. So, Aaron, let me ask you a question, Aaron. Oh, so you're saying that let's use numbers. Let's say you make less than thirty thousand a year, right? You're saying okay, you might not, you don't think they might be able to make two hundred thousand, but you're saying that at least they can increase their their income from thirty to fifty five thousand. There's the, 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 there's that possibility to do that. All, all I care about, because see, the, the, the one problem that most people have is that everybody doesn't have to have to try to live the same lifestyle, right? Now, when Anton's talking, like you, 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 you have the ability to get everything. Everything is in which he's right. But that doesn't mean you want to. I agree with wanting the option. But I don't care if you make 150. I'm in San Francisco, right? So some people making $200,000 a year, right? They don't, they don't have the outcome of somebody that, that's making $200,000 a year should be having. They still struggle in a lot of ways, right? And then somebody making $60,000 a year are not struggling, yeah. which is Correct. really interesting, right? Because they created an environment in which that they know how to operate and still actually do decent for themselves. Now, they may not be a millionaire per se, but they're doing just as well as somebody making higher income because yeah, they're smart I get, I get money. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, I, what I'm saying is most of the time we don't realize when we have these conversations is that when we talk about, you know, the black community, which I can't stand, we always want to help people. The only people that people want to help is people in need. They don't want to help people that's already doing decent to push them up higher. They want to help people in need. Nobody care. Like, if you're not homeless, I'm not giving you a dollar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you better look homeless. That's the only way you're getting a dollar out of me. That, that's how people operate. So what I'm saying is most people are poor. Most people are literally are fighting for, fighting for the, fighting to stay above poor, yeah. So they don't fall into being impoverished. But most people are poor, and they think just because they make an income that they have no idea what they're doing with it, and they never ever learn that that, that they're doing something. No, you just working. You just working. You're not. And you're not. And you're not what, what's that? Who knows what the average retirement account actually has in the, the average retirement? Like sixty thousand. Sixty-six thousand dollars. That's a bad number. It's a whole. It, it's a horrible number, and I see it all the time, right? Because I I deal with the public, and I'm telling you now, the only thing I tell you, young people, is don't be old and broke. That's the one thing I want you to not do. Don't be old and broke. You can be young, broke, middle aged, broke, but old and broke. No, you do not want that life, buddy. Because you got to think about it. You, you, most, most older people don't go along with techno technological advances, right? What that means is they're usually behind, right? So they don't, they, they don't actually learn. So, you know, the argument I get from a lot of older clients is they don't want to adapt to like mobile technology, internet technology. They don't want to adapt to learning how to use those systems, right? So they get ran over. They get, they're the most taken advantage of, right? Because they don't have adaptability, right? And then they don't have no money to compensate for that lack of adaptability. So if you don't have no paper, and you don't know how to adapt to modern times, they're the ones that get screwed the most. And so I highly reckon 
That 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 you have some money in that retirement when it comes to retirement. You don't think it's about financial literacy though? So so you, you don't think it's about environment? Did you grow up in? Hey, can I no, chime because, in real quick, oh, bro? Man. If y'all don't mind. Oh no, oh, for the majority. For the majority. I, hold on, did I trick you, big big bro? Nah. Man, nah. we can change okay. our environment. No, nah, I'm oh, yeah, but, not gonna stop it. The white well, man. However, your however, your the right. environment also affects the environment also affects things. Like for example, we talk about immigrants, right? Immigrants come over with a certain culture they have from back home. So we talk about culture they have there? values. We don't have we don't have do we have, who made it? Where's our culture from? Black we don't people. have a culture. It's dead, gone. Community gone. Dead. Right. Yeah, have okay, so wait, wait, so wait, 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 what are we basing on? What are we basing? What are we, what are we doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a such thing as called of a, a cultural enclave, right? Which means it's a culture within a culture, right? Meaning that it could be a whole black community here and four Japanese people. And our culture is the dominant culture, but because they have their culture inside their subculture, we don't affect them. So just because you grow up in a certain environment doesn't mean you can't, you cannot block out that environment. Yeah, you may be there, you may see what's going on, but there are people that can block it out. But you're already, if you, but if you're already colored, if you already have your, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if your system's already colored, the, your, the greater system might not affect you. But however, if you have a blank slate, if you're just blank, you're you're affected by whatever you're, you're affected. By, you're, you're more likely to be affected by uh, colored by whatever is around you. I'll answer that for you, Q, in a minute. Uh, right? We're free in America. We can pick whatever uh, country we want. Can I can I say something? I do want to uh, now. Ask. Go ahead. We're talking uh, about now. No, in no, eighty-five, no, no. you could do so. Yeah, but right. you don't just you if, do you so. cut, if you get cut, if you get cut, if someone stabs you tomorrow, it's, you're not gonna heal tomorrow. You're gonna we take time. Plant. It's in your uh, mind. Yes, we were. Fifteen twenty-four. You all avatars. Show me the wound. Can I, can I answer the question that um, Jay? Um, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Because my, my big bro can't want to jump in, and I ain't forgot oh, about him. Go yeah, y'all, y'all go ahead and get go ahead and go get some. Hey, good morning, everybody, man. Yep. So, okay. Man, when are we gonna stop complaining about the past, bro? It's not the yeah, past. Bro. It's current. It's current. Yeah, bro. No, no, no. This is what this is what I'm saying. We spend more time complaining than we do creating a solution or working towards a solution. Okay. That's all I'm saying, bro. Like you I think there's two things. I agree with you. But I think there's two things could be the same at the same time. But but it's wasted, it's wasted motion, bro. You're wasting energy. energy. You're wasting energy focusing on slavery and stuff that happened. Okay, we all acknowledge that. We know the history. We know about redlining and all that. Trust me, Anton know <laughs> <laughs> we we uh me and Anton went back and forth on this same topic. You know what I'm saying? And it's the one of the arguments arguments that he made was it's libraries in every hood. <laughs> so if you if look, if you want, if you, How you want, gonna read a book that's been burned. Yeah, I'm not he so I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that with you, bro. So <laughs> what I'm saying is if you, I, I'm not gonna lie, but if, I, my had, textbook. if you had exposure, right? Or if you want to be something, if you ask questions. If you're curious, you can be anything that you want to be. But you have to be willing to do the work. And the truth be told, a lot of people talk all of that crap saying, oh, we don't have opportunity. We can't do X, Y, and Z. No, you lazy. You don't want to do the work. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there, there are not people struggling and there are not right. anomalies and Hell things yeah. that are going on like it's that. I, I acknowledge that. But what I'm saying is if you put the work in, I'm from the hood, bro. I'm telling you. If you put the work in, you can be whatever you want to be. But if we keep feeding children these narratives, then they will think that they can't be anything better than what you're talking about. They'll think that there's a, a big conglomerate of people that are against them that want them to lose and not be successful. You're killing their self-esteem with these conversations, bro. Facts. Well, actually, for me, that boosted my self-esteem. That's why I am where I am. But I that, I'm not. But, but if you think about what you're saying... How many people have enough esteem to think that the government is against them, that there are things, you know, not working out in their favor and still be able to succeed? We are not the against majority. All odds. We're, we're not the majority, bro. All okay, I'm saying okay, is yeah, how much time has to be. All I'm saying is how much time has to be spent on complaining and whining as a grown ass man. You're a grown man, bro. At the end of the day, it's our job to protect and provide for our families. Period. It's so, not gonna always be. It's not gonna always be perfect. So, so spending right. time complaining about it, you 
you letting loose a bunch of energy you could be putting forth in actually thinking about a solution to the problem. So who's vote well, number one? Who number one? I wasn't complaining. Number one, there's no complaining. I know the I just know the history, so I'm going. We, so I'm going history. history. We know the history, so, bro. There's a reason it's called history. But history is but you don't recover from history just the next day. It takes then time. Come up, the the rest history of is written by the victors. The people who won is the ones who get to tell their story. Uh, I'm not yeah, gonna say that. I'm we just know, we know all the talking points. We know all them talk about I'm just saying it takes time to Here's the bigger point, right? Anybody can open a business. Hey, Aaron, any- Aaron, Aaron. Aaron, send me a dollar on Cash App. Let me see if this is working. But yeah, I mean, I get what you're Go saying. Ahead, like, yeah. but just- you can definitely do more now, you know what I'm saying, than you ever could before. And that alone should make you, you know, want to do more, right? How is it that we have such a self-deletion rate with our people, though? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, Who was our people? Certain sadness our, our people for me. Got. Yeah, it's working. Oh, yeah. And just yeah, saying that. white people. I believe no, white was, people have a high rate of the cash app. The cash app and the link is working, bro. So I don't know what's wrong with y'all stuff. It's, it's probably it on y'all. Old, how how long was it that people were sitting still? And this is this is you you saying that it's not controlled. There's no. Hey hey E. <laughs> hey E, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, yo. Um, can you tell me what what's preventing you from getting rich? I mean, you don't. Me myself. Yeah, you personally. No, nah, that's what I'm telling you to answer. That's a white man. Nah, not no white man, not nobody. Me, myself. Ooh, what are we talking about? So you're the only you're the only barrier to being rich yourself is the man in the mirror. That's it. So why are we still having conversations about things that's irrelevant to what our current circumstances are? Mm-hmm. What if you find out? I didn't think the conversation was about individual. I thought the conversation was about the community as a whole. Right. The only way you can, the only way that you can fix the community as a whole is to fix yourself. One by I one. I agree. I agree. So why are we talking about the community as a whole instead of talking about our own issues that, and getting the beam out of our own eye as an individual? Uh, but I think two things can be two at the same time. So I agree with you. But I agree with you though. Let me say this, right? But this- we spent no, 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 no. We spend the majority of our time. My girl, sure no. Hey, let me show y'all this. Well. Sure now we got we got merch coming on the website, so that's coming soon. We spend the majority of our time complaining about stuff that has nothing to do with our current circumstances. I don't understand that. I was asked a question, so I'm explaining. So I was explaining it. If I wasn't asked a question, I wouldn't, Mimsy, I wouldn't you, be talking about it. Are you trying to say something? You keep putting I'm just, yeah, I'm just, you know, every now and again I have oh, something go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to add, but I don't want to be rude and I have three children going Baby crazy. Girl, you go can go in. I was one. just uh, um I was just gonna ask. Um, I don't know if this is going to be rude or not, but how often do you find yourselves just saying thank you for what you have? Because the yeah. Almighty is great and He gives you everything that you need. Not so yeah, much I don't need to be rich. Want. You know, money is the root of all evil. And if we're just going to go around nope, spending our life wrong. worshiping money, it's not money. It's you not, know? I, I, I want to assert Stop, hold on, e, hold on, e. standards for our people, that. not just Stop, hold on, e. hold on, e. Well, first, before you have standards for your people, you got to have standards for yourself. That's yeah, a. and I do. But, but money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money oh, that's the, the root of, of all money. evil. <laughs> money the- is not evil at all. Not even a little bit. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's the lack of money. No. That's no. Love of money is love the of money. all evil. I'm telling it's you, poverty. Love of money. That's the false that worship. Poverty, that's bro. false idolizing. The love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money itself. We all need money, right? And just because some of us have less than others, don't mean that we then demonize it in order to be able to justify our lot in life. No, they they demonize it. I grew up all I grew up all around it. Why don't I remember I remember my mom very distinctly. Why don't the rich people just pay the taxes? They got all the money. It affected my mindset. I had to unlearn that. So no, no, no. They 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 definitely have a disdain. Even though they want to be rich, they have a disdain towards rich people. That is such an idiotic way of thinking. But uh, it, it's fine. Right. Listen, listen, if you don't want to be rich, that's fine. You ain't gotta be I'm rich. I'm gonna just tell you, you know, you know what the devil is? Poverty. Being for broke the, is the, the devil. Part, I agree. For the most being, part, I listen, agree. if you want to talk about evil, evil is being broke. That ain't nothing but the devil. 
be running rampant and 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 poverty. Real I disagree. Talk. Okay, well, tell me why you disagree. I want to hear your, your sentiment. Um, because being broke versus poverty, right? Being broke is you ain't got no money in your pocket. You can't really go out. You can't really buy stuff. Yes, it is. But um, sorry, kids. Um, but in my personal experience, right? So this is my own opinion. We are not rich. We live in the sticks. We don't have anything fancy. You know, it's really just my husband, myself, our three kids, and we live in the woods in a cabin, you know. So we try, you know, we try to live a very simple, minimalistic life because we just don't got it like that. But that's you know? not poverty. That's but that's oh, well, we, we said being broke. But I don't consider what you just described to me as broke. Yeah. Well, being you being said we broke. live a simple life. Well, we you didn't say a- you was broke. Well, I said, no, I did. I said, if we are, we don't have money like that. Like, we literally don't have money. You know what I'm saying? So we have <laughs> you to got that good internet best. connection right there. The what? You got that good internet connection in the in the sticks. We do. Well, good and see, good internet is is. I think that depends on where you come from because <laughs> I we don't have the best internet, and we just got good enough internet to where. We could have more than one people doing a live stream. You know what I'm saying? That's like, good this, internet. This is where we are now. That sounds like good internet 1. to me. 1.5 uh, megs, and I don't. I'm not tech savvy. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. Uh, so you got three kids, right? You chose to have three kids. This is what you said, right? Yeah. Two, yeah. Yes, we we did not we did not oppose the Almighty's will. In in having children, my point is is that everything that you do is an informed decision. Right. You, we don't we don't just make wills, you know, of our own. So, I mean, let me tell you what poverty is. Living in a car. Oh, Aaron, hold on, hold on, bro. Just give me one second. Living in a car. You got a car. <laughs> hold on, Let's hold on. go. With a busted wait, window. Wait, wait, wait. So how do? Because I don't want to assume. So I just want to ask a couple questions. What do you mean by we don't oppose the will of the Almighty? What does that mean? Okay. Um. When all right. So topic of chur- of children, right? Topic of children. I have my husband, right? And we have our relations together, and we don't use protection. Um. Knowing full well that the Almighty's will is strong. Right. So whether we what want is that? Them, what does that mean? The Almighty. What does that strong? mean? That means, for example, um, if if we want to use a condom because we're trying to do what we want to do, but we don't want to have the kill the children that come with it. What if the Almighty breaks that condom? Mm. Okay. No, what that's if I'm not taking, what it means. Oh yes. Well, in yes, I think it does, that's a lack of lubrication. No, it's just like that's not you know what it what means. Wait, wait, wait. You said that you 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 choose not to use protection. Yes, we absolutely choose not to oppose the will, will of the Almighty. That's no. your will. No, because see, my husband and I are still having relations. You and, listen, and listen. You laying down and having relations is your will. I am, I agree with you. I so agree with you. So what does that have you? to do with the Almighty? Because the consequences, everything comes with consequences. I need a moment. I just need one moment. Okay, so in all reality, right, we have people using protection we have women using um secondary plans i don't know if i don't know about hot hot words on youtube i don't know if you can understand what i'm saying secondary plans is a good term we got you right okay um we have we have you know facilities that help rid of you know the beauty and the gifts that the almighty gives us when we make these decisions Right. We don't do that. If my husband and I do not want to have children, we just don't have relations because that is a possibility. This is my husband. And this is the one and only man. I'm not disputing any of that. But all I'm saying is it doesn't absolve you. I don't I don't see where the almighty's will is playing a role in any of this narrative that you're sharing yet. Okay, so. I suppose, long story short, I'm working on using less words. Long story short, we accept the Almighty's decision when we are having relations. 
if he wants that? to give us if he wants to give us the the children that come with this you know what i'm saying so you say we chose to have kids yes we did because we accepted the consequences of having relations you know what i'm saying we don't promote I don't, just I don't, communicating i don't, don't understand oh i don't understand i don't okay. i don't i see again i don't see where the almighty is playing a role in any of the decisions that you are making especially when it's informed you understand the consequences that come along with it okay so let's say for example you wind up having 10 kids right you wind up having 10 kids i don't know if you can hear me because i know you i can i can okay. i just i need glasses to see my kids let's, let's say for example you wind up having 10 kids are you gonna still keep doing things the exact same way you're doing it in order to have 10 kids Absolutely. In order to have an eleventh, absolutely. If this is the will going. of the all, if this is the will of the Almighty to bless us with the fruits, well, what if then you can't absolutely. take care of them though? Hypothetically, uh, the Almighty provides, and we don't do things that we feel that He cannot. Are you Are you in America? With. I am in America. I'm in Missouri. That means that Anton Daniels from AntonDaniels.com provides because then it's my tax dollars that got to take care of your children. No, we're living in the sticks and we're homesteading and we're doing a lot of things here on our own. You know what so I'm you saying? You take no government assistance. You don't you don't get into any of that whatsoever. You don't have anything. We have we have our own business, you know, that we have. And this is how we get our income. And it's not very much income, and we don't really have very many bills. You know what well, I'm my, saying? My, you, you miss, you're missing a point. You only got three. If you get to 10 and you can't take care of 10, but then you still having kids and you get to 11 and then you get to 12 and then you get to 13 and you can't take care of them, you can't provide for them, then what? If you, if you myself, anybody is in a situation where they cannot care for the children and further children you should stop having relations but you understand you missed, that's just that's just a question. logical decision you're missing the question and you prove my point at the same time because now you're saying make an informed decision but then when i ask you as it relates to your situation see you just switched it you said if you're in a situation a b and c but when i ask in and i pertain to you you bring it back and you say well the almighty will provide no worries Right. But I also understand consequences. And so I wouldn't just be popping out kids left and right if I could not feed them. If I could, if I had to go and be like, yo, Anton Daniels dot com, I need your help here because I can't feed my 13 children. Something's wrong. You know what I I'm agree. saying? The only thing no, that we, I the only thing that I'm trying to understand is where does the Almighty's will come into you? Come into you making an informed decision, and then having to live with the consequences. What does that have to do with anything? It, it has to do with everything. Literally everything in life that you do, you have to. I understand. I understand. Thank you. Everything that we do in life, specifically my husband and I, is about the Almighty. You know what I'm saying? So that's, even the that, temptations, listen, even ready. even the punishments that we have to receive because we messed up along the way. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I'm not personally trying to have 11 churns that what do you, I can't What do you believe of. in? Like, what, what do you study? Yeah. Oh, what do I study? I study the Almighty. I don't have a religious denomination. I, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Jew. I just, I, I read my book. I read my book. What book. I go deeper into the scripture. Oh, I don't God. take it for face value. No, no, no. I'm saying, what book do you read? Oh, I've got my KJV. KJV oh, Holy King, Bible. King James Version of the Bible. Okay. Cool. Well, you do know that King James Version of the Bible that it says that the children are the ones that pay for the for the for the issues that the parents. A hundred percent. Okay. All right. That's cool. We with it. All right. So listen, I. I I rock with that. Listen, she stand on her square. She explained her stance. We can continue with the conversation. I'm not trying to stop the movement. This is what we do. <laughs> this is what we do. I love it. I have a question to ask real quick. In everything that I just said, which I know was a lot of words, did I say any caca words, any profanity? Because 
My husband's trying to tax my not my husband. My son's trying to tax me a candy from the candy jar. Nah, you you uh nah, you, you stay pretty normal. Okay. No. They're telling me I didn't say a caca word, Sal. Sorry. Thank you guys. She he's said I stand in the sticks. He's trying he's trying to hustle me for, for the candy jar. I was just asking. I appreciate it. I I was just saying that poverty, man. Listen, I lived we were living in a we were living when I was little, we was living in a car with a bag of nacho chips we were eating off for four, for a whole month for food during the summertime. So and a, and a busted hole and then the car broke down, so we couldn't even repair it. You just make Anton's point. You just make Anton's point. No, I know. I, I agree with Anton, but I also agree with, I think two things to be two at the same time. You know what I don't give a damn about? That history. History Most is history. Most people don't give a damn about history, to be honest but, with you. I mean, well, we I think a lot of it's current. Well, it's a lot of it's current. When it's yeah, convenient, they do. Hey, yeah, thank you for supporting the platform, sending cash out, everything. We appreciate y'all. But I think some of us, I think a lot of it's current too, though. I wind up sending out. Are you currently broke? Today, but shout out to everybody that's supporting the platform. Are you doing okay? Who, me personally, yes, but like, if you're doing okay, you're talking about current. If you that, that voids your point, no, because it's not just about me. Then we wonder about why they're doing better. Oh, I don't know why they're they doing better. Yeah, don't you so, know like, so I, I, it's disingenuous. Wait, hold on, it's disingenuous to say something's happening and then they say, Well, I'm not, it's not happening to me anymore, so I guess it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, so, so it doesn't happen. Matter. Yeah. It, it, that's that's, that's in the past, yo. Don't worry about it. What I'm saying is, you went from the car. To making good money, why yeah, are we I'm talking sure. about people who are choosing not to do so, and then blaming the because white Because we're, 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 we're designed. Listen, That's listen, we're designed. Right. I'm gonna tell exactly. you. Why. I'm just telling you what happens. Let me tell you what's happening. We're Did the white man come throw you in that car? When you do well, feel bad for the people <laughs> that aren't doing. White man ain't gotta do that. The car right like, into the state. So when I, when I, all right, let's 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 look at this. Let's, let's look at a a, a, a family. Who is making decent money, right? They try to get a um a home loan, right? And then Bank of America says, you know what? Instead of you getting the regular uh rate that sh- that you qualify for, a prime rate that you qualify for, we're gonna give you a subprime rate. And then all of a sudden, negotiate, when, you negotiate your rate. You negotiate, no, no, no. You, you but, but you mean, let's say you just don't. Let's say you know this is nineteen. This is nineteen ninety nine. You don't really know any 19, better. No, we're not going back to nineteen. Yeah, what's your plan for that though? We got I want to know the issues that. Let's say it's two thousand. This is two thousand nineteen. Right, because okay. they just got sued for 2019. Mm-hmm. You know, they give you a subprime. They give you a, a subprime loan, right? Mm-hmm. You don't really they know too much about it. That's they your ignorance. They said you can't get any better. You go to Wells Fargo, they said the same thing. No, 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 no. You fax that contract over. You still have to make a decision to accept it. So you just don't have a house. Yeah. If you don't like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You, I can okay, do the listen, math. Listen, that's on, just hold not on, making hold sense. On, hold on, hold it's on. Just, no, that's, this is why. This is exactly why Bank of America and Wells Fargo got sued. It does. It does. It, listen. Just if, know, if a, man. Hold on, hold know. on. If a home that you run the numbers for and you say is you think is worth a million dollars, and somebody come to you and say, "Well, I want three million for it," you have to make a decision of whether you want to pay three million, or you're gonna stick to your guns and say, "No, based upon my education, I'm not paying more than a million. Now, if you go to a bank <laughs> and they offer you Hey, what you so called subprime loan, whatever the case is, if that's the case, and you say, Yeah, sure, I accept. Hey, you speaking of it. which, it was a family that got uh, a they white just friend got shoot for that. They just lost the lawsuit for that. And that same house they got appraised with the white dude went for a hundred thousand more. I don't care about that damn <laughs> state. Every time we keep trying to find a way, da, 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 da. this it's is current. insane. Hey, but this, is, this is the thing, insane. bro. Like, why do y'all keep talking about um, people on the panel? Oh, wait, go ahead. It's, it's yeah. more than it's more than one bank to get a home loan from. It's, it's, hold on, huh? Predatory lending is a culture. Like, so if you know that these companies, if you're informed, if you know that these companies well, you, oh, if you are informed, home but if you're you, not informed. Exactly, bro. Don't sign any contracts you're not informed on. Y'all don't a feel house bad is for not... the rappers, do y'all? Y'all don't never feel bad for the rappers when they say, I signed, you know, I signed my masters away. I gave it away. Y'all be like, you stupid idiot. You all know it's 2022. Yeah. You ain't know you ain't got to do it. So now we want to hey. still have these ways. But nah, 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 nah. So, I'm not doing it. Hey, so what do y'all oh. think of critical race theory? I, I don't, what, huh? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but probably if it got to do with victim Olympics and the man, I honestly don't want to know. 
Look, so, listen, listen. No, 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 no. Because now y'all got me a little. Y'all got me moving. I sat back the whole night and let everybody else talk. And when y'all get on this crap, my mind. Think about this. Okay, listen. All this time, we need to build the black community while asking other people for help. We need to do this black community by saying. We want to work at your corporations, but we want to build, and we need to share with our own. Well, if they decide not to share with you, you ain't going to have nothing. <clears throat> nothing. Keep cooking, boy. Do you not understand this? Like, it's I agree. idiotic to say, well, we need, we need to funnel the money through our own communities because they've been doing it for so long. I mean, we're not racist or anything. It's just we need to do for ourselves and stop worrying about them. But then go to them and say, may I please uh, have some money? No. I agree. That's foolish, too. No. I'm tired, I'm, tired too. I'm tired of this BS. No, no. If, look, you either assimilate, you either align with people that have nothing to do with your so called race, or you literally create your own mecca of black families and all this kind of stuff that y'all thinking about, and then have your own hospitals and your power plants and all this stuff. You ain't going to do it, but I'm going to just say what you need to do. But what you're going to have to do is going to have to listen to somebody else and say, Thank you for this job. I can't stand employees 99% of the time. I can't stand them. You're so disrespectful, unappreciative. You don't know how to make money at all. If a job give you money, hold on, Todd. I think he's trying to get with you, bro. I can't see that. It, it, it ain't working, Jay? I don't know if it's working, Tom. But anyway, back to what I was saying. You figured that out with it. Um, look. If you don't know how to make money on your own and somebody says, I'm willing to give you a job, be grateful. I don't want to hear, they're not paying enough. I'd rather sit at home by the government. Oh, God. I'm not playing those games. No, no. But that's extreme. It's, but Aaron, it's not, it's the not company extreme. needs to pay them more because they, need, they no, need more money. they don't need to pay you but, nothing. But the company See, needs to pay them more. They don't have to pay you nothing. As a matter of fact, rich. I wish these corporations pay y'all less money. But less, these rich people are greedy, way Aaron. less money. I want, oh, I can't stand most of them. <laughs> oh, I can't stand them. But the rich oh, people, I can't. The so they should pay more taxes. Always whining and complaining. I Amazon need more money. I don't want to have to do this oh. job. They should pay me more. I, ooh, you don't know. Oh, you just don't know how much I can't stand these people, bro. I, oh, you just don't know. Oh, man. Let me. Ooh, Aaron, let me calm that's down. how you really feel. Uh, look, because you, you, you don't understand. Look, people do. If you give somebody a dollar raise, they'll say they ain't enough. You give somebody a $10 raise, they'll say, well, I want more. They're never satisfied. So this myth about. There's an amount that you, a magical amount you could pay somebody and still run a sustainable business that you have to forecast 10 plus years out. But people don't even forecast six months <laughs> to think that they're going to tell these corporations, yeah, y'all, y'all got the money paid. No, that money is for 10 years down the line because I have to predict that something may go, go wrong with operations. I might get fined because you, the employee, decided to do something predatory to one of our customers that I have to take ownership for and pay for and the worst that's gonna happen to you is you get fired. That's the worst, and you go get a job somewhere else. Yeah. Yo, Aaron, oh, when you go to like fast food restaurants, the people making them away, can they even do the damn job? Bro, yeah. listen, listen. A lot Boy, of my yeah. customers, hold on, hold on. A lot of my customers. Only Chick fil A can even do the damn work. A lot of my customers there you don't go, speak good English, bro. They work at fast food restaurants, bro. They don't speak good English at all. They bro. can't even but do the damn work. work. They no, can't English. get the order right. Bro, it doesn't matter. Look, 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 I'm not mad, yeah. bro. I'm not mad, bro. I, I'm never mad. Listen, <laughs> listen. But I'm just saying, nah, bro. Nah, you mad, I'm, bro. I'm not, yeah, I'm not you, mad, bro. I hear it. I hear it. You don't believe in it's, no living wages. I hear it. I hear it all the way it's across the board. I believe in living work. Let me tell you, living work but living wages should be included with living work. No. No, they shouldn't no, be included. They're not no, doing no, no, the work. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Jay, you came up. We can have this conversation. No, it's okay, no, it but let's just have this conversation. Can we have a decent conversation? I always have decent conversations, brother. I don't know. Like, don't, I, I, don't. I just want to put that in for anybody who else will jump in and try to hit me from the I side. I got you. I got you. But look, okay. listen, uh, listen. It's gonna be me. Listen, listen. <laughs> you listen, when you're born, you're you're you belong to your parents for the most part legally, right? Nobody owes you nothing. Mm. So if somebody gives you an opportunity, right? Someone gives you an opportunity and you in the, cause every, for most places it's at will positions at most places, right? You have to accept the terms of, of your hire, right? If that's the case, if 
you accept a job. I don't want to hear they're not paying me enough. I, I don't want to do that because even though it's in my job description and they ain't paying me enough, I don't want to hear that because you don't know how to make money outside. I have not ate today, Q. I have not ate today. I'm, my food is being cooked. But listen, if you don't know how to make money outside of an employer. I can tell you hungry, bro. I can tell you hungry. I, I might be. If you don't know how to make money outside of an employer, listen, listen, listen. I don't know what to tell you. You, you ain't in no position to, to demand nothing. You ain't in no position. Okay. To, all that Boom. margin is moving. Okay, so you said that. to say. I, I say that to say this. I worked in Hollywood uh, for 35 years. AFL CIO is a union. You think I'm not glad of that union? Let me tell you the difference between being in that union and not being union. Okay. If you were, when I first started off in 1990, I think the first three pitches I was in, I was an extra. All right. In that situation, I can go on and get $90 a day to work on a movie for extra extra. By the time it ends up, maybe comes to about 400 some dollars. Okay. Let me tell you what the union does for me. My start pay for what we call eight is $5,000. All right. I clock in at $5,000. Okay. So that means by the end of time I work that, that day, it's going to be end up to about $12,000 for that day. You see the difference in that too? Now, see, the union is doing the same thing that the average person is doing. It's asking for better wages. Now, if that company could not have paid no. that ten thousand, wait, 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 listen, listen, listen. I'm listening. If the movie industry could not have paid that ten thousand dollars for me to go in there and bust out one line, they would not. They would not have paid me. So, what I'm saying is, I see in this country where the top of the of these corporations, they're making not just millions but hundreds of millions of dollars in profit. And they're giving them these to people for bonuses versus paying their employees a decent no, no. living wage. No, no, no. I, I understand what your argument is. You choose to work there. You choose to work there. That's your business. Okay? But when you choose to have a business in the United States, and this is part of the <clears> regulations <throat> and stuff like that, you choose to fall under certain guidelines. And if they write, write a bill like that we have in California, do you know and we have in uh, Santa Monica, Everybody, the minimum wage is fifteen dollars an hour. Okay, yep. that's any job you do. Yep. Okay, so you can make all these arguments about uh, uh, about people you choose these things or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this has just been mankind within itself. We all want better. As the inflation go, it used to be Social Security used to add inflation and everything. Uh, minimum wage used to go up every year with the inflation. All mm -hmm. that stuff stopped at one time or another. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm just saying is you can't be paying people in 1972 wages when we live in 2022. Yeah, now, even right. if they choose hey, Aaron, that or not, but I'm just no, saying no, when no, you no, go no, get no, these no, government no, licenses no, for no. these bidders and stuff, you got to be under some kind of guidelines too. Come yes, on, don't so, just put it on the person who's so, getting a okay. job because if that was the case, hell, they wouldn't pay us nothing to work in these damn cars. No, no, so 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 here, here's where you're wrong at, right? So this this is the problem with, with, with most people, right? They go to the government and expect big daddy government to solve their issues. Right. I actually I see the one thing that will save people is that they remove minimum wage at all. Ooh, if, they, if there was no early. such thing as minimum wage, if it never existed, no. yeah. that would we're help you. competition. Go ahead, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. If people don't know why we that had that before, and it was called slavery. What y'all don't want to talk about? No, 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 no. That's not what it's called. So no, no. Let's listen. We had that one. No, that, before, that, that, hold, on, hold on, Jay. And y'all don't. No, Jay, 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 Jay. That's not even the case either. What actually happened I know was that's not the case. But what I'm on. trying to do, I'm trying to make a human's uh, a gesture out of something he just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, did, they did that before trust too. Number one, if if you don't have God, that's a reason why you have OSHA. There's a reason why you yes, have I, all these different government uh, entities. Yes, because they would have be, people going into yes. these bad environments, working under these bad conditions, if you didn't have some part of government. Why is it y'all pick and choose government for certain things you like, but you don't see where it benefit other people? So, Jay, other okay, 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 the whole on, other side of so would you not want the police? Would you not want the police? Would you not want the military? 
Hold on. You're that's missing a whole other point. point. No, no. Go I ahead, think y'all are missing the whole point. No, you no, get to, no, you, no, you, you right. You so start look, to act let, like a religion. Let, you get to pick let, and choose what you like let, and, hey, and Aaron, one go part ahead, of the government. I'm gonna cover another you don't side. Like the other part part of the let, let's play that lane now. So let's do this too. We also want to decide where you live, how many kids you have. We also want to decide what you eat. So look, government need to be in all four fledged of your whole life. And we want to decide what you go to school for. No, 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 no. The government's such a great thing. We want to decide what, 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 how many kids you have. What, what community you live in? We not I putting no limitations. See, this is why you got to make your argument. You have to go way over. Look what you oh, had no, to, I, look what you just did. Look what you just did because you understand why government is important in certain issues. You already understand that. You already understand that. But you had to go way over that across the hill no, to try to make a you, point. And you no, know no, that my, was not my point. My no. point was not for good government to be in every aspect of your life. And, and, that's see, why, why you live you, in a country why that's are you deciding, But why tell you, me, why do you have government in the first place? Why? What do you think is the use of government? For the, Jay, for the primary I work use for the government. government. There's some stuff you don't want to know. Yeah, so, so look, sir, you don't. sir, sir, uh, you ain't never know where you look. Where you might be at now, I might have been there and slept on it for 20 years. Yeah, so, so, okay? so, 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 so don't, don't tell me I what I don't want to know. You You're don't right. know I'm my background. To... That's number yeah, one. Right. So a lot of things I know I could not discuss over this internet. All okay. right? No, no, okay. tell you, so, you know you I know things that you know. Listen, okay? I don't want to go, so, I don't wanna go again, down that Again, I'm asking you again, where do you think in a country where government uh, fit and where it don't fit? So, so we can answer that. In, in short, the government's short role is to protect the people, for, especially from for, foreign, foreign, foreign enemies and domestic enemies. For the most part, that's the primary reason. And then we have also allowed the government to step in and play litigation in a lot of other federally regulated areas, which is fine. All I'm saying is this. When you start talking about a living wage, one, that's a made up term. Most people don't even know what it takes to actual what a livable wage is because it's not real because every day inflation happens. So every day you would have to change your wages. So that won't work. The issue is because there's a federal minimum wage, which I'm actually against, and this would actually help people. People think that, oh, these corporations are gonna pay me nothing if there's no minimum wage. No, you, this is the problem. How these corporations works, it goes like this. You know, there's Uber, there's Lyft. And they'll go like this and they'll say, even though we can't directly talk to each other, Let's just agree to the minimum wage of $10 and no more. So we, that's all they said we have to pay? Okay, now we set up our operations around $10. And that's every corporation that does it. They could have, they could pay you $16, but they say, no, nah, we're going to stick to the 15 it's, a B. it's the old boys club talk behind at the golf club and say we're sticking at 15 You give them, a, uh, give them a game plan to operate under when you say the minimum wage is $20. So, so you did think you just ask one question? Jay, did you just let me ask one what question. I was talking about as far as the union versus non-union. So, so Jay, can I just ask, let me ask, let me ask Aaron one question. So how was it, how was it 1890 right before, um, before they had minimum wages? How was it, how was life? How much were they paying people? So you're saying how, you're saying how, how much were they paying people? Life? Hold on, how, in eight, hold on, bro. You said in 1890, how was life? No, I was saying 1890, how was life in terms of how much we're paying people and living conditions? I'm pretty sure living condition was not as good as it is now because there's not been as obviously that the advancement that currently exists. We have we haven't pulled the large majority of people out of poverty uh, the way that we have now. Uh, so, yeah, obviously we have more information. We have no technological advances, so it, no. it's going to be drastically Why are we different. Talking about eighteen, I no, want to keep it. No, 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 because you talking about minimum. You said minimum wages. You said minimum wages. So, wait, 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 so wait, 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 but you know, no, fun that you got, fun that you got them. So you don't need no, you don't need no damn government to fund your schools because you're already mad about what they teach you. How about your roads? How Aaron. about your roads, then? Aaron. No, that the infrastructure. People are getting paid. Infrastructure, people are getting paid two dollars a week. People are getting paid two dollars a week. Uh huh. People, okay. People people get, people, wait, wait, wait. Hear me out. Go ahead. People are getting paid two dollars a week, and because the company, the company also was their landlord who they had to pay rent to as well. They had to, they had to force the government to. Install law, uh, install housing laws, so they had to have windows and walls in housing. They had to have sewage in housing. They okay. didn't, they didn't have any of that stuff because the company was going to do bare minimum because there was no minimum wage, there was no standards. 
So the hey, really, Cubbies were the bare minimum. Look, hold on, hold on. This is we the really problem. With, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody calm down. Hold on. Aaron, this please is the, dust this them all. We're problem, talking about 1890, right? man. Hold on. Don't, don't worry about that. But he's this talking the, about no wait, minimum wait, wage. He said that's I not, he said you don't need any minimum wage. I'm going to speak directly to that. Hold on. I'm going to speak directly to that, right? Here's the problem with people. They don't want to take no ownership for their life. So they want to be able to blame everybody else. An iPhone costs $1,500 hypothetically. The consumer determines that price. No different than the minimum wage that people are working for. If we said, corporation, we're not working for y'all for $2. If somebody's willing to work for that job for $2, then that's what the job is worth. Do y'all not understand that's how it works? Yo, Aaron L., the employees it sounds like sense this. until you put it under a microscope. Hey, look, yeah. a, 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 L, the conversations you were trying to have with him, he's already have already dissected them conversations, bro. You got to come at him newly and you got to come at him with swift because when you come at him newly and swift, he won't be able to answer your question because he'll be able to jump around, but he'll never be able to answer the question. Because I did ask my direct question. Where should the government play a part in its people life? Because the government supposed to be the people represented by your senator and con uh, congressman to go to Washington, D.C., speak for you. So I'm asking you again. It's yes. all this problem we're having in education. Just think about if the government wasn't paying anything for education. That means the federal government do that, do that to the to the point that it forces you to put your children in school. Because th think what would happen if the government didn't pay that federal funding for each school, state by state, city by city, county by county, and mm -hmm. people wouldn't let their children go to school. We don't try so, that once before. So you'd have to have it a didn't school, work. right? So you'd have to have private school like they have some private schools, correct? No, listen what I just said. There'll be a lot of people, the children would not go to school because of that, they you, you wouldn't have a mandatory to force uh, children to go to school. Children be working. Uh, 12K. You understand okay. what I'm saying? So you got to have some rules well. and regulations that protect the people on all levels. And what you, you do have a disagreement. You have a right to have a disagreement. You have a right for your opinion. But then I think when you start putting things on a microscope, you see how these things evolved in the first place. Okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. Because I think that Aaron is right. So what are you saying? Wait, wait, wait. What are you? What are you saying, J. Speed? What are you saying is the solution? Now, what I'm saying is the solution is it's part of like any part of government that is based off the constitution of the United States and all bylaws after that of the different pillars of the government in the United States, we're always looking to, to improve some work, some don't work. And I'm so hard. I'm so tired of people. always. No, 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 no. I'm saying what's the solution? What's what solution? Give me a what, problem, and then I can tell you what I would think would be a solution. Don't well, give you're, me a you're complaining about the, what a solution you're is. What you're, now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm looking for understanding. I'm in and out on, on the phone, right? Yes, sir. But I hope that cash app. I hope we got a solution with that one. Say what now? I hope that cash app. I've been trying to see you for the last hour and a half. <laughs> we got a solution for that damn thing. Everybody else been I able think to the get white man. Trying to hold you might, back. That might be on your end, my friend. No, man, I'm putting that. It's there and it says pending Aaron, on you. Just I showed you cash app, literally. J yeah, Speed, okay. show him. Show him well, the where you at? You, 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 you on so, Pluto so, or Mars? So just just tell me, and then I can do this account right. <laughs> but no, no, no. Yeah, you're okay. pushing back no, against. Go ahead and ask your question. I'm gonna be serious. Go ahead and ask your question. back against Aaron largely, and correct me if I'm wrong. Is that the market does not determine what a fair wage is, correct? Yes. Okay. That so works in one what, what, should, what, what, should the, what should determine what a fair wage is? I think I think there's two parts to that question. Fair market is the corporation itself, uh regulated by uh federal standards. And but how does, it, how does the corporation become a corporation if it's not first based off a of supply and demand in which people are willing to pay for a product or a service that f comes as a result of that corporation being formed? Right. Corporations, don't just, they don't just they don't just appear out of anywhere. It was a demand for a product, that product or that need is being met. It's a market price that the people are willing to pay. And then there's margins that come along with that as a result of, you know, what's how you're able to be able to produce that product and then what you can sell it for. So well, that corporation didn't appear out of anywhere. Like you, you starting that in the middle and I'm saying at the very bare minimum, 
if you don't have anything, right? If, if it's nothing established, how do you then determine what a fair wage is? Or is it then determined by the market itself? It's determined. It, this is why I say it, it's a, po- a two part uh, a, a party when you started looking at things. Number one, Everything that a corporation comes up with is not for there's a there's a demand for it. Some this is why we spend billions of dollars on commercials, so we can just throw that one right out there. No, that's not the, that's not true. I always well, tell well, people. I, all well, the, why I, you think they spend? If there's a I'm demand a for it, you don't I'm have to tell you make why. a commercial. For it. I'm gonna tell you why. I get clients all the time, and they say, "Anton," because I own a web development company, and I say, yes, "I can build you the greatest app of all time, but if nobody knows about it, it doesn't mean anything, right?" Marketing and visibility comes from you being able to target an audience that don't even know that your product exists, right? And so it's not just one way. It's not just I'm going to create the demand. It's there's a demand for it, but I don't even know what I don't know until I get it in front of the eyes of the people. So I think that your understanding of marketing is a little bit flawed because it's not always about I need to get it in front of a bunch of people because that does not necessarily translate into success. It's I think pe- you didn't listen to my statement. Why are we not, why are listen, we not talking about I'll give you, I'll give you the perfect it. example. I'll give you the perfect example. Aaron, I That's, think you oh, didn't listen to my wait, wait, wait. statement. I said nope, not nope. all the time. Hold on. Hold on. If you had a held on hold to on. that. No, no. What you, you know, I right said here. not all the times. It's one of the right here. who comes up in a corporation. spends zero dollars on marketing. Say what? Tesla spends zero dollars on marketing that's correct because there's a demand for that but not all corporations are built like that not okay, all so ideas me... are built like that so you you wouldn't listen to my statement i said not all so well, you try to put me in this all category i never said all the only I said reason that there's people certain, need... there's certain th- okay there's certain things there's certain things out there the corporation tesla and everybody else goes on in certain guidelines and these are rules and protocols, everything from corporation standards protocol to government standards. So if you started taking all this and pulling all this stuff out of the out of the bucket, you'll see where these things can really, really get out of hand. Where does now, these I mean, government standards come from? So what? Where does the government most is safety? Uh, uh, correct. Safety. Right. Most is safety. You're right. You're right. One hundred percent. It's safety. Right. So what we're saying is that it evolves according to us learning what's going on and how people are affected by the products that's being used, correct? Oh, certainly. Right? We, we're all in agreement with that. But, but that's when only I hear people role, saying there's no importance for the government to make rules and regulations and protocols for different companies. I mean, this is why people had black lungs by digging coal in the mines and I'm stuff like that. I'm not disagreeing with that. We both agree on safety. There's no argument yes, there. What I'm saying is that's the extent or the limit or the reach that largely the government needs to play a role in what's happening in business. The only way for capitalism to exist, because even in capitalism, if the government continues to play a role, it's not just based off of who voted them in there. There's lobbyists, right? There, there's people that pay, pay big money in order to get in front of these senators and governors. These elections are financed by people that get promises as a result of who gets in there. So it's still a form of capitalism, no matter what. But the point is, is that the extent that the government, and of course, you're going to have some, some things here and there, the extent that the government should play a role in what happens in the free market, which is the whole idea of it being called the free market, is that it needs to be limited to safety. Unions, for example, one of the gripes that they had early in, in unionization, unionization is the workplace safety, which is one of the things that you mentioned, OSHA, right? Mm-hmm. Is the workplace safety of the people that was doing the jobs on these lines. I agree. There is a there is a reason for these entities to exist. But then if you can't, if you're gonna tell me that the unions largely was formed for this reason, but what they've become today. And it's not as needed as it was back in the time where we had problems with workplace safety and things like that. Right now, what I see in the unions today, because I worked in a plants, I worked in a steel mill. What I see is the unions largely being set up there in order to protect people that's not even doing a job correctly. I understand it, that. And, 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 you know, and, they're, and you they're know, costing, in any, they're you know, in any corporations, thing, more money. Can be, wait, wait, anything that we talk about on this Internet could be abused. 
That's everything from water to drugs to everything else that we deal because we're human. So you know anything can be abused. A doctor can be uh, can abuse. A uh, 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 police can abuse. A judge can abuse. So we know these are the things comes along with human experiences and, and the way people conduct their business. I'm saying is when you have a protocol and you like like taking California, okay, take, like take in California. If somebody, even if you were married and you think sixty five thousand dollars was going to get you in any kind of house or any kind of apartment, you go be in the poverty zone. So why? Why I do mean, you think in one hundred fifty thousand dollars in so Orange County is why poverty do you think zone. that it costs so much for you to be able to the live in California? The person can always move, right? Wait, wait, wait. Why do you think it costs so much you, for somebody to live in California? Wait, repeat that. Why I didn't you, hear you. Why do you think that it costs so much for people to live in California? Because of weather. No, no. Yeah. California is the is the most over legislated. Yeah. Co- over legislated state in the entire United States, and which New is York. why, it, yes, but York. California is number one. California, they're the highest taxed, the most yeah. over legislated, and people are literally running away from California because they live in this space where they are adopting the mindset that you have, and they don't even want to live there anymore because. This is the state that they created, which is one of the reasons why people in Texas is saying, don't, don't come. In Texas. We don't want y'all coming here because y'all bringing away the y'all y'all either. Either. I, I would disagree with people you and I can prove too. my point. I can people prove my point. Let me don't prove my point. Want people in Let me prove my point. Let me prove Go my ahead. point. If the weather was not the way it was in California, you wouldn't have even people here that make a have a legislation of any taxes or anything. It's the weather that keep people it's here. Not. It's you know what? You know how I know it's okay. not? Okay. Okay. Hold on, wait, 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 so, wait, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, when, when you got OG. four seasons, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you OG, got four seasons, OG, 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 OG. The East Coast, because I'm from the East Coast. Cool. All right? But what, what about you Florida? Speak to 90% compared, of the people. Compared to Florida. Compared to Florida. Say what? Compare California to Florida. Well, California and Florida, which Florida has changed. I lived in Florida for three and a half years in Florida City, Prime, and Homestead. So what I'm trying to tell you, the difference between Florida, Florida has always been a retirement state. That's number one. But when you come to California, you come to the glitz of Hollywood. You got the weather. You, yes, yes, yes. But we know that ain't true. Now, come on, uh, Anton, we know that ain't true, okay? Being, being a C, but this is what is promoted for California. But one thing you won't be able to take from California is the weather. So, you OG, much so let, me, so let me ask you a question. Five degrees all year round. It's wait, almost wait, like let me ask you, it's a let desert. Me ask you. It's almost like a tropical state. Let me ask you a question, OG. Yes, sir. Why is New York the opposite when it comes to weather, but they have the exact same problems as California? Because at one time, you, uh, uh, New York was the trade capital, and it still might be the trade capital of the world. New York City. That's number one. And it was more advanced with the skyscraper. Look how long y'all had the subway compared oh, to OG, you're missing else. it. You're so, missing it. No, you're what I'm trying it, to say OG. is New New York. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're New missing York it, OG. Was, Why wouldn't they make California at its inception the trade capital of the world? And why did they choose to do it in New York? Because it just like anything else, it's where the people decide to migrate at one time or another new york was the it it was the apple but we can't say that now we, we really can't, can't say that now you missing it you OG. say that in the same mis- it, i'm OG. just telling you you ask me how people evolve because people but you're missing it south, because so people who was in the south especially black people who was in the south considered migrating to the north was much better not only did they consider that the government itself and corporation itself used to come down and get workers from the South. They called it the first job corps. Not this job corps where the people, students go at. They had a thing in America called the job corps where they would recruit people from the South because they know there was more hard workers and to work in them skyscrapers and in them cities. So if you, if you want to go into the history of this, this is one of the things I studied I about migration of the United States. 
I'm but you cannot to... say the importance of California is not the weather itself because everybody here you talk to that no, would be the main I'm thing. You is that the weather is not the is not the deciding factor for whether or not somebody is going to move to a place. I'm telling you that the weather alone is not the deciding factor. That's the whole point of the argument is that it's not just one thing as to well, why people do what on, it is. That you know doing. we understand that. So I, I got you, a question. If you tell whole somebody point who lives in Chicago. Is that, I'm using you tell somebody who lives in Chicago who can come out here and wear Bermuda, uh, Bermuda shorts in the mid of the wintertime versus them how the damn... You're getting away from the argument, The swimming. argument that I'm making is that people's ability to tax and the government's role, yes. because we're walking way away from this, but we're using these examples in order to illustrate a smaller point, yes, is sir. people being taxed and the government's role in deciding what can and can't happen shouldn't be extended all the way into how we determine or what we determine people get paid in a free market. That's the whole point. But is that that totally United agree. United States OG, 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 let me women. ask you a question. That's what makes United States different from all these other countries. This is what makes us still uh, stand out. It's because... OG, let me ask you, why are people migrating exactly. out of California, though? I do want to know... from your point Say of what? Why? Why are people migrating out of California? Because I can't tell you. Taxes and policy. Because they can't keep up with. Li listen. Yeah. Like, it's the government's role. Let me just, let me just give you an example. Economy. Let me give you a living example of me. All right. I have a house in Gardenia. It's worth $792,000. If I had that same house in Atlanta, Georgia, it may be worth $150,000. I would have a much better house. You understand what I'm saying? I would have a much better house built in Georgia than I have in California. I would at least have some bricks and some real shit in my house compared to the chicken wire and the mortar they use here. All but right. due to the fact that I live in what Southern, uh, uh, Southern California, where it hardly ever rain, and the weather is on the average, maybe 60-something degrees all year round, then versus having a place that I live in full season that I had spent a lot of money on heat when they say, when they say on air conditioning in summertime and heat in the wintertime, yeah. I have a fair weather Let's that see. I don't have to tell on you heat over. So you ask me, so you ask me why people migrate. Yeah, no, people, I'm on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. They Listen, can't keep up with the cost of living. Y'all got 12 minutes. The cost of living. 12 minutes, can't. we got to, I want everybody to get their thoughts out. I got to go get ready for my for my other show on a Millionaire Morning yes, Show. Make sure y'all migrated over there in the next 15 minutes. 12 minutes, everybody. I want y'all to get y'all thoughts out. Aaron going to do what he do. I'm going to holler at y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe hey, to the thank Patreon. thank you, man. Thank you. Patreon man. link is in the description. We're going to do this again tonight, too. So I'm going to see y'all. That shoe, your shoe collection you got is good, bro. Thank you, my I, friend. I like that. That shoe collection you got is good. Bro. All right, I'm going to let y'all do y'all thing. Okay, uh, look, yeah. listen, the people the reason people are migrating out of California is because now jobs are migrating out of California. Because yep. we because we've got so far with technological advances, businesses can be run and operated differently. They can afford to move their business away from California. California in general in general generates the most jobs in all the country. But now what you're seeing is these jobs have more flexibility. And you're also seeing intelligence of people realizing, hey. I need to make sure I understand money a little bit more. And this cost of living ain't right. I could do this job over here. So you're, you're seeing a whole shift in everything actually happening. Yeah. So you get a shift. You're getting a shift in mindset. You're, getting, you're literally getting shifted in every, in every aspect. Like, so everything is hidden. So people are migrating out of California because there are jobs outside of California now. There are more jobs in other states. A lot of jobs going to Texas. You know what I'm talking about. And people yeah. are migrating down to Texas. They taking that California money and buying them houses, running them. North prices. Carolina, the same way. Yeah. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Same thing. People from yeah, we gonna get to you. They running them prices up, and so when you when you when you see it like that, people are going to migrate outside of California. Yes, the weather is a huge component. Yes, right. But it's really the jobs. When I talk to a lot of the immigrants that come here, it's the jobs. Like it's literally the jobs that is the biggest deal for them because it's the most job creation. And for the most part, they pay the most. And in their mind, even though they don't understand cost of live calculation, they see the price as they pay the most. So jobs plus pay the most plus perception. And now jobs are moving.
So people are moving with these jobs. They're like, I'd rather live in Atlanta. Or I'd rather live in Texas and get this nice four or five bedroom home, which is a dumb idea, but that's what they think, and take these jobs. But what's going to happen is people will still come back to California. People but will still Aaron, come back to the Bay Area because that's just how it works. You'll leave for a while and then you'll come back. You'll migrate out, you migrate in. So it, it's all cyclical in a lot of ways, but that's the main... Go ahead, Jay. I no, no, what I was trying to say is this, right? I think that we're also forgetting the part where California is a very legislative... Like, there's so much laws in California. There's a lot of... Like, just like you talked about the, the living wage, right? If California has the highest living wage, they still have the highest homelessness. So what I, where I'm going at is government intervention doesn't always mean the best. Right. I, I see that there's so much legislation that happens in California. It doesn't happen everywhere. We, like in North Carolina, we are more of a freer state. In Texas, we're more of a freer state. We pay less. We don't, they don't pay taxes. We pay less taxes yet. But people live better. The quality of life in the South is way better than the quality of life we have in California. So and that's not true. Look, False. That's not true. False. You got your goddamn, 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 goddamn mind. Uh, that is not like, true. You False. Guys, what? Homeless people in, in I've been to San Francisco. You have listen. To, hold, wait, 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 hold, 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 homeless people everywhere. Hold, 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 we have a huge homeless population <clears throat> yes. is because it's beneficial to them. Our benefits are better I'm for hollering. those people. That's why they're not in the South. Oh, so yeah, they're, but that, so, so you, literally their, yeah. their, their way of life is way better up, up North than it would be down in the South. Oh, you're you're talking talking about about homeless because people. they got to work. Okay, in the South. I understand different. that, but oh, okay. homeless people don't want to live in the snow. So no, therefore, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying that the quality of life, in the south is way better than the quality no, of life. No, it's not. Are what you are talking you about homeless or I think, No, it's not. I think I think that is uh, situational, and that depends on the person. If you're oh, talking cause, economical, cause I, it's better in the south. So yeah. I, I no, it's yeah. not. Yeah. That's not even factual. Economical no. is better stay in California. Wealth, there is more wealth up. Okay, so let, let me let you I'm say. I'm talking about person A. I'm talking about a person I am making a certain amount of money. Is he better off it's, living in Cali or living in Florida? There's no question about it. People are buying houses from California here, living in mansions. I live in a house. I'm from Cali, and coming to Florida, don't buying houses in Cali. Sometimes y'all just spew things because it's emotional component. Listen, no, I'm talking numbers. What about quality listen, of life? I like, no, I talk. Uh, listen, I talk to people from the South all the time that come up here all the time. You know what they say? I ain't never going back. Because Ever. numbers don't support you, Aaron. Look at the numbers now. People are migrating. I'm talking numbers. From California. Okay. In droves. I'm talking, South. okay, when I say quality that of life. That has nothing to do with be having a better that life. That has all to do with quality of life. They're buying no, it doesn't. Okay. What are you this talking? Is, okay. This is all subjective. I'm talking about is numbers. This is subjective, bro. How but yeah, subjective. No, what I'm saying is what listen what I'm saying, bro. Okay, right. But I thought we were talking economics. So that's all I was mentioning. When you talk about quality of life versus yeah. standard of living, that's what the differentiating factor okay. is. Okay, well put. Well put. So quality of life is dependent on the person. That's gonna be subjective. But standard okay. of living is different between California right. and Texas. So okay. it's the standard of living. Let me ask you a question. Well put. Yeah, is correct. there a correlation? Is there a correlation between standard of living and quality of life? Because there no. is a correlation. The reason the reason is the reason it's, it's not a the reason it's not a correlation is because yeah, quality is determined by the person that uses the word. Okay. So your for you, I like I like Nike. You might like Adidas. I mm -hmm. think Nike has a higher quality. You think Adidas has a higher quality. That's an opinion. So when right. you start discussing quality of life, okay, that, I agree with you. You get that, me on that. So let, let me change the standard of living, right? Let's not use quote because I understand English is not my first language. So we we'll probably can, all agree right. on standard of living. Yeah, huh? numbers speak for themselves. We're, yeah, we're going to agree on that. Is, so how do no, you, I'm, I'm not necessarily agreeing. How do we quantify that? Do we say better or how do you quantify standard of living? Because what I'm trying to say, this is what I'm trying to say. If I, people that were making two hundred thousand dollars in California, right, living in an apartment can comfortably live in a comfortable house, right? And you cannot tell me that, you know, the, if you have an option living in the slum or living in the house, that I would pick choosing living in the slum. Now, I understand that, you know, based on quality, the people might be, okay, I want to live in the slum because I'm closer to the, the giant stadium. Or I'm let me help you. 
Yeah, go ahead. Let me help you first. Hey, Let me help don't you first. hey, don't forget we we short on time. I'm on it. I'm on it, bro. Right. I, know. I know. I know. You know I don't miss. But listen, listen. Let me help you really quickly, right? Because I got well people minutes, spewing tech down. jobs. People spewing tech jobs and this and that, and you can go from college. Listen, the law, the the. The largest employers in the United States of America are small businesses. Yeah. They are not tech firms. So, right. y'all, so, so when you're talking to somebody that actually knows what he's talking about, it sounds different when you're just spewing things. You're not just taking these tech jobs and, and think that's the large majority of jobs. That's not the case. That's not the case. The large majority of people are not going to be able to shift their job from California and go to another state. It just does not work like that. So you have no idea what you're talking about. No, no I numbers to back up. You know, people and then, are and then listen. You're talking about somebody making two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, we can we can actually quantify that. How many people are making two hundred thousand dollars? We actually have the numbers on that. So like, this is insane. Like, of course, if somebody is taking that money that they're making and moving it down there, sure, their quality of life go up. How many people are actually going to do that? Well, people then, making sixty thousand can live comfortably in in California. They're not getting sixty thousand in Texas. If you're making sixty they, in Cali, they, you're not getting sixty in Texas. What are you? If you take that about? same job, if you take that same job from Cali and move it to Texas, you're making they're sixty. Just, instead of making sixty, you're making fifty or forty. But 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 people are still living comfortably. There's a reason why people see if the numbers. No, it's it's, are, it's, it's it's some truth to that though. Why because are people migrating? Some proof to what both of y'all are saying, but it, this so, is situational. I agree to that. Just like that, I'm government. That, My salary is somewhat to both fixed. Sides, but here's the problem. I can tell you right now, these home prices are not going down. If all these people moving out, because we, we you understand supply and demand is a direct correlation, I right? Agree. If all these people moving out, I can tell you right now, I got I got realtor. Price is not going down, bro. So, you know uh, for why? example, I'm, let me Go give you an example, right? I'm trying to, uh, I, I was trying to, uh, you know, test the job market, you know, just, you know, look and see, right? And people hit me up and they were like, yo, how much, um, you know, what, what kind of salary are you looking for? I gave them, I gave them like 20% more than what my boss, what my boss's salary is. And for like Atlanta or for like uh, down south, right? They were like, oh, uh, we're, we were thinking about like, they gave me a price that's way less than what I'm making. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I'm good. But the same job, I'm all set. Well, it depends on what you can get set. for those dollars though. Yeah, yeah but it's, like, it's, it's standard I can of living. Move to the bay and make twenty five. Most people don't more. have no dollars. This is why y'all driving true. me crazy. This <laughs> well, is yeah, why true. y'all driving. And we listen to the Thinking Man uh, podcast. We agree that this is situational, though. No, I ain't no listen to Thinking Man podcast. Listen <laughs> what I say. <laughs> okay, you're right, Aaron. Go ahead, give it. Go ahead. You want to get it in? You want to get it in, Aaron? Go ahead, get it in. Go ahead. We're talking about a situation. I'm just playing. Can we all agree on that? Listen, I agree. If Thinking Man move move from Texas to California, fine. If he move from California, take sure. <laughs> but if you're talking about Bobby down the street, nah, bro. I'm not. Y'all must have some yeah. history. Situational, Bobby. Well, y'all talk about different. each other. Y'all got some history. Well, I ain't heard him say anything about you years, Aaron. Though, so I don't. I don't really. So, don't know. Aaron, seven hundred thousand people <laughs> migrated out of California last year. Okay, and, and because they migrated, migrated to California. Okay, California. look, and because they migrated. What is the direct correlation to the standard of living for everybody else? Did did, did their prices why go down? You, let me ask you for why do you think people migrate? People migrate because they live better life. I didn't migrate to America to struggle. I migrated because I want a better life. I wanted better things for myself. People don't people migrate to where there's hope and where there's success and where they can live better quality of life. Nobody migrates to El Salvador. People migrate out of El, Sa El Listen, Salvador. Listen, bro. Once it's, again, it's, it's not, it's not, El Salvador don't have minimum wage. It's, Once it's, again, it's standard of living. That. It's standard of living and it's cost of living. Hey, let me say one more thing on this minimum wage and then I'm done. No, you're not. You know these places, no, I'm actually be done. Because ain't no point after this. <laughs> You'll be talking you know about this to, the, to Jesus Christ come back. Come on, now. go ahead and get no, it in. Though. Middle, thing on minimum wage. <laughs> they're complaining, oh, they're not paying us enough. Whoa, they won't pay us enough money. We need more for our families. Oh. When you go to a lot of places that the people are actually making minimum wage, they're not even giving you minimum work. They can't do the damn job. And they're asking for more. And if you do give them more, all right, all fast food, all restaurant, all we're going to pay you $30 an hour. The people who are standing here waving the baton saying, pay them more. Now, inflation comes because now they make more, they spend more. Your ass is broke. Why yes, are people campaigning for that? Well, let's look at standard they living. Can't even get, they can't even do the damn job. 
Okay, well, let's look at standard uh, living in countries just, where there are no minimum wage. Let me all these notions, since I do live in California. Let's look at this country right? without minimum wage. Let me dispel like? some of these notions, why integration um, and why people are migrating different places. California, since 1990, have been the pit stop for people to come here to get driving license to don't even have papers because California allowed them to have that. That's number one. Number two, this is what we call the free state. You come to this state right here, and if you get SSI in North Carolina, maybe you get three or four hundred dollars. Out here, you get twelve. So people come out here, and they know that this is called the free state. Once they get their stuff together or not get together, they either in downtown in a split leather cardboard box, homeless, or they take their money and take it somewhere else. And let's don't be fooled about this. This is this is one one of the only states. In America, that you can come with no papers, no anything from anywhere, and you go be given a, a, a living wage or a, a decent wage that you didn't earn, that you can take your driving license anywhere in the uh, United States or your identification, and that state has to recognize it. This is why it, we have so much migration in California. So let's just get that straight. Before you start having it. Uh, look, man, I was born right there in Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. I do know Raleigh is the capital of Charlotte, North Carolina. So mm -hmm. you are talking about a place I was born and lived uh, uh, a part, a small portion of my life before I moved to ATL. So let's just understand that the uh, Thinking Man podcast made a good, good, good understanding of what we're really talking about, a standard mm -hmm. of living living wages, and all that. When you put it all together, this is a very complex conversation. And it, and it just won't never be start solving this podcast, and we all know that. Look, man, I came up here so I can give this guy a donation uh, for his podcast. There's something wrong. I guess the white man is holding him back, won't let me give him no money. So... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can say so, it to me. So I like what the young lady was saying. I don't think she. I think y'all took her what she was saying. Uh, we got, out of, we got she was talking about the natural order of life. Because when you get away from the natural order of life, the way it was created, you you go have a cause and effect. And if you're willing to pay that effect. That's all cool and fine, but don't act like you don't know that everything has a natural order. And so I was not born with a condom on my, you know what? So I didn't come from a generation where you use condoms. And for the last, I think, 30 years of my life, I haven't used one. I haven't had no babies. I know the rhythm session. Uh, oh, all right. And so oh, y'all get it go. in. That's just for me. That's just for me. Go. I don't want nobody to go out there and, and, and start firing out the gun and killing everybody in the neighborhood and, and coming up with little kids uh, that look listen, like them. Listen, but listen, I wouldn't listen. want anybody to be irresponsible. I'm just telling you from the generation that I come from, uh, I'm not I'm not go have I'm just me. Uh, 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 I think that's OG. what's wrong with most of these young guys or these guys who's in the relationship. You have been making love to plastic all your life. You don't even know what a woman feel like. All right, OG. All right, we got to go. So we're we going to get go. off of that, but no, I'm just going to let that because I know listen. that you got maybe have some babies or something. Now. Listen, That's why listen. I kept it clean. But we're going to have to have that subject. I know when you start substitute, when you start substitute, what do it do to the mind? What do it do hey, to the vibration? Right, don't worry about it. All right, y'all. All right, but look, we appreciate hey, everybody love, rocking OG. out. Thank you so much for rocking out with the late night live stream. Y'all know how we do. We got the Millionaire Morning Show up next, streaming live. Please, please, please join the family. And you know, we're gonna have this we're gonna have this conversation again. So I know, I know it got a little, a little, a little crazy. I look forward to, to that next one. Yeah, we're gonna get to it. Man. Millionaire Morning Show up next. Let's get to it, man. Let's get right, to man. it.